Peter, as they say. So a nice big prize on the line for in the white corner, Pet Nam Nam, Mo Pu Wana. And in the black corner, Kun Suk Lek or Kwan Mueng. This fight is at 60 kilos. And you got to love it. Every single time we see a Thai versus Thai contest here in Thai fight, it's always a blast. Yeah, it's something special about it because obviously the concept is Thai versus foreigner usually. So when we do see Thai versus Thai, it's always a nice treat. All right, here we go. Round number one. Pet Nam Nam in the white corner. Nice right kick to the body there from the get off. Nice hands coming in there from Kun Suk Lek though. Tactic right, head kick there, wobbles Kun Suk Lek and then a spin Rooney almost. I think both of them have already been wobbled early on, my goodness. You now when Pet Nam Nam in the white corner, he came to the ring, he could see that he was a little bit nervous because obviously, oh, beautiful elbows going in. I mean, we've made it clear before the match that both of these fighters need to get started early and they have done that exactly, my goodness. Huge kick coming in now from Pet Nam Nam. Oh, stunning right hand coming in there from Pet Nam Nam and Kunz Wood Lek goes down. What action you're seeing here in the very first round and it's all oh, over. Full speed ahead, bro. I mean, we didn't expect the fight to finish this early. I tell you what, who would have thought it would be Pet Nam Nam, the former Roger Nadal champion, the former Super Champ champion as well, takes the victory in the first round. And Absolutely amazing how he did it as well. We've always, I mean, we've always said that there's a there's a point where Thai fight have to look at themselves and think, why not go for the lower weight classes? Yes, sometimes they can go all the way, but sometimes you can get action just like that, and that's what we want to see here at Thai fight. Congratulations once again to Thai fight Rombound in April. Pet Nam Nam, more who wanna? Oh, you gotta say it. Well, he did catch him with an overhead right kick that wobbled him, and then he got wobbled. The action was so quick. It just goes to show how lethal those kachuks, that the kachuk is. Absolutely, those rogue hands are devastating. He goes in with the right, and as quick as a flash, that right hand comes over the top, and Kunsuklet almost leans into it at the same time, meaning ultimate impact just on the temple. I mean, and you gotta, down you he gotta, went. You've got to feel for him. Kunsuklet saw that right hand coming. He did, but then uh, at the same time. Maybe he thought to himself, my goodness, there's nothing I can do about it. What a way to start the action here at Thai Fight. Stay with us, more action to come. ด้วยกับมุชนาครับแล้วก็เป็นกําลังใจกับผู้ที่แพ้ไปนะครับซีเคโอล็อกจ้องนึงครับโอ้โหนี่แหละครับจังหวะจะโคนไม่น่าเช
again with that left hand. And another swinging right that just wide of the target. Oh, solid right kick to the body there from Nongo. I think it's fair to say that Ali Reza felt that kick. Yeah, and it slowed him down. I mean, we're not even in the ring, and we can feel it from here. Certainly made a crunching sound. Seems to be a lot of fans from Iran on the stream there. Again, Nongo pushing back the Iranian. Superman punch attempt. Ali Reza, though, he's covering up pretty well so far. Yeah, I mean, he's holding his own. He's taking Nongo shots, shots like a champ. Oh, good right hand there. Stunning right hand from Ali Reza on the counter. I think it's fair to say he can't continue to take all these shots. They're going to start adding up, that's for sure. Nongo moving in with a the knee there in the clinch and then takes down the Iranian. Pushing forward once again, attacking the body this time. I mean, Nongo, when he threw that kick early on in this round, you could tell that Ali Reza felt it and he reacted to it. So maybe that's what Nongo needs to do. He needs to start attacking the body. And I think that's what we're seeing in the ring right now. Yeah, he also employed leg kicks there a mo moments ago that connected to Ali Reza. That's one way of slowing your opponent down. Another knee to the body there from the tie. End of round one. Well, Kevin, unofficially, how would you have scored that opening round? Yeah, I, I got to give it to Nongo without a shadow of a doubt. I just think he's been busier. He's um, hurt his opponent more. It's just, it's just very hard to give Ali Reza that round. It's been, oh, good right hand there from Ali Reza. No count though. Referee sets continue as again headhunts with that right hook. I mean, after the first round, we didn't think that Nongo would turn it up, and he's done exactly just that here in the second round. Absolutely amazing to see, and that's what the fans come here to see. Oh, another right hand around the earlobe there. Certainly going to bust your equilibrium. Got to be careful. One thing's for sure is that Ali Reza is tough. I mean, we've seen opponents take shots like that from Nongo, and they're not even standing, at, even after the 10 count. But Ali Reza managed to stay on his feet, and he's still fighting, yeah, still exchanging. Right. Ali Reza still in this one. Oh, he, de he definitely is. I mean, if he's still standing, if Nongo's still standing, is he still exchanging? There's, there's no doubt that he's still in this fight. But like you said, though, he showed his toughness. He showed his toughness, but uh, maybe the only thing that's lacking is the defense. He's got to try to keep his balance here. Nongo's also found a home for that right hand. Just a short little right hook there, just around the corner. He's connecting to it at will there and again. Oh, absolutely phenomenal. Oh, solid knee. Yeah, that's what Nongo needs to do more. He needs to start changing the levels. He needs to start attacking the head. And then if, if, it, if they continue to get blocked, he needs to start attacking the body. Oh, solid right hand that time again. Again, Ali Reza, though, very strong, able to take a lot of punishment. Blood streaming from the nose now of the Iranian. Could be difficult for him to breathe out of that nose right now. Well, that's something he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to blow out of that nose. And it absolutely. Could swell up. <laughs> it could swell up elsewhere. He needs to start breathing out of his mouth now, and that's going to be difficult. Then again, Nongo, not taking your advice at all, Kevin. Just headhunting all the way. Now, I was impressed with a few of those low kicks that he attacked with in that first round. I'm surprised he hasn't gone back there. But, 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 they, but in this second round, he's having a lot of success, to be fair to him. Oh, absolutely. And it's worth the right hand. Oh, good right hand there from Ali Reza. But here comes Nongo trying to finish the fight. Again, Ali Reza just able to grab a hold of Nongo. Both fighters breathing heavily right now. Yeah, that's right. And, but we, you know, Nongo has been attacking the head this whole time. He's been head hunting in the first and, and second round. Why not try to change it up a little bit? Ali Reza is expecting another shot to the head. Attack the legs. I agree completely. And it's not like he's not capable of that. He actually has good kicks. <laughs> he just wants that knockout, that highlight reel knockout, I think. End of round two. Ali Reza. from that second round and I think it's fair to say it's been all Nong Oh Nong Oh even off balancing Ali Reza and he's continuing to attack the head maybe he just needs to change up a little bit I mean we've seen that we've seen some punches uh, go to the body we've seen some uh, well we've seen one low kick perhaps yeah one low kick that actually scored and was success successful and you know forced Ali Reza to, to at least think but since then it's been head headshot after headshot after headshot from Nongo Chohapayak you know what I think it is? I think 
right now, Ali Reza is in Nong O's head. I mean, he's, he's showing Nong O that, look, you can't, <laughs> you can't knock me out. And Nong O's just getting frustrated with that. Saying that, Sunok just... Literally be in Ali Reza's head with the amount, <laughs> the amount of shots that he's taken to the ears. All right, here we go. Third and final round. Are you saying you can pull the other side of the rope outside the other side of the ear? <laughs> <laughs> You're not saying that, not me. <laughs> Absolutely. Nong Oh once again trying to push forward and some more heavy hands from Nong Oh and not going for the low kicks at all. Still determined to hunt the head. Swinging left and right hands coming in here from the tie. Nice body shot there from Longo. And it worked for him. I mean, you saw when he went for the body shot, Ali Reza reacted to it. Oh, and again, a jumping right hook there from Nong Oh. That's going to score a lot of points for Nongo, taking the back of the opponent. That's something anybody wants to avoid, having your opponent take your back. Again, he looks for that jab. They're just coming together. Nongo again, pushing back. Ali Reza, that time goes to the body. I have been impressed, though, it has to be said, with the durability of Ali Reza. He has taken a lot of punishment, let's not forget. And he's still in there, and he's still swinging. He's still able to defend himself by grabbing a hold of Nongo. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, but the problem is right now, Ali Areza, he has to be first. He has to start walking forward and he has to start dishing out some punishments. Because I think it's fair to say, I mean, everyone at home and the judges probably saw Nongo win the first two rounds. I feel like right now it's just a case of surviving the fight for Ali Reza. He's almost a win in himself with the amount of punishments that he's taken to be able to stay in there until the final bell. Oh my goodness! I don't know what went flying just now, I but I think know. it may have been a tooth, my goodness. You're right, something red. Part of the year, perhaps? No idea. Ali Reza with a big, deep breath. He really wants to make it to the end, you can tell. You, you, you've got to love the guts that Ali Reza is showing in this fight here tonight. He knew when he took the fight, it was never going to be easy taking on someone of the caliber of Nongo. Yeah, you can see by that, that nose is destroyed. It is broken. Potentially in three or four places. Deep breaths again there by the Iranians. Yeah, Trying to get any air into that body. Look, he can't breathe. You can see that. Another right hand there from Nong Oh. And that's maybe five places to the nose now. I wonder if the referee's looking at this thinking, is it necessary for him to take any more punishment right now? You saw it just now. I mean, the referee had a good look at Ali Reza's nose and he, he thinks Ali Reza could continue, so why not? Well, there it is, end of the third and final round. We will go to the judges for a decision. Me and Kevin, and I'm sure everyone watching out there on YouTube land is going to see and believe that Nongo will get his hand raised, but we have to give props where props is due to Ali Reza Amezadeh. I mean, Ali Reza, he showed he is a tough, tough opponent for Nongo, and um, at the same time, with just a little... And seeing him again. Feel like he's deserved a second shot, perhaps. Just, just through his toughness alone. Let's have a look at the highlights of that third and final round. Indeed, the fight. Pretty much the story of the fight was Nongo looking for the left and right hooks, and Ali Reza surviving. Uh, he tried to blow out of his nose there. That was such mistake, a bad idea. Mistake. You said, didn't you? Warning. Don't do that. You can swell up the eyes. Oh. That nose might never be the same again. Oh, definitely not. Or oh, that breathing, perhaps. But I think it's, this is also something good for Nongo to go back and watch again, and where he can tweak his performance. But remember, he, he's still young and relatively inexperienced here at Thai Fight. Yeah, he's, he's still only, learning. He's only 22 years old. Yeah. With us, folks, still to come. The female queen of Thai fight, Vera, will be taking on the a Brazilian, Yuli Alves. The winner is... No, oh, so have a young from Thailand! นะครับก็จะมีโอกาสได้คะแนนค่อนข้างเยอะในการปล่อยอาวุธหนักๆด้วยเช่นเดียวกันแน่นอนครับนี่คือบอยคาเชลของเรานะฮะกับพิมพ
declared a draw. That is right. And let's not forget that Vero is the 2022 Kachuk champion of 53 kilos. She was also the declared the WMO Female Fighter of the Year as well. So last year, an amazing year for Vero. Let's see if she can start off 2023 in the same fashion. Yuli Alves trying to derail the phenom. That is Vero for Rujira Wong. Who trains out of Tiger Muay Thai. And as is as is custom. As is custom. <laughs> Hello, Johnny Betts. Johnny Our friend. Betts, the octopus. Always need to give him a, sh a shout out, no matter or usually if a, fi a, a fighter from Tiger Muay Thai yeah. comes, comes to compete, yeah. All right, here we go. Round one. And you can imagine how big it will be for Yuli Alves if she manages to beat Vero. Oh Rodrigo. my goodness, stunning right hand there from Vero. She's going down to the body there and down up to the head of Yuli Alves. I'm not sure how much she can take of this. Yuli Alves isn't fighting and the referee did the right thing by giving her a count and I don't think she knows where she is right now. My goodness, I want abs like Yuli Alves. She took so much punishment and she's okay, it seems. Yeah, she wants to continue, that's for sure. That's unbelievable. All right, here comes Vero again. Yuli trying to elbow her way out of danger. Into the clinch they go. The referee obviously is not going to let that one fly here on tie fight. Now, for those at home that can't say you beat Sanchez, here at ringside with us and he is very impressed with Yuli Alves' abs being able to take all that punishment. <laughs> Good left hook there from Yuli Alves. Oh, a swinging right hand attempt there by Vero, misses the mark. An attempt, I thought it connected, I thought it was a good shot there. Absolutely amazing, good knee there from Yuli Alves and Vero might be in a lot of trouble. Good left hand from Vero. Yeah, you were right, Yuli went to the body of uh, Vero. Looked like she was in trouble just for a second, Swin spinning back elbow attempt there by the Brazilian. Now I'm going to make an educated guess that y Yuli Alves is going to start attacking Vero's body. I mean, she saw Vero just freeze for a second. Left jab there by Vero. Yuli has a mouse under her left eye right now from all that punishment she took early on in the round. And here comes Vero once again, backing up Yuli into the corner. But a stunning left knee to get out of that situation by Yuli. Now I think I speak for Yuli Alves' corner, but I think she should keep her hands up because she's taking way too many shots up there. And it's showing. Well, the thing about that is if you hold your hands up that high, what we saw, Vero go down to the body. She can switch levels at will. Wow, what an amazing opening round. Uh, let's have a look at the highlights from that amazing opening round. Vero, from the get-go, backed up Yuli right into the corner. Some amazing headshots, and then Yuli covered up, and there you can see straight to the body with some devastating left and right hooks. But amazingly, Yuli, look at those eyes. Confident. She survived. She weathered that storm. The best ab workout I've seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That is some Rocky movie action right there. Don't try this at home, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, I mean, the referee eventually had to come in and count. Yuli wasn't attacking back, and she was just receiving way too much damage. Tough. And she, isn't, she even caught Vero with, I think it was a knee to the body that actually just made Vero question things just for a split second. Let's see what happens in the second round. Yeah, she had, she had a lot of success with the, with, with the body attacks, um, Yuli. Maybe she wants to go back and start doing that again. Teeps to the body there by Vero. Left hook connects to Yuli. Both these girls with really nice footwork. A lot of Vaseline on uh, Yuli's face, and probably for good reason. We know up at Tiger Muay Thai, should I say, down at Tiger Muay Thai, they have some fantastic boxing coaches. And you can tell by the way, you know, Vero fights, but let's not forget that Vero has also fought amateur boxing before. Oh, there you go. And there's the, uh, the QR code, boys and girls, if you want to scan that. You can join the Thai Fight Club, supporters group, and potentially win a flight to Rome to watch Thai Fight in Italy. Heavy hands coming in once again from Vero. Vero determined to oh, keep on moving forward. There's and that knee. Fantastic. I mean, she needs to start going and back again, to that. And again, there's that left knee. Team to the body. I think Yuli has found a weakness in Vero that nobody else has been able to find. 
the body attacks, you know, she's reacted really badly to it. I mean, maybe two times already in this bout. Super impressed with Yuli Alves in this second round so far. There's that knee again. But Vero again, just biting down on that gun shield and swinging lefts and rights to the body and to the head. And blood coming out of Yuli Alves' nose right now. She needs to not do the same mistake as that Ali Reza in the, in the previous bout. You can see that Vero is looking for that overhand right. Just want to see Yuli start going back to the body again. It, it's worked so well for her, but I think that's exactly what she's doing. But she's waiting for Vera to attack first. She needs to be the one attacking first. Yeah, deep breaths there by Yuli Alves. Perhaps fatigue time to starting to set in now. And who can blame her for that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you saw earlier. Oh, just nice now. left hand there to end round number two. Stay Have a look at the second round highlights from this amazing fight between two female warriors. Vero, again, looking to go up top, looking to connect with left and right hands. Yuli having more success when she aims for the body, body sorry, of the, uh, the Myanmar fighter. But what a great showing it's been so far from both fighters, in fact. But I'm very impressed with the toughness that Yuli has shown. Now, unfortunately, um, you weren't able to see it, but during the break, when uh, Yuli Alves was in, was in her corner, she let out a huge scream. And right now, unfortunately you can't see it, but in the arena she is showing her love for the fans. Very calm, very relaxed. I think she knew that this was going to be a war and she was gonna have to put in one of the best performances of her career so far, and right now, she has been incredible. I mean, if you're a female fighter at 53 kilos, you have seen Vero before. That's without a shadow of a doubt. You know how strong Vero is, and you just have to try and match that toughness. And that's exactly what Yuli Alves is doing here tonight. And Vero starting off using that left hand, that jab. Then trying to set up the right hand. Yuli. Nice right hand there from Yuli. Yuli Alves having a lot of success with that right hand and she's going to keep on going back to it and why not? That knee once again going down the center. Little attempted left hand there from Yuli to the body. Trading left and right hands there. Relatively even in the opening stages of this third and final round. I think Yuli has basically said, I'm not, I don't want to be dominated. I don't want to see what happened in the first round. That's right, Yuli's confidence never dropped from the first round to the second round, and now in the third round, she is more confident than ever. Good right hand, left hand there from Vero. Tempting swinging kick, but a nice counter strike by Yuli going low. Yuli having a lot of success with the teeps, and she keeps going back to it, and why not? I mean, you don't really see Vero blocking the teeps, you see her stepping back instead. Oh, solid right hand there from Vero, but again, Yuli just eats it up. Low kick by Vero and then a left hand. You know, we've seen Angela Chang give Vero quite a hard time, yes. of course, because she's a good clincher, but Yuli Alves needs to be considered right up there I agree. with her as well. It's been absolutely phenomenal to watch her, and she's taking the fight to Vero right now with some elbows. Again, good elbow there by Yuli Alves. Another swinging right hand from Vero. Good knees there coming in from Yuli. I don't understand why the referee stepped in with that. Did she say it was too low? Perhaps so. Some blood up the thigh of Yuli. I'm pretty sure that's just streaming from her nose. End of the third final round! And, oh. and that team came after the bell just to end from her nose. What a third round there for Yuli Alves. You know, she's gonna be hope, she's gonna be wishing that she fought just like that in the first and second round. I agree. To be honest, I honestly think that Vero did win the first and second rounds, if I'm being honest, but I think Yuli took the third. And to take a round from Vero is almost a victory in itself. I think and I'm not just saying yeah. that as someone who sees Vero and you know commentates her on her all the time as part of you know ta team tie fight or whatever. Vero is that far ahead in, in, in 50, at 53 kgs that to come here and take a round away from her, like I said, is an impressive thing to do. Let's, let's be honest, Yuli Alves is going to want a rematch. Without a shadow of a doubt, she's going to take this as a learning lesson and she, she's going to want to come back. And you know, 
as we know how, how determined Vero is and how competitive, I won't be surprised if she wants that rematch as well. Oh, for sure. I mean, let's, let's be honest with ourselves. When we saw the match card, when we saw that Yuli Alvarez taking on Vero, we thought there was no chance. But in that third round, you know, and throughout the whole fight, in fact, she showed her toughness and she showed that she can make Vero go get into a lot of trouble. Yeah, really impressive. Fight here at Thai Fight. Stay with us. Here comes the official decision. ผู้ชนะได้แก่เวโรวอร์ดิเจเลโมโกรเมโลโอ้โหยังไงนะดีด้วยครับผู้ชนะแล้วก็เป็นกําลังใจให้กับผู้ที่พ่ายไปแต่
Interesting round. Now let's take a look at some of the replay from that first round. I mean, in the beginning of the fight, it seemed like it was all Kevin Bosa, but eventually he got caught quite a few times. And especially that one, the big left hand, which stunned him. And Sayok just went to work right after that. Yeah, you can see the eyes rattling around in his head after that explosive left hand. That's a great shot of it right there. I mean, who knows? It could have been Bosa's round, you know, if, uh, if that knockdown didn't come. But let's not... I would say it was, definitely. Yeah. 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 Let's not forget one thing. One very crucial, important detail is that in Thai fight, if you get knocked down, that only counts for just one point. So it's a 10-9 round for Sayok in that round. Oh, straight away, Bosa goes in. Unbelievable hands there from Bosa. He knows that he's down on the scorecards. He's taking it to the legend. you got to give it to Bosa, show he's just tremendous heart. I mean, he wants to come back into this fight. He wants to do it in style with all those combinations. Oh, Sayok there in the clinch delivers another stunning left hook. Bosa holding on just a little bit there. Yeah, Sayok seems like he's in a lot of trouble in that 30. Nine years of age, I mean, I'm surprised that he's still standing from some of these blows. Good look, look, yeah. Good elbow there from Bosa as well. So active, he just doesn't stop. Relentless pressure. You know, this is exactly what Bosa needed to do after he got knocked down. You, you've got to imagine his coaches are very happy what they're seeing in the ring right now. There's that left hook from Sayot once again. Good knee there from Bosa. Right hand from Sayot. Nice body shot there from the legend, and then Bosa walks in to a left hand and a left knee. Down goes Bosa for the second time in the fight. Beautiful boxing there from Sayok. I mean, he ducked underneath the hook coming in from Bosa, and then just gave, and then just gave him that hand. He's looking into his corner. It looks okay. Looks like he's recovered once again. Good right hand there from Sayok, and again back to the body. Elbow attempt there from Bosa. Right hand from Sayok to the body, and again a stinging body shot. And then a left knee once again from Sayok, and down goes Bosa for the second time in the round. Now remember, if you go down three times in a round, the referee, by the rules of of Thai fight, will have to stop the fight. Bosa so, showing tremendous heart, but I don't think it keeps going on. There's no way the body is hurt. This is it, it. and down she moves on its own. The legend that is Saya Pun Papu Wai lives on here at Thai Fight. Oh, you've got to love Sayok's determination to stay into the match no matter how many shots he's taken. I think we surmised it pretty well when he was entering the ring. We were saying that the power still remains. Maybe the chin doesn't, not as strong as before, but my goodness, he still has sledgehammers for hands. Oh, definitely. And you know, before he used to rely so much on his elbows, but now his hands have become the dominant weapon. And especially with someone as tall as, as Kevin Bosa, it's going to be incredibly difficult to, to get as close to throw those elbows. And in stunning Sayok fashion as well, there was blood in the water. He saw that there was problems with the midsection of Bosa and he just went all in, all out attack to the body. And once you drop the body, the head follows. That is Sayok. Let's have a look at his handwork once more. Yeah, literally handwork. Look at that. He ducks, just like you said, Kevin. And then that left hand came in. And any time he could find body shots. Bang, right there. And Bosa felt that one. Yeah, you got to love it how Sayok changes the levels at each attack. He, if, he, if he can't connect to the head, he goes to the body. Something that I think Nongo could learn from. Oh, definitely. I mean, if Nongo is able to do the exact same thing that Sayok can do, I mean, with Nongo's age, his power, his speed, he could be such a phenomenal fighter. I mean, he already is. But he could be even better. I agree. Right now, Nongo is a great fighter, but he can be unstoppable, learning from what he's seen in, uh, from Sayok here tonight. And that's the thing, fighters get, they're so afraid of the power of the headshots from Sayok that they cover up, and then the body's exposed, and Sayok doesn't care. He's going to attack anything that he can see is open. He's a rabid dog once he gets done. In the Isan region of Thailand, had a total of 183 fights, 131 victories, 50 losses, and two draws. Makes me wonder if Sonkar's ever fought Kachuk before. 
I want to say no, but <laughs> anything could happen. <laughs> I tell you what, though, that's a good point. Elad has. Yes. Elad has, and he's well aware. You know, going the distance with Denglin is no easy feat. So he's definitely got something about him. Got to wonder what's going through the mind of uh, Son Kao right now. He's, you know, it, it must be a lot of pressure. You got, you're making your tie fight debut now, and you have a lot to prove. Nice snapping right hands there from Elad. Yes, indeed he does. And also, we always say this about the TIE Fighters, coming out of the stadiums, where it, there's a slow build-up over those five rounds, and coming into this lightning-fast TIE Fight setup, where you've got to, from the bell, go all out. And if you cannot do it, you've got to learn to do it, otherwise you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, because maybe, uh, I'm not sure, but I haven't seen Son Kao actually fight three round Muay Thai before. Maybe he has. I think he's fought a Super Chat before. Ah, okay. Yeah, 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 but I don't think he's adapted to it just yet. And today he's going to have to adapt very fast because Eli Suman is a very experienced fighter and he fights out of a very good gym, you know, one of the best in the good. world. Absolutely. And there you can see the QR code is just going off the screen now again. If you see it again, you can use that QR code to join the Thai Fight Fan Club. Where you can win all sorts of prizes if you do join. Nice elbow there from Song Kao. Oh, good right hand though. What a reply from Elaf Suman. We actually saw him backstage, didn't we? He looked very relaxed. He was headphones in, dancing, getting that footwork going. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, for those that don't know, sometimes there's a big party in the back, and uh, you gotta you gotta say Elaf <laughs> Suman was the life of the party. He really was. <laughs> and Yuli Alves. Yeah. Well, she was the life of the solo party in the ring. Absolutely. And coming to the ring. <laughs> right hand there from Song Kao. Right low kick from Ilaj Suman. Song Kao trying to stalk Suman. He's so tall, isn't he? Oh, nice right hand there again from Suman, looking very composed. Yeah, I mean, Suman has already fought the, probably one of the best at Kachuk, at Moi Kachuk. Yes, at, at like, the best, I like would say. <laughs> so, one yeah. of the most devastating finishes in the history of Muay Thai Kachuk. Exactly, and then now he's coming come to Son Kao. I mean, he probably doesn't believe Son Kao belongs in the same ring as him. Which is quite a statement. Yeah. But he's moving back quite a lot, and Song Kao oh, moving forward. Song Kao walks into that right hand. Suma doing well in this opening round. Yeah, it's the last place you want to be, clinching up with Song Kao, because Song Kao is a clinch at knee fighter. That's why you see him moving forward a lot, trying to get into the clinch, and he does just that. The outside kick from Suman, but a nice midsection kick there from the tie. Big right hand there from Son Kao as he yeah, takes Eli to the ropes. I think he was just able to deflect that off the arm. Again, good defensive work there from Sumo. Then walks into a right hand, I think. I, think. I believe that was an elbow, actually. Was it? What, what a counter. Oh, nice left elbow there from Son Kao. That was sneaky. Beautifully timed. End of round one. Have a look at the highlights of that opening round. Good overhand right there from Song Gao. Both fighters looking for elbows. Neither connecting. It was a close round. You know, there's definitely an argument that Suman took that one. He delivered some good knees, as we're seeing here in those highlights. Not just some good knees, he delivered some good hands as, as well. And um... another question you have to ask Did Song Gao do enough to take the round? hard round of score, but I, I I just got to give it to Ilad Su Suman. I thought he just did enough to win that one. And a oh. big right hand to start things off from Ilad Suman. And a right low kick as well. And then another right hand there from the man from Israel. Good solid knee there from Suman. He's taking it to Son Kao in the second round. Yeah, he definitely needs to. I mean, Son Kao, we said he's a clincher knee fighter. And Ilad Suman seems determined that he wants to fight the exact same way against Son Kao. Son Kao's got to be really careful here. Good knee to the midsection there by the tie. Looking for the elbow in the clinch. Really nice technique there from Song Kao in that clinch. And a nice left knee as well there from the Thai fighter. Yeah, I'm not sure the viewers at home saw, but during the break, Aaron, uh, Song Kao's corner told him that he needs to throw more elbows. So let's see if he does that. We've seen some already early on, but he, I think he's more determined to throw those knees. Once again, a beautiful flying knee coming in from Song Kao. There's that left elbow from Song Kao. Suman's got to be careful of them. Yeah, the way they started, it seems like it's Son Kao's round right now. People need down the middle, though, from Eli Suman. Eli Suman is still determined to, to face a clinch and knee fighter in the clinch, and I'm not sure why. Yeah, Suman's tying him up. 
but he's not scoring, he's not doing anything with it. Whereas Songao is connecting with elbows and knees like he was. Oh! He's got it right hand there! Songao on wobbly legs! Did he go down? The referee judged him not to be. No, I don't think he went to the ground. I don't, no. think, I don't think his hands touched the ground. I'm amazed with that. I mean, he, he was definitely out of for like maybe a half a second. What a swinging right hand attempt there from Suman. But blocked by Songao. Yeah, Zuman needs to do more of the same with that. Yeah, he's going to come with that right hand again. He has to do. He tried that just he now. Really is. But I think this time, Son Cow was aware that, you know, Eli Zuman has some heavy hands and he's going to have to start blocking, and he did just that. Looking for the uppercut that time. Very impressive what we've seen from Eli Zuman so far. He looks very determined. Big right hand coming in from Zuman. Once again, hoping to catch Son Cow with that. Yeah, I think Song has got it scouted, no, that's what, three or four times that he's thrown, but Suman can do something different now after this break. And not just throw that right hand again. I mean, I'm just surprised that Song managed to stay on his feet. His, his legs completely shut down. Yeah, props for him from that. But not even for half a second. I mean, he just got right back up and took some heavy shots from, from Elad once again. Oh, oh my another, goodness! Another right hand there connects to Song as he moved in. Time we've seen oh, it. His eyes closed. He's looking battered and bruised now, Kevin. You know, the doctor's got to take a look at that. I just can't see how this match can keep on going if Son Cow. Yeah, the, look, the referee's looking at it, but he's going to let it continue. Yeah, that eye is completely closed now. Wow, another fact. Back kick to the head. That's what a jolly kick bag hang is. All right, let's have it here. <laughs> Body shot there from Elad to start the round. It's a very impressive flying knee there from uh, Son Cao. We thought oh, he, he my was goodness, he we, connected with that right. We thought he was coming back into the fight, but then all of a sudden, you know, these hands coming in from Elad too, but there's nothing Son Cao could do about it except stay on his Ooh. feet, and he did that. Not sure how. Uh, that was almost a push, wasn't it? Let's have a look at it again from a different angle. A push, but either way, he was stunned. Without a shadow of a doubt. And there was the second one. Oh my, how did he manage to stay on his feet from that? I don't know. I mean, he was falling, but he was still upright. Oh. I mean, the cut shug is no joke, and uh, Son Cao is finding that out in this fight. So are we saying that Suman is now two rounds up? Yes. Unofficially, by the way, folks, we are not the judges. Oh, good shot of the eye. Also coming from the nose of Song Gao, he has been in an absolute war here tonight. And we've still got our remaining round to go. Oh, clubbing right hand once again, of course, coming in from Ilat Suman. You know, when it comes to a Moi Kao fighter or a clinch knee fighter, they always say that Moi Kao fighters need to take some to give some back. And uh, I got to say, Song Gao has taken a lot and hasn't given enough back. Right hand from Song Gao, good outside kick there from Suman. You gotta love Song Kao's determination to keep on moving forward. He has a lot of success with those knees. Yeah, those knees are doing well in this third round, to be honest. Suman doesn't really have an answer for them. He's taking deep breaths because of the knee strikes. He's looking for that right hand again. You know, it seemed like Song Kao started off this match uh, fighting a completely different style from what he's used to, but now, in this third and final round, he's gone back to what he's used to. He is a clincher knee fighter, and that's why he is moving forward right now. That's why he's trying to clinch up against Ilad Suman right now, and it seems to be working. But he's got to be careful because when he does move forward, we know that Suman, and he knows there's power in that right hand. So one false head movement. Suman, oh, another left hand there! I think the whole world knows that there's power, and just like that, Good head movement there from Suman. Yeah, the footwork, the movement is really working for him. Referee taking a close look there at Song Gao. The right hand from Suman. He's looking tired. Good strike to the body there from Song Gao. Suman taking deep breaths. We're gonna have a, is the doctor going to have a look at the eye? Yeah, he's got a. Yes. Yes, Suman, look. Hands on his head. He is exhausted. Order of Suman telling him that he needs to. What's the What's the doctor going to say here? He's got to check that eye. He really has. This is dangerous stuff with those card check. He says he's able to continue. How oh, in the world? Wow. Okay. I mean, the, the, the doctor here, Tai Pai, has seen it all. You know, he's a he, yes, one of the best true. in the game. And if he says that Son Kao can go on, he can go on. 
Let's see if Songhao can deliver some more clubbing blows to the body, because I believe that is his pathway to victory right now. We're close to the end of the third and final round. Good body shot there. Another good solid D, and again from Songhao, and again stepping in knee to Suman. Holding up those right oh, hands again. And again. The hands of Suman versus the kicks and the knees of Songhao. I just don't think Song Gao has done enough to earn the oh! fight. Oh, he's gone out of the ring right in front of our comment Thai commentators. And that was a little bit cheeky from Suman. Oh my goodness! Haven't, that's, that hasn't happened since we've seen Nong Ol fall out of the ring. Welcome to Thai Fight Song Gao. Well, either way, Song Gao can now not go to WrestleMania. We know that. <laughs> We are too. Did Suman do enough in rounds one and two to take that fight, or do you think Songao won any of those rounds? Because I believe he did win the third. Was there a case that he won either round in the first or the second? No, I don't think so. I think he let Suman took that fight. Twenty-two years of age has so much to be proud of. I mean, that performance was unbelievable. Son Kao was a fighter with much more experience than Elad. That is a fact. However, Elad Suban took it to Son Kao, and I think he will get his hand raised at the end of this fight. Still surprised that the referee said he could go on. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like that highlight of the doctor saying he can continue. Or the doctor, <laughs> yeah. Well, Son Kao's cheering. He thinks he's done enough. Elad Suman thinks he's done enough. How did you score it at home? Because me and Kevin think that he won rounds one and two. And Aaron thought that Eli went to, is going to WrestleMania now. <laughs> <laughs> After that one. Almost landing on tight fight Joe's head. And there you see Kun Sum Chit there, Olympic gold medalist. Popcorn and you know beer spraying all over our Thai commentary <laughs> team. I'm glad that wasn't next to us, Kevin. You know what You know what I really like? Whenever a fighter seems to fall, fall out of the ring. Commentators always on <laughs> the Thai commentators for some odd reason. มีก็เป็นอีกนักจ่ายกีฬาคนนี้สุดยอดจริงๆแต่แน่นอนครับว่าคณะกรรมการของเรานะฮะระดับประเทศระดับโลกนะครับเราก็ดูกันทุกเป
Uh, you know, Thomas Coventil has a lot to prove here in the Type 5 ring. As you said earlier, he's fought here twice and hasn't had a bit, hasn't had a victory yet. So maybe he'll get one here tonight, but Prong Tan Nang, he's, he's going to be a very difficult opponent. We can already see from the power of those kicks. Yeah, Thomas Carpenter is covering up right now. He's moving around the ring. Prong Tan Nang firing off at will. Carpenter hasn't, fought, hasn't thrown anything yet. Yeah, it's just still waiting for the right opening, and there it is. Right kick to the body there from the English fighter. With a right kick there from Prong Tan Nang, then moves in. Carpenter holding on, trying to smother Prong Tan Nang. You know, from what we see from Carpenter so far, the composure just isn't there yet. When Prong Tan Nang throws anything, he seems to not just cover up, you know, he, he's all over the place. The flying knee there from the Cambodian again. Carpenter trying to keep a hold of Sam Nang. Moving once. Oh, swinging left hand there. That's better from Carpenter. Yeah, much better. I mean, he needs to start attacking. He can't just keep on taking these shots or try to evade shots coming from Prong Sam Nang. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't exactly get off the ground there. <laughs> Spinning back low kick. But that's not going to win you 100,000 baht. True, but it might win you the fans. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Step left hand there from, from Sam Nang. And again. Trying to clinch up now, Carpenter. We've seen him in the clinch early on today, but he didn't throw anything, and that's it. The shot to the body, and he's fed on his gum shot, and that is it. That is it. Yeah, it's all over. It's a win for Prom Sam Nang, the man from Cambodia, making his Thai fight debut. Whoa. Carpenter rolling around the ring, wincing in pain. Very smooth. Very accurate from the Cambodian Prom Sam Nang. Very impressive debut for the 38 year old. And you got, I gotta say, I wanna see him back on Thai fight once again. I wonder if Feng Lun's watching. I wonder if that would be a potential matchup. Oh, definitely. I mean, Hopefully they can be somewhere in the middle, taking this fighting tonight at 76 kilos and from some down fighting for that at 78. Well, maybe they can meet in the middle. 77 sounds good to me. But yeah, very composed. Let the occasion over Rory, he was very controlled. Move of the night! <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen that one. Let's have a look at the knee. There it is, the left knee to the body. It could have been to the liver. Yeah. It just shut the body right down. Carpenter went down from Sam Nang. Delivers a fantastic debut here at Thai Fight. Congratulations to him. That's right, welcome from Sam Nang to Thai Fight. Don't forget, folks, two fights left here at Thai Fight. Don't go anywhere. PTT is next. The winners from Samna from Cambodia. ใช่ครับแล้วก็มาดูกันที่นี่เลยทีเดียวนะครับแล้วก็วันนี้ก็ถ่ายทอดนะอยู่ที่กัมพูชาด้วยนะครับสวัสดีเพื่อนๆนะ
Oliver got right back on his feet. And down once again. This time with the car. Oh, he's walking backwards. He's stumbling. Oh, he doesn't know where he is right now. I don't think he knows where he is. The referee's really got to check on... Oh. Oh, spinning back kick to the body. The right hand to the back of the head there for BTT. PTT right uppercut. Not letting Adriano oh, breathe. Oh, a stunning right hand. The referee's got to look at this one. Oh, there's no way. There's no way oh, this go on. right hand. That's three. That's three knockdowns. Isn't it? No, that's two knockdowns. Officially, you're right. And it's all over. The doctor jumps in. As expected, it'll be Adriano. Oh, goodness, Oliveira is in bad shape right now. He doesn't know where he is right now, my goodness. And the referee did the right thing, but holding the stop to the fight. And I need to learn how to count to three. <laughs> Two things are taken away from there. Absolutely. Short but sweet, just like his mooping. PTT does it again here at Tide Fight. Another super impressive performance from the man from Pattaya. Very impressive performance there from Pato Tomba, I mean, and it's just a Pato Tomba performance that we're used to seeing. Yeah, it really is. If he doesn't fight like that, it's not Pato Tomba, it's an imposter. He seriously has venom in those hands. And props to Venom Muay Thai Gym, who have turned a brawling Muay Thai fighter into a composed boxer. Power that he possessed naturally. Right hand just above the ear, the equilibrium buster. Right hand right on the jaw that time. Oliveira goes down. There you can see it's a combination strike. Uppercut right hand. It's bread and butter for that man for PTT. Yeah, that's what I love about PTT style. He never goes for single shots. He always puts a combination together and it always seems to work well. You can see there, he puts in the jab. Oh. Oliveira thinks he's blocking the jab, but instead he's only going to receive a right hand from PTT. And I think this was the, the final shot that did it. Yeah, he just composed himself there. One little step and then that right hand. You know, I believe he was told, you know, well, Adriano Oliveira, you know, you're going to watch out for that right hand. But easier said than done, as you saw just now. PTC is one of those fighters as well who doesn't mind moving in to take one. Doesn't care at all. He only paid the price for it once, but... Uh... Yes, just once. But he's so confident in his... Super impressive here at the tight fight. Boys and girls, let's get confirmation of the result. ดีๆคุณชนะนะครับแล้วก็เป็นกําลังใจให้กับผู้ที่ท้ายไปสลัดไล่แห่งมือชนจะมาลงทันเก๋ไล่กาดจริงๆนะฮะตอนนี้มี
Yeah, I think he could have called it after the second knockdown, to be fair. <laughs> but either way, he called it at the right time. Deng Dung is the winner by KO in the first round. And it took him, I'm not sure how many head kicks. Quite impressive, though. Corey Bell, and then he just... Okay. Which we're thankful for. It hit the glove, it hit his hand. Hit the Deng ropes, you mean? Deng Nung, yes. <laughs> Deng Nung is just so ridiculously powerful. And it's not like Belden was stunned. He actually was out, momentarily at least. And that just went over the, over the ropes. And the referee went through the ropes. And then he went back through the ropes. The doctor, the doctor, the doctor that's right. So, sorry. <laughs> I think we're confused as everybody else in the arena here. But I think this is the one that, that ended it. Yeah, jumping switch kick there from Deng Nung and the referee had said he'd seen enough, which we all agree with. I think referee caught something as well. And uh, Deng Nung does have a reputation for catching referees. He does. Yeah, referee, right call. Correct decision. And Belden. It's a tie fight we've just Deng experienced. Yeah. Let's get confirmation. Deng oh, Deng victory. There it is. We'll see you again on the next. From Buriram province in the northeastern part of Thailand. 18 years of age, 170 centimeters tall. He's had a total of 60 fights, 45 victories, 15 losses, and zero draws. First bout of eight scheduled bouts here tonight in Thai fight. And it's a tra traditional catch-up bout. I believe every single bout here tonight is catch-up. Superb. Who could ever complain about catch-up fights? No, it's fantastic. Kun Suk Lek, Sit Puya, Tep in the black corner, and Bastian Leonardo and Gulo Achi, otherwise known as the Tattooed Man, in the white corner, there he is, from Chile. Yeah, he's fought at a very high level, of course, super champ, and looked really good. So let's see what he could do against Kunsuklek here tonight. Nice low kick there, straight away from the Thai fighter. And, and these again. guys aren't waiting for anything at all. They want the action to start right now. Big right hand there from the Thai fighter in the black corner, Kunsuklek pushing Angulo to the corner. Oh, nice teep there. From Bastian, just pushing away Kunsuk's legs onslaught right now. You know, I think it's fair to say that whenever you team oh, a tie fighter... Oh, good left hand! Kunsuk's leg momentarily rocked. Just oh, stunned. Oh, solid right hand though. Reply from the tie. They are throwing rope right now, boys and girls. You know, I think Angulo made the big mistake by teeping Kunsuk's leg in the face, because a lot of tie fighters, they get really riled up if you teep them in the face, and that's exactly what we're seeing from Kunsuk's leg right now. Bastian not doing a bad job of covering up, you know. Absolutely Inside not. from the Chilean. Back into the clinch. This fight went longer than Kunsuk's legs debut here in Thai fight. <laughs> Low kick there from the Thai. I don't think Kunsuk legs going to like that because he doesn't get paid by the minute. <laughs> True. Inside kick attempt there by Bastian. Oh. Big swing and an s fist there from both fighters, for me and Gonis. Yeah, we can't forget about Kutzelik's age as well. Just 18 years of age no, and already fighting absolutely. at this level. He's doing very well, but Angulo at the same time, keeping his composure and not right there, he gets hit. Kutzelik like, having some success with that straight right hand, and there it is again. I believe Kutzelik is still in high school, so you can imagine he's, gonna, <laughs> he's, a, he's a popular kid in school. See him compete at such a stage like Thai fight. Good right hand there from yeah. Kunsuk Lek. It's that straight right hand, Kevin. Every single time he's throwing it. Nangulo seems to want to throw that left hook. Yeah, he's not connecting as well as he wants to, that's for sure. Moving back once again. Good covering up again there by Angulo. Oh, no. Say sneaky elbow. Oh, good left hook there. From Angulo, that clips Kunsuk Lek. Both fighters want to knock each other out early on. And oh, just what a shot. Losing his balance there, I believe. I think so. Yeah, no issue with that. Just getting up straight away. Good. Oh, one, one, right two. Oh, this 
swinging left hook that connects Angulo. Angulo hanging on and makes it to the end. A grand of that opening round in our very first bout here at Thai Fight. Both fighters looking to stand toe to toe and they threw everything at each other. You know what I mean? Both of them connected with really hard shots, but it's very hard to give that round um, to Angulo. I believe that Kunta Glick just hit harder and at the same time he kept his balance way better. So first round for me is going to be Kunta Glick. Yeah, I think as well you have to look at significant strikes and like you said, I think Kunta Glick... Round number two. Already starting really strongly. Good knee there from Kunsa Glick. Kunsa Glick again with the right hand, trying to connect it. Oh, he, and he walks he into gets a right down. hand. He walks straight into a right hand, a swinging beautifully timed. Right hand there from Bastion Angulo. Kunsa Glick is down, but is he out? The eyes look glazed over to me, Kevin. Oh, he doesn't know where he is. My goodness, I can't believe the referee's letting go on. It should be it. Down for a second time. Oh, it's way too slow to get out. He's got to give the count. I'm surprised the referee's letting it go. He's on Dream Street right now. And it's Bastion Angulo who takes the win by TKO in the second round. Kunsuk Lek with a nightmare. Bastion Angulo has stood it here on tie fight. Congratulations to him. Kunsuk Lek wanted to trade blows with Bastion Angulo and maybe that just wasn't a good idea for the young 18 year old. And that's what happens in Kajuk. Anything can and will happen with those rope hands. One swinging left or right hand, and it's all over. You can see the emotion on the tattooed man, Mr. Bastian Leonardo Angulo Ache. He's living a dream right now here at Thai Fight. Perhaps he will get the plane ticket to Italy. Really amazing. Well, let's have a look. Oh, it was a beautiful right hand. Oh, there you go, it was the left. The I left the to the jaw. Blocked. Yeah, I thought the referee blocked it. This is a better view. And then the left came in right there, right on the button. Perfectly executed, perfectly timed. You know, Bastian Agul, someone that you do not want to trade blows with, and he showed you exactly why that is the case. You know, the referee, he was being a bit lenient, wasn't he, with Kunsuk Lek? A bit too lenient. Him, yeah, letting him continue. I was but surprised. In the end, in I was the surprised end, he let it go on. Yeah, in the end, he did the right thing and he stopped the fight. Yeah, good so like did not know where he was. But wow. I'll tell you, who knows where he is right now? He's on the highest mountain right now. That, that's that's Bastian Angulo from Chile. Remember the name. Stay with us. Bout number two coming up here on Thai Fight. The winner is Bastian Angulo from Chile. ใช่ครับไปเป็นไรนะครับเพราะว่าเราเรียกว่าแพ้เนี่ยจะลงกลับไปฝึกมาใหม่ได้เพราะว่าทีไทยไฟเราให้โอกาสอยู่แล้วผ
with a spinning back kick. Hasn't been done yet. Spinning back kick to the head. To the head. Can't leave that one out. And already starting off strong, the oh. TIE fighter. Not sure how many more spins he needs to do until he gets his opponent. Having fun. Got tie kick there by Lacha Sai. Oh! oh. <laughs> Just when we thought we couldn't see any more spinning techniques, there it was. Rolling thunder attempt there. <laughs> Axe kick attempt by Sensu. Both these boys seem to be really enjoying themselves. Yeah, I mean, part of being in the ring is enjoying yourself as well, and it's fair to say that both men are doing exactly that. Yeah, both looking very relaxed right now. But there's still a job to be done. Oh, oh jumping downward elbow there, coming in from Sensu. Right smile by Lachesak. Lachesak trying Whoa. to go for a spinning back elbow or a spinning back fist. Or something spinning. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. More elbows coming in there from both fighters. My goodness, what is happening right now? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's a very unorthodox bout. It's a very, very entertaining bout. Some techniques I haven't seen for a long time. And going for a Sanchai kick. <laughs> what is happening right now? A catwheel kick in the very first round. I just want to see what Lachesai is going to do now. Oh, nice. And back to basics. Getting Sensuk off his feet. Well done there from Lachesak. Good body shot there from Sensuk. And again, and down goes Lachesak. Back to actual techniques. And that's all it takes. And, that's and it's it. all over. Winning what? in his tie fight debut. What a Sensuk. debut it was. Nakon Chokchai, absolutely amazing. I'm not sure what he did. He did so many different techniques. I've lost track. But to put all that in one round, including a Sensuk cartwheel kick, is absolutely phenomenal. Downward, jumping downward elbow, catwheel kick, axe kick, and then what was it that knocks his opponent out? It was, A straight right to the body. Exactly, back to <laughs> basics. The basics work. Indeed. There you can see. Oh, it even looked like he deflected off the elbow, but he was... No, I believe he was already hurt from yes. one early on. I remember seeing um, Lachasak in a lot of trouble when he was uh, hit in the midsection. Right, here we go. Look at these highlights. Some of the most interesting things you'll probably see in Muay Thai. Well, I think it was Sensuk who set the tone by... I think he threw a spinning back fist after about 10 seconds. And then after that, it was absolute chaos. It's not sure what he was trying there. It's a beautiful high kick. That's what it was, Aaron. And that's the one that seemed to... No, it was one earlier, excuse me. That hurt like a sack, but I mean, that's just a cherry on top. That finished the job. And I'm telling you, the catcher hurts. Gets a hold of the hand, pushes it up, and then throws that right. Nice technique from Sensuk, and congratulations to him here on his debut. Well, boys and girls, don't forget to like and subscribe. And ครับเพื่อฝากออฟดีอีกครับเพื่อฝากออฟดีนี่เขาเป็นผู้ชนะนะฮะแมชิมฝีมือฝีมือต้องฝีมือสิครับ <laughs> 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 ความมันน่าโหดสองเท่านั้นเองนะไทยไฟวันนี้ครับยินดีด้วยกับผู้ชนะนะครับแล้วก็เป็นกําลังใจกับผู้ที่พ่ายไปไม่เป็นไรเด
Yeah, it's a really good main event. It's a really, really, really good main event. Absolutely. It is. I mean, we both, when we both saw that fight, we got very excited for it. Yeah, and Elad, he looked tremendous yeah. in his previous bout. He did. And he says he's going to beat Kitty here tonight. He's just said and done, but he's confident. All right, here we go. Round number one. Sayok looking in great shape. Phenomenal. Haven't seen Sayok in this good a shape for many, many years. Good kick there from Walid Otmani. Has a seven centimeter high advantage over Sayok. You know what I keep telling a lot of people who is about to take on Sayok is that they have to be the first one starting, just as we saw turn Terra. Yes. Or, and Sayok's last opponent as well. And um, Otmani can't let Sayok be first, because that's exactly what he's going to do. Swinging right and then a left hand there coming in from Sayok. Nice body kicks though by Otmani. Oh, solid, ripping left body shot again there by the time. And you can tell right away that Otmani felt that one. Otmani looking composed. He's blocking a few of those shots. You can see there's already a mark to the left side of the body of, of Sayok after that initial kick thrown by Otmani. You know, every single time that Sayok attacks the body, Otmani always shows, you know, some, some sort of uncomfortability. Oh. And you're going to see Sayok continue to attack the body as the fight goes on. There from Otmani, then tries to sneak through an elbow. Oh, swing it left there from Sayok. Yeah, extremely lucky from Otmani to block that one. Sayok has taken so many opponents out with that. Good body kick once again from Sayok. Needs to be blocked by Otmani. What I really love about Sayok's style is that he loves to mix it up. He likes to go to the body and then go to the head and back to the body again. Tremendous. Swinging left hand falls over the right to the body. Mani just moving that head out of the way. Oh, almost got caught to the back of the head that time. That would be considered a knockout. It would, it would be a foul. True. I mean, if you turn your back to your opponent and you get hit, that's your fault, not your opponent's. Nice right hand to the body there by Mani. Oh, but a stinging left hand there by Sayok, acknowledged even by the Algerian. Oh, nice left elbow there from Mani. Probably the best shot that Armani has thrown all match so far. Really good round here from both fighters, it has to be said. Armani showing he's no slouch. Seems like the more Armani gets hit, the more confident he, he becomes. Well, he's no stranger, of course, to fighting Car Chuck. He's fought three times already. Right hand there from Armani, and then a left. Armani looking comfortable, trading blows to Sayo, and Sayo almost caught there. Yeah, gaining a lot of confidence as the round progressed. <laughs> Bella competitive opening round here. Sayok, he throw a few swinging left and right hands to the body and to the head. He's good at level changing. Yeah, it seems like it started off with Sayok not being completely do dominative, let's put it that way, and then Towards the end, it seemed like Otmani caught Sayok a few times. Yeah, he definitely grew into the fight. And you said it as well, he was taking shots. And he was taking them well, and that seemed to um, grow his confidence. Yeah, I remember two elbows. <laughs> Buckled the legs of Sayok a little bit. Perhaps he might go back to those elbows once again. I think there's something wrong with the... Uh, Karchuk. It's a Karchuk in the mouth guard, I'm not sure. As yeah, the cut looks like it. Oh, there we go. Just hooking it around that finger, and we're back into the action. Round number two. Slow start once again for both fighters, and a low kick from Sayo. There's that straight right hand, and then a left elbow coming in from Otmani. Oh, and then a question mark kick. Sayo caught once again by Otmani. Otmani came to win, even he was a last minute replacement. I would say last minute he knew about the fight three days ago, perhaps. <laughs> Huge kick once again from Sayok as Otmani tries to counter that. Nice left knee to the body there by Otmani. He's doing well so far in this second round with the elbow coming in there and acknowledged that time by Sayok. Yeah, he's caught Sayok with three or four big elbows now, Otmani. Oh, little left kick, then some right hands to the head there. Sets it right hook to the chin by Sayok. Again, Otmani's looking okay. Oh, oh. 
violent right hand attempted to cook by Sayo there. And again, that time for the clips on Marnie. Again, seems to take it. It seems to be okay. Ooh. Huge body kick there from really Marnie. And I'm sure you can hear that from Center Bangkok. <laughs> Another big kick there from Sayok. Going low now. Inside kick there from Otmani. Just oh, a body shot for days there. Otmani's trying to fight back with elbows out of this predicament. But the, la the last place you want to be against Sayok is in the corner. And that's where Otmani was, and that's why Sayok, and that's where Sayok could do work on you without a problem whatsoever. Another, another left elbow attempt there from Otmani. Good right hand from Sayok. Otmani on the ropes once again, somewhere he doesn't want to be. Money needs to do more of what he did in the beginning of this round, and that's to go forward, be first. Spinning back elbow there coming in from Armani. And I think that diesel engine truck of uh, Sayox has started. Another solid right hook huh? to the body, and again, Mentler, oh. then to the head. Armani could be in a big problem right now, back to Armani caught but managed to stay on his feet, and that's a showing of a fighter who's had really good training. Low kick there from Sayok, and again goes back to that buddy with his trademark right hook. Otmani looks like he's in a world of trouble right now. Stepping back a bit too much. Good kick there from Otmani, hitting the mark. Push kick from Otmani seems to be tiring after all those shots, cumulative shots to the body. Perhaps taking its toll now on the Algerian. He's taking a few deep breaths in this second round. Not sure if the viewers oh, can see it. Left hand there to the body. I'm not sure if the viewers can see it, but at home, I mean, there is some marks on the left side of Sayok. You can show that he's been damaged in the midsection, and Otmani may be going down now. There, more shots to the body, then an elbow by Sayok. Incredible round by the Thai fighter. Affluent display there by Sayok. He's throwing left and right. A lot of parts of Otmani has to be said, but the body specifically took a battering. Otmani again started the round well, but then Sayok just started to lay it on him. I think it was the opposite. I mean, in the in the first round we saw Otmani start to find yeah, his groove at the true. end of the round, but here he found his groove at the beginning of the second round, but and. Um, seem to fell apart as the fight progressed. He's actually managed to stay on his feet. Yeah, very took, impressive. Took a lot of heavy blows from Sayok. But as we've seen earlier here tonight already, anything can happen when the Kachuk is on. All right, here we go, third and final round. Tempted knee there by Otmani. We were saying in the second round, has he run out of steam? We're about to find out. Good hands here coming in from Otmani. Huge elbow there from Otmani. Springing up and down on his feet. He's looking good right now. Nice knee to the midsection. It looked like the knee troubled Sayok a little bit. Good kick there from Sayok to the midsection. Good burst of energy there from Otmani. And again, going back to the body. Good left hand from Sayok. It's just amazing to see how comfortable Otmani is to exchange blows with Sayok. Again, the corner of Otmani are telling him, screaming at him to go back in with the elbows. He's keeping busy though, it's very impressive. Yeah, those are two things that have worked for Otmani, the knee to the body and the elbow. Perhaps that's what he wants to put together, put some sort of combination, just like that. A good left kicks to the body there by Sayok. Oh, stunning left hand. Then a left knee as well by the veteran. Nice right hand there from Sayok. Once again, Otmani trying to come back with a combination of his own. Oh, fight is taking a lot of punishment in this fight. Beautiful kick from Omani. Sayok not able to return. Knee there from Sayok as Omani spins. Perhaps he saw the recent fight, just not the previous fight. So it's a spinning technique set. Took a page out of that one. Good Huge right, right hand. Scoring techniques from Omani. You know, both fighters have taken some pretty big shots. I'm oh! surprised they both managed to stay on their feet so far. Big elbow there from Sayok.
taking the back of what money and that's gonna score Sayok a lot of points. The last thing you want to do is turn your back on your opponent in a Muay Thai fight. One final flurry perhaps from Otmani, entering ent emptying the tank on Sayok. I think the tank's already empty. I think they're both on reserve right now. Mouth wide open. Coming to the end of this fight, and Otmani seems very happy with what he's done so far in this fight. Huge right hand there and a knee from Sayok Pupamuk. You can never sleep on Sayok, ever. Body shot there from Otmani, but another elbow to finish the round and finish the fight by Sayok Pupamuk. For the first time, we're going to give the judges something to do here tonight on Thai Fight. But what a great fight overall. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Sayok do the distance. Yeah, very true. And well, not Marnie, let's not forget, was a late replacement. Looks absolutely fantastic. You wouldn't have known that he was a late replacement. No, not at all. He must have been training for an upcoming fight. That's all I can think of, because he looked, like you said, amazing. He looked, looks in great shape and gave it everything he had in this fight. i got to say, out of all the fights that I've seen, well, you know, Manny, on in, in, th in Thai fight, I think this has got to be one of his better performances. Uh, oh, I agree, 100%. I don't even think it's close. Yeah. You, we remember not long ago he had his nose broken and managed to come yes. back and fight like this. It's absolutely incredible. Marnie was, he threw that left elbow a few times and caught Sayok. Yeah, the one that seemed to have hurt Sayok the most though was an uppercut elbow in the second round. Surprised he didn't go back to that, but easier said than done. Oh, nice. So it's a, a clinic of Muay Thai for both fighters. Level changes, all the techniques were being thrown. It's a really nice little fight, this one. Anyway, we'll get confirmation of the result. Stay with us, folks. Deng Nung is next here on Thai Fight. And don't forget to subscribe and like. You can only leave a comment as well if you subscribe, so don't forget that. ขอเดินในมือผมแล้วเขาจะห่อแล้วเมื่อกี้เขาใช้หูหายใจแล้วพี่ปุ๋ยก่อนประกาศแล้วโอเคเหลือมาแล้วประกาศแล้วเหลือ
Almost sends Amiri out of the ring. Sends his left body shot. Oh, good right hand there. But a good left kick there from Dignan. And another left kick from Dignan. Dignan trying to make quick work of Amiri. Amiri staying on his feet, oh, but he gets knocked down. Hand. Beautiful head movement, moves out of the way and delivers a stunning left hand there. The referee rules it a slip. He does? Oh. Yeah, he did. Huge oh, left foot there, and Amiri goodness. is down. Amiri is down. Can he get up from this? He is in agony. It's, he's, I think he's just thrown his gum shield away, so that is it. It is all over. The machine, the knockout machine that is Degnan does it once again here at Thai Fight. Where are we going to find a bonus for Degnan? Where? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a 10 kil kilogram weight advantage in future. Yeah. <laughs> It's almost impossible. I mean, every single person Tie Fight has put in front of Tengden, Tengden makes quick work of them. This could be a broken rib scenario. He looks like he's in absolute agony right now. Oh, you got to give it to uh, Amiri. He really tried. Let's take a look at some of the replay from oh. that fight. Back, well, in. there's that left again. The, the referee judged a slip. That's right, but that one there. There's the, the kick to the ribs. How many fighters has Tengden taken out with that kick? We, you know, it's almost impossible to fight him. If, if you're not concentrating on the head, you know, you got to concentrate on blocking your ribs at least. Everything that Tengden throws, he throws with bad intentions. And Amiri is up. Good to see. No stretcher needed. He is deceptively fast, Dengnum. He think really that's what is. People don't realize the speed at which he throws his strikes. My goodness. That kick to the ribs. I mean, who would want to be a pad holder for him, let alone an opponent? <laughs> True. Absolutely tremendous work from Tengnum once again. If you've got any idea who Tengnum should take on, please comment on the live stream. Absolutely. To take on Tengnum and give him a good match. Any thoughts? ดีครับผู้ชนะนะครับแล้วก็เป็นกําลังใจกับผู้ที่พ่ายไปด้วยนะครับในวันนี้นะแม้จะหนักขนาดไหนโอเคผมจะขึ้นมายอมรับมันค
Nongo, we know what's going to happen right now. Nongo is just going to go for the oh. head once again. And what a huge left hook there from Nongo. And that My ends the fight. Goodness. Stunning left hook there from Nongo. Right on the button. Another huge knockout victory from Nongo. Shohapayak, the tie. Brock Lesnar. Absolutely incredible once again from Nongo. Well, after his last display, we did. We said, didn't we, that maybe he needs to go back and just readjust some things. Maybe he doesn't, because what we saw tonight was textbook not oh. But what we saw just now is that he attacked the body, he attacked yeah. the legs, and then went for the head. That's exactly what he needed to do. He didn't do that in the last fight. I believe he went all three rounds. He did. Yeah. That's right, but not here, not tonight. He won by knockout in the very first round. Well, that's the right hand to with the initial knockdown right on the button. Crisp connection. Erzan went down, and to be honest, when he got back up, it didn't look all there. And Nongo with the exclamation mark with that beautiful time left hook. But what we saw there is that Nongo is dangerous with both hands. Yeah, good point. Knocked down his opponent with the right and knocked out his opponent with the left. Oh. That was the initial knockdown. Quick two steps just to get close. How do you stop this man? Solid chin, heart attacks, a complete fighter. And improving as well. Yes. That's the scariest part of all. Absolutely. Let's take a look at that. Knockout once again, that left hook. Oh. Nasty. Explosive by Nongo, stay with us. From Sam Nang, we'll be in action next here at Thai Fight. I'm pretty sure all the Cambodian fans are on standby right now. <laughs> Your boy is next. The winner is Nongo ชอฮาพยักรณ์ไทยเลยขอแสดงความยินดีด้วยนะฮะเดี๋ยวขอบคุณเองนะครับกับมาเจอกันอีกแน่นอนนะครับเพราะว่าเราจะมีการให้แก
But he has his work cut out for him, that's for sure. In the corners now. Naimov, nicknamed the Big Bear, and you can see why he loves bowling his opponents. Some stiff left jabs there. Oh, right kick. It's a left kick, I believe it was, and it caught, it caught the Russian. And then goes in with the left hand. So much energy coming in from Naimov early on. Kong Samnang now is cornering his opponent. Looking for an elbow strike. Big elbow there from the Cambodian fighter. He connects with two elbows. Windmilling once again, the Russian. Naimov connected with the left hand, but with not much power behind it. Has he already tired himself out, Aaron? Might have done, you know. Good left high knee there again from Prom Sam Nang. You can see why Naimov is nicknamed the Bear again. Looks very strong in the clinch. Oh, swinging right hand that clips Sam Nang. And caught in the clinch somewhere Naimov does not want to be. And we saw that early on. Doesn't look like he knows how to defend the clinch at all. Oh and my goodness. He gets taken down. Naimov is down. Referee is giving the count. Can Naimov continue? The corner of him, Naimov are telling him to get up. And that he does. Deep breaths. Needs to start Sam defending Nang. now. Kromsan is going to come in with so much power. Clinching Back. up. Here we go, exactly where he doesn't want to be. He's got to be careful. I don't think anything hit him. Don't think he got touched in that exchange. I think it could just be exhausted. It doesn't look like he wants to get up, to be honest. He could make the count if he gets up. And the referee counts to 10. Over. And that's a knockout victory in the first round for Prom Samnang, the man from Kabong Spur province in Cambodia. Crowd are going absolutely wild here in Patong Thani. Looks absolutely impressive, the young Cambodian, or not the young Cambodian, 38 <laughs> years of age. Yeah. But if he wants to make a name for himself, he needs to do exactly that. Not count anyone that gets put in his way in the very first round. Yeah, we almost saw the spinning back kick knock out. For the, first the time, yeah. for the first time, a tie fight would have been. But eventually, it was the clinch that won the battle for the Cambodian. I mean, you might be a really good kickboxer, but once that clinch comes in in the Muay Thai match, it's a completely different game. Yeah, absolutely, a different animal. Let's have a look at the highlights of that fight. There's the spinning back kick, and look, it unbalanced him. It definitely stunned from some man, that's for sure. It was a wobbly feet for just a split second, but then it was the clinch strike. Oh. Knee to the chin. Doesn't he does, get much better than that. If he does want to continue in the sport of Muay Thai, it's something he's going to have to try and rectify and learn how to clinch and how to defend the clinch. Oh, good elbows. Oh, and a solid left knee as well. Great work. Found the pathway to victory and completely exploited it. Naimov looked really good early on, but once Promptam Nang started to clinch, it was game over from there. Naimov. Looking like he collapsed from extreme exhaustion. I mean, he pulled everything out of the bag. I wonder if he got caught with an elbow to the back of his head. And that was just enough. The bear got put to sleep somehow. <laughs> Gotta say, it's just it's from exhaustion, or maybe he's. ครับพี่ด้วยนะครับกับผู้ชนะแล้วก็เป็นกําลังใจกับผู้ที่พ่ายไปโอ้แหมครับทุกคู่ของเราได้สูสีสูสีสูสีสูสีคู่ขี้ม
Let's see if that has any effect at all on the fight. And notice that there is plenty of fans from Uganda actually tuning in. So hello to Thai Fight fans in Uganda. Hope you're enjoying the show. Round one. BTT starting off like we know he would do. Pushing the pace forward, pushing the ward back. Nice jab there from Award. He trying to circle out. Huge hands coming in from PTT. Good trying to go for a knockout early on. Yeah, good head movement though from Award. And he just to keep his hands up there, but oh, get a counter. On. He is tough though. There's that right hand coming in once again. Well, you know, Award's main mission here as well is that he wants to make a name for himself in any sort of martial art, including Muay Thai. And if he manages to beat PTT, you can imagine how famous he can get from that. Another right hand coming in. Oh, nice right hand of his own there by Award. Oh, there's that head movement again. Just ducking and diving out of the way. The stinging shots of PTT, and then he delivers another right hand. And again, PTT unable to find the mark fully. Or did tell us before this that he was going to try his best not to play into, ga to, into PTT's game plan, but I think he's doing that right now. Good left kick there from PTT. PTT get, has a ward on the, on the rope. Ward manages to get out of the way for just a split oh, moment. Oh, nice uppercut there from PTT and a good right hand. Oh, beautiful elbow coming in there from a ward. And he catches PTT quite a few times. PTT not sure what he needs to do now. PTT with a beautiful right hand to the chin of Award. What a chin on the Uganda fighter. Incredible. Gets caught there, almost gets off balance oh, Award. Oh, another but again he takes it. Oh. oh my goodness. Stunning right hand there from PTT and down goes Award. He's taking, struggling to get back to his feet. I think he's just taking his yeah, time. Yeah, he's going to take the count. PTT is raring to go and finish the fight. As he always does, Award in the corner. Elbow attempt there by the Ugandan. Trying to fight out of oh. the corner. Oh, this time it's a left elbow, and Award goes down for the second time. Maybe he should have taken his time, but once again, he's got up really quickly, almost lost his balance. We could be close to the end of the round here. There's a chance the bell might be able to save him, but one more knockdown and it's all over. He's still trying to trade blows against PTT. Maybe not a good idea. Gets caught twice. In the corner more once again. Cuts, more right hands. And that's it. And it's that's all it. over. It's a win for PTT. Once again, in the very first round. PTT is unbelievable. But you've got to say, Award definitely, definitely proved just how tough he was here tonight. He took so many shots and gave so many shots back to PTT. At one point in the fight, we saw PTT may have been a little bit concerned. For yeah. once, we saw PTT's backs on the ropes. But the man figured out a way to get through and managed to stop his opponent in the very first round. But Thai fight rules do say three knockdowns and the fight is called off. Very true. Let's have a look at what occurred during this amazing fight, this one round fight. PTT constantly moving forward, able to find that uppercut shot through the guard of Award. Constantly pushing the African fighter back. But Award was trying to give as good as he get, and there was the first knockdown, that right hand. Oh, right on the button. I'm surprised he was able to get up from that. He made a, he made the mistake of not covering up when his leg was caught and paid the price for it heavily. There's more of the attack from PTT in the corner. That elbow caught him on the job, but I can't believe it that he managed to get up once again from that. And that was it. That was it. The final even, knockdown. even within getting beaten up, he was still trying to throw elbows. He was, he was trying to fight out of the corner, trying to fight out of a very, well, unhealthy position, let's put it that way. Oh, staring into the distance. What a camera angle that is, incredible. Oh. He even tried to fight out of that situation, but seems to have forgotten that PTT could attack from any angle. 
second knockdown, elbow strike. Oh. And the left and the right, the uppercuts. He's so fast, he's so strong. So and another first round knockout for PTT. Don't go The winner is... ตัวตัวรุจิรอบไฟแนนด์ครับผมนะครับผมกับครบการของนักกีฬานะครับเหมือนเดิมครับนี่คือความน่ารักนะครับของมวยไทยนะฮะขอดูแพ้รุชนะ
Good knees there coming in. I like the way that Eli ducks his head, getting under the uh, into the neck of Kitty. That's right, because he knows that Kitty has hard elbows. He's going to try to want to avoid them. Another big elbow coming in from Kitty, but avoided by Eli Suman. He's very good at blocking strikes, is Eli Suman. The way he uses his long arms, almost like an octopus. Oh, he's, he's doing incredibly well. Just missing with that kick, though. Oh, big, good elbow. Yeah, big elbow there from Kitty once again. Something that Eli wants to avoid, and he gets uppercut it. And a huge elbow coming in from Kitty once again. It's a real scrappy affair right now. Oh, you just don't know who's going to get the advantage. Back and forth action in our main event in the second round. One twos from Eli Suman. Pulling on to the clinch once again. Good knee there from Eli Suman. Go said, two very similar people. Fighters. Very confident young man. You know what? It seems like he, Kitty would want to avoid getting clinched up because that's where Eli Suman seems to have the advantage. Good knees, though, here by Kitty in that clinch. Good knee guard there from Eli Suman, but he gets caught with the right hand from Kitty. Corner of Kitty is screaming to come forward and keep doing what he's doing. Good knees in the clinch there by Kitty. But a good lock from Eli Suman. Eli Suman needs to return with some knees of his own now. Big elbow there from Kitty once again. And another oh! one! Right on the jaw. And how is Eli Suman still standing? Good elbow assist from Kitty, but Suman just tries to fight his back. Incredible from Eli Suman staying on his feet after taking such a huge elbow from Kitty. He takes another one. And now it looks like Kitty is in his zone. Fighting with all his will is Kitty to get close to Suman. Another big elbow there from Kitty. Two big elbows for Kitty, and it seems like Eli Suman is smiling it off. Trapped in the corner now, not sure what he needs to do. All right. Suman looking a little bit tired right now. Seems like he's in a lot of trouble right now as well. Not quite sure what he needs to do. Good solid knees to the body again there by Kitty. And the knee to the oh. back as well, and Kitty almost losing his balance. And that's the end of the second round. What a fight! What an incredible second round we just witnessed. The fighters are catching their breath, and so is me and Aaron. <laughs> Well, we said in the first round we thought that Suman took it, but in the second round we're both confident that Kitty did enough to win it in that round. It was all about Kitty pushing the pace and delivering beautiful elbow strikes and knees as well. Yeah, so if we stand corrected, we gave Eli Suman the very first round. The second round, gave it to Kitty. Let's see what the second round has to offer, and there's that big elbow just missing from... And uh, forgetting his mouth guard as well. Just adding some extra time, maybe. <laughs> a few more breaths. Well, something you don't want to forget when you're fighting someone like Gitti. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. Third and final round of the fight and of the event. Well, what a fight and speed. I think we're in, for, in store for them almost the same thing that we saw in the second round and the third. I did see the corner of Elad Suman tell him to push Kitty away. Don't allow him to get close. And then try and deliver some elbows. Quite amazed with that because Elad Suman had a lot of success in the clinch. So it's quite interesting that his corner wanted to play on the outside. Perhaps did the exact same thing that he did against Son Cow. Elad Suman complaining that one of the knees might have been a bit low. The referee waves it off. Huge knee from Kitty once again. And Suman attacking with a hook. Yeah, he doesn't seem comfortable about the uh, the protective guard situation right now. Huge oh! right elbow there from Kitty once again, and Suman could be in a lot of trouble. Oh, but he got caught with an elbow of his own. Huge elbows coming in from Kitty, and that did a lot of damage. You can see so Elad Suman, he is bleeding now. It may do a lot, a huge number in his breathing. That Eli, elbow caught him flush in the corner. Elad Suman seems to be in a world of trouble at the moment as Kitty goes to work on him in the corner or on the ropes. Knees and elbows coming in from Kitty. 
Good block there from Eli Stewart to avoid the elbows, but maybe he didn't avoid that one. Kitty with two straight knees unanswered by Eli Suman. Suman, for the first time we've seen, he's not fighting back. Those knees are coming in at will right now. If there's any time Suman needs to fight back, it is right now. He needs to try to gain the victory by any means necessary. More knees to the midsection coming in there by Kitty. Blood pouring from the nose of Suman. Kitty going to work on Suman. Kitty is Swinging in his right own. Hand. Another big elbow. Maybe one of the most, well, a dangerous thing you can do against Kitty is turn your back against him. Suman should not do that again. On the ropes, once again, Kitty going to work once again. Kitty's corner telling him to attack more. Suman still on the back foot. Oh, another elbow being snuck in there by Kitty. I think I've lost count of how many elbows Kitty has already thrown. And that's and the end of the fight. Of the third and final round. What an amazing scrap. It can only be described as here at Tide Fight. Two young warriors going at it. And there's a show of respect that we see almost all the time in Muay Thai. Always. 99.9% of the time. Absolutely. Suman is definitely going to feel the effects of the fight in the morning, let me tell you. Looks like he potentially could, could have a broken nose. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, I mean, that nose is bleeding. May have affected his breathing in the very third round. Eli Suman, one of the few fighters to take Kitty the distance, and perhaps he may have won the first round as well. Let's not forget, he took, he took Kitty the distance. He's got talent. Oh, there it is. Well found by the cameraman. That was that first elbow that we saw earlier that did the damage on the nose of Eli Suman. Yeah, and end of the third and final round, it felt like Suman was just hanging on. Oh, another elbow to that broken nose. I suspect broken nose. Oh yeah, very violent, very fast paced. Like I said, a little bit of a scrappy affair. A great fight overall, an amazing night of Muay Thai action here at Thai Fight. Again, if you're joining us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and like as we uh, we count the blood drops that are all over our desk that we just noticed now here, Kevin. Just realised it just now, actually. There's blood on our paper, blood on ourselves. Blood all over the table, in fact. What a war that was. All right, we'll get the official decision by our MCs at ringside. But boys and girls, we thank you for joining us here. ครับครับอยู่ให้กําลังใจนักกีฬากันก่อนนะครับโอ้ครับ <laughs> The winner is Kitty Soto Mario Martinez. Professional fight with eight victories, one loss, and zero draws. And his amateur record, he's had 20 fights, 19 victories, and one loss. And he is an Italian champion. Yeah, no pressure on him, you know. I, I, I gotta say, how, how much pressure is it, you know, when you are the local boy at Rome and all your friends, your family are here to cheer you on? Yeah, it's a nice tournament, this, because we've got obviously got the, the Italian fighter, but also a fighter from the Netherlands, Spain and Germany in the competition. As Kevin's already said, 
the boy from Spain, Mr. Marcos Cruz Ramon, will be fighting late tonight in the final. Let's see how these two will be getting to the final also. So, of course, just a reminder that it is a one night tournament, one night four man tournament. So, you gotta wonder what sort of strategy are these two gonna come up with? Are they gonna try to knock their opponent out early or are they gonna take it easy and hopefully let it all out in, 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 in the final? It's always the question, isn't it? Is that the way to go, Aaron? We'll see how it is. And oh, good stepping knees there. Yeah, perfect. And you just see how Valero just managed to take his opponent to the ground without any sort of hesitation, really. So maybe Matthew Dolman might want to stay away from the clinch. Yeah, obviously, he's got a good technique, uh, sorry, good kickboxing acumen. He's been a infusion world champion before. So be interested to see if he can adapt his style to more of a Muay Thai technique. We know that the Dutch are very good, of course, at kickboxing. Oh, yes. We had some fighters like Ramon Deckers who have come to Thailand and really solidified a name for Dutch kickboxing within the Muay Thai ring. And who knows, maybe... The first name it springs to mind, isn't it, when you think of Dutch and kickboxing? Yeah, it's it really always is. Decker. Oh, Dutch and Muay Thai. Yeah. So <laughs> let's put it that way. Yeah. Another takedown there from the Italian. Big deep breath there from Dalman. The stingy right hand coming in from Gianni. Oh, nice knees though. Oh. Tempted sweep there from the Italian and a nice sneaky left hand just under the guard there of Dalman. Yeah, you know, like what we saw Valeri do er earlier may not be the best of ideas because if you, go, you are going to take your opponent down in Muay Thai, you at least have to attack first and that he didn't do early on. So now he's going for a different sort of tactic. Well, fight is looking for right hands and another takedown there by the Italian. Not sure that one scored, Aaron. I don't think so either. Tempted left uppercut there from Dalman, but missed. Yeah, went a bit low there with the knee as well. Has to be careful with that. Referee watching very closely. Dalman doing a good job pushing forward. They're attempted sweep there from Dalman. Oh, and I think he just caught him with a low blow. Did he? Yeah, he did. I like that. Just stamp it out. <laughs> yeah, why not? Little stomp, won't hurt anybody. Oh! So he's down the middle once again from Matthew Dalman, and he's in control in the clinch. I thought for a second then he was going back low. The referee just taking care of the elbow guards. And I gotta tell you one thing, I, I, I'm sure Italians, they don't want the elbow guard as much as we don't want it. <laughs> and another takedown. Another takedown, but I believe that was a foul. You can't hook the back leg of your opponent when you're taking them down. So, you gotta say, Valerio Gioni has to be very careful with that. The knee strikes versus the takedowns right now. End of round one. Because you can see Matthew Dalman pushing the pace here in the second round. First round, Kevin, not an easy one to score. No, definitely not, but I thought Matthew Dalman just sort of... I think he had more control in the clinch, and I thought he was just in more control of the match. He put it out that way. I mean, we see Valerio just trying to go for some interesting sweeps, but most of them being fouls, or he didn't come up with an attack before he did the sweep, so I, I think Matthew Dalman might have taken the first round. I'd have to agree with you as well. Like you said, I think technically Dalman took that first round. But you don't know the way the judges see things sometimes. Yeah, you, you know what's really weird about the scoring on Muay Thai around the world, Aaron, is that for some odd reason that 
where people say, oh, that's how they score in Thailand. That's how they score in Europe. What, where did that come about? I have no idea. <laughs> Good point. You don't get that in any other combat sports as well. No, you really don't. Oh, Garmin looking to spin, perhaps. Inside kick there from the Dutchman. Push kick from Valerio. Oh, there's that spinning back elbow. Not sure it connected full. Going for the knees now, Dalman very good uh, control, but he, he does it once again. I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to score that because I don't believe you can do that. And, and you sort of need to attack first. I think the referee just gave him a warning there for doing that illegal takedown. Excessive takedownage. Good right hand though coming in from the Italian. Good left high kick as well. Beautiful push kick there from Valerio Giona and the fans are going to love that one. Let's not forget, he is in his hometown. There's a lot of pressure. He's doing quite a right. Going for the downward elbow and it connects very well for the Italian. Valerio going back to the legs. Oh, good right hand there from Valerio. Yeah, fantastic one-two from the Italian. He should do more of that. Needs to connect with some hard shots. The thing is, though, Dalman's clinch is quite good. So if you are going to hit, try and hit and move, you don't want to go back into the clinch because Dalman's been striking with his knees. Oh, good left knee, though. Just doesn't say that by Valerio. And the, the elbow on top of that, Aaron. I think he's hurt Dalman. Dalman's hurt right now. Oh, saved by the bell box yeah. and the round two. Okay, thank you for rejoining us. The third and the final. Final. Which of these fighters will be advancing and fighting later again tonight? Will it be the Italian Valerio Giona? Or will it be the Dutch fighter, Matthew Dalman? We're about to find out. Take a look at the highlights of that second round. Dalman again with the knees in the clinch. But later on in that round, it was Valerio Gioni who was starting to impose himself. And I'm, I'm going to put my neck on the line, and I think that he stole the round in the end. Yeah, I have to give it to Gioni as well. I mean, we just saw how he managed to take control of that round by hurting his opponent. And it's fair to say that Matthew Dalman reacted more to Valerio Gioni's shots more than da uh, Valerio reacting to Matthew Dalman's shots. Yeah, good point. So for sure, it's got to be Valerio in that round. Let's see who will take the third and final round. Well, on. Kevin and I's unofficial scorecard, it's one each, which means the winner of this round will be advancing to the final. A good start here from Giona, the Italian boy. Good right high kick goal there from Dalman, but another push kick, nicely done by the Italian. Yeah, it's back and forth at this point. It is. Yeah, no one wants to give the other one the advantage. On the ropes now, Valerio. Good left hand coming in there from Dalman, as the Giona was trying to get off the ropes. Back to the center of the ring they go. Left high kick there from the Italian, and a nice left hand. That was smooth. Dalman being aggressive, though, pushing the Italian back. And look at that spinning back elbow. My goodness, out of nowhere. And down goes Giona. Just when we thought Valerio had the advantage, he eats that spinning back elbow and there's no way he's going to get up from that and that's a win for Matthew Dalman by KO in the very third round. My goodness, how amazing was that, Aaron? It was unbelievable that we were talking we, before the fight even started about how these elbow pads... The winner is Matthew Zaba Zaba. Vice President contra per capo 53 secondi della. Congratulations to Matthew Zaba in a very impressive victory in the third round by way of spinning back elbow. Absolutely amazing. Also. Uh, super champ, tournament champion. So a huge degree for Vietnam Mopuana, but uh, it wasn't an easy road for him, was it Aaron, to come here? No, not at all. Initially he lost to Khun Suk Lek or Quan Mung by knockout in the first round, so it was supposed to be Khun Suk Lek coming to Italy. That's right. But then Khun Suk Lek went to take on 
a Chilean fighter. Um, the name escapes me for now. Bastian Angulo. Oh, wow. Bastian Angulo winning by knockout in the second round against Kunsuk Lek Okwan Mung. So that is exactly why we have Petnam Nga Mopuna fighting in Italy here tonight. Yeah, and I remember in that fight, started very well, but then he got caught. I believe it was his right hand. Yeah, could have been. So he's got another opportunity, and what an opportunity as well to come all the way to Italy to fight. I don't think Pet Nam Nam has ever fought in Europe before, so he is making his European debut here tonight, and he's doing a very good job early on against the Italian, Giordano Stella. Only 10 professional fights to his name, Stella. However, amateur record of 25. Fights with 24 victories is very good. Good, solid right hand there. Pet Nam Nam sort of pushes you off and tells him to move forward, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not because he got clipped and he was even wobbled momentarily. Yeah, you can see how proud he was when he connected with that right hand, but once the left kick of, of Pet Nam Nam connected to Stella, Wow, he almost lost his footing. Yeah, and also noted that there's no elbow guards on this time. Perfect. Another good left kick there from Pet Nam Nam. Pet Nam Nam moving oh. forward and connecting with an elbow to his Italian opponent. Yeah, just the warning shot there by the Thai. And you see there covering the mouth of his opponent just to make it more irritating in the clinch for the Italian. Well done there for Pet Nam Nam. Pet Nam Nam still trying to push forward. He has his opponent on the ropes and a good kick from Pet Nam Nam. Pet Nam Nam doesn't look like he's in much trouble. It, yeah, he also has his hands down as well. No guard, no, no respect to be honest being shown here by the Thai fighter, which is, look, it's a good idea after that right hand caught him already. Kick is caught once again and a big left kick from Pet Nam Nam. Pet Nam Nam being told off by the referee for what? I have no idea. <laughs> big over there from the Italian connecting with Pet Nam Nam. Pet Nam Nam keeping a poker face. Doesn't seem to have affected him too much. And that's why you keep your guard up, folks. The solid knee to the body there by the Thai. Pet Nam Nam looking like he's in very good control in the clinch. We're on the ropes. Referee choosing not to separate them, letting it go, but he does separate them now. Yeah, Pet Nam Nam looking like he's enjoying himself here. Like Kevin said, making his European debut, or should I say, outside of Thailand debut. But sometimes you don't know if they have gone to neighboring countries. I'm not sure myself. Oh, solid right elbow, and down goes the Italian! Just inside the clinch! And that is it! It's a KO victory in the first round for Pet Nam Nam Mopuana. A very good European debut for the former Roger the Nun champion. Absolutely amazing. Well, he was showing aggression all throughout that opening round. Oh, he's a talent opponent with his hands down. Let's have a look off that elbow. Bang! There it was. Looked like Stella was trying to get inside the clinch. You know what they say, Aaron? Blink and you'll miss it. And unfortunately, I blinked. <laughs> Oh, well, you get another chance, another opportunity to see it here. Bang! Just release the arms, or should I say the right arm from the guard. We'll be taking on Esta Viola. Let's get confirmation of the results from our MCs in the ring. Oh yeah, you can see the cut under the left eye. Alla prima ripresa, un grande applauso va a questi due grandi fighters che hanno onorato il ring della Thai Fight Roma. The winner goes to Pet Nam Nam from Thailand in the black corner! Congratulations to Pet Nam Nam. Coming up next, don't forget, it's Vero Varujarabong taking on Esther Viola. That is going to be a very exciting matchup. We've got.
one of the legends, it has to be said, now of the uh, of the Muay Thai world, taking on her Italian counterpart. And since she arrived at Thai Fight Vero, has been cooking up a storm here. He's been punishing her opponents all over the ring, throwing knockouts left and right. Let's see if Esther. Yeah. You know, I've, always, I've, I've talked to Vero before and she says she does not like fighting in gloves and it's been a while since she's done so, I mean, in boxing gloves. That's unbelievable. So we'll that she stated that. That's right. So we'll see how she goes here. Good jab there from Vero. Vero, the more calmer fighter has to be said. Good left hand again from the fighter from Myanmar. The Vero almost sounds Italian, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> now, now that you mention it, good kicks there from Vero and good for Esther Viola to stay on her feet, but now pushing forward with some combinations. Yeah, Viola starting off with those right kicks. Trying to go down low and take away the base of Vero. Fair to say that Esther Viola did not like those knees to her body whatsoever, and you can imagine Vero might start attacking the body soon. She likes to do so much. Hey, Viola is looking very energetic right now. Bouncing all over that ring. Well, you notice from fighters who are very energetic like this in the very first round, in the first seconds of the first round, they, they, they fade away later on. Staying busy, good overhand right there connects to Vero. Oh, another right hand. Vero caught a few times already, but those kicks are causing problems for Esther Viola. Vero starting to up the tempo now. He's doing a lot of chasing though. She's doing a good job though, Esther Viola. I mean, she's circling around and staying away from Vero's strong side. Oh, good left hook there by Vero. Yeah, just as I said, she was circling away from Vero's strong side. She walks into Vero's left hook. Vero also goes in with an elbow strike. Good knee there by Vero. Yeah, Esther Viola circling the ring. Yes, He's going to have to. You can't stay still against an opponent like Vero. Good body shot there from Vero, and Esther might be going down, but no. He weathers the storm. Viola undefeated. Oh, good right high kick there, and again! Two high kicks in a row. It seems like Esther is dizzy. No, she's oh. keep her composure, but it's an elbow. One of the matches has been so far. I mean, you don't want to block high kicks like that. You, you, you want to put an extra paddy. You want to put two hands in front of that kick. Vero again looking to go in with an elbow strike. You've already seen two knockouts via elbow strikes here today. Push kick there. Viola back on her feet, bouncing around that ring. Esther Viola. Gotta be careful, she could walk into another right high kick. La Wong. La Wong has a gamba destra that is a lama d'acciaio. She has slowed down drastically though. Continue to take a sign. Sono colpi che anche se bloccati parzialmente dai guantoni fanno male. Yeah, more elbow strikes coming in here from Vero within the clinch. Yeah, good elbow strikes from Vero. Straight right hand. End of round one. fought with gloves on. How do you think she did there in the very first round? Well, Esther Viola basically took the ring and was bouncing around and at the beginning of the opening round, she actually caught Vero with a couple of strikes, even acknowledged by Vero, but then it was all Vero from there on out. She was catching with right high kicks and she even caught with a couple of elbows as well, one within the clinch. Vero pretty much takes the round for me. I can't really see any other way. No, I can't see any other way. to take it to her opponent right away, so it's interesting how she, she wasn't as fast as she usually is yeah. in, in, in the very first round. I agree. So let's see how the second round maybe, be. I mean, maybe she's never encountered a fight in, you know, dancing around the ring like Viola has to, maybe that put her off. Good left kick to the body there by Vero. I think Viola, she's actually, she's eating a couple of... Very big shot. Move forward, so she's moving forward again. Good knee strike there from Vero, and another right high kick. 
Absolutely beautiful. And now Viola once again on the back foot. Now on the rope, somewhere she doesn't want to be against Vero. Yeah. Vero looking very strong when they both get together. Gacha does look a little bit more imposing as well, 53 kilograms. Tell that Vero looks the bigger of the two. Viola trying to get those feet working again. Lo sta facendo perfettamente buona questa Viola seems to really like that right low kick. Yeah, she does, but keeping up a high guard as well. Good idea against someone like Vero. Got to say, those low kicks, as you mentioned earlier, doesn't seem to have any effect oh. on Vero so far. Good right hand there from Vero. And I'm pretty sure Viola felt that right hand, as you said. Good combination from Vero going for the punches and the elbow. Another attempt to left elbow there by the famous Vero from Myanmar. Fighting out of Tiger Muay Thai gym, of course, anche down in Phuket, Thailand. Una in palio what we like to call Vero, of course, is the queen of Kat Chuk, or the queen of left weight. And I'm pretty sure she's missing the ropes right now, Aaron. Hands are feeling too soft and warm right now. That's right. Or maybe you want to keep your hands warm in, in, in it. Right? I'm not sure. At this time, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure either. Vero stalking Viola, trying to push her back into a corner. Now, Viola made a horrible mistake early on. I mean, you can't second guess your next strike. You, if you want to go for that strike, you go for it. You can't go in half heartedly, especially against an opponent like Vero, who now has her on the ropes and manages to circle out. Well done there from the Italian. Good the hands there from Viola. Just a one-two combination. But again, she needs leather as Vero moves in. Well, she should be happy she's not eating, eating rope instead. It's true. You see the damage on the face of Viola. Oh, nice left hand there from Vero. Let's not forget, she is a bronze medalist in boxing in the SEA Games, Vero. So never underestimate what she can do with her punches, even with gloves on. Viola still trying to attack. Oh, she caught her there. Vero not back. Trying to go for a spinning back kick, but ended up being a spinning back team. Spinning back just attempted there by Vero and misses. Wow, end of round two. Got to say, once again, Aaron, it's very hard to give that round to Esther Viola. I mean, fair to say, she might have done a little bit better than the very first round, but she got caught quite a lot. Vero's hands and elbows. Yeah, the majority of the significant strikes, of course, are coming in by Vero. You said it as well during the round. You can see the markings, the evidence of the work that Vero has been doing throughout this fight. So, yeah, I would say Vero is two rounds up. But Kevin are not judges. Thankfully. <laughs> Maybe we should be. Nah, let's, let, let's take a look at the I enjoy this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Esther Viola has done a, done, done a bad job at all, considering she's only had five professional fights. To make it to the final round with Vero is a, is a win in itself, if I'm being honest. It's a tremendous feat, you know, when, yeah. what we always say in every single time. E ci siamo. Gridano credici dall'angolo. Round 3. Ricomincia il futuro del Cinque Pati. Esther Viola is circling around, circling. Well, not not even around. Left and right. Eh sì, deve muoversi, deve muoversi. Look at that right hand. Trying to go for the kick, but just missing with both. Still circling, still circling around away from the strong side of Vero, but now she's going into the strong side of Vero. Vero could perhaps throw a kick, but doesn't do so. A huge combination there from Vero, but countered by Viola. Yes, she got caught. Good right hand there from the Italian. Very light on her feet, Viola. And if you're in the corner of Viola, you might just throw the listen. Steal the round. It's possible that a judge gave her one, one the first round or the second. We'll see, Aaron. <laughs> the big knees coming in from Vera and a good knee guard from Viola. Showing good Muay Thai IQ, the Italian. We're going to the clinch again, but Vera just missing with the straight elbow, but she connects there, but the punches connecting from Viola as well. Yeah, good punches coming in from the Italian. 
He's playing good boxing acumen there. Prova di coraggio sensazionale, meritevole di ben più che gli applausi di Esther Vivo. Now back and forth from both fighters. Senza alcuna paura. Neither one wanting to give the other the advantage. I've been saying it between the rounds that Vero hasn't been as aggressive as we've seen in previous tight fights. And do you think the gloves play, play the big role? Sure. Or the jet lag, perhaps? <laughs> could be, or it could be the fact that Viola's been dancing around the ring and she's not used to that. Yeah, sure, a lot of opponents, you know, when they take on Vero, they, they do move back quite a lot, but rarely has, has someone really circled around Vero. That's right, good knees to the midsection there from Vero, and she also throws in an elbow for good measure. You gotta love those straight elbows from Vero. Some punches connecting for Viola, but not going to have too much of an effect on Vero. Vero with a left kick. Vero getting hooked, but doesn't seem to have too much of an effect. I think we might go to a decision, Aaron. I know, it looks like we are. Did not see this one coming, if I'm honest. Not at all. And now Vero in the corner. Viola was, had some good combinations there, but got caught up in the clinch. And ate two knees from Vero. And again, Viola being the aggressive. Still moving away from Vero's strong side, but gets hooked. And Vero managing to throw a lethal kick to the body. Good footwork from the Italian. Last 10 seconds of this match. Vero with a combination. Viola takes it well and a nice low kick to end the third round. Good fight overall. More competitive than we thought it would be. Absolutely, the most competitive fight we've seen so far perhaps. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But who do you think it's going to go to? Vero follow Zero One from Myanmar, part of the Thai Thai team. Are we going to see an upset? Will it go to Esther Viola? You asking me? Uh, I definitely gave it to Vero. <laughs> definitely gave it to Vero. Vero's corner. I was meant to compete, but very happy to very happy to support the rest of the Thai fight team. Very exciting bout. Well done for both competitors, and we'll be back shortly after the Thailand taking on Italy once again. So we've got a beast from Thailand taking on a very, very experienced Italian fighter. I'm looking forward to this one. Age versus experience. The only experience. The big name is in Muay Thai. Been around for a long time as Martin Mioni. That's right, he fought in Thailand too. Yeah, and he's very durable, very durable. Of course, just a reminder, this is the second time we've been in Rome and the third time we've been in Italy. Of course, the other city being Turin or Torino. I love it when we get the chance to go to Italy, Aaron. <laughs> One day. One day we'll be there. Absolutely. And it's already Nong O who's on the offensive. Good leg kick there from Nong O. And we like to talk about fighters from Thai Fight who may have problems, you know, dealing with the gloves after fighting Kachuk for so long. But Nong O has fought with gloves, you know, for so many fights. I don't think it's going to be a problem for him at all. But will Mione be a problem for him? No, he can't with a few shots. A few strikes there as the tall Italian fighter. 
Yes, yeah, so he has, and let's not forget about the reach that Mioni has. Indeed. I mean, Nongo has fought much bigger opponents than four, but no one quite as tall as Monsi Mioni. Oh, swing and a miss there from Nongo. You've got to love Monsi Mioni's composure, and that's, that just comes from the experience. And good combinations there from Monsi Mioni as he has clinch control. Well, we've already seen one Nongo lose today. Are we about to see another? Let's see. Let's see. One thing that might be quite interesting, you know, I think Martin Vioni might have more experience than Nongo. Oh, oh, oh. Good left and right hands coming in here from Nongo. But a good counter strike coming in from Martin Vioni. I gotta say, I think Martin Vioni's shots were much more powerful than that of Nongo's. I have to agree with that. Nongo has to be really careful. Martin Vioni has seen it all. That's the thing, though, folks. Nongo to get close to Martin Mioni, sorry, for him to deliver punches, to deliver strikes. He has to get close. And Mioni's happy to set those traps. He's, count, he's been counter striking very well so far. Again, it's Mioni pushing back Nongo. Yeah, that's a rarity. Oh, we usually see Nongo being the one pushing forward, but now he's getting pushed back. Whatever Nongo's game plan is, he might have to just change it in the second or third round. Big left hand there from Nongo. Attempts his right from him as well. Oh, good right hand left hand coming in here from Mioni. Nongo is in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. He's trying to hold on to the ropes just to try to save himself. Eating a knee straight down the middle. Monte Mioni is doing a fantastic job. He even takes down Nongo as well for good measure. A wonderful start here by the Italian. There's no doubt that Monte Mioni is winning this round, Aaron, without a shadow of a doubt. Nongo in a lot of trouble. He really needs to change up his game plan, try to do something different. Whatever he's doing now is not working. Usually for Nongo, it's all about brute force. But like you said earlier, with the height advantage and the length that he has, lots of problems going into the second round here for Nongo. He's going to have to adjust. We are not judges. No, I, and I think anyone can see that. I say, have a look at these highlights. You can see the evidence is there. The only wonderful start is around one. Don't go. He was doing his best to try and push forward, but every time he did. He only had an antidote for it. It usually came in the form of a, of a one-two strike, very simply put. As confident as Mioni, it's difficult. And as tall as him as well. Yes. Let's see how the second round goes. Slow start to the second round, something quite honestly I didn't expect. Perhaps Nongo just trying to find that big shot. Martin Mioni though going for a 1 2, just missing. Big right kick there from Nongo. Shohafayak as he's about to get cornered somewhere he doesn't want to be against Martin Mioni. Martin Mioni trying to take Nongo off his feet. Good balance there from Nongo, but at this moment he is losing out in the clinch. It's been very difficult for Nongo, you know, he's lost on the outside, he's lost on the inside as well so far. Martin Mioni doing a tremendous job there, throwing in the left elbow. Nongo, that caught him as well. That's right, Nongo having no choice but to hold on to his opponent. Problems here for Nongo. Nice jab there from Nongo. Moving back once again, perhaps something he does not want to do, trying to go for the left hand, but just missing Martimioni. Missing with the low kick again, and Martin Bioni going to make him pay. Nongo in a lot of trouble. Manages to connect with an elbow, though. Yeah. Troubling times here for Nongo and his team. Yeah, he can't keep going like this. Good left hand there from Nongo. Mioni has to also be careful as well, because he seems to be pushing forward a lot, and that could play into the hand of Nongo. He doesn't really need to do that. He's up on the scorecards. Well, in our estimation, yeah. anyone with eyes' his estimation will see that he's up. He doesn't need to be reckless. Yeah, it's very difficult to give it to Nongo. Just like we mentioned earlier, Marta Mioni has done a good job controlling the fight, controlling the distance. Nongo with a big right kick. 
But you know the rules in Muay Thai, if you kick and your opponent grabs, you still score with that. Oh, yeah. But it is deflating, though, getting taken off your feet, having to get up. Nice good left, left hand. Yeah. Oh, nice uppercut as well. And a good right hand there from Nongo. And again, Mayoni moving forward when he doesn't really need to. He's getting caught. Big right hands coming in from Nongo. And a left hand. Marty right. Mioni in a lot of trouble. Wow, it seems like he was holding on there, Marty Mioni. He definitely was. Could that be the decider for the round, Aaron? Much better that time from Nong O. He's going to have to do much more of that. right hand. But Martin Mioni fires back with strikes of his own. Incredible round of Muay Thai action here. In Thai Thai Ron and Martin Mioni comes back once again. Wow. An amazing second round. taking the second and he has to knock out Martin Mioni in the third round let's take a look at the highlights of that second round Mioni was pushing forward when he didn't really need to and we saw how Nongo was able to counter strike and find a home for that left and right hand initially Martin Mioni was doing well he even took down as you can see Nongo right there at the beginning of the of the second round and he was pushing forward he wasn't scoring as much So let's see how this third and final round goes. Could be one each right now as we move into the third. But we'll see. A reminder that Nong O is undefeated on Thai fight. Could this be his first defeat as both fighters exchange shots? Swinging left foot that misses there again by Nong O. Mioni was able to counter strike. Nong O, I don't think, has much choice. He needs to start moving forward and needs to start blocking those shots from Martin Mioni. He's not done a good job with that in this fight so far, Aaron. Not at all. We're used to seeing Nongo take shots. Oh, attempt to Superman push and get clipped there. And again by Mioni. Mioni up here in this third and final round already. Yeah, good job from the tall Italian. Very experienced and it shows in this fight. Big right kick there from Dong O. Next very well to Bartomioni. You see his corner of Nongo is telling him to move forward. And they're getting frustrated because usually Nong O, you don't need to tell him to move forward, he just yeah. does it automatically. But perhaps there's a bit of complacency before this fight. Good hands again from Mioni, pushing back Nongo. Nongo holding on to the ropes and attacking, you can't do that, that is a foul. He's no, given a warning there by the referee. Nongo moving back once again, something... Oh, left hook there! Was Mioni stunned? The corner of Nongo seemed to think he was! Another good left hand there for Nongo. But again, Leone able to grab hold of his tight counterpart and just save some time. Nongo needs to do a lot more of that. Put those hands together, try to set up those shots. No left hand there from Nongo, but again, Martin Leone, even though he does get clipped, he still throws punches. A good chin on him, chin on him as the Italian fighter. Yeah, he throws them very well. Good right hand there from Oh, oh the mouth guard! The mouth guard goes flying, and I could imagine that it might be at the very last row of, this, of the arena. Big right hand there from Dong O. Did that just win him the round? Right, could be. You know, in traditional rules in Muay Thai, if you lose your mouth guard, <laughs> that's it. You've, you've lost the fight, but of course, might be a very different story. Dong O again, Big right hands there from Nongo, Nongo takes the back, Nongo dominating, perhaps in this third round, and a huge left hand there from Nongo! Yeah, that left hand has been working all round. Yeah, he's managed to set up, oh, and again, and again. with that left jab, and it's working well! 
pushing Leone back and again with that left hand. Tense moments here for the Italian. Good elbow though by Leone. And that's the end of the third and final round. Wow. The only celebrating like he's getting up. It was a very interesting round, Aaron. You know, the first half of that third round, Massa Dioni, without a shadow of a doubt, was in control. But second half of that third round, it seemed like Nong O came back with some great offense of his own. Let's have a look at the highlights of the fight. He's got left hand, who's doing a lot of damage towards Leone, but he's still had the wherewithal to grab a hold of Nong O oh, and apply pressure, even throw elbows in the clinch. Just like that. You know, Nong O, oh, he's going to be kicking himself. And now, the winner! Is that a strange recent time in Thai fight? Going back to December where he lost and then he's been dropped a couple of times as well. So it's always interesting to see him now. Oh, he's got a point to prove, I feel. That's right, it's not the same Sayok we've seen, let's say, five or ten years ago. But very happy to see him still in the ring, still trying his best. Absolutely amazing. Okay, introducing first, Abdullah Diallo. His nickname is Taipan. 25 years of age from Senegal. 175 centimeters tall with a professional fight record of six fights with four wins and two losses. However, he does have an amateur career that was unbeaten. 10 fights with 10 victories. Now introducing his opponent, the legend, Sayok. Your name is Sakda Niamhom, 39 years of age, 173 centimeters tall from Pisanolok province. He's had a total of 335 fights, 283 victories, 50 losses and 2 draws. Sayok is a multiple time Rajadunan Stadium champion and he's a Lumpini champion as well. As well as a champion of Thailand and a WMO champion. The list could go on and on. Thai fight champion, Isuzu Cup super fight champion. I mean, he's done it all, he's seen it all. At the age of 39, still fighting. He's actually won his uh, WMO world title in Italy. That's right, he's the first WMO champion as well, am I right? World champion. I believe so. All right, here we go, first round. Sayok in the black corner and Abdullahi Diallo in the white. Interesting position of an Abdullah. Yeah, first time I've seen a budget like that. Just missing with the kick there. Senegalese fighter. Abdullahi. You know, I haven't seen too much of him. And don't think he's fought in time before. But he's had a huge support in Italy. We just, we just saw that from his entrance. Seems like they have a lot of faith in this boy. Good elbow there from Sayok, and that's the last place you want to be, right next to the elbow of Sayok. Sayok, in recent times, a very slow starter in the ring, and you can see that right now. Good block from Sayok. Yellow, though, quite the opposite. Started very fast, and good knee strike there coming in from the Senegalese fighter. One could say he might have to start faster than this. From the Sayok's uh, last few opponents, we've seen them really give it to him in the first round and connecting with a lot of shots. Oh, yeah. did the exact same thing, almost getting caught with the elbow. Still being very aggressive. Sayok moving forward now, getting punched to the midsection and to the face. Sayok may be in a lot of trouble already in the very first round. He just needs to do a much better job at defending. Abdullahi has a lot of power and a good right hook there from Sayok. Sayok. <laughs> 
So Ayok trying to move forward once again. Yalo just waiting for the shots and Lynch is up against Ayok. Receives an elbow for his troubles. Can't give an elbow as well. It's almost like a headlock position. <laughs> it did. Two big right kicks from Diallo. Diallo taking control of this bout. Sayok really needs to get the momentum going. Not sure how he manages to do it. Slow starts here, but in the second round, we usually see him come to life. But he needs to start doing it right now. Really does. Good body strikes there again by Diallo. And again, we end up in the clinch. Almost like a side head headlock or a bulldog position there from Diallo. Oh, that's a good kick again from Abdullahi. He got his foot caught in the ropes as he tried to do the Superman punch. And Sayok, one could possibly say he let him off the hook there. Last 10 seconds of this round. Big right hands coming in from Diallo. Diallo loses his footing. Good aggression here by Sayok. But again, good strikes coming in from Diallo just as the bell separates them two. Busy enough, and Diallo has connected with far better shots than Sayok ever did at that round. Take a look at that on the replay. Some good kicks coming in from Sayok, but as well, Diallo did throw some good kicks on Sayok and managed to, managed to catch him with some very good punches, just like that one. Yeah, he also caught him with some good strikes to the body as well. Staying very busy in that opening round. What Sayok really needs to do is really need to, needs to push the pace. Let's see if he can uh, perform better in the second round. And perhaps he was just uh, warming up in that first round, who knows? <laughs> Here we go, second round. Good low kick there from Sayok. Sayok, the big elbow on Diallo. Diallo takes it like a champ, my goodness. Is. Massive left elbow there from Sayok. You see him throw that countless times here at Tide Fight and take people out with it. Going to clinch again and notice Diallo's positioning. Not the best of positioning. Why? It's because you're exposing you know, your full body to your opponent's knee. Sayok taking those kicks instead of blocking them. Telling tell Diallo that it didn't hurt whatsoever. So the elbow coming in there from Sayok just trying to sneak it through the guard of Diallo. Diallo making this a wrestling match. It hasn't been in the best of positions in the clinch. Tries to turn his body. A high kick there from Sayok. Sayok trying to go for that body shot. We've seen it in recent times as well, Aaron. That he likes to punish the body and go for the head as he yeah. covers up down low. He's struggling to get close enough to Diallo to throw those types of shots though. That's testament to the ability of Diallo. Yeah, Diallo keeping Sayok at a very close range. And again, grabbing a hold of that head. Nice right hand there from Diallo. Outside kick as well there from the Senegalese fighter. And look at that. Gets a hold of him again. Good knee strikes there from Sayok. Knees straight down the middle from Sayok. And I think it's fair to say in that clinch exchange, that belonged to Sayok. Big body shot there from Sayok and Sayok. Knees straight down the middle. Diallo may be in a lot of trouble here. Sayok trying to pull down the neck of Diallo. Good elbow there in the clinch from Sayok again. And a left elbow coming in. Didn't catch it flush though. Just deflected off the arm of Diallo. Interesting game plan from Diallo. Rather clinch up with Sayok instead of exchange with him because he was doing very good with the punches in the first round. We said, didn't we, in the second round, Sayok has to come out and enforce his will on Diallo and he's doing exactly that. Performing much better here. And Diallo looks a little bit tired in the second round. I think that's from a, a clinching, mind you. Again, with the headlock. <laughs> the referee giving him a look there like, hey, come on now, no more headlocks. Because yeah, it doesn't score you any points, doesn't do anything Ooh. for you in the fight at all. Good attempted high kick there from Diallo. Just glanced off the shoulder though of Sayok. Ah, that's a position you don't want to be in. Diallo looking to his corner perhaps for some advice. And once again turning his back in the clinch. You don't want to do that in a Muay Thai fight. 
because you don't score any points for that whatsoever. One thing's for sure, your opponent can score if he needs you behind. And once again, that's the end of the second round. Coming up next. Third. Sayok, chi ha mai preso di, perdonatemi, di Diallo, chi ha mai preso un colpo nella parte bassa del gluteo? ร่วมส่งเสริมมวยไทยโดยเครื่องดื่มตราช้างไทยประกันชีวิต Well, a much better round there for Sayok from number one from Thailand. Started to impose himself on this fight. Alan to Abdullah Diallo from Senegal. Got to say though, Abdullah Diallo really. down by engaging the clinch but turning his back to Sayok. It's just something you should never do in a Muay Thai match, especially against someone like Sayok. He started off the round quite well though, but then just turning in the clinch let him down. I think we'll see some of that in the replay. Not sure, but some good kicks landing early on in the fight for Diallo. But he definitely got caught with more shots. Unofficially, it's uh, one each, so win the third round and win the fight. Let's see how this one goes, very excited to see. And Sayok pushing forward, going for the low kick. Diallo back to the hands again, worked for him so well in the first round. Sayok trying to take Diallo off his feet, but good balance there from Diallo. A regression being shown here by Sayok once again. Good elbow there, and a knee strike from Sayok. Two knee strikes in fact. We saw it once again, Diallo turning his back to Sayok. Sayok just pushing him away. He's on a nice right kick though, this Diallo. He really does, and he's connected with Sayok with that right kick so many times. On the rope, don't put up now, Diallo. He's also using that right kick to defend his position as well. Good tactic to employ. Sayok, he must be getting to the pocket, doesn't he? He just throw elbows and punches from there. And with that right kick, Diallo has been able to defend his position. And with that headlock, he can also defend his position as well. Wouldn't necessarily say so, Aaron. <laughs> Maybe Sayos is letting him off the hook there. Well, good hands coming in here from Diallo. And then a right hook. That is Not ruled a slip. Yet. I think that was a great decision as well. Yes, Body shot there from Sayok. More elbows coming in here from the side fighter. And indeed from the Senegalese fighter. Elbow strike after elbow strike. We can listen to an elbow war, are we? Who would have thought that we'd see someone exchange elbows with Sayok? Well done there from Abdullahi Diallo. Senegalese has, been, has looked great in this match. From what we expected, Darren. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another right hand there. Sayok 
The elbow coming in from Diallo once again. Diallo getting pushed back on the ropes. Look at Sayok do. The elbow comes in and Diallo clinches up against Sayok. Aaron has a tie this caught up to Diallo. Looking that way, but he's still firing off shots. He's still connecting with them as well. Sayok pushing him back, looking for those left, that left elbow. Diallo looking like he's breathing heavily and Sayok is staying on him. Yeah, that's what Sayok does. If he sees his opponent struggling in the ring, breathing heavily, he will try to take advantage of that. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. Big left kick there from Sayok and the elbow coming straight down the middle. Oh, caught up on the ropes once again. Final stages of this third and final round. Another elbow coming in there from Sayok and a knee strike. It's just that headlock again, which is really letting Diallo's offense down. Body strike there from Diallo. And he goes for it once again. Oh. It just goes to show, Aaron, why training in the clinch is so important. And very slow to yeah, get on his very feet. Very slowly. Left kick there. I think that got through as well to a tired Diallo. Has to be said for a lot of fights, you know, if you get up to your feet that slowly, the referee might just give a count. Aaron, I think Sayo did more than enough in that third round to take it. The second round as well, but reminded to the viewers at home, we are not judges. Oh, the yellow. Enough to win the fight. Let's have a look at the highlights of that third round. Yeah, it's right in the end. I haven't seen a strike like that before. <laughs> Sixth bout of the evening. Thailand against Italy. Gianluca Costa Cesari from Italy in the white corner. And Deng Nung Sitje Sai Rung in the black. It's fair to say that Deng Nung is also one of those fighters that, you know, he's a no-nonsense kind of fighter that goes forward and loves to unleash his power. But uh, had another fighter who really relied on power early on that didn't get the job done and that was Nong Oh Shahapayat. So let's see how Gianluca Costa Cesari will deal with Teng Nung's power. Teng Nung suggests Arunk has been on a knockout spree. A fighter that, you know, we've been struggling to find opponents for, quite honestly. Very true. Zari starting quickly, but oh, Deng Deng with a it's a delicious left high kick there, and then it follows it up with a left hand. Just the power of Oh, and an elbow coming from Teng Deng, but another left kick to the body that time, just under the uh, right arm. And early on, it's fair to say that Zari, he is struggling against the power of Deng Nung. Once again, that kick from Deng Nung. Cesari struggling once again and going for the high kick. Good guard there from Cesari or his head could have fallen off his shoulders. And how many people has he knocked out by using the high kick? Cesari could be another victim of that. The left hand over the top. Oh, the knee didn't catch him. Oh, good, he's back up. But he's being counted. We have to making it known to the judge that he can continue. Perhaps something he might not want to do. Holding on to the legs and going for a left hand. 
Cesari, very lucky to get out of the way of that. Left kick to the body, right hand coming in here from Deng Nguyen. Cesari just struggling with the power, having the knee up, not looking at his opponent, a very dangerous predicament to be in. Trying to take a fight to Deng Nguyen, but with power like that, what can you do? And he's decided to stay in the corner, a very bad idea for Cesari. Cesari in the corner, but manages to circle out. Good elbow coming in there as well. And well done to the Italian. Cesari. Fan from Lecce, push back once again. Deng Nguyen going forward. Nice kick to the body there by the tie. Not sure when was the last time Again. we saw Deng Nung go past the Again. first round. But it may finish in the first round because Deng Nung is in control. Very difficult come with a game plan when taking on someone like Deng Nung. And uh, whatever Cesari's game plan was, he's definitely on plan B right now. Good lock up in the clinch for Cesari. Neutralizing any strikes coming in from Deng Nung. He's doing his very best to try and make it to the second round. Not doing a bad job right now though, after the count. But takes a huge elbow from Deng Nung. <laughs> it might have to be said that Deng Nung might be getting tired because it's been a while since he's gone into a fight this, this long. Yeah, he's been very active as well in this first round, searching for that KO. Going for that high kick again, Deng Nung, trying to look for any way to take out Cesari. And that's the end of the first round. Good first round for Deng Nung. Let's take a look at some of the replay from that previous round. It is all Deng Nung. Deng Nung pushing forward and Deng Nung with the much more powerful strikes and even managing to knock his opponent down. There you see, it was the head kick or was it? Oh, it was the, it was the left hand in fact. Oof. And almost caught him. Almost caught him and that may have caused us disqualification but thank goodness it didn't catch that hard. But easy yeah. to say, Aaron. The it story was of the fight or the, or the sto story of the opening round was pretty much Deng Nung attacking Will. But if you get knocked down in any rounds, you just lose one point, yeah. not two points like in, you know, the majority of stadiums in, in Thailand. So Deng Nung up by one round. What can Cesari do in the second round? To change his predicament. He's pushing forward. Goes for a right kick. As Tengen goes for left. Nice low kick there by the Italian, but he gets caught with an elbow. Beautifully timed elbow there from Tengen and down goes Cesari. I don't think he's get, getting up. Well, he is getting up, but can he continue? That is the question. Is it caught him in the eye, perhaps? He wants to. Blood pouring down. Oh, the okay. fight does continue, but the towel. And that is a TKO victory in the second round for Deng Nung Sit Jae Sai Rung. But I think we're all waiting for the referee just to call it. There we go. And Deng Nung has done it. And once again, he stops his opponent. Something Deng Nung is used to doing, but fair to say, Aaron, he really had to work for it in this bout. Yeah, he did. I mean, that opening round, like you said, it was all Deng Nung looking for that knockout. And Cesari was able to survive. And in the second round, Cesari came out. It looked like he was coming to attack. He Low kick, as we can see here on the highlights. I think that's what ended the fight here for those that didn't see at home. A barrage of elbows to Cesari and Cesari just couldn't take much more. I want to say that initial elbow. Vince per capo tecnico a 53 secondi della seconda ripresa. 
แสดงความยินดีกับผู้ชนะนะครับรับเป็นกำลังใจกับผู้ที่มาไปด้วยนะครับไม่เป็นไรเพราะว่าแมตช์นี้เนี่ยทำกันเต็มที่มากมากโอ้เมื่อกี้เป็นจุดที่เรามองกันไม่เห็นนะวายมากเป็นศอกนะครับตรงนี้ตรงไปทำให้เกิดความเบิกต่อเนื่องนะยังไงก็ดูว่าต้องโตนี่เว้ย because coming up next is PTT for which we are going to take on Miguel Trindade from here at Thai Fight Been winning by a knockout in rounds one and two. And of course, just a reminder that in Thai Fight Italy, it's the promoters in Italy that have found the opponents for our Thai Fight team. So let's see what Miguel Trinidad is made of. PTC might just be the most experienced or the most, well, the best opponent he's ever faced. Let's see how it goes tonight, Aaron. Thai fight Rome taking place at Pala Sassaroni in Rome, in Italy. Competition is to promote tourism of both countries and to celebrate the 155th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the Kingdom of Thailand and Italy. Today's competition is certified by the Thai Fight International Boxing Association in collaboration with Round one, here we go. Good left high kick attempted there by Trinidad. Oh, what a left hand by the Portuguese fighter and down goes PTT. Wow, are we in for a shot here? I'm surprised they didn't count him there. I mean, he was down for a while. Yeah, yeah that's unbelievable. To be honest, that was definitely a knockdown. Almost like what we saw when he fought against Diego Benedetti. That almost happened once again. Oh, elbow attempt coming in here. Oh, PTT! PTT is down! That's it! That's it! Oh my goodness! It's a win for Miguel Trindade from Portugal! This is unbelievable! I can't believe what I'm witnessing right now! Miguel Trindade has shocked the world! He has knocked PTT out, putting his 27th win streak to an end! 10 fights, 10 victories with this win! What now? A superstar! Remember that win! Oh my goodness, I did not see that coming at all. Let's have a look at his handiwork. The elbow there. Oh, beautiful left hook. And down went PTT. No one expected that. Or maybe Miguel Trinidad. Absolutely amazing. Well, let's get confirmation of the results by our MC. And a spinning back elbow victory in the very third round. Yeah, what a way to start Thai fight Rome that was. The very first match that we saw, a spinning back elbow knockout. With elbow pads on too, mind you, and now no elbow pads. Interesting. It's a very interesting way of doing it, quite honestly. I guess it's a way to stop the cuts in the, the semi-final fights. And um, if you notice there, it looks like he's the teammate of Miguel Trinidad. Oh, Miguel Trinidad, absolutely amazing. I mean, I just can't get that knockout out of my head at the moment. One for the future, Aaron. Sure, PTT can't either. Good start here by Darman, pushing forward, going for leg kick. Okay, just oh, nice left hand and then a right good chin. It's that Dutch kick boxing style and 
let's not forget that this is part of the Road to Thai Fight project. So the winner of this tournament, we might be seeing in the big stage in Thailand. Wow. Spinning back fist, then a left kick coming in there from Ramon. Left hook, just sneaking through the guard there from Dalman, who's looking very strong in this opening round. And Dalman has quite an interesting technique, you know, on the outside, it's like... He's got that Dutch kickboxing style, but then on the inside, he can clinch. There you see right there, nice knee down the middle from the Dutchman. Knee over the back, and <laughs> you can see his, op his opponent there taking cues from Adulayi Diallo, turning his back at his opponent <laughs> in the clinch, something you should never do. Here comes Dahlman once again. Pushing forward, looking for that left hook. Next with the left high kick. Doing a very good job so far, Dalvin, pushing back his opponent. Oh, left hand sneaking through there by Ramon. I can't say Marcus Cruz looks... He doesn't look very confident in the ring right now. Good body shot there from Dalman. Dalman with two knees straight down the middle. Losing with confidence right now, the Dutch fighter. Will we see another spinning back elbow? That's what I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that uh, Ramon might be thinking about that as well. He certainly has that in his head. Speaking of spinning techniques, it's also worth mentioning. There we go! He just did it just now, the spinning back elbow. But I don't think it connects quite like how it did in the semi-final bout. It's also worth mentioning that Chang Beverage, one of our main sponsors, is happy to give away 100,000 baht to any fighter who is able to win by knockout with a spinning back kick to the head. We keep saying it, you know, Chang wants to give this prize away, but no one for some reason wants it. <laughs> Easier said than done. Exactly. Of course, I was just kidding around there. It's a very difficult maneuver to hit. And if someone could knock someone out like that, why not, why not give away the 100,000 baht? That high kick there from Darwin. Oh, good elbow there from the Dutch fighter, but Ramon takes it. He down the middle. Well done there from Dalman. Dalman in control on the outside and on the inside. He's missing with the low kick there. He just doesn't look confident, does he? Oh, left high kick. Oh, and the kick on the way down there. No, I don't ah, see. I think he was grounded. No, no, I don't think he was grounded at all. Bad call there from the referee. I don't think he was grounded at all. Well, end of round one. Difficult to give that round to Mar Marcos Cruz. Ramon. Yeah, very defensive. He was sitting back and prepared to Dalman. He was the one who was pushing forward and he connected with quite a lot of significant strikes. Yeah, pushing yeah. forward. His Muay Thai technique was on point. Look at that sweep. Beautifully executed from Matthew Dalman. And uh, not sure what that was about. Seems like, seems like Marcus Cruz was trying to wrestle him down. This is the point moment where, yeah, he wasn't down yet. He wasn't. Ramon was very happy with that. All right, here we go, round two. Let's see if Ramon could be more aggressive. He needs to be. Very much so. He needs to start pushing forward. He needs to put his combinations together. Should avoid the clinch, because as we saw in the first round, he didn't have much success in there. Good. Right kicks there from Matthew Dolman. Matthew Dolman now pushing towards his opponent. Good left hook from the Dutchman. Tempted elbow there coming in from Ramon. And just missing with that. You can see right away that the clinch is just, just where Ramon is not comfortable in. Should really try to avoid it and just try to put his strikes together. Good low kicks. Nice to see. Two low kicks in a row, but didn't seem to have much of an effect on Matthew Dolman. And you know, if you throw a strike and it doesn't have an effect on your opponent, why throw them at all, Aaron? Good body shots coming in here from Dolman. Kicks and punches. Turns his body again in the clinch, something you don't want to do. And that is exactly why training in the clinch is so important. Beautiful kick there from the Dutchman, changing his stance. The better Ramon is not moving backwards this time. He's the one who's putting the pressure on Dahlman. That's why he's trying to come forward, but not having too much success just yet in this round. On the ropes again, somewhere he doesn't want to be. Good knee down the middle from 
Dolman. Dolman. He's got his opponent on the ropes once again. Now cornered to the body. Good hands as well. He's losing his footing now. Ramon. The Spaniard getting pushed back. Perhaps fatigue setting in. To Ramon, remember both these fighters have already. Oh! Oh my goodness, a spinning back elbow or back fist. And the confidence. Again. No way. Ramon now on the ascendancy perhaps. Buoyed by that spinning back attack. Dalman smiling though. Yeah, both, be okay. both of them smiling at each other. That's something you don't see too often inside the clinch. <laughs> Maybe a wake up call that Dalman needed. Yeah, perhaps. Saying that, he was fighting relatively well. Yeah, perhaps just a little bit of complacency. It does happen when you know you're that confident, when you're sure you're going to win a fight. Cruz sembra sinceramente allo stremo delle forze. Dalman è comfortable. Yeah. Comfortable on the ropes this time. You can see the shots. They're just not as hard as they were in the first round, Aaron. Yeah, Dalman moving back a lot more than we've seen. But as you said, it is the fifth round for both of both fighters. They've already fought three. Good right hand there from the Spaniard as we end the second round. Interesting. Che sta sassiendo gli dice l'angolo. Cosa stai facendo? And uh, we just got to see that elbow that almost knocked down Matthew Dolman or seemed to have stunned him, Aaron. Yeah, it was pretty much the highlight of that second round. I mean, Dalman looked like he was in cruise control. Oh, it was a spinning back fist, in fact. Not, not an, an elbow, but very well connected there, nonetheless, for Ramon. Yeah, Dalman looked like he was in cruise control for all that round until that spinning back fist happened. I'm just thinking, will that nick him the round? I don't think so. Quite, 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 per, quite personally, I, 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 I don't think that was enough for Ramon to win that round. Of Unofficially, of course. Unofficially. Here we go, third and final round. Let's see what both fighters can pull out of the bag. Again, it's Ramon going on the back foot and Dalman putting his punches together very well. Into the clinch we go again, but once again, Ramon turning to the side whilst he's in the clinch. Very bad idea. And let's not forget, the winner of this fight will be declared the Thai fight. European champion who will take home that amazing Thai fight belt. That's right, it's a part of our road to Thai fight project. Oh, swingy right hand there from Dalman. Yeah, the smile by Ramon. The overhand there from Dalman didn't seem to concern Ramon too much. The nice left jab to the body there. So, so hook to the body. I want to say, putting his car together now, Ramon. Ah, Big left kick from Dalman. Dalman looking like he's in control once again in this fight. What can Marcos Cruz do? We come back. So Marcos Cruz Ramon, let's not forget, defeated a German counterpart here tonight and Dalman defeated an Italian. Very international tournament. I'm sure the spectators in Rome would have loved to see their hometown boy Valerio Giona in the final. Spain versus Germany, Italy versus Netherlands. Some good football matches as well. That. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dalman back. Oh, good right hand there and a beautifully timed left knee by Dalman. And down goes Ramon. Is he going to be able to get up? He is gingerly though. I'm going to wonder now, can Matthew Dalman finish this fight? He doesn't have to. No, he doesn't. You're right. He can stay back. Let He's trying to spin. Oh. But you can see Dalman just wants to finish it. To the left knee. I thought he was going to go more to the body, you know, finish him off. Could be dangerous when you, you're trying to look for that highlight reel. Just ask PCC. Dalman. 
Dolman just oozing with confidence, and why not? Oh! A very interesting maneuver there from the Spaniard. Caught Dolman off guard, certainly. Back into the clinch we go, and for some reason, Ramon keeps on turning his back to his opponent. Darwin attacks to go to the body, can't find it, more elbows raining, but again Darwin is able to find the head of Ramon. And for some odd reason it seems like Matthew Darwin is a more desperate fighter. <laughs> wants the knockout, exclamation mark, on that belt win, oh deep, deep to the face to end the bout, we will go to the judges for a decision. A good performance from that man, from the Netherlands, Matthew Dalman. Seems confident that he's got the victory here, and I understand, I think he's got the victory as well. Likewise, I believe he won all three of those, those, those rounds. But a good attempt from Marcos Cruz Roman, the Spaniard. Managed to put Ma Matthew Dalman in some... Take a look, a look at the highlights, highlights of that third and, and final Europa. round. Ah, the it's a knockdown, I believe. That was towards the end of the round, in fact. Yeah, right at the end. Oh, of course, we're going to have the belt ceremony next. No, it's at the end of the fight. <laughs> Very difficult to fault his performance in, in that final fight. He did well in the first, also in the second, even though he got caught by, was it a spinning back fist? Back fist in the second, but then he was able to drop his opponent in the third round. Yeah, he really wanted that knockout. Seemed desperate for it as well. Yeah, he's chasing him all over the ring. Zanchai is coming up next. The final Eight kilos. Definitely one of the toughest opponents Sanchai has had for a while, but also maybe one of the toughest opponents Alessio Balotesta has had. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Despite having competing with some of the biggest names in Muay Thai already. The difference is Sanchai has seen it all and done it all. Per vivere questo spettacolo. We've always said I'm ci sta regalando tanti one day, primi soltanto nell'attesa. One day Sanchai. Io non riesco a contenere l'emozione. Inizia a questo it momento. Could be a stumbling, stumbling box, box before he does eventually retire. Alessio turning 43 in July. Che so not long left. A studiare Sanchai. Sanchai just moving back. You see Matessa trying to control the center of the ring. Testa pushing forward. And here's the south floor. Typical atteggiamento di Sanchai. Sanchai con le sue finte. Switch it up a few times. Vintage Sanchai, so to speak. Probabilmente più a divertire che altro in questa situazione. Go for the sweep. Good balance there from the Italian. Che non tradisce alcun tipo di sentimento, nonostante davanti a lui, l'abbiamo già detto, ci sia. Probabilmente la persona che lo ha ispirato. In Brayon, Thailand. Most of the time. The Rome is his hometown, so definitely was able to fare well. Attendista non deve farsi intimidire da uno come Sanchai che prova a scoprire la reazione. Malatesta rock the speed, which is this though. And Malatesta springs right back up. L'angolo di Alessio gli intima di avanzare. You can feel the tension in the air, Aaron. You really can. You can see the size difference as well. Alatasta is much bigger than Sanchai. Good body shot there from Sanchai. Sanchai trying to pick his opponent apart. 
Gonna find out where are the weaknesses. I ritmi non sono altissimi, d'altronde siamo in mezzo ai ritmi. Definitely a much more focused Sanchai than we've seen in a while, Aaron. Senza dubbio, Luca, i ritmi sono contenuti da parte di Sanchai perché comunque stiamo parlando di due anni. Oh, he's got Sanchai keeping his balance very well. Mi duole ripetermi, ma davanti a lui c'è l'incarnazione dello sport che lui pratica. Got to give it to Malatesta, not showing any nerves against Sanchai whatsoever. Nice push kick there from Sanchai. It's nice the way that Malatesta moved out of the way of that teeth as well. Yeah, it was. So it came from a mile away. Oh, nice left hand from Sanchai. And when taking it on someone like Sanchai, you've certainly seen him a couple of times, so it's fair to say that Malatesta has done his homework, but no one's ever quite prepared for his style. Well, Sanchai grabbed the hold of Malatesta's leg there, and Malatesta was able to see it through. And he's set of punches. The crowd enjoyed that. Yeah, I enjoyed that very much, and so did we. And a beautiful, well-timed push kick there from Malatesta and Sanchai. Seems like he caught him off guard as well. Playing it off, but yeah. He was caught. One, two, combination there from Malatesta. Sanchai clinches up with his opponent on the ropes and gives his opponent a kiss. Don't think Malatesta enjoyed that too much, Aaron. Sanchai on the ropes once again. That's the end of the first round of our main event of the evening. Much more accurate and much more an effect on Malatesta. Malatesta, though, keeping his composure very well. A couple of left hands stuck through the guard of Malatesta in that round. But I think it was here where he grabbed his leg, yeah, and he just caught Sanchai with two or three strikes. Lifted the crowd, lifted the spirits of Malatesta. Really enough, it's Sanchai making one of the biggest mistakes you can do in Muay Thai. When you grab someone's leg, you've got to block. I don't think we'll see a knockout, but anything could happen. Really can. We're learning that more and more, aren't we, in this sport? Absolutely. Here we go, Malatesta pushing forward just like he did in the first round, but with more vet, with more desire to try to knock Sanchai out. Good tip there from Sanchai, keeping Malatesta at bay. Sanchai with a look of determination on his face, clinching up with Malatesta and throwing a nice solid knee to the side. Malatesta not getting in a good knee. Good clinch up there for Sanchai, PK Sanchai, Moisei Jim. Pretty evident, evident of it. Malatesta's cornermen have been telling him to be more aggressive and stand as close as you can to Sanchai, because he's not letting him breathe right now. Yeah, because he's not going to out-technique Sanchai. We said Sanchai has seen it all, but maybe the power, maybe in favor of Malatesta. <laughs> Sanchai trying to go for another kiss, and uh, once again, I don't think Malatesta was happy with that whatsoever. Pulling his cheek the other way immediately. Good kick there from Sanchai, straight down. The left side of the body of Malatesta. Malatesta trying to clinch up with Sanchai, but not throwing any knees, but Sanchai does. Sanchai just waiting for the right moment to attack, perhaps trying to counter Malatesta, but Malatesta counters Sanchai. A good low kick there by the Italian. Level change punches there by Sanchai. Oh, good aggressive left hand there from Malatesta. Big elbow from the Italian that catches Sanchai. Definitely hurt the legend as well. Another left hand there from Sanchai. Nice body strikes there from the Thai fighter. A good elbow from Sanchai. Beautiful combinations from Sanchai. Just picking off his opponent. Absolutely superb. Beautifully timed there from Sanchai. He's got a laser look in his face now. Fair to say that we're used to seeing him come much faster, Aaron. But nevertheless, Brilliant from Sanchai, good kick from Sanchai, which does score. No strikes coming in and scoring here from Malatesta. Good left hand there from Sanchai. It's like Malatesta is trying to knock Sanchai out, but Sanchai playing the point game. Beautiful knee down the middle and a knee guard from Sanchai. Malatesta with the left 
knee and he kisses Sanchai right back and uh, Sanchai takes a liking to it. Deep there from Sanchai. A good left kick. Yeah, good seat from Malatesta. That's kind of tension there from Sanchai. And again, and a left elbow coming in from Malatesta to end round number two. Round two, although me, Kevin, sorry, both Kevin and I think that he did enough to take the round, but it was close. Just now we saw some Vaseline getting, you know, very delicately placed on Sanchai's forehead. He could be caught, Aaron. Could be. Well, Malatesta threw a vicious left elbow that definitely caught Sanchai and had him worried momentarily. So I can only assume that it's from that. It's definitely a fight there. where Sanchai has to work very, very hard. Young Italian fighter. You can imagine he is going to take it to Sanchai in this round. Definitely. Round three. Sanchai once again on the back foot. Good kick there from Sanchai as Malatesta goes low. Sanchai going for the switch kicks again and connects with two beautifully three placed left and right kicks, in fact. Oh, Malatesta trying to go up high. Sanchai again going to the midsection. Aim for the clinch again, but holding on to the ropes. You don't score with knees if you hold on to the ropes like that, Aaron. Completely illegal, and the referee telling Malatesta off. And what I scored definitely is the kicks from Sanchai, the body kicks. And a good kick from Sanchai. Sanchai with the right kick. Malatesta coming in with some hard combinations. Not sure how many of those strikes actually do connect though. Yeah, well, at least flush. Not many and those knees don't count as well. Good elbow there from Malatesta. He's been lethal with that left elbow throughout this fight. But he's struggling while Sanchai has his back on the ropes. Sanchai fair to stay, still in control. Good kick there from Sanchai, but Malatesta putting his combination together very well. Sanchai managed to block one of the kicks coming in from Malatesta. Nice speed there from the Italian as well. Yeah, superb. Malatesta can't hand back too much. He needs to put his combinations together ASAP. Good right hand there from Sanchai and acknowledged by Malatesta. I'm sure there's a cut or a welt on the forehead of Sanchai. Either way, something that many fighters have not been able to do to Sanchai in recent times. All right, final stages of this third and final round and of the fight. I believe from what we've seen so far that Sanchai has done enough to get the victory. What about in this third round? Do you think that he's taking that? I think, he, I think he's that. I, I think Sanchai saying in this third round as well, the kicks are just much more accurate. And most of his attacks too. Sanchai fighting with very high IQ here. Malatesta holding onto the ropes once again and throwing the knees. You just can't do that if you want to score points. Maybe you can damage your opponent a little bit, but if you're going for the point strategy, you're not going to get much from that. To be fair, Sanchai is not making it easy for him by keeping his back on the ropes. Going for the switch, Malatesta reacts. Flying knee there from Melatesta, and that definitely scored Aaron. <laughs> Good knees there as well from Melatesta. And the bell has gone, but both fighters have not. Both did hear it. Both fighters celebrating a victory as well. You gotta wonder which way has it gone, Aaron. Well, personally, I think Sanchai wins round one and two. I think there was a case for Melatesta to have won round. Sorry, a, a way that you did with round two, and I'd have to re-watch it again to see that. You were adamant that Sanchai won round two, though, right? Yes. 
been quite out of it, if I'm honest. But Aaron, we've been wrong before. Exactly. And it might be wrong again. We have the commentators, not the judges. Vale veramente la pena alzarsi in piedi per questo risultato. Parità per questo match, parità tra Senchai e Alessio Malatesta, che con grande rispetto va comunque a ringraziare il suo avversario, a ringraziare il suo pubblico perché è consapevole di aver... Yanis Kassem. E nel black corner abbiamo Sansuk Nokon Chok Chai. 67 kilograms. Sansuk, I believe, is training at Fight Evil 360 in Padia. Not far away from you? Not at all. You can hear a pin drop around this arena right now. Everyone very excited for this, of course. If you haven't seen Thai fight before, you might not be um, familiar with what the fighters are wearing on their wrists and their arms. That is rope. That's this right. is called Kai Chuk. And, like I said, if you haven't experienced it, well, you're in for an interesting ride. It's got a really high knockout rate, let's put it that way. <laughs> there you go. All right, round one. Three rounds on tie fight, outside kick there by Kassem. Yeah, and again. Just start there probably, Kassem, two kicks in a row, connecting unanswered by Sansuk so far. But Sansuk is backing him into that corner. Right hand straight away, two right hands. Kassem just blocked it with that left paw of his. But a warning shot there. Attempted left elbow, sorry, right elbow there coming in from the tie fight to Sensu. Yeah, the experienced fighters would have known what Yanis was looking to do, going for the low kicks, and then just when his opponent doesn't expect it, goes for the one-two punch. Oh, a bit of a slip there. But attempted right high kick that just brushed the arm of Kassem, who's apologizing for attacking. I don't blame him for that. No, not at all. That's what he's meant to do. <laughs> exactly. Big oh. kick there from Sensu. Trying to go for the high kick early on, looking for the knockout. Again, Sansuk is the one who's pushing back for that jumping downward elbow. You've got to love traditional Muay Thai Baran moves. Spectacular there from Sansuk. Oh, body the, shot. Yeah, the body again. shot. It seems to have hurt. Yes. Kassem. He's covering up, but he's not really covering up the body though. Sansuk wants it. He's biting on that gum shield and saying, come on, bring the action. Good knee there. In reply by Kassem. From that moment, you'd you think Kitty was in the ring right now. <laughs> Love that style. Moving forward, going for the barrage of punches. Trying to get the knockout early on. Big right hand there from Sansuk. And the spinning oh! back elbow. Sansuk trying to please the crowd in the opening stages. Nice left up to the body there by the TIE fighter. Yeah, just as we said early on, Sansuk has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, so expect some more to come out of the bag. He's here coming in by both fighters. The referee breaks this one up. Play what though, the heat today in Karat. Oof, it's been a hot one. It's still sticky right now. I wonder if that's affecting the fighters at all. And I'll tell you what, it's only gonna get hotter. Yeah. <laughs> There's only the first match at Sansuk already looking for a knockout with a huge body shot again and making Yanis Kassem miss. Yeah, good head movement as well there by the tie. Tempted elbow, but missed. Good knee to the thigh there by Sensuk, but the referee's not having any of that. No, I think it was mainly because Yanis Kassim was holding onto the ropes. He can't do that in a Muay Thai match, regardless of what position you're in. Kassim seems like he's enjoying being in the match. He's advocating it. End of round number one. Stay with us. Look at the highlights.
highlights of that opening round. Sensuk was the one who was pushing back the French fighter constantly on the attack and throwing an array of Muay Thai weapons. Knees, punches, kicks. Especially was enjoying those punches to the body. Yeah, I think he's had a lot of success to the body, but I can't believe he took that head kick and remained, well, attacking. Not just standing, he was continuously attacking. He also threw that jumping, flying elbow as well. That's right, it's very hard to give the round to Yanis Kasim, I have to say. That first round definitely went definitely. to Sansuk. I agree, 100%. Although we are not the judges. No. Just so everyone at oh, home knows. Oh, nice left hook there. What we have for round number two. Big elbow coming in from the Frenchman to start things off, and you can see here already Sansuk going forward. And he said he really wants that knockout, going for that right hand. Yeah, if you're the Thai fighter in Thai fight, again, if you're new to watching Thai fight, there's almost there's a bit more pressure on you to perform in that Thai fight ring. Yeah, nine times out of ten, it's in the name, isn't it? Thai fight. Exactly. And let alone, let's not forget, Sansuk is in his hometown. He's got his friends, his whole family here watching. Good left hooks there by Sensuk. But again, I can appreciate and enjoy the way that Kasam is keeping that guard nice and high. Because a lot of the shots that, Kas sorry, that Sensuk is throwing are actually being deflected on okay. the ropes. So oh, good body shot again. A that good body head. shot definitely connected, Aaron. Yeah, good head movement as well by Sensuk. Usually, you said, oh, good hands there, it's replied by Kasem. You've got to love the chin from Sansa. He's taking a head kick, he's taking four heavy shots to the head, and he's remained standing and still pushing forward. I feel like you've got to appreciate as well is the toughness that Kasem's showing, because he took a lot of body shots, and he's still in there. And yes, he has. In, if he has been rocked, or if there's been a real problem, we haven't known anything about it. He's kept a good poke. Face. Yeah, he has. I mean, that's one of the most important things in Muay Thai, keeping a good poker face. Because the moment you show your, your opponent that you're hurt, your opponent's going to attack that very oh. part of the body. Jumping knee attempt there by Sensuk. Moving into the clinch, going after the head. And yeah, lastly, you, you need to do is put your head down that low, because you might pay the price, just like Yanis Kasem almost did there. Kasem is slowing down now. You can see the way he was backing up into that corner. He's just guarding himself from more injury and more hurt. That's right, Aaron. He's he just wasn't not as confident as he was. That's right. He's not fighting back as much as we saw in the opening round. Another jumping knee to the body there by Stenson. Deep breaths again by the, by the Frenchman. It's only a matter of time, Aaron. Oh, yeah, accumulation of those body shots, and down goes Kasem. You've got to wonder, can he get up? He's taken so much punishment. Sensuk was being calm, and he was being patient with those body strikes, and look, they paid dividends. Second round, Kasem is down, and he's struggling to breathe right now. I think the referee slowed down the count oh, a little bit to the end. Straight away, Sensuk goes after the body with knees, with punches, and even Kasem, when he throws, there's not as much power behind those shots as they were as we first saw them in the opening round. Just like we said earlier, when you show your opponent that you are hurt in a certain part of a body, they will attack that body part. That's why it's so important to keep that poker face. Yeah, look, he's, he's grimacing before the shot's even been thrown right now. He needs to get out of this round as quickly as possible. Yeah, take some time to regroup, because Sansuk is oh, not going to oh. slow down. Catches him with a good big left hook, but again, the power that we saw in round one just isn't there. Oh, but he makes it. End of round two. Sensuk on top here at Thai Fight. Well, Sensuk, he came out in that second round and was determined to try and take out Kasem and it was the body shots that were the, on, on the menu for that young man right there. And many could argue that he might have got it, or he almost did. And some could argue that the ten, 10 count was a little bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Kasem's guarding up, but then Sensuk goes down to the body. He's been doing that throughout the whole fight in the first and the second round and the delayed reaction there yeah, by was. Kasem. Yeah, we see his, a lot eyes of are, his eyes are glued almost to the body of Kasem. And there, just that sneaky left up was all, all that it took. And eventually that pain 
Yeah, we see Reach the quite, brain of Kaseb. We see it quite often in Muay Thai, though, that delayed reaction. Yeah. And then it usually happens when the fighter takes a deep breath in. Right. And then they realize, oh, right. Just when the fighter catches the liver. Yeah. And just sends that sh aftershock around the body. Let's All see right, what we round go. three has in store. Well, me and Kevin are confident. Well, we know for sure that Sensuk is up in this fight. Kasem needs a knockout. Yes, Push he does. Push kick to the face there by Sensuk. That was a menacing oh! laugh from Sensuk, and I don't think Kasem appreciated that one bit. You can see, here we go, Sensuk going for the knockout, going for blood. You gotta love it how he's pushing forward. He's in his hometown oh! and going for the Sensuk cartwheel kick. Entertaining the crowd. Yeah, he didn't like being teeped in the face, did he, at all? Not one bit. A Not bit, one bit. A little bit of sign of disrespect there by Kassem. To be fair, I don't oh, think... Oh, good left hook there by Sensuk! To be fair, most people I don't think like to get a teeped in the face. True. <laughs> <laughs> Another body shot. Elbows coming in there from Sensuk. Sneaking that left elbow ah! through the guard ah! as well. But you've got to love the heart that Yanis Kassem is displaying. Just when you think he's in trouble, he manages to counter. He's tough. He is. Absolutely. Again, guarding him, but another body strike there from Sensuk. Kasem moves in with that right hand. Sensuk just shrugs it off. And again, going back to the body. Almost connects with that downward elbow. Yeah, he connected with that in the first, in the first round, but in the third round, maybe Kasem knew that was going to come again. Kasem needs to take a deep breath in here and find a second win if he wants to try and knock out the tie. Good body strike there by Sensuk. That time going in with the legs. Oh, elbow with the clinch. Good hand there by Kasem. Oh, but a good knee there by Sensuk. Just to the body, not to the head, I believe. Yeah, and you can see there Sensuk trying to go for a downward elbow, but the referee perhaps saving Kasem at that very moment. Oh, spinning back elbow there by Sensuk. But again, Kasem with that high guard. Not doing a bad job of protecting his face. Not at all. He's doing a good job here protecting himself in this third round, Yanis Kasem. Oh, good what, elbow! Just when I was about to say, I, I wanted him to attack when he did that. Beautiful elbow placed by Kasem. And again with that left hook. He's thrown that left hook a few times, just as Sensuk gets close. Big body shot there from Kasem, and a return by Sensuk. I guess he sees his pathways to victory is doing that. He's, Sensuk is going to move forward. He's going to try and cover up and throw one big shot and try and knock out the tie. Easier said than done. End of the third and final round. A great contest to start. The festivities here at Tie Fight. We will go though, of course, to the Ninja Scorecard. Sorry, decision. Stay with us. ลุ้นกันหนักๆเลยนะฮะสุดท้ายครบ <laughs> But it felt like it was 50. Let's have a look at the highlights of the, of the whole fight. There's the cartwheel kick after that initial teep to the face. I think Sancho would be very proud of that. If he's watching on from backstage, which I'm sure he, I'm sure he is. Absolutely. A few hands being stuck through the guard. Sam did well though. I'll take nothing away from the way he fought in there. He really did his best to protect himself and sneak in a few shots, but it's not going to be enough, of course. But let's get the official decision from our MC. The winner, Samson Nukon Chochai from Thailand, Jury! He's doing a push in the hand, and he's going to be the best for the next one. And at the end, we're going to be the best for the next one. Yes, he's going to be the best for the next one. He's going to be the best for the next one. He's going to be the best for the next one. He's going to be the best for the next one. And we'll see you with the next one.
losses and two draws. And as I mentioned earlier, he is a former Raja Dhamnun Stadium champion and also a super fight or su super champ champion as well. So a very experienced fighter. I mean, he didn't have the best of debuts here in Thai fight. No, that's a very good point as well. Because but the winner of that said fight where he lost by knockout was then supposed to go to Rome. That's right. However, the fighter that beat him <laughs> in a following Thai fight promo uh, promotion got knocked out. That's right. And so, Bet Nam Nam was able to go to Rome by default and put on an amazing show. I mean, strange how things work. Yeah, it is. Out, isn't it? And the team to the face, just as we saw in the first bout. Oh, swinging left hand attempt there. Good takedown by the experienced Sir Prof. Yeah, Tong Bang definitely came here to win. He doesn't just want to last three rounds, Aaron. For sure. Body shot, then a left hand there by the time donning the blue haircut. Yeah, Pit Nam Nam, he has to be extremely careful because Tong Bang, he's an extremely experienced fighter. I mean, he can take advantage of any single situation, so he can't oh. go crazy like that all the time. Swinging left hook there by the Thai again. Good job. Ooh, wild elbow yeah, for the really former Rajadabnan Stadium champion. Another right hook coming in, outside of Thai kick. Deep to the body, but again, it's the tie who's pushing forward, pushing back. Sir Prom. Oh, that tie kick just misses the back. Oh, just as I said, Aaron, he's looking for the knockout as well. It's not just Pet Nam Nam trying to go forward and trying to get a knockout of his own. Tong Bang wants to leave here early, too. At 60 kilograms, this will be the smallest male fight here tonight on Thai Fight, but. These boys are packing a punch. Another right hand coming in, just over the top. You know, these 60 kilo fights are usually exciting because of the pace that is usually dis displayed, especially at such a high level. Oh, good elbow! Acknowledged there by Sir Prom. He went to the body, but the tie was able to counter. You can see there, Tom Bang is oh, no. cut. Big cut as well, Kevin. Over the left eye, it's bothering him. It's dripping into the eye. It's going to affect his vision. Left high kick there. Didn't seem to affect his left high kick there, Aaron. Very true. Going for a high kick of his own now. Pet Nam Nam. It's like he's spitting blood that time as well. Inside kick there by Pet Nam Nam. Oh, left hand! Stunning little jab there by Pet Nam Nam. And again, sorry, by the Lao fighter, Sir Prom. Deemed not a knockdown though. Yeah, ever since that knockdown, Sir Prom's confidence is probably over, over the moon right now, and that's the end of the first round. Wow, what an exhilarating round one. Stay with us here at Thai Fight. And wow, what an amazing first round that was. Both fighters going at it in the very first round. There you see Pit Nam Nam with a huge elbow and going for that right high kick, which Tom Bang manages to defend. Yeah, throughout that whole round, I thought that Pet Nam Nam was the one on the attack, on the ascendancy, and I actually thought that he might be able to finish uh, Sir Prom, but he was the one that actually got dropped yeah, Tom by Bang. that vicious left hand that, by Sir Prom. I hope you can see that in the replay. I think this is it. No, not, not just the yet, elbow. but that's the elbow once again. I like the way that Sir Prom acknowledged it as well. Exactly. Like, yeah, that one hurt, that hurt me. But yeah, I mean, he was knocked down. I mean, I believe he, I believe this is the, the shot here. Luckily, Pit Nam Nam got to his feet quick enough before the oh. referee could start a count. Beautifully timed there by Sir Prom. Absolutely excellent, but that cut, as we said, it seemed to have bothered. It is, it's not deep, and so they've been able to treat it. And he's gonna continue the fight. Let's go see the action in the second round. Here we go. Left body shot there. Another kick to the body by Sir Prom. Oh, and again. He's searching for that left hand again, Kevin. Yeah, he really is. Good elbow there from Pet Nam Nam. The knee straight down the middle from the Lao fighter. But you see, once again, Aaron, the cut is really bothering Tom Bang. Yeah, they've semi dealt with it, but it's starting to pour out again. Another left high kick there. But Sir Prom is strong. There he is, he's pushing forward again. Oh. Eats a body kick 
Something he doesn't want to do once again. Good kick there from the Lao fighter, but a return from Pet Nam Nam. Oh! Both fights going in with elbows there. Yeah, exchanging shots. Absolutely amazing. You know, Pet Nam Nam is being ultra aggressive, but when this lulls in play, Sir from out of nowhere just throws something and you start to rethink how you're, you're viewing this fight. Like I said, it's not going the whole way of Pet Nam Nam, and he knows it. That's why he's pushing forward with everything he's got in this second round. But he's not connecting flush right now. No, he's having problems dealing with the speed that Pet Nam Nam is displaying right now. And it shows. For every four strikes that Pet Nam Nam throws, Tom Ban throws one. But I'm not sure if he's connecting flush, though. So, well, why sure the box, isn't he? Yeah, so Brom, he knows what he's doing in there. He's been round the block a few times. He's got his hands down right now, trying to go for an elbow, but eats a knee instead, and a good knee guard there for Pet Nam Nam. Oh, lovely body shot there. And again by Sir Brom, but he gets caught with an elbow. Yeah, he tried to go for that body shot again, which he had a lot of success with. It seemed like Pet Nam Nam reacted to it. Sir Brom again, he's going for that left hand with everything he's got. This is a real scrap, really is. Oh, a very good battle, having two experienced fighters in the ring. Another left hand attempt there by Sir Prom. Pet Nam Nam against the ropes, and he gets clipped with the left hand. Yeah, the Not enough power though to cause him any trouble. Left elbow going in by the tie. You can appreciate Tong Bang pushing forward, but it has to be said, he isn't connecting as, with as much shots as Pet Nam Nam. Pet Nam Nam with a huge right hand there, but not connecting fully. Another attempt to need there by both fighters and missing the mark. Whew. Breathtaking second round here at Thai Fight. Here we go coming into the third and final round of action is Pet Nam Nam Puana in the black corner and Tong Bang Sir Prom from Laos in the white. Absolutely amazing round there, back and forth action, and we saw Tong Bang pushing forward, giving Pet Nam Nam some trouble as well. Yeah, Pet Nam Nam, I think he came out in that second round and was like, right, that's it, I'm going to do a lot better now. I'm going to push forward, I'm going to end this fight. But it wasn't to be. He really tried in like the opening minute to do everything he could to try and take out One the veteran Sir Prom. But Sir Prom, he just fought back and again, held a good guard. And Pet Nam Nam wasn't able to find, just like that, it was a great example, 100% accuracy with his shots. Difficult Pet question. Nam Nam, I think yeah. just, just. But I could see if someone said to me that they thought that Sir Prom won that round, I wouldn't disagree with them. Yeah, me neither. Good kicks here to start things off from Pet Nam Nam. Another body kick there from the tie. Let's not forget that Pet Nam Nam ended the round on the ropes. Yes, he did, and he's moving oh, back. Oh, good left hand there, and again, two left hands coming in from Sir Prom. You know, he's moving back quite a bit in the second and the third round, but he is connecting with his shots, and that's the most important thing. Good jab there and a good kick oh. from Pet Nam Nam. What is Sir Prom made of? Seriously, he might have punished, but he's taken. He just keeps moving forward. I'm telling you, is that loud blood, that spirit <laughs> pushing him forward, keeping him in the fight. Good knee there from Pet Nam Nam, and a return of a kick. Oh, from... swinging left hand. Yeah, Tong Bang doing extremely well. Got to love how this loud fighter is pushing forward. Pet Nam Nam has took some punishment again in this third round. I know he's connected with a high kick, but apart from that, it's all Sir Prom here. Oh, good elbow there by Pet Nam Nam. He needs more of that. He's decided to bite on the counter, it seems. Good body strike there with his leg. Yeah, one thing Tom Bang I think needs to do, though, is keep his hands up. Otherwise, he's going to take some more shots just like that. Deep there from Pet Nam Nam. Good boxing action. Moves away the head. Looking for that left hand, but again, wide of the mark. You know, on paper, we thought it was going to be... Oh, good left hand and a right kick. On paper, we thought it was going to be, you know, a straightforward victory for Pet Nam yes. but he's, ha he's having to work oh, for this. Oh, left hand. One thing we can't forget is that Tong Bang is an extremely experienced fighter. Fighting all over Southeast Asia, in fact. Eats an elbow that time. Leg kick there by the tie. Fight starting to slow down, maybe fatigue and maybe that heat that we're talking about is starting to be felt. The heat, the humidity and the action in the ring. Hot air in those lungs. Sneeze. 
right down the middle from Pit Nam Nam. No return from Tong Bak, which is quite surprising at this point in the fight. Yeah, it could be on a knife surge, you never know right now. Left kick to the body. Coming to the final second of this bout, who's going to take the win? Good right hand there for Pen Nam Nam and a good block from the tie as well. Oh, trying to go for the 100,000 yes. baht. Spinning back kick, knockout. We'll get you 100,000 baht, but it's not to be. Oh, about to here at Tai Fight, and we will go to the judges' scorecards for a second time. A magnificent fight, without so, a shadow of a doubt. I always feel it's good to give the judges something to do here on Tai Fight. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> very active, very explosive fight there. some of the replays from that final round. The huge right kick there from Tongba, and he connected, or excuse me, from Pet Nam Nam, and he connected really well with that throughout the fight. You know, in the beginning of the round, it looked like it was quite even, but then towards the end, it seemed like Pet Nam Nam had the advantage. Beautiful left hook there from Tongba. Yeah, Tong Pang Surprom, he started that third round on fire. He was swinging that left hand, trying to take out Pet Nam Nam. ประกาศผู้ชนะครับเราก็ขอบคุณใจคนเชียร์คนชมหรือเปล่านะครับ <laughs> ดีนะครับโอ้ปล่อยมันก็ไม่มีหยุดเลยนะทําให้ <laughs> <laughs> Martin who is very tall a lot taller than Nongo Yeah but Martin Mione, he's got a wealth of experience he has, Yes Fought on Thai fight many times before against, I believe, Sayok and Sutukon and faring pretty well. All right, here we go. Third bout of the evening in the white corner from Peru, Ernesto Ato. And in the black corner, Nong O Shoha Payak, and this is at 69 kilos. Three three minute rounds. Left high kick there from Ato. He's looking in pretty good shape himself. Yeah, he is. Oh, strong body kick there by Nongo and a good one-two combination coming in from the tie. And again, strong right kick. And something tells me that Nongo is looking for a knockout early on. Redemption, isn't it? It truly is. There's a lot of eyes on him right now. Inside kick from Ato. Huge shot from Nongo. Oh, and again with that right kick to the body. Ato is tough. We know that from the start. What we know from Nong O's style is that he loves to it. Uh, he's more of a headhunter. He doesn't attack the body yes. too much. But that's something we think he should be doing. He also walks straight forward as well. And he does get clipped himself sometimes. He really does, but he takes it very well. Left hand there from Nong O, but blocked by Ernesto. Again, looking for that right hand. Solid body kick again! Oh my oh, goodness! That could be it. That we saw, hurts. We saw a delayed reaction in the first fight, but that is on another level. <laughs> That's our first oh. knockout of the night, and it's a win for Nong Oh Shohapia in the very first round. Absolutely amazing. On the flex camp. Unbelievable. What was that? The third or fourth body shot, body kick? I'm surprised that Atto was able to survive the first three, because they look so painful and right on the money. Seems like he's okay, but difficult to fight when you can't breathe. No, <laughs> absolutely difficult. Let's have a look at the highlights of Nongo's handy, or should I say leg work. He started as he always does, but then he decided just to go to the body with those kicks. Oh, what a delay that was. His body 
it just shut down. That's right. And that can happen. And just when we were criticizing Nongo for not going to the for, to the body enough, I think we, he heard we, us. We, we did that a lot in the last fight, to be fair, and I think we had a volley point. <laughs> yes, yes, we did. And like you said, maybe he took it on board. Oh, look at that. Perfectly timed. Just as Atto was twisted to shoot a right hand in. Oh, and the grimace on them. You can feel that pain, can't oh, you? Oh, yes. You can feel the pain. I'm glad we're not in the ring right now, Aaron. Great performance by Nongo. This is exactly what he needed. And they'll move on to the next tight fight with more confidence now. And don't go anywhere because who's coming up next? Your favorite. That's right. The winner is Nongo Shahabiyak from Thailand. Years of age, 273 centimeters tall from Pisanolok province. He's had a total of 336 fights, 284 victories. 50 losses and two draws. He is a former WMC champion, former Raja Danone champion, Lumpini champion, Thailand champion, Isuzu Cup super fight champion, and of course, a former Thai fight champion. And former WMO world champion as well, might add. The first one. In Italy. That's right. Where he fought last time. That is right. <laughs> there you can see the fight is for our fourth bout of the evening in the white corner from Iran, Ali Reza Ami Zadeh. And in the black corner, Sayok Pumpamuang. Bite at 72 kilograms. You remember after Sayok had a long layoff, he came back at around 76 yeah, kilos? Yeah, 74 was probably one of the lowest weights we saw him at. And we all thought, well, is he training? What's yeah. going on? And now he slimmed down back to fighting at 72. Well, there's no doubt that he is training right now. Well, we saw one knockout here in our last bout. Are we going to see another one? Let's find out. You never know with Sayok. Good left kick there from Sayok, hitting the mark and a return from Ali Reza. Good rock good, there. Yeah, good from back and forth there from both these fighters looking for kicks to the body. Yeah, fantastic. The one thing that we have realized is what we said pre previously is that Sayok is a much slower starter than he used to be. Yes, definitely. But once he does get going, he you doesn't see, stop. You see the glimpses that was the Sayok of old. He's still got power in those hands and he loves to throw that left elbow. Oh, swinging right hand there from the legend. And he looks for the knockout every single time. Good left kick there from Sayok. Alireza goes in with a low kick. But Sayok is able to block. And again, Sayok with that block there. Fundamentals of Muay Thai on display by the legend. So perhaps trying to go for an elbow alone, but a good knee from Ali Reza. There you can see. Again, Sayok's glimpses of what he can do. He also got, likes to throw left and right hooks to the body and then fold it up with elbows as well. Another one of his favorite techniques to throw. What Ali Reza is doing differently from Sayok's previous opponents, though, he is starting slow. Usually we see Sayok's opponents love to start fast because they know he's a slow starter. That's true. Good point, Kevin. Right hook to the body there by Sayok. Perhaps he's just baiting Sayok in and he knows. Oh, that's a good left kick. He knows that the legend's just not as fast as he used to be. Sayok as well, trying to sneak a sneaky left uppercut elbow there in the clinch, but failed to connect. No kick there from Ali Reza, not going to have too much of an impact on Sayok as Sayok continues to push forward. Hands coming in, nice block there by the tie. Ali Reza looking, he's looking composed. Just not got to show too much respect here to Sayok. No, you can't do that. Easier said than done, though. Exactly. Good defense there from Ali Reza. Oh, but good, good left hand. Yeah, beautiful. Just hit flush. And Ali oh, Reza, right might, Ali Reza might be in a lot of trouble right now, but he's still fighting back. But on the back foot, Ali. Or Aaron, excuse me. <laughs> left kick to the body there. Oh, left kick. kick to the body and a huge body punch there from Sayok. Ali Reza's taking these body shots, but we've seen in previous bouts how they can accumulate. 
and eventually end the fight. Well, end of round one. Good opening round, I have to say, by Sayok. The notorious slow start. Did start a little bit slow, but then, as the round progressed, we started to see yeah, he, more he connected the with the kick a few times, and also some of the, the body punches seem to have affected Ali Reza. Yeah, he even connected with that left hand, and uh, Ali Reza has got to do a lot better at covering up than that when you're facing someone like Sayok. And officially, have to give that round to Sayok. Honest. Nope. All right, here we go. Round number two. Oh, left eye kick there from Sayok. See that water spraying everywhere. Yeah, good way to start things off for Sayok. Another left kick to, to the body for the legend. Really favoring that left kick to the body right now is Sayok. But, but why not? Because it's connecting. Yeah, exactly. If your just opponent is not blocking, just and it's connecting. Go. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, good technique there by Ali Reza. Oh, good right hand there from Sayo. Going in now with the left hand kick. This could be the good beginning right of the end. Just like we said, Sayo, a slow starter, but once he gets going, he gets going. And I think he's got going, Aaron. Yeah, Ali Reza did a veteran move there. He just grabbed a hold of Sayo, just held on for dear life. Oh, connected again there is Sayo. Ali Reza getting as good as he's getting though right now. Oh, just missed with that left hand. He almost walks into it. He catches him with that one. Body strike there by Sayok. And again, Ali Reza grabs a hold of, the, of his tight counterpart. Absolutely phenomenal from Sayok so far. But genius from Ali Reza, slowing down the momentum of Sayok by getting him into the clinch. Ali Reza has stuck a few shots and he's, he's not looked overawed at all. Yep. Still in there. One thing's for sure, Ali Reza is tough. Right. Really is. Oh, good right hand there by the Iranian. And that definitely stunned Sayok, maybe just for a second. Big Sayok. body shot there from Sayok. Deep breaths here by both fighters. Another diggy left hand there by Sayok. Oh, knee to the head! It was a knee to the body, I believe, Aaron. Thank oh, okay. goodness for that. Good blocks there from Sayok. Ali Reza slowed down. Yeah, Sayok is swarming his opponent in this second round. Back to... Standing toe to toast, Sayok moving forward. Ali Reza doesn't want that, he's trying to keep Sayok away. Nice kick in from Sayok, yeah, connected. Good hands here coming in from the Iranian though. Good body shot as well. I don't know if that's one of the best strategies you could do, trading blows to Sayok. Another good strategy was difficult to do. If you can get Sayok to the third and final round, but we know we've seen him get tired, get fatigued. But the thing is, the same could be said for Ali Reza right now. He has slowed down since the first round. He's looking fresh, he's not looking bad here, he's still throwing. Good kick, oh, doubling up his Sayok, throwing, rolling back the ears that time. Two kicks in a row for Sayok connecting, he needs to do more, more of that. Looking headhunting with that elbow as well from the clinch. End of round two. More fast paced action here. Explosive Muay Thai round we saw in that second round there between Sayok Pumpan Mawang from Thailand and Ali Reza Amezadeh from Iran. Sayok came out in that second round, he was swinging and he was fairly accurate with a lot of his shots as well. But Ali Reza showing that he's got a very good chin on him. I'll tell you what, Aaron, I mean, at the beginning of that round, it looked like Sayok had the advantage, had the power in those hands, but towards the end of that second round, it looked like it was oh, fading. Look at that. Rocking the head back there of the legend. But one thing's for sure, the kicks are still there, Aaron. Something that Ali Reza has to be wary of, and that was a foul. I think it was to the shoulder. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is that Ali Reza did have his hands on the floor. Yeah, he did. But perhaps something that Sayok was unaware of. Yeah, you've got to give props here to Ali Reza. Well, yeah, one thing's for sure is that he he showed everyone here that he is tough. Third and final round. Now the question is, Sayok, who's now at 39 years old, 
And you still got gas in the tank in the third round in this Karat heat. Let's find out. Another left kick there for Sayo to start things off here in the third round. Oh, good right high kick there from Ali Reza. What a chin oh, from Sayo. Oh, my goodness. We've seen him get knocked out with that kick before by Chanajon a long time ago. That's me naughty, but he took that one like a champion. Fair to say that kick from Chanajon was a lot harder. But still. Ali Reza, maybe that was the game plan. To get the 39-year-old to the third and final round. Yeah, at this point, Ali Reza needs to take advantage of it. Sayok not in the best of shapes as he used to be, but Ali Reza starts to, needs to start moving forward. One of the things about Sayok, unlike Sanchai, is that Sayok, he wants a war. He goes after that war. Yeah, he does. Well, Sanchai is going to be moving around the ring, and that's why he's elongated his career so much. Sayok, the way he fights, he shouldn't really be here at 39 you know, years of age, to be honest. Yeah, he loves to knock his opponent out, but at this point, maybe not going to happen. Well, it looks like it. They do say, don't they, that the power is the last thing to go, but it still can go. Ali Reza Amazadeh doing well here in this third round and he's bouncing on his feet. He's looking confident. Sayo, not so much right now. One thing's for sure, though, I mean, on our unofficial scorecard, I'd say Ali Reza is down two rounds. I agree, I agree. And he needs to go for it right now. I just don't understand why is he stalling? Why is he letting Sayo catch his breath? Not the best of ideas if you ask me, Aaron. Maybe sometimes it's just about going the distance with the worry. But like you said, I agree. I think if you really wanted to push and test himself right now, there is an opportunity right here. Yeah, because one thing's for sure, Ali Reza has connected with some phenomenal shots in this fight. Huge oh, body shot there from Sayo. Yeah, it did. Grimace on the face there. And again, is there some blood in the water? And Sayo smells it. He's pushing the pace, looking for elbows. So Amir just at one then. Sayo coming back to life once again when he saw Ali Reza was affected by the body kick. Oh, have we got an agreement here? Both seem to be happy with their nice work, I guess. Really hope not because it's three rounds Muay Thai with Kachuk. You've got to fight till the end. But they seem pretty content. Well, it's up to, it's up to Ali Reza, really, isn't it, to come and take the fight to Sayo? Sayo's done enough to win the, the fight, we believe, anyway. Yeah. Like I said, sometimes when you're facing someone of the legendary status that Sayo has, it's just about making it to the bell. And that seems to be the case right now for Ali Reza. Going for the kick, but not going to affect Sayo. Maybe the second one did, but the left kick oh. of Sayo definitely affected Ali Reza. End of the third and final round. Good battle there between two. Strong fighters, very impressed with Ali Reza's chin but I would have liked to have seen him pushed it a little bit more at the end of the third and final round. We will go to the judges' scorecard for a third time here tonight at Tight Fight. Yeah, I have to agree with you there, and especially in a three-round bout, you can't... I think Ali Reza... There was that right high kick. Did a bit of that too much. That <laughs> polish there by Sayo. Yeah, well done. And then Sayo... In that third round, he took his foot off the gas. I think he knew that he had the fight won, and it was up to Amir Zadeh, Ali Reza Amir Zadeh, to take the fight and try and find the knockout win, or the knockout blow to Sayok, which he didn't seem to want to do. But as a result, he hasn't made it to the end of the third and final round, and he will get a decision, or we will get a decision, right now by our MCs in the ring. After this bout, boys and girls will take a short break. Then after that, we'll have Vero taking on Om Sin. So stay with us for that one here at Thai Fight. ดับเบิ้ลไซโยผู้ปัดบัวฟรอมไทยเลยเฮ้ยยินดีกับผู้ชนะนะครับรับเป็นกําลังใจกับผู้ที่ไพ่ไปในวันนี้แน่นอนคร
draw, no matter how dominant you are against your opponent. All right, here we go. Fifth bout of the evening, Myanmar versus Thailand. In the white corner, Omsin, three Tong Jim. And in the black corner, Vera Vaught Rujarawo at 53 kilograms. You know, I talked to Vera about her last match in Italy. I talked about uh, her wearing the gloves, and she told me she did not like that one <laughs> bit. Yeah, that's a good point because in Italy they had to wear gloves. And that's right. I think for a couple of the bouts there was elbow pads involved. Mainly well. for the semi final bouts for, for the right. European Championship right, right, right. tournament, so no one's cut. So she didn't enjoy wearing the gloves? No. It doesn't surprise me. No. And, <laughs> and she told me the gloves started to feel heavy as well. Oh, really? Yep. So now she's light handed, so let's see what she can do here tonight. Got her eyes locked on. I'm seeing she won the last fight by decision, it should be noted. But like Kevin said, wearing the gloves now. We're back to Karchuk. And she loves Karchuk. It suits her just fine. Long kick there by Vero. Obviously looking for that right hand. Vero looking to go to the body. Oh, sneaky right hand coming in there by Vero. And then finishes it off with a left kick. Good left hook there by Vero. Obviously could be in trouble here. You gotta love it that Omsen is pushing forward. She's actually yes. pushing Vero back in the very first round. And she took a few shots there and she smiled. <laughs> a few? She took <laughs> plenty of shots there. Good kick to the midsection there by Vero. Finishes it off with a nicely timed elbow. Inside kick there. She's on fire right now, just like you said she would be, Kevin. Left and right hand. Oh, right hand! My goodness, did not see that coming whatsoever, and that is it. It's a win for Vero for Rujarawong in the very first round. What a right hand that was. Oh, wow. We were just acknowledging the way that Omsin was able to take the strikes that Vero was showing, and, but all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that right hand just crumpled Omsin. Absolutely unbelievable. Devastating right hand. I guess you were right. Yes. The queen of the ropes is back. There it is. Time to perfection and right on the button, as they say. Right on the jaw. You know, it's one of those knockouts you can watch again and again and again and again. Well, thankfully, Obsin in the ring is back to her feet. Just took her eyes off Vero momentarily. But that's the, that's the thing, you need to keep your eyes on yes. your opponents regardless. And Omsin made that one mistake, which Vero capitalized on, and why not? Wow, incredible knockout. The winner is. Vero Warutinuwong from Myanmar! แน่นอนคนที่มาโค้ดเขาใหญ่สุดๆอยู่ดีนะครับคุณเดียวฮะยอดมากแล้วภาพที่เห็นนี้เป็นภาพความประทับใจทุกครั้งนะฮะนะคร
Good left hand there by Malatesta. Oh, good elbow as well. Son Cow. Yeah, huge elbow. And then we know one thing for sure. Son Cow can be knocked down. He was knocked down in his previous bat here in Thai fight. Maybe that's something Alessio was trying to do early on. Good kick there from Son Cow. Good right hand there by the Thai fighter. He's got to wake up. Because Malatesta took a lead here in this opening round. Good right hand kick there by Son Cow. Yeah, it is a three-round fight. You can't afford to go slow in the very first round. You've got to go for it right when the bell rings. Another good body kick there by the Thai. Song Cow, like you said, Kevin, he wants to move it, doesn't he? he? Wants to clinch. You can see that, but for some unknown reason, something is stopping him. Maybe he just wants to try to tune up his style, try something new. There's a danger to that, though, because to get close and close to Malatesta, who's wearing those cards, you have broke hands with his, with his speed. I'm not sure, be very but dangerous. that leg of Son Cao could be hurt when Malatesta threw okay, the leg kick. Yeah, yeah. He reacted to it. And again he does. Here we go, into the clincher knee. And right away, we heard his corner saying, no, don't engage in the clinch against Son Cao. Good right hook there by Malatesta again. Knees, and an elbow there by the time. And he's straight down the middle, and that caught Malatesta, but Malatesta on his feet immediately. I'm surprised that Malatesta doesn't go back to the low kick soon. It really looked like it caused a problem for him. Good right hand there by Malatesta. On again, that time with the left. You know what, it seemed like he felt the power of Son Cao and decided to start moving back. Maybe, you know, the confidence has drained just a little bit. Good knee here by Son Cao. Exactly where he wants to be. But like I said, to get there, the road is dangerous. Uppercut elbow yeah. that attempted by Malatesta. Yeah. You can see that Son Cao, I think within the clinch, it's fair to say, just a little bit more stronger in it. That's the good hand save by Malatesta. Son Cao trying to fight fire with fire. Son Cao at a moment where he should be clinching up and defending himself to decide to trade blows with Malatesta. Got to say, it already showed good spirit. Yeah, I thought Malatesta had his number there, but Son Cao, he fought back. And we will see in round two. What a and here we go, coming into the second round of action is Son Cao Shahapiak in the black corner from Thailand and Alessio Malatesta from Italy in the, in, in the white corner. And wow, some shots like Malatesta's low kick seems to have hurt Son Cao and Son Cao having a lot of success in the clinch and knee game. We'll have to see how the second round goes, but there's the head kick that seemed to have troubled Malatesta for just a second, but I think he just lost his footing. Oh, clash of heads there as well. But yeah, if you were unaware, I thought that the height was unreal. Maybe wrong, yeah. Malatesta looks like he is the real deal. But let's not forget. <laughs> as well maybe Did something and some low kicks that's right i would like to see him go back to those maybe, round two maybe put a combination together those low kicks and hands going for the high kick immediately though to start oh. things out oh good counter strike there by malatesta again going low when son cow was trying to go up high oh good balance there good left hand by malatesta you've got to love this exchange oh, the kick of son cow by malatesta and that connected very well Son Cao though moving forward, but getting hit in the process. Hands to the body, up to the head there by Malatesta. And Malatesta now on the ropes, clinching up with Son Cao somewhere he doesn't want to be, but in that situation he has to get out of the corner we're or get on ropes. We're situated right in the corner of Malatesta's camp here, you can hear him screaming right behind us. Yep. They seem very happy, oh, he walked into that right high kick there. He took it though, but he's looking hesitant just for a moment. Yeah, Son Cao having a lot of success with that right kick, but Malatesta not exactly fighting back just yet. And another kick for Son Cao. That's four kicks in a row for Son Cao now. Looking for that right hand as well. Oh, good hands here by the Italian. And a good elbow. Malatesta. And Son Cao can't keep him inside the clinch. Yeah, Malatesta timed that extremely well. I mean, he saw that right kick coming from Son Cao and decided to go for the combination punch. Good hands again here by the Italian fighter. His corner screaming at him to move forward. They don't want it to take a step backward. Taking a right hand from Son Cao and a kick straight down the middle. Once again, well done there from Son Cao. 
so what a fight this is getting yeah, absolutely fantastic. Another back and forth war here at Thai Fight. Both of them exchanging blows. Hard to pick a winner for this one so far. I mean, it's been back and forth. Son Kao edging with the kicks though, and Malatesta having a lot of success with the hands. I honestly think that there was a case of Malatesta won the opening round. Right hand there by Son Kao. Definitely Better round the case. here though by Son Kao, in my yes. opinion. Connecting a lot with the right kicks, as I said earlier, and he's going to go back to that again and again and again, but just needs to be wary of those hands from Malatesta. Good right kick there, connected to the body of Malatesta. And a good right hand as well here by the tie. Good uppercut though by Malatesta, and then that hook on the way out. Able to bite off the back foot. Inside kick by Son Kao. Some hesitancy that we didn't see in the opening round. He's now appearing for Malatesta in this second round. But he's able to take Son Kao off his feet that time. Son Kao moving forward. Not much of a guard either. Yeah, he, his hands are extremely low for a fighter who likes to move forward. And for a clinch and knee fighter. Oh, is this some fatigue setting him perhaps from Malatesta? End of round number two. Much better round in my opinion. Here we go, coming into the third and final round. Son Kao in the black corner and Alessio Malatesta in the white. And back and forth action, but this round, gotta say it, Son Kao connected with a lot of good roundhouse kicks. Connected very well with Alessio coming back with some punches of his own and he's putting his punches together. He's not just throwing single shots. Yeah, Son Kao, really like he's buoyed by those kicks. Like you said, Kevin, he's starting to put more punches together. Just to make this interesting, it's, Aaron. It's, I feel like he was almost neglecting the clinch. He's like, okay, forget about that. Let's just go fight fire with fire and let's show that I am the stronger of the two. I can sh I can kick and punch. Yeah, he's doing a great job. The Italian. But Aaron, just to make this interesting, let's give Malatesta the first round and Son Kao the second. Not to make it interesting, I generally believe. <laughs> Scorecard. Well, it's been close. It's I think been Malatesta close. Malatesta took round number one, and I think that Son Kao edge number two, meaning, like I said, unofficially, if you win this round, you win the fight. It's going to be a battle out. here in this third round. Son Kao tuning up the kicks, and he does. He gets it. Nice Good low kick. kick. Yeah. We didn't see that in round number two, did we? We saw a lot of it in round number one. So at the beginning of round number two, but not so much afterwards. A lot of heavy hands though from Malatesta, just like we're seeing right now. Good kick from Son Kao. Trouble is, not, not a lot of those hands found their mark. No, they didn't. Son Kao doing a better job. Covering. Tense moments here. Good you hands see, here by Malatesta again. You can see it right away that not one fighter wants to make a single mistake in this round. It can cost them the entire fight. Good kick to the body by Malatesta. But that elbow from yes. Son Kao connecting right at the end. Good right knee there by Son Kao off the back foot as well. Body shot there from Malatesta. We haven't seen too much of that throughout the fight, but it seems to have put Son Kao on his guard. Big Getting right some kick. It's one of those things where you know if you make a mistake, you could be in trouble and you don't want to do that. It starts playing on your brain. It does, it does, and here we go, we're into the clinch, let's see if Son Kao can get the end, and he doesn't. A bit too late there. Yeah, a lot of markings now on the face of Malatesta. I think both of them got some markings yes, on their faces. very true. Big right kick again from Son Kao, and that connected very well. Oh, good left high kick though by Malatesta, he's slapping the face of the time, but a beautifully timed right high kick in reply by Son Kao. And that connected oh as well. Goodness. What a return. Back and forth action here at Thai Fight, the third and final round. Spinning back elbow attempt just misses the mark by Malatesta, but if you thought he was fatigued, well, he isn't, and there's the proof. Huge right kick again for Son Kao, but a huge left hand and left elbow from Malatesta. I like that combination a lot. Left hand, straight away, the left elbow came out. You're going to love that never die attitude, but Son Kao, he needs to start moving forward. He can't start moving back right now. It's the only point in third round. Oh, the right hand there from Son Kao. And that stopped Malatesta in his tracks. It really did. That will score heavily with the judges, I believe. That was a clean strike there by Son Kao. And without a shadow of a doubt, I mean, that surprised Malatesta. Malatesta doesn't want to feel that right hand again. Another right hand from Son Kao. But a good right hook at the same time by Malatesta. How in the world do you score this right, Aaron? How sure. do you score this? No, no. Dare I say, 
four, extension round. It could happen because there's no draws on tie fight. So even. All right, well, like I said, me and Kevin are not the judges. Thankfully, we will go to the judges' scorecards again here. Tie fight. But, wow, what a great fight that was between two Muay Thai warriors. Remember, Malatesta went up in weight to fight Song Kao, flew all the way from Italy after his success against Senchai to fight someone who's the complete opposite style of yeah. Senchai. Senchai uses his footwork, he moves away from the danger. A very technical fighter. Very technical. Clinch and knee moving forward, but we didn't see so much clinch and kneeing from him. He went more for the right roundhouse kick, which connected quite a lot. Did. And I was also impressed with his hands as well. We didn't see a lot of that in the last fight. It's like you said, he really wanted to clinch against Elad, but this time Sonkow, maybe he's improved his technique with regards to the punching. I think it paid dividends, but is it enough to win the fight? We're about to find out. Let's get the official confirmation of the result. I mean, how tiring would it be for these two if it went to a draw and they had to do an extra fourth round? Well, some saw a drawing roll. That was an extension round. จากการนับคะแนนดูว่าจะลุยต่อไหมยกสี่หรือว่าใครจะเข้าวินเป็นผู้ชนะกันนะมาครับเขาหรือดำดีครับเด็กครั้งนี้เขาหรือดำดีเ
on Otsikov doing the right thing and it's called off, it's waved off. Congratulations, Dave He's a bully. <laughs> I'm just surprised what I just saw. What a performance again. I mean, he started off slowly as if he's just... What's the best way to say? Basing his opponent, so to speak. But then that left hand came at such a speed that even you say Bolt be proud of. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see that hand again. Like you said, all of a sudden, crack, this one here, bang, oh, how on earth did he get up from that? And the poker face that he kept as well, he, his facial expressions did not change whatsoever. You know, in the past we had a fighter who was nicknamed the Death Mask. I think that belongs to Tegnum in this current generation. Everything that Dengnan throws is so powerful. What a powerhouse. He very rarely just throws, you know, jabs. Just a big, he goes all the time for the knockout. And he usually, unlike tonight, finds it. Honestly, I feel sorry for anyone who is keeping up with the stats. You know, how many punches, how many kicks did he throw in that one round? I want to know how many knockouts he's achieved as well. You saw that Deng Nung actually showed mercy towards the end. Something we're not used to seeing. I mean, oh, you can see he held his hand up, but Deng Nung didn't really care, moved in. That's up for the referee to do. And rightly so, he waved it off. Six, seven? Yeah. I'll have to recheck that. All right, here we go. Main event of the evening from Brazil in the white corner, Danilo Reis. Black corner, Sanchai, PK, Sanchai, Muay Thai, Jim. Weight is at 68 kilos. And Aaron wishes we can grow hair just like that. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Absolutely. But not anytime soon. All right, here we go, round one. Sanchai already starting off with his signature shuffle. Oh. Then an axe kick there to Reese. Reese then looks at that right high kick to the head of Sanchai. Reese going for the low kicks early on, but Sanchai oh, with the left head kick. kick. And he stays. Left hand, left knee by Sanchai. The elbow. Oh my goodness. The elbow. What a That's roll. what caught Danilo. Rolling back the years. Beautiful combination there by the legend. Danilo was already on wobbly knees from the head kick with that elbow. That took him down. Surely Sancha is going to be looking to try and take out Reese now. Reese looking okay though. Oh, good boxing skills there by Sancha. He's headhunting Kevin. Got to wonder what sort of state is Reese in at the moment. Took that head kick, took the elbow from Sancha. Is he 100%? I don't think so, Aaron. Yeah, he's backing up and backing up. Not attacking at this moment, it just seems like Sanchai is toying with him. Good body shot there by Sanchai. Good knee again to that same spot. There's that elbow again, and another elbow. Looking for a third. A little bit of uh, mercy there from Sanchai. Sanchai is on fire here tonight. I'm sure Danilo didn't see the funny side of it though, but the fans here certainly did. Low kick attempted by Reese. Sanchai backing him up into that corner. Oh, down he goes again! Something to the body! I wasn't even aware of what happened! I couldn't see it from the angle that I had. I mean, we saw the hook coming in from, San, from, from Danilo, but something caught Danilo. And that's a win for Sanchai, PK, Sanchai, Muay Thai Jim. A KO victory in the very first round for the legend, the face of Muay Thai. Absolutely incredible. Fair to say, Aaron, he rolled back the years of that match. Yeah, what a way to make that comeback after that draw in Italy.
was exactly what he needed. He's still got it. He definitely has. Let's see if we can have a replay and see what happened, because I actually missed it. I didn't actually see it on the monitor. The camera was behind. It's all smiles in the corner of Senchai. Such a great representation of Thailand. What happened? Oh, well, we're going to go back earlier in the round. You see the initial knockdown as well. This is I mean, the combination that left high kick, and then Sanchai knew that he was dazed. And here Looked comes the elbow. Knee. Oh, it was right the right hand. hand. I thought it was yeah. the elbow. Sneaky right hand as well. Certainly did not see that one coming. I believe this was the shot that might have ended it. No, not yet. This was the mercy elbow, I'd, I'd, ah, I'd say. Right. <laughs> we need to back that camera up just a little bit. It must have been a knee, a knee to the body, I'm assuming. Here we go, maybe. I think that's the angle we initially saw oh, from him. Oh, there you go. The hook to it, the body. I think it was basically a straight left hand to the liver. By the way, for those that don't know, Sanchai does have a professional boxing background. He was undefeated in, what, six or seven bouts? Yeah. Before deciding that it wasn't for him and went back to doing what he loves, and that is Muay Thai. I've been Aaron Suri Sonsan and joining me. Thank you and see you next time. Gampang Pet Province. He has a total of 81 fights, 61 victories, 18 losses, and two draws. First fight of a scheduled eight fights here this evening at Thai Fight. This Thai fight has been organized with the initiative to collect donations in order to purchase medical equipment for Wat Saman Ratanaram Hospital. Guido Ronco from Spain in the white corner. And Chai Buri Luxing Nam Chai from Thailand in the black. 63 kilos and let's see if we get a knockout in the very first round. I wouldn't be surprised. Low kick there by Chai Buri. Good snapping left hand there by Ronco. And again with that left hand. Of course, we know Ronco, he is a Bangla Stadium champion. True. But, you know, Bangla Stadium is not exactly known as a big major stadium, but Thai Fight is definitely a big major promotion. Yeah, that's that's why I'm saying this opportunity for Chai Buri is huge right now. This is life-changing. For Ronco, I mean, if he manages to get the win here tonight, he'll definitely be invited back. That's true as well. Remember, just 22 years of age is Ronco. 26 for Chai Buri or Gulab Kao as he was previously known. So already him attacking with the knees straight down the middle and that's exactly how he got it done in his previous bout. And what a team that was. Yeah, getting the crowd off the feet here in Chachong South. Attempted low kick but blocked by the Spaniard. Good left hand there by Chai Buri, acknowledged by Ronco. Solid left hand there. But Ronco took it well, he's delivering left hands of his own now. Good solid knee there by Chai Buri, something that Kevin alluded to earlier. Yeah, but a really nice knee guard from Ronco. Something he needs to be careful with because maybe he doesn't want to be in a clinch and knee battle against Chai Buri. As we alluded to earlier, how we know how much damage he can do with those knees. Good battle so far in round number one of a scheduled three rounds. There's that knee again, Kevin. Just slipping in it. Looking for the elbow strikes as well. I was about to say, just earlier I heard Ronco's corner telling him that he needs to attack with elbows, but it was Chai Buri getting yeah. the elbow instead. Not sure if they're telling Guido or they're telling Chai Buri. Big knee straight down the middle from, I was about to say Gulab Kao, but <laughs> Chai Buri. His elbow hunting also. That's the thing with fighters who are really good with the elbows. Not only do they throw elbows, they throw knees as well. You cover up with the elbows, they're going to wait for that opening, throw the knee, wait for you to drop the guard, and then throw that big, sickening elbow. 
Yeah, another elbow being stuck through the guard there by Chai Barik. Good balance there from Guido, stay on his feet. Chai Barik pushing forward. Ronco having to fight off the back foot. Another stabbing right knee there by the Thai fighter. I don't think there's any doubt that Chai Bari is in the driver's seat right now. He is in control of this fight. More teams to the midsection. And a solid right knee to end the round here at Thai Fight. A solid round there from the Thai fighter, Chai Bari. Looks Sing Nam Chai, of course, making his debut here at Thai Fight. He'd be on the big tie fight yeah, show, true. in fact. Good elbows, good knees as well as he pushed forward. Ronco didn't do a bad job of covering up the majority of the round, but you're not going to win the round by just doing that. You've got to do more. Big round. Hello, I'm Kevin Amlid, and, and this is Aaron Suri Sampan. And, and don't Phoenix forget, don't forget to round. subscribe to Tie Fight International. And already, you can see Ronco is stunned, my goodness! Unbelievable action here. There's a count. What a big right hand. Is a left hand or right hand? I've completely missed it, but Ronco is stunned. Cool. What's that? Chai Barino, cool cow, moving in here for the kill. <laughs> Looking for that right knee again to the body, left high kick by Rondo. And if Chai Bury wasn't in oh! control of the first round, he's definitely in control of the second round. Another smashing elbow to the face there by Chai Bury. More knees to the midsection. Chai Bury has come out in this round, looking to end the fight. I mean, I thought he was looking to end the fight in the first round, but definitely in the second round, he wants to finish this already. Swinging right hand there from Ronco, but wide of the mark. But the big knee down the middle, that's been the real factor in this fight so far. Chaiburi, he just wants to get the job done. I think there's a taxi waiting for him outside, Aaron. Single left kicks there by Ronco. Again, he just cannot keep moving back like this. He's got to try and stand his ground. Easier said right. than done. <laughs> Good point. For the right hand coming in here by Chaiburi. And more needs to the mix section. That's better by Ronco. Yeah, much better, but he needs to start moving forward. I mean, show his aggression. He did so well when he was throwing the hands in the first round. I think he's completely forgotten that for some reason. You know, it's hot in here. We're undercover. Not, not many Thai fights have a roof. I wonder if that will affect the fights at all, because it is very hot, very humid. I mean, you remember not long ago we were in Sisa again, and there was a roof yeah. on her. And oh, good hands coming in here by Ronco. But a solid right hand in return by Chai Marie. And again. How is he still on his feet? I don't understand how he's taking these shots. Left elbow there by Ronco, and then a right. This could be a battle of fitness the further it goes. Well, one thing's for sure, I don't think Chai Bari is tiring anytime soon. Ronco looking rather fresh as well. Still in that combination of hands. But the main difference is Ronco was not, well, Ronco did not get the knockdown. He was knocked down early on in this round. Might have missed it on your screens, but I'm sure we'll see it on the replay. Oh, nice body shot there, and a left hook. Left uppercut also by the Spanish fighter. Then goes in with the knee. End of round two. Wow, action packed here at Thai Fight. <laughs> the camera was on us, we didn't actually see this knockdown. It was a solid right hand there by Chai Bari. Oh, and then he looked like he was okay, then he stumbled. It was actually a strange knockdown in the end. But after that, both fighters went at it. I was actually impressed with the way Ronco was able to fight back into the fight. I feel like that knockdown actually did wake him up. And I've got to say, I thought it looked the fresher of the two by the end of the round. But we do see a lot of fighters like that, though. It takes a knockdown for them to really wake yeah, up. It's true. Big round coming up. There. Based on the stamina. And the fact, let's not forget, Jaibari fought, what, three weeks ago at Thai Fight League? Yeah, he did. So that could play. Oh, good right elbow there from Ronco. He's putting it on Chai Bari. Chai Bari fires back with a right hand of his own. What I absolutely love about Ronco is that he is not afraid to exchange with much more experienced fighters as you can see here. He's 
not letting the occasion get the better of him. Not at all. There's a lot of pressure on Chai Bari, let's not forget that. To be a part of the Thai fight roster is a massive thing for Muay Thai fighters here in Thailand. And he knows that it's firmly in his grasp. And he doesn't want to let it slip. Oh, good left hook there by Ron Ronco. Rocking back the head of Chai Bari. Now he's pushing Chai Bari back. Oh, it's, left and the right hand! It's exactly what we want to see. We want to see fighters take it to the Thai fight team. We want to see them try to knock them out, and that's exactly what Ronko's doing right now. Beautiful footwork there by Ronko to move around the ring and out of the way of Chai Bari. He desperately needs to throw hands. He's got to stay away from that clinch of Chai Bari. He's done quite a good job of that this round, though, I have to say. There's that right hand again. Chai Bari's a world of hurt. Good uppercut there from Ronko. And he's finally using weapons that work for him in the first round. He's using the strongest weapons he's got, and that is the punches, the boxing combinations. Excellent there from Ronco. Goes in with an elbow, though, and misses. Gets clipped with an elbow back. Like I said, at the end of the second round, it just felt like Ronco had more stamina. There was something there. Whereas Chibri looked like he did. He was fading just a little bit. It's evident of that here now in the third round. Chibri looks exhausted. As well, Bronco is still in shape. He must take advantage of this situation. He must start going forward. He's got to try and stay away and get out of the clinch. I must say, though, he's doing a good job on the back foot. Chibri stepping forward and eats one and two oh, again. Big right hand there, knocking Chibri back against the ropes. This is a big round for Bronco. Huge. He's winning the round by far right now. Good right high kick. Chibri wobbled once again. He needs to push forward. He needs to try and knock oh, Chibri out. Elbow. That's the only chance he has right now of winning the fight. I think though, Chibri is walking forward. He's not covering up. There was opportunities there for Ronko to take it to Chibri even more than he did. But overall, what an amazing fight. A back and forth war. It will go to the judge's foot. I think due to that knockdown in the second round, it will go in favor of Chibri. But I'm no judge. That's right. For those watching on Thai Fight International YouTube, please write in the comments who do you think won and did you enjoy the fight? What a war though. What a spectacular Thai Fight debut for both these gentlemen. I did see in the comments a lot of people saying done in one. Easy for Jai Bari. Let's have a look at the highlights. Yeah, I believe that third round was all Ronco, the Spaniard. Made himself proud with that performance. One of the things that Chibri was forgetting in that third round, as you can see here, was covering up. There was no guard at all. And he made it relatively easy for Ronco, and I just think that was a sign of fatigue. Yeah, it was. There's no doubt about it because he just fought so well in the first and second round. The winner is Saibure Lu Sing Na Chai from Thailand! Yeah, there you have it. Enough done in the first and second rounds. Congratulations to Chaibari, Lu Sing Na Chai, Guido Ronko. You've made your home nation. Second bout, Son Kao, Cho Ha Payak from Thailand. Amir Yousefi from Iran. You can see there, Bezad Rafiq Daust, who actually fought on Thai fight in its inception. That's around right, he fought 10 against- 10 years ago. He, yeah, about 10 years ago, he fought against EQ Sang. I think he's also fought Liam Harrison on Thai fight as well. Yeah, I believe it was uh, in, in, the, in the tournament, in fact. Wow. That was in, back in 2010. Long time ago. And now he's a trainer. There he is. Trainer of a lot of Iranian fighters. Yeah, and owner of Bezad Warrior Academy. Oh, left eye kick out of nowhere from Yusefi. Didn't even touch gloves. Or should I say, didn't even touch rope. Go left hand coming in as well. Yeah, very good start from Yusefi, showing the power that he possesses. Stunning inside thigh kicks as well but there by Yusefi. And the credit to Son Cal, keeping his cool, keeping his composure. I like it when tall fighters fight tall, the way that Yusef is fighting now. But here comes Song Kao. 
you've got to love Giuseppe's oh. style. I mean, he's very in and out here. He's very powerful as well. Very quick on his feet. Right high kick there from Son Cao. Son Cao aware of the weapons now of Giuseppe. He's got to be very careful of those long limbs. And and this is what hands. he's got to do. He's got to break the distance and get as close as possible. That's where he's going to win this fight. Because off, off the back foot, it's been all Yusefi so far. Now, if you take a look at the left thigh of Son Cao, it's already red just from those kicks early on in oh! the round. Good knees coming in here by the Iranian. You've got to ask yourself, does Yusefi really want to clinch up against Son Cao? That's exactly what Son Cao does best. There's that inside kick again. And a team to the face. And that is going to rile up Son Cao. Left hook there from Son Cao. Oh, and then Yusefi just walked into a body kick. And, and another again. kick. Huge kicks coming in from Son Cao, and they clinch up once again. Left elbow attempt by, there by Yusefi. That's the second time he's charged in with that elbow in this round. Oh, another solid kick to the body there by the Iranian. And again. You've got to love the output that we're seeing from Yusefi in this fight, but Son Cao not giving up. Son Cao continuously pushing forward, perhaps thinking about clinching up against his opponent. Oh, good right hand there by Yusef. He got cocky and went for the Superman punch. And that's something you just can't do. Leave your hands down against someone like Son Cao. Trying to go for the question mark kick there. Oh, yeah. This left himself open. Good combination coming in from Son Cao. He's battered and bloodied already in this opening round. Gotta say, Yusefi's hands are a bit too low for my liking. I'm sure Son Cao is thinking oh! of making a There's that running step in elbow for the third time in this round. Gotta say, highly impressed there by Yusefi. Yeah, doing a terrific job, but those hands are a bit too low for my liking, Aaron. I want to see him throw that low kick again, because like you said, it was connecting and causing problems to Song Kao. I mean, if you don't believe us, just take a look at Song Kao's thigh right now. Oof. What a round that was. I'm gonna go with the Iranian. Stay with us, round two coming up. from that first round. You see Amir Yusefi in the white corner and Son Kao Shahapiak in the black. And what an action-packed round it was. But the bigger news is right now, Aaron, it seems like in the break, Yusefi's complaining about perhaps a broken wrist. That's a real shame if it's true. He's still on his stool and I feel like his trainer, Bezad, has just told the referee that he cannot continue. Yeah, because what an action-packed round ah, that was. I mean, I was he, actually, was, I was, he was doing a good job as well. Was, he really was and I was really looking... round I did can he continue you've got to wonder because no Bezad is saying no and the referee giving him a standing count and yeah. that is it that is such a shame ah I'm so sad I mean the crowd cheering of course we're here in Thailand and they're cheering for that Thai fighter but I mean he put, I was, he was he put on such an impressive performance in that opening round that oh, he's as devastated as I am yeah, if not yeah. more so it looks like like you said it's a problem with the wrist I hope he's not broken yeah, same. I mean, he was complaining about it, you know, during the break, and you know, we couldn't help but worry. His his cornerman Bezad, or his, the, the, the the gym owner, was just looking to try to find a doctor to check on the wrist, and there you have it. I mean, he can't continue. But either way, congratulations to Son Kao Shahapiak for winning by TKO in the second round. I guess that's what what happens when you hit hit a head of steel like Son Kao's. It's to damage your own wrist, though. I, yeah. I must say, it really is. I mean, it is a brutal sport, but beautiful at the same time. And it's still tough to see injuries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 If, if that's correct, that's great cameraman work here. Yeah. But we don't know. We don't know where it occurred. We don't know where, we don't know where I mean. But I'm hoping it's a short term injury and we get to see this fight again because I mean Yusefi the win on the opening round deserves a rematch he really does he did a fantastic job in there anyway stay with us next up we've got Thailand versus Thailand so I push it out of the winner is Son Khao so half a young from Thailand 
อนแสดงความยินดีด้วยครับกับผู้ชนะครับเป็นกำลังใจกับผู้ที่แพ้นะครับไม่เป็นไรมีโอกาสเรากลับมาลุยกันต่อไดแต่เป็นกำลังใจให้อาเมียยูเซฟี่นะครับถือว่าเป็นนักมวยที่เก่งและก็ดีมากถูกต้องรอเขากลับมาแก้แค้นอีกครั้งหนึ่งนะครับขอให้ปลอดภัยด้วยนะครับแล้วกลับมาเจอกันกับอภิภาคกับมวยไทยหายไฟไฟท์ส์อาร์ฟรอมไทยแลนด์ซอว์วูฟบีแบ็กวิดไทยไฟท์ลีกเน็กซ์วีคแอนด์ฟอร์ดีฟิซิบิลฟิวเจอร์เอ
Yeah, you can see Sansuk is extremely frustrated, which will probably play into the game plan of Busan. Big right hand there from Sansuk, connecting flush. You can see this blood on the ropes, the left-handed ropes of uh, Busan. Coming from the nose, I believe, of Sansuk. Oh, right hand that time. Or was it a left? Oh, it nice uppercut. Right uppercut, left hand there by Busan. And Sensuk just grabs a hold of him momentarily. Great technique though by Busan. He really has got good hands. Yeah, he does. Good solid left knee as well there by Busan. Really good timing on his strikes as well. But big left hand there connecting for Sensuk. But Busan doing a good job using his reach to his advantage. Another good kick there from Busan. There as well, he just he's ducking everything that Sensuk's throwing or he's grabbing a hold of him. It's frustrating Sensuk. Yeah, it's tiring and demoralizing when you what's the best way to put it when you punch air like that. Yeah. Tiring as well. Definitely. Completely draining his energy now, Sansuk. Sensuk just can't get going. He's doing everything in his power to try and be the aggressor and connect. Busan is frustrating, like I said. He really is. And again, he just can't get going. When you fight against someone like Busan, you just sort of don't know what you can hit them with. You don't know what to hit them with next. I mean, whatever plan B was or plan A was for Sansuk, he definitely has to go to plan B or C right now. Swing and a miss again there by Sansuk. As he backs up Busan again into the corner. But there he is again, he grabs a hold. This frustrates Sansuk. I guess the question though for this round, has he done enough, Busan, to take the round? Yeah, because he is connecting to Sansuk, he is moving forward, he is hitting the mark, and he's throwing a lot of attacks. Has Busan thrown enough significant strikes as well? That would be a question. Big left hand once again from Busan connecting. Oh, good hands though coming in from Sansuk. End of round two. Stay with us. Third and final round of this fight coming up. I'm really not sure how to score that second round. Because like I said, I don't think Busan was in any danger. Oh, but he was caught a few times. He, yeah, he was. Did he throw anything of significant in that second round to take the round? That left Maybe hand. Maybe that one. Yeah. <laughs> the left hand, I was but about was, to say, was always proving deadly. It was definitely more back and forth than we saw in the opening round, of course. That's right. I mean, he could have gone either way that round. Tempted, you know, to give that one to Sensor. Likewise. Based on the fact that it was fairly even in terms of striking, but it was Sensor who was being the aggressor. And based on that, and that alone. Could be wrong. I'm not a judge. Yep. But if I'm right. Third round means win the round, win the fight. So potentially it's a round apiece. This third and final round means everything. Well, fair to say that every single round is as important as the other. <laughs> also very true. Here we go, Sansuk pushing forward as he did in the first and second oh. round, but eating a head kick immediately. Sansuk going back again with that left hand. Well, perhaps Busan was listening to what we were saying about those significant strikes. Much better here though by Sensuk. He's been aggressive, but he's actually connected as well. Good right hand there has actually blooded the nose of Busan. Good team to the face though by Busan. Busan starting to struggle just a little bit now with the attacking prowess of Sensuk. Yeah, for those that don't know, I mean fighting the Fimu style, the Moi Fimu style, the whole three rounds, it's very difficult. Oh, nice body kick by Sensuk. Especially when you've got such an aggressive fighter like Sansuk closing you down all the time. And that's the thing, he's just going to keep on coming. And with this heat, it's very difficult for Busan to fight off the back foot like he's doing and try and counter strike effectively. Busan just making it so difficult for Sansuk. Big left hand again from Busan. Picks the body by Sansuk. That could be his pathway to victory, targeting the body instead of the head. Yep. I mean, you just got to love the footwork of Busan, though. He knows exactly where to move out. Yeah, Sensuk, that hand to the body, then tries to connect to the head, but unsuccessfully does so. Back to the body he goes. And yeah, that strategy is working for him right now, attacking the body, then going for the head. I mean, once he attacks the body, the guard lowers, the head is open. It's 
much more difficult to move out of the way of body strikes, of course, as well. Yeah, it really Sensuk, is. Sensuk, he's going to keep trying to try go for that knockout. We know how he fights. Slowing down just a wee bit, though. Nice Sensuk. body kick there by Sensuk. Again, left hook. Oh, but he gets clipped with the right hand there. Sorry, with the left hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were correcting yourself there. <laughs> That was a deep breath by Busan as well. It he really looks tired. Oh, nice right elbow there coming in from Sensuk. I mean, you've got to give this round to Sensuk just for his output. Busan's very good though, holding his hands in the air. Just deflecting those punches. This time though, he's covering up. Can we talk about like, the significant strikes though. I mean, it's just, it's just got to come from Sensuk at this point of the fight. I think for the first time in the fight, We've seen Busan in semi-survival mode. Oh, good elbow there by Sensuk. Almost dropped there, Sensuk, or it seemed that way. End of the oh. third and final round. We will go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. How do you see it, boys and girls watching on YouTube? Do you think Sensuk took it, or do you think Busan did enough in rounds one and two to take it? Busan absolutely exhausted. <laughs> Sensor running around the ring like a madman. Welcome to Thai Fights, Busan. But possibly, I think it's two rounds to Sensor and one round to Busan. The second round and the third, but Sensor good enough to take the fight. Unofficially, of course. Unofficially. Does Busan need a. He did great things in that opening round. I thought if he continu can, could continue like he was, then he would win the fight. But Senso just keeps going. He's non-stop. He's got four lungs, that boy. Yeah, he really does. There we can see the highlights of that third and final round where Busan was pretty much just covering up and not counter-striking. Yeah, I find it very difficult to give that third round to Busan, especially for what nah, we see no for the chance. replays yeah, here. Of course, it's all Senso. Second round though was more even. Oh, what a right elbow that. Busan did well to stay on his feet, to be honest. I'm Let's see what the decision is. The winner is... Sansuk no ko chok chai! The break corner! Hey! Hey! Go on, Sky Club, you need to win the hat. Go on, so see. You gotta give it to Sansuk. Chasing the fight after round one. Fourth bout of the scheduled eight bouts here at Thai Fight. Chu Di Phuong Thuy from Vietnam in the white corner. And Vero Valrujarawong from Myanmar in the black corner. you got to love it seeing this international flair. And there you see Kru Satien, Ajahn Satien, one of the best Muay Thai trainers in the game. Here we go. Myanmar taking on Vietnam. In Thailand. That's right, round number one. Live. Chang Chang Sao. Thai Fight Asia. Sorry, Thai Fight International now. You can already see Vero oh. pushing Fung Tui back. Fung Tui, I mean, she needs to bring everything she's got to Vero because that's exactly what Vero is doing right now. Press so far with the hands of Fung Tui though. It's not just one, it's not just one strike, it's combinations that are coming in. Fung Tui though, keeping her confidence. Good left jab there. Keeping calm. Oh, right hand coming in though. From and Vero. Raj of Vero is just coming in hard. And again with those combination strikes. She's looking good so far in this opening round as the Vietnamese fighter. And Vero showing her respect as well, not just diving in. Yeah, usually in Vero fights, she dives in and she tries to get that knockout early, just like she tried to do there, but showing just a little bit of restraint. Oh, good body strike there by Vero. Oh, nice left hand as well by Vero. Then goes to a left kick to the body. A sneaky right hand again to the body. That was nice. 
Yeah, fantastic. What we see from Vero, as usual, I must say. But sometimes we have seen Vero take it to the third round, but then get just a little bit tired. Maybe that's what the Vietnamese fighter there is trying to do. It's all punches so far by the Vietnamese fighter. She has got good hands, of course, but can't just rely on those hands. Yeah, Fung Tui, she really needs to have oh, more in her strikes. Better. And she does it right there. A team to the face, and Vero is not going to like that one bit. A little bit of blood trickling from the nose of Fung Tui. And Fung oh. Tui throwing those right hands at Vero, something Vero might have not appreciated at all. This is impressive. Oh, good left hand though by Vero. Equally as impressive. End of round one. Close round. How do you score it? Coming up next. What an amazing first round that was. It's Yuji Fung Tui in the white corner. And from Myanmar, it's Vero Rojrawong in the black corner. And it was a pretty even round. And honestly, Aaron, Vero didn't get to do what she usually does, go in and try to run her opponents down, because I'm just saying, Fung Tui was just, at moments, one step ahead of Vero, in fact. You know, after the round, you try and recap what's happened in your brain. You try and score the round, of course. Exactly. Really difficult one. Really very even indeed. Both fighters had their shots. More clear for us. And the viewers at home, of course. But yeah, very impressed with uh, Fung Tui. Yeah, Chiu Tui Fung Tui is doing such a good job in there. Oh, good right hand there by Vero. You do get the feeling that Fung Tui, the size comparison, might hinder her. Because you can see that when Vero strikes, she's got a longer reach. She does, but as you can see here, Vero is turning it on in the second oh, good round. Right hand. Big right hand there from the Vietnamese fighter. The Sea Games gold medalist, not phased by what bit? That's one of the things about Vietnam. They have some tremendous fighters, but not massive opportunities for, for the professional sport, of course, due to the laws there. Fair to say, we want to see more of Fung Tui, no matter what. Oh, Fung good Tui. elbow there by Vero. She needs more of that. She really does. At this point, Vero is head hunting. I mean, I would like to see her attack the body as well. We've seen her do that so many times against other opponents. I'm not sure why she isn't doing it here against Fung Tui. But yeah, the boxing fundamentals of Wung Tui, almost 10 out of 10, I'd have to say. Yeah, Very impressive. She's definitely not making it easy for Vero. Now a small stalemate. Who's going to go first? Who's going to make the first mistake? Oh, solid right hand there by Fung Tui off the back foot. Fung Tui, I mean, what a right hand. I mean, that seemed to have stunned Vero just for a moment. Oh, good left though by Vero. Fight. Back and forth we go. I'll tell you what, the WMO need to change their rankings pretty <laughs> soon because Fung Tui is absolutely amazing. So impressed. She actually won that gold medal at 51 as well, so she's moving up in weight to fight Vero. Oh, good left hand on by Vero! Looked like the Vietnamese was just stunned for just a moment, but she's recovered now. Oh, we have three battles previous to this. I have to say, Technically wise, this might be the best fight we've seen tonight. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, and that's the end of the second round. What a round! Stay with us, round three, the third and final round coming up next. Aaron, I'm going to open this round with a question. Okay, Has Vero found her match? Well, clearly. Yeah, that was without unbelievable for what we saw from Fung Tui. I mean, I've been trying to learn that name all week and I still think I've, I, got, I got it wrong, but I, I've got to perfect it because I'm impressed with what I've seen from the SEA Games gold medalist. I think whatever happens in this fight, I would not be surprised if we saw a rematch somewhere down the line between these it two. It has to happen. It really does. I mean, this, I mean, we've only seen two rounds, but this could be the tie fight match of the year already. It's incredible. It's been thrilling and it's been a pleasure to sit here and watch these two ladies perform. I'm really interested to see how they do so. Chief Stream think that this is one all going into the third and final round, and I can't disagree with that. Would you be surprised though if this was a one all match so far? Let's not forget, 
if it is a draw after three rounds, we will then go to a fourth decisive round. And I, I can see that happening at the moment. Let's see what happens in this third and final round. That Girls. jab to the body there. By Seems like she's slowed down in the, she does, the third round. A kick to the body. Another kick to the body, though, in reply by Fun Tweet. Vera turning it up in this third round. She knows she has to do something special. Good hands and good kicks there from good Vera. Power. Fun Strong Tweet is in trouble. He's turned her back. She's turned her oh, back. Oh, there's an issue. There's an issue. Oh, my goodness. Vero turning it up when she needed to. And that is why Vero is one of the most dangerous fighters in the world. She knows when to capitalize on a moment, and she did it right there. I can only imagine it was a body strike, and Vero knows it. She's going back trouble. up on the bodies again, and it looks like it's going to be it. That it is, is it. It's all over. That is it. She is still the queen of Kachuk, still the queen of Lethwe. It is Vero for with a win by TKO in the third round. Absolutely spectacular. Never, ever doubt Vero. Talk about going into the trenches. Vero accepted that war. And boy, in the third round, did she come out a swinging. Straight to the body of Wung Tui with power, with aggression. And she gets the job done in the third and final round. Oh my goodness, I can hear the people. Let's have a look at that. I think it was that right body strike there. You it know, happened so fast, but sometimes in life you just have to bite down on your gum shield and just swing. And that's exactly what Vero did. Early on in the third round, I thought Vero was tired. I thought she was slowing down, but no, she turned it up. There's nothing Fung Tui, even though she had a good performance, there was nothing she could do about Let's the have barrage a look at of right strikes. Hand there. Bang! And I think that was the one that did it. Yeah, you could see that she was running away in pain. Wow. If Fung Tui wants to run this back at any time, please get in contact with Tai Fight because I would be happy to watch this again. She would be very welcome. But congratulations to Vero. She dug very, very deep in this fight. Deeper than we've ever seen her. And she proves once again why she is the queen of Karchuk. And we were saying that she needed to attack the body, and she did just that. Credit Let's to get, the boxing yeah. coaches at Tiger. Boy, Tiger, that was just spectacular. Let's get the official decision from our MCs. The winner is Vero Warujirawo from Myanmar. Oh, ยินดีด้วยนะฮะแล้วก็เป็นกําลังใจกับทั้งคู่เลยใช่สู้กันได้สมศักดิ์ศรีมวยหญิงแห่งไทยไฟมากเลยขอบคุณจริงๆที่ม
trying to fight, fight with fight. Oh, there's a big grimace on the face there. Good knee though by Bar. He's trying to dig deep here. And stay in there with Sayok. Trying to say Sayok looks in tremendous shape from what we've seen right now. It really does. Yeah, going to the body, digging a knee deep into Bar once again. Left kick there by Sayok. Needing that left hand once again into the body of the Welshman. Looks like Luke Bar has managed to gain his focus once again and he's back into this fight, but so far extremely impressed what we see from Sayok. Sayok turning back. Oh, good elbow again. there from Sayok. I think he got through the guard of Luke Bar. Oh, looks like he's in a lot of trouble. He's in the corner right now, maybe going down soon. Yeah, there's a huge yeah. elbow there from Sayok and the referee has no choice but to give a standing eight count. I think there's an issue with his right eye. He was holding it like there was something wrong with it momentarily at least. Looks like he's ready to go again. He's game. Spinning back elbow attempt there from Sion. Don't often see that. No, we do not. Oh, another elbow coming in from Sion. And a right hook. No, we do often see elbows from Sion. The huge body punch there from Sion and the body kick. Sion is dominating this match so far. Oh, good hand there from Bar. But again with that knee strike. And a cumulative effect. Bar goes down after those strikes to the body. Second time in the round, if you're down for three times, the match is called off. Gotta say it, Aaron, we've been waiting to see this Sayok for a very long time. This is the most dangerous Sayok we've seen in a very long time, and he's impressing here tonight. We've seen a lot of body strikes, haven't we, this evening? Yeah, we have. Another body strike there from Sayok, and Sayok is probably oh. gonna win by TKO here. down, and it's all over. Three knockdowns in a round. Side fight rules means that the fight is done. It's a TKO victory in the first round for Sayo Pumpumpum, who looked amazing here tonight, and his fans are extremely happy to see what he did in the ring here as well. Taking off the weight, coming cutting down to 70 kgs. Honestly, he rolled back the clock by about 15 years in that fight. He did, he really did. want to see here on tie fight let's take a look at some of the replays and that was the shot that ended the fight that was more of a push down in my opinion yeah it was it wasn't a straight punch was it it's more of a momentum strike and then again you know there's no var in muay thai <laughs> so the referee <laughs> just had to make a decision there he thought enough was enough and pulled the fight yeah you can already see that luke bar just lost his balance and bad is remonstrating a little bit but the other knockdowns, they were pretty clean. Sion looks fresh. Phenomenal. Looks aggressive. Like I said, turning back the clock. Luke Barr didn't know what hit him. That's the first stoppage in the first round we've seen here tonight. But Luke Barr back to his feet. In good condition, thankfully. But be. Incredible. Sayo Pum Ban Muang from Thailand. Hey. Hey. Yeah, the you play curtain. Kam lang jai hai kapu pa do it ha. So kan mai dai na kap. Today we have a little bit of a chance to have a rematch. Dai. So I told you na ha. Today one in the round is shock to the eye. There is a nut lang ta. แน่นอนนะครับรับรองว่าตาใสกิ้งเป็นยังไงติดตามได้นะฮะไทยไฟลูกหลวงพ่อโสธรครับบิ๊กนิวส์คัมมิ่งซูนสอยูวันน่าเก็ตยูโฟนอ่านและสแกนนั่นคิวอาร์โคดเพราะว่าบิ๊กสิ่งส์จะคัมมิ่งที่นี่ในไทยไฟเราก็มีการแสดงบุกซิ่งส์ชอตส์และแสดงกล้วยจากนักแสดงและเราก็มีดิสคัพต์สำหรับธุรกิจไทยไฟเพื่อนๆเช่นนี้ the Thai Fight Hotel that is now open in Koh Samui in the southern part of Thailand, the beautiful island of Koh Samui, where once upon a time we used to have a lot of Thai Fight events which we don't seem to have anymore, <laughs> which I'd love to have again. wonder if there's a staff discount. One would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. Sixth bout, Thailand versus Iraq. Inside kick there, oh see, straight away Zubadi looking back. 
three-piece combination. Yeah, Zubadi came in with the aggression. We thought he would come with taking down Nongo early on, but the referee telling him you can't take more than two steps before, or you have to you have to attack at least when you take two steps. Or at least that goal, so Zubadi not do that. That's a kick to the groin, and you can actually do that. That is not illegal. You can't knee the groin area, but you can kick. Red Nongo showing good sportsmanship, not continuing. Oh, nice right high kick there from Nongo, and a good left hook as well. Oh, here comes Sabadi though. Sabadi with some huge hands on Nongo. Doesn't seem to phase Nongo too much. Nongo pushing it forward once again. A little left hook. And a right hand there coming in. Sajjad could be in trouble right now. He's trying to fight back. And you have some fighters who clinch up, you don't try to get out of that situation. But then you have Sajjad Zubaidi who tries to fight out of that situation. What a warrior. And let's not forget that he wants to be in there with Nongo. Yeah, he wanted this rematch bad. Huge right. kicks from Nongo. And the left hook. I think Nongo will be working on his technique, it seems. We do say many a time that he is one dimensional. Oh, good left hook there from Sabaidi. Seems like he's still headhunting as usual, though. Yeah, we were saying, weren't we? Start to throw strikes to the body as well. Oh, oh good left the hook there! That hurts Sabadi. Sabadi, I believe, already lasting longer than him. Oh, good right hand there! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing that I think yeah. Sabadi might have been getting when he has his huh? rematch. Right now, he's fighting a different animal. The fighter that he fought last time out is not the same fighter this time. Longo has definitely improved. Oh, that shit, Longo, though. He does have one loss on tie fight, but he seems to have made up for it by the way he's uh, fighting right now. Oh, good left hand there from Sabaidi in the corner of him and tell him to move forward after that left hand. Boy, by the left hand of the Iraqi fighter. Good knee though by Nong Ho. And Sabaidi missed an opportunity. So you know, one thing's for sure, he's doing a, a decent job of blocking the hands of Nong Ho, but he really needs to start blocking the kicks as well, because those are going to start building up. And the right hand sneaking through the guard of Sabaidi. Tells him to bring it. Bring it, but Sajjad needs to start moving forward himself. Nice low kick there from Sabaidi. Nice left hand as well. By the way, he's sneaking that one through. But it is a different Sajjad we're seeing, because usually we see Sajjad move forward. Four hands coming in him! By the right oh, but he's been clicked! Just now, he was starting to put pressure on Nong O. He gets knocked down for the first time in this fight. Well, second time if you count the first match as well. <laughs> Gonna have to hold on here. Close to the end of the first round. He wants to get out of it. I'm sure. Good shot to the midsection, and that's hurt him. His whole piece is out, out, and he's down for the second time in the very first round. I'm not sure he's gonna be able to get up. Bears that in his corner. He's telling him to do so. His corner. I mean, what great experience. He was telling him, don't rush. Wait, wait, and then get up when you can. But well, here comes no go again. Remember, three knockdowns, and it's all that over. Is that it. is it. One solid right hand. And that's all she wrote. We we're no wondering goal. if it's going to be. Hapayak knocks out Subaidi for the second time. We we're wondering if it's going to be revenge or repeat. And this time it was repeat. Lovely camera angles. <laughs> Another big victory for Nong Oh Shaw Hapayak. With blood dripping down his. As he fought tonight, Nongo has improved tenfold. But look, this is the first knockdown. Zabadi was fighting well, and then I didn't even see what happened. I'm just surprised. Is it is it that Zabadi's shots weren't hurting Nongo, or did Nongo just take it like a champ? Because he had his hands down when Zabadi was throwing shots at him, and then straight through the pipe. Just above the left ear, that was all she wrote. That was the third and final knockdown. I really thought Zabadi was actually going to make it to the bell. Yeah, likewise. But it, it wasn't was to be. Indeed. Congratulations, Nongo Cha Apayak. Stay with us. PTT is next. The winner is... Pusana Dega, Nong Ocho Hapa Yang from Thailand! Hey! Hey!
เดกับผู้ชนะครับเป็นใจกับผู้ที่พลาดไปจะไม่เป็นไรเพราะว่ามีที่ความพยายามไฮเอเวนเทจฟอร์ลานเซเว่นเดอะเพนอลติมัตบาวด์ออฟดีอีฟนิงเฮเรตไซไฟท์ในเดอะไวท์คอร์เนอร์ของจีนน่ะลาน
2006 or 2007 or something like that. Oh, please. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, one was them in the 90s and the other ones in the 2000s. All right, final bout of the evening. Tofik Abdulia from Georgia in the white corner. And Sanchai PK, Sanchai Muay Thai Gym in the black corner. 68 kilos for this one. Another rematch here at Thai Fight. The first one, of course, went the Thai's way. Nongo getting the victory against Sajad. So Baidi, is it going to go the Thai's way this time as well? Let's find out. I mean, what amazes me is how Sanchai is still able to fight at this level at this stage of his career. I mean, you were saying when you first started commentating on Thai Fight, maybe, <laughs> it's, <laughs> maybe I'll... Uh, 2015 I started. That's right. And Sanchai, I think, well, trying to do the math, is around 36 years of age. And I thought to myself, well, he's at the tail end of his career. I'm gonna, uh, just going to enjoy it. Because I never know, I might not see him ever again. <laughs> exactly, but how many years has it been now? And Sanchai doing a good Eight job. Eight years later, it. and yeah. I'm still commentating on his fights. It's unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. Oh, left high kick there from Sanchai. Just grazes the head of Abduliev. Doing a good job not buying into the occasion. I thought Sanchai was going to give his opponent a kiss there. He did, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He always does. <laughs> Might have missed that one. A little kick there from Adulayev. Kick to the body from Sanchai. Sanchai now moving forward. Good hands there from Sanchai. Absolutely incredible how he's managed to maintain this speed over so many years. What do you call that haircut that I'm really a sport? <laughs> no idea. Samurai is it? Whatever it is, the hair starting to get into his eyes right now and he can't even see. Left knee there to Sanchai to the body. Should have braided it, boy. And the last thing you want is your vision to be impaired fighting Sanchai. Oh, right hook, left body shot there from Sanchai going down to the body once again. Looking for that axe kick. I'm amazed by just how fast Sanchai is. The combinations have been they're just so unusual, they come out of nowhere. There's that accent once again, Abdulia covering up. Sanchai in the zone here at Thai Fight. You don't see too much Muay Thai fighters doing axe kicks, but Sanchai is the exception. It's everything. Yeah, I think most of the things that Sanchai does, no one else really does yeah, it. exactly. Completely unique style of fighting. That kick there from Sanchai. I don't know, I don't know. He's right now, I mean, He's had over 300 fights and maybe even more. Good knees there from yeah, Sanchai. Yeah, yeah. At this point of his career, it's like riding a bicycle for him. Sorry to those who can't ride a bicycle. Low kick attack there by Abdullah, but missed. He needs to step in if he wants to connect. Oh, oh, elbow over. strike from Sanchai. The left hand coming in, knocking down Abdullah. Find that with a trip, of course. Sanchai, dare I say, is enjoying himself out there. He is, and I'm really to get in the corner. Oh, solid left kick to the body. He's looking quick. Unbelievable. Ah. We were stood. Sorry, we sat at commentary booth just below him right now. I'm just amazed. I mean, that was so a kick, fast. elbow, and a knee. Pretty much all at the same time. I finally, get to use my catchphrase. If you blinked, you would have missed the combination. Oh, oh another combination, and down goes Abduliev. No, nope, no, nope, he's still up. Wow. Sanchai was shocked with that. Abdullah doesn't look too hurt. I mean, he got up immediately after that, but maybe he might be going down now. No. I just say in the fight, Sanchai going for his signature jab and knee again. End of round number one here at Thai Fight. It's a clinic by the GOAT. Stay with us, round two coming up next. Take a look at some of the replays from that first round, and it's clear to say that that was all Sanchai PK, Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. And it looked like he might have knocked down Abdulayev at one point, but the referee did not think so. So Abdulayev got right back up. But just some of the technique that Sanchai displayed, absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, he's on fire here tonight, he's looking fresh. Abdulayev, on the other hand, is looking like the villain from Kindergarten Cop. I've never seen that movie, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's about 10 people on the street who probably understand that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm surprised the referee didn't judge that to be a knockdown, if I'm being honest. There's the case that I've missed, unfortunately. <laughs> and there's his wife, who's also been enjoying herself here tonight.
<laughs> really got to learn his name. I mean, we see him every single event supporting Sanchai. All right, here we go, round two. Already a kick from Abdulayev, but Sanchai takes him down. Sanchai just so quick. 42 years of age, can you believe it? Abdulayev missing once again. Maybe Sanchai thinking about going for the bicycle kick, perhaps. Hey. And there he does! The cartwheel kick by the 42 year old Sanchai. He should take a point away. No, <laughs> no, how <laughs> dare you! Oh, Abdulayev nearly let into that kick. There's an axe kick once again. Worst case scenario is he actually knocks someone out with that bicycle kick, or not the bicycle kick, excuse me, the cartwheel kick. A yeah, bicycle kick would be unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> High kick there. Well, nice kick to the uh, lower section by Abdulayev. Outside kick. So the Georgia doing a good job keeping his composure, but he really needs at this point of the fight to start moving forward and bring the fight to Sanchai because right now the second round has been all Sanchai and the body shots just proves it. I do like the way that Sanchai switching levels. Yeah, say constantly making your opponent think. You just never know what's gonna come next. What are you saying on Sanchai? Sanchai is still pushing forward, going for the belly again. And the flying oh! knee! I haven't seen that one in a while from Sanchai. One thing's for sure, that knee connected. Oh, left hand to the gut. And again, he really has battered the midsection of Abdulayev. He continues to do so in this second round. And again. You know, despite the fact that he's 42 years of age, you know, I still think that Sanchai probably has the fastest knees, the fastest hands in Muay Thai today. Caught him with a left hook. And again, digging deep with that left shot to the body. Abdulayev is pretty much in survival mode right now, isn't he? Yeah, I would really hate to be in Abdulayev's position because he just doesn't know what he can do against Sanchai. But really, he needs to throw everything at Sanchai he's got, including oh, left the kitchen sink. Again, that left hand to the body. Time to oh, the left knee, and down goes Abdulayev. The last place he wanted to be was in the corner. Sanchai just went to work. Sanchai having a good workout here tonight. Oh, yes. But the combinations, an accumulation of the body strikes finally made Abdulia go down. He's going back to the body, of course he is. Down goes Abdulia for a second time. Deep breaths by Abdulia, back to his feet. Remember, one more knockdown in this round, and that will be it. We know what he's going to do. Straight back to the body, and again! The referee almost stopped Sanchai. the fight, but then Abdulia decided to fight back. Well done to Abdulia for staying into the match. He's desperate to try and make it to the end of the round. Oh, body strikes coming in! Oh, and, and, that strike. it. and that's it! It's all over! Go be going! Sanchai, PK, Sanchai, Muay Thai Kim, stops the opponent for the second time out. in a row. Here, that Thai fight. That's a TKO victory in the second round for Sanchai, the face of Muay Thai. Sanchai gets it done again. We saw Saya roll back the clock here tonight. Sanchai, dare I say, looked quicker than I've seen him in a long time. I have to say so as well. I mean, it seemed like the draw against Alessio Melatesta has woken him up. There's that respect we see in Muay Thai, not in the rule book, but usually after every single fight. No matter what level you're at, we see that respect. Yeah, an amazing clinic by Sanchai. He did everything he needed to do. He didn't take much damage at all. Off to try and take out Abdulayev, he was accurate as he ever was. Solid low kick there from really Sanchai. Was. But just the accumulation of strikes, non-stop from start to finish in that second round. Amazing. Honestly lost count of how many knees Sanchai connected with. All right, boys and girls. Glad you can join us. Thank you for joining us on the stream, Thai Fight International. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And we'll see you next Sunday for Thai Fight League.
the next big Muay Thai show will be in Lotbury in a few months' time. So, if you're interested in more car jerk action, where you want to see Thais versus Thais in a group stage into a tournament style format, then you can join us every Sunday for Thai Fight League. Thank you. And I've been Aaron Siri Sompan. I'm Kevin Amlid. And we'll see you next time on Thai Fight. Bye for now. ท่านชนะใช่ไหมครับชนะรางวัลกับฉีดนะครับกับนักมวย 20,000 บาทขอเรียนเชิญพลตรีกิติพันธ์รักไทยครับผู้อำนวยการสำนักสวัสดิการอาหารกองบัญชาการกองทัพไทยนะครับให้เกียรติมอบรางวัลนะครับ 20,000 บาทให้กับพี่สารชัยแต่ว่าตอนนี้ขอประกาศนะครับ The f i n a l i s สารชัยพี่แก่สารชัยมวยไทยเย้รับเงินรางวัลอาชี 20,000 บาทไปเลยนะครับออแน่นอนว่าสุดยอดจริงๆครับวันนี้รับไปเลยนะครับ 20,000 บาทครับผมยินดีด้วยมากๆนะครับทุกคนครับเอาละครับนี่คือเงินอาชีนะครับ 20,000 บาทนะครับจากพี่สันชัยนะครับมาขอกราบขอบพระคุณนะครับท่านบัตรีกิจพันธ์ไร้ไข่ไปอย่างสูงครับขอบพระคุณมากๆดีใจกับพี่แสนชัยด้วยนะจ๊ะใช่ครับขอบคุณพลตีกิจพันธ์รักไข่มากๆเลยนะครับที่มามอบเงิน 20,000 บาทนะครับให้ความสนุกกับนักมวยเรามากขึ้นนะครับโอเควีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีวีฮีว An event here in Lotbury Province. The object of the event, Luang Po Sutin or Pra Sopon Patanakun, the abbot of Wat Po Noi and the monk dean of Nong Muang District, Lotbury Province, aims to unite followers and devotees to build a statue of Luang Po Ben, a highly respected and compassionate monk within the Thai community. And it also aims to enhance tourism in the Ban Mi District, Lotbury Province. And it also aims. To be very entertaining for all the Thai fight fans around the world. Absolutely, and referee in charge is Bukit Prambayun. Here we go, round number one. You could imagine that Nong Oh wants to get this done early, as he always does. Good kick there, and a Ooh. return already by nice hands. Moradi. Indeed, good solid hands there from the 19-year-old who doesn't look 19, in my opinion. <laughs> no, he does not. <laughs> oh, good right hand there, attempted by Nong Oh, going in with a right kick to the body once again. You gotta wonder, has Nong Oh finally met his match here on Thai Fight? Good kick there by Nong Oh. Yeah, he's found a home for that right kick. We always said, didn't we, Nong Oh should punish the body more than he always tries to go for the head. And he seems to have listened. His techniques is, has been up to beautiful kicks here by Nong Oh. It's always good to listen to the pre-show. <laughs> Indeed. And again, Simaradi's Going after Nong Ho constantly with that right hand. Nice left high kick there. That was quick by Maradi. Yeah, beautiful switch kick there by Maradi. Of course, he would have to do something different if he wants to beat someone like Nong Ho. And again, that right kick to the body. And it's already starting to mark up there, Kevin. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he should really start to block those kicks coming in from Nong Ho. Otherwise, he's just going to build up and it's just going to start hurting more and more and more. And even more in the morning. Oh, solid right hand there from Nong Oh, but Moradi took it well. Yeah, you're gonna love the counters coming in for Moradi. Oh, again, he's looking every single time for that right kick. His counters have been top notch, but unfortunately for Moradi, he needs to block those kicks. See Nong Oh there just looking for his corner. Trying to get some instructions, but more of the same, really. Moradi again, look at the feint, and it came with that right kick! Ooh, good left hand there from Moradi! Yeah, usually we're used to seeing Nong Oh throw big bombs, but this time he seems more careful with that. He does. And not so many kicks as well from Nong Oh, he's constantly, like you said, Kevin, that right hand over and over and over again, but... He's definitely been... Oh, and again with that right kick! But Maradi grabs hold and pushes Nongo to the floor. I mean, you can hear that kick all the way to the Thai Fight League <laughs> arena. Once again, they're stalled in the middle of the ring. Oh, nice jab there. Right hand from Nongo, right knee. There's a problem already with the eye of Maradi. You can see it's welting up. 
comes, he goes back to the corner. St From the opening round here of our very first bout, that was a beautiful right hand through the guard there from Moradi. Two very in shape young guns here. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot to put Nongo on the back foot, and Moradi did just that. But it seemed like that Nongo at times was actually happy to fight off the back foot because he was able to counter strike with that right kick. Overall, a good solid round, in my opinion, from Nongo. I think that he is now one up in this three round fight. Yeah, likewise, and I just believe it's just the inability of Moradi to block those kicks coming in from Nongo, just like that one there. Yeah, he's got to protect that, the left side of his body. I think right after this, just before... <laughs> ...by Nongo as well. Be interesting to see how the eye is of Moradi. Will we see more of that? Let's have a look. Another this kick time, there yeah. from Nong O. Oh. This time Nong O oh doing what you would do. Oh, good hands here by Moradi. Nong O oh took it well. But Moradi setting the tone here in round number two. And you can tell already that Nong O oh is looking for that knockout. He wants to be out of here early. I'm not sure why. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> oh, yeah, good hands here by Moradi. And Moradi not afraid to go to the clinch against Nong O. Oh. Moradi's been quite impressive, I must say it. Yeah, Nong O's got got those hands going right now. Moradi is just determined to walk through that kick and deliver some beautiful hands and right now he's doing that good stiff left there. Oh and again with those left and right hands as a well now under the eye of Nongo. Good right knee. Good right hand there from Nongo as well. Nongo taking a lot more punishment than we're used to seeing him take. Oh solid right kick to the body once again. Moradi is we talk about the strength and conditioning. And the armor, the body armor of Nongo, but Moradi is tough as well. Oh, he's yes. built. He is very tough, but just at the age of 19, looking superb here tonight. And Nongo oh, once again. again. That right kick has been fire, I must say it. You can see the welts now. Maybe even some blood on the lip of Nongo. Just the, the good timing of the hands and the strength, the power from Moradi. Both eyes looking a bit, a bit welted. He's there from Moradi in the clinch. He's looking good in round number two, Kevin. Moradi's looking great. I mean, on the inside, he is on again. He is one above Nongo, I have to say it. Right high kick there from Moradi. Oh, tempting right hand, almost a clash of heads that time. But Nongo, he's not really got those hands going like we know he can do. No, he hasn't. I mean, it looks like he's a bit wary of being countered. Yeah, that's good, a good jab again yeah. from Moradi. I think it was a good jab from Nongo as well. Here come those right hands, but again, Moradi doing what he needs to do. Duck under, grab a hold of Nongo. A wry smile on the face of the Thai fighter. And I'm quite tempted to give the second round already to Moradi. Body shot there from Nongo. Moradi gets the ropes. These two young bulls going after it here in round number one. And referee Pulkin having a hard time. Oh, this blood flowing from the eye now. How's that going to affect Moradi? Right at the end of round number two, Nongo looking to move him for the kill, potentially tagging the body once again. Good knee strikes, good kicks, and good punches from the tag fighter. He might have picked the round, Kevin. Action pack round, stay with us. Round three coming up. Highlights of round number two. A great round for both fighters, indeed. Either it could have gone either way, but me and Kevin were having a discussion during the break there, and we think that Nongo at the end of the round might have just taken it in the eyes of the judges. Yeah, and it seemed like Moradi did start to slow down towards the end of that round, and Nongo was just picking his shots. So first half of that round could have gone to Moradi, but the second half definitely went to Nongo. It's so fast and furious in there that sometimes. You think things have connected when they might not have done. Yeah. Like looking back on the highlights right now, it looks like it was a scrappy one. But it wasn't. There's a lot of damage caused by both fighters. A good attempted right high kick there from Moradi. Really impressive for just 19 years of age. Yeah. Took that right hand well. Nonetheless, I mean, Moradi's really impressive. <laughs> Being back on tie fight, no matter the outcome of this match here. Yeah. All right, here we go. 
third and final round. You can see Nongo already, all ready to go. You can imagine it's going to be a round where both fighters are going to look for the knockout. Indeed, and there's a lot of Vaseline over the right eye there of Murai. They've obviously had to deal, deal with that cut as he pushes forward. Good jab. Right kick there, attempted by Nong. Oh, and again with that jab. Oh, good right hook there. And Nong might well have found his groove. This. Yeah, but Maradi as well with some good hands. Yeah, excellent hands, and now Nong oh, is on the back foot. Maradi needs a push there, and he does. Good knees thrown by both Nong Oh and Maradi. Oh, and again. Nongo, chin high up in the air, and his hands are a little bit low at times. Attempted elbow there. Good luck, referee, trying to separate those two. <laughs> oh, swinging left up there, almost connects. This time Nongo is still pushing forward, but you've got to wonder, can he see out of that left eye? Just about to say, yeah, it really is starting to swell shut. Good right hand there from Nongo, finding his time. Another right hand from the time. I feel like each fighter is now fighting with one eye. Yeah, exactly. An eye for an eye, they say. Just missing with the right hand now, Nongo. Oh, still looking for that knockout. Maradi now in the corner. Nongo back to Nongo. I like that left jab of Nongo. Every time he's popped it. Throughout this fight, he seems to have connected and done damage to Maradi. But once again, that left eye is now almost shut of Nongo. The right eye of Maradi. These guys have put on an absolute war in. Has more in the tank at the end of this match. Nongo -oh pushing forward. Good, oh, good combination. Hands. Good knees here from Nongo -oh to the body of Murati once again. Yeah, beautiful straight from Nongo. -oh. He timed those knees perfectly. You've got to give it to the body, the conditioning of Murati. Oh, good hands there. He's eating so many kicks and knees to that body, and he's not faced him at all as he pushes forward. Nongo -oh trying to counter with knees once again to that body. Oh, this is a solid match. I mean, in my prediction, I thought Nongo was going to get this match done early, but Maradi oh. really came to give it a show. Again, at just 19 years of age, you've got to appreciate the heart of Maradi. Oh, I think that cut is opened even more now on Maradi's right eye. Now it's Nongo. Oh, look at the blood flowing now from that well. That eye is cut. These two went to war. They put on a show. For all you fans watching around the world on Thai Fight International YouTube, do not forget to subscribe and to like. You don't see action anywhere but on this channel. Thai Fight is special. And remember, this is just the first bout of a scheduled nine bouts this evening. Oh, yes. And let's be honest, I mean... I think the most busiest person after this fight is going to be the doctors. <laughs> Let's have a look at the highlights from that third and final round. You could already see the faces of these two were battered, they were bruised, but they kept on motoring forward. And you know, I don't know if they will be ready to go again on November 26th. When we I was about to say. Round, but if they are, I would love to see a rematch. I feel like Maradi, I don't know if he's going to get his hand raised. I feel like Nongo did enough in the rounds one and two to take it, but again, for 19 and the show that he put on for all the fans watching around the world on the YouTube channel. He deserves another shot and I would love to see that. Yeah, exactly. And he's not just fighting anybody. He's fighting Nong or Shaw Hapiak, a man who's been through it all. Over 200 fights. Indeed. So stay with us for the official confirmation of the result and then we'll be moving on to our next bout of the evening. Alessio Malatesta will be taking on Pan Chai. Italy versus Thailand. Our next fight here on Thai Fight. ลุ้นพร้อมกันนะไปไหนดิและผู้ชนะเราได้แก่ขาวหรือดำครับขาวหรือดำครับขาวหรือดำครับวินาทีน้องโอชาห้าพยักรอมไทยแลนด์โอ้โหเรียกได้ว่ายินดีกับผู้ชนะนะครับรับเป็นกันกับผู้ชนะไปแต่เดี๋ยววันนี้เข้มขัดเสถียรเรือทองนะครับให้กับน้องโอด้วยนะครับเชิญเชิญท่านปรัชญาเปปตังครับรองผู้ว่าราชการจังหวัดลบบุรีนะครับสวัสดีครับแล้วก็ว่าที่ร้อยตีทรงผลปั้นแก้วนะครับประหลัดจังหวัดลบบุรีวันนี
ให้เกียรติมามอบเข็มขัดด้วยนะครับยินดีด้วยนะครับขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆอีกครั้งหนึ่งนะครับยินดีกับผู้ชนะด้วยครับและแน่นอนว่าส่งกำลังใจให้กับผู้ที่พ่ายไปไม่เป็นไรเดี๋ยวกลับมาลุยกันใหม่ได้นะนี่คือสุดยอดจริงครับทุกคนขอบคุณผู้ใหญ่ชนิดของเราทุกๆท่านด้วยนะครับขอบคุณด้วยนะครับพักสักครู่เดียวคุณผู้ชมครับกลับมาคู่2มัดกว่านี้แน่นอนเทสเตอร์ perform before he's very smooth fighter he likes to move in and out beautiful technique on him and of course he is a former IMTKA world and European champion former WMC intercontinental champion a former WTGP intercontinental champion and these two both have something in common they are both Max Muay Thai global fight champions. Somewhere I used to be once upon a time until I moved here. <laughs> and yes, the judges at ringside are Phuket Brambrayun, Patanan Pongsaban, and Yongyut Apaiso. And the president of the judges and referees here on Thai Fight is Dr. Sawag Wudhi Apitak. And the very privileged commentators are Aaron and Kevin. Right high kick there by Panchai. Low kick by Panchai. And attempted right high kick again. Good start here by the Thai fighter. Malatesta standing in his usual southpaw position, looking to throw that left kick to the body. Oh, tempted high kick once again there from Panchai, who's starting well there. Oh, fine, he looked like that connected as well. I do love the composure that we see from Alessio Malatesta, though, really picking his shots. But he really needs to start defending those right kicks coming in from Panchai. Tempted right hook there by the Italian. And Panchai once again moves in with that right high kick. Swing the miss there from Panchai. Dodging a low kick like that. Oh, solid right hand there from Panchai. And again, Malatesta looks like he eats a right high kick as he moves forward towards Panchai. Malatesta, if he didn't start, he's got to get himself together right now. Panchai is performing very well here. Right yes. high kick. But the most impressive Panchai. thing is that both of them could have crossed paths before, of course, at the Bangkok Thai Stadium. Yeah, but then here they are fighting on the biggest stage on Thai fight. Beautiful knee there from Panchai, directly to the midsection, and those are the knees that score the most. Those hard knees that make your opponent bend over. Oh! What a right hand there! Panchai, move forward! But the referee deems that Panchai just lost his footing. I mean, he was in mid-jump when he took that punch. I think he hurt him, though. I agree he wasn't a knockdown, but he definitely connected. That's a good one that one as well. Good dodge. Oh, beautiful right hand there from Malatesta! He doesn't want any more. Oh, no, he's done. I think he's done. The eyes have gone. No, he doesn't want any more. The referee Ref won't let him oh, fight anyway. Referee, what you That's going to be it. Sure, yeah. it's going to be it. And it's a TKO victory in the first round for Alessio Malatesta. He gets his first win on tie fight. That was impressive, Aaron. Incredible. He weathered a big storm there. I, don't, I, I, I need to see the replay because I'm pretty sure Panchai connected with a spinning back elbow that would have knocked out anyone. But Malatesta, like I said, he weathered that storm. He pushed forward, kept his composure, found those openings, and finally, after a few what may have been knockdowns, we found a knockout. Malatesta finally finds a win here on Thai Fight. Congratulations to him. You know we love to give nicknames to any fighter here on Thai Fight, so <laughs> I've got one around. Is that it? <laughs> I thought it was quite brilliant. But anyways, let's take a look at some of the replays from that first round. I mean, it was an impressive 
fight for Alessio Malatesta, especially after signing a contract for Thai Fight, making him exclusive yeah. to Thai Fight. There was pressure on him, no doubt about it. Like I said, he signed that contract, then he lost to Song Kao. And then in this fight, he turned it on, fighting a fighter who was actually at the same weight. And he looked fantastic in this fight. Beautiful hands. I'm surprised that Pan Chai managed to connect with the hook on his way down. I'm not sure if we can see that again or it was a different one. And yet after the knockdown, of course, the referee making <laughs> again standing up Pan Chai, which was dangerous, but I think he knew. Finally, he went in and decided that he... Malatesta was the victor. Congratulations to him and his team. Job well done for the Italian. And we'll see you back here on Thai Fight in November. And some up. Wang will be here. Taking on Christian Malatesta here on Thai Fight. Malatesta from Italy. ครับยินดีกับผู้ชนะนะครับรับไปกําลังใจกับผู้ที่พ่ายไปและแน่นอนวันนี้เรามีมอบเข็มขัดเศรษฐีเรือทองให้กับผู้ชนะด้วยครับ
on the move forward once again. Looking for the knockout. Good counter there from Christian Balasai. A nice left kick to the body from Sai once again. And Sayo just for a brief moment turning his back to his opponent. And sure, he, he knows he should be doing that. Oh, another stunning left elbow there. By the man they caught Sayo as he pushes forward with the right uppercut. Left hand, knee, left elbow. It looks like it, looks like it might be a bad cut on the limb of Balasai. So I'm not sure. Hopefully the camera can get close up on that one. Big elbow again from Sayok. And another fast and furious opening round here on Tide Fight. Stay with us. Round number two, up next. The ripe old age of 40 years of age. Sayok, as aggressive as we've ever seen him, and there was that left elbow that not only knocked down the German but also split his lip wide open as well there you can see the the cap already opened Malatsai he did well to get up from that he composed himself he really did and he's still attacking with counters and it's, he's, he's looked good at times but there's no doubt that that first round went to Sayok but let's not forget that in tie fight if you're knocked down oh. once it's a 10-9 round not a 10-8 indeed they're not guaranteed Malatsai was doing his best but definitely the more significant and heaviest stri strikes were coming in from Saif. And there you can see that lift. Got to have a look at that. I, I'm not sure. Do you think sure. the doctor should be called or what? Yep, yep. Nope, oh, referee yep. says it's okay. All right, here we go. Round number two. And if doctor says it's okay, I'm okay with it too. <laughs> Good right hand there. Malatsai has to be more aggressive, and he's showing that. Yeah, showing that already in the first round. Trying to knock Sayok out. Great shots there from the German Albanian. I think fighters can't show too much respect to the fact that they are standing in front of a legend. Yeah, exactly. They, they can't, can't do, do that. that. There you go. Jinx. Exactly right. Exactly correct. Left hand there from Sayok. Oh, good right hand. He's got to put more foot. More fire on those strikes. Yeah, he does. Good elbow again for Sayok. But Christian needs to show that he belongs in the ring with Sayok. He's got good technique. He's a bit too tentative at the moment. Yes, exactly. Good body shot there for Sayok and a good left kick from the legend as well. Two kicks in a row. Body strike there. Not a bad tactic. Of course, he is 40. To go to the body and try and fatigue the legend. Head movement there from Sayok. Yeah, beautiful head movement from Sayok as he continues to attack the body and Balasai gives one back. Both fighters looking to the body. Left hand there from Sayok. Left kick. One two combination by Balasai. Another left kick there by Sayok. Right hook to the body. Stepping left knee from Sayok. This Sayok is scary. I mean, he's not moving back at all. I mean, we keep saying it, but once, left kick. once you get that Sayok truck started, it doesn't stop going forward. Right hook attempted by Sayok. This is the mark. The right hand from Christian pushing forward. Left up. Oh! This is good by Sayok. Sayok taking way too many shots. Left and right hands coming in here by the German. Looked like Sayok was stunned just for a moment. He was and his hands are down. Malasai wanted to cause an upset and a huge knee to the midsection and that hurt Malasai. Trading shots now. This is a brawl. What a fight we have here. Seems to be the part of the play where Sayok throws one, two, and one or two massive shots, and then he takes a big, deep breath. And when he does that, he stagnates. And Mark Sai is able to do what he just did there and throw one, two combinations. There's no doubt, though, Aaron, that both of them have slowed down. Both of them oh. are tired, but still giving it their oh, all. Oh my goodness, another wall. Beautiful points out here in the round two, round three. Up next. <laughs> Well, what a round we just witnessed. Remember in round number one, Sayuk was able to knock down Malatzai and we thought to ourselves, wow, wow, this might be a short night. But he came back in that second round with Christian and he looked absolutely fantastic. And I think he might have taken round number two. He was very close. The fact that Sayuk had his hands down on a few occasions and was allowing Christian to just 
target him at will. Won't look good in the eyes of the judges, but like I said, it was incredibly close. Look at that, Sayok just taking those shots. Absolute legend in the sport of Muay Thai. Christian fighting. Fighting the, uh, the show of his life right now, putting on a display. He's having to dig deep and yeah, he definitely got, got to be. Three of the first round jitters. Yes. And he, he came really, back swinging. Like you said, he wants to make a name for himself. Oh yes, I mean there he's accomplished. A he's accomplished everything he can in Europe, in, in terms of Muay Thai and in Germany. Big opportunity now for Christian Malatai. Sayok was fatigued in round number two. Let's see how he performs in round number three. I'm sure Christian is spurred on a boy by how he performed in round number two, and look how he's coming on here in round number three as he goes down. Powerful kick there by Sayo to take Malatai off his feet. Malatai again with a one-two. Malatai is going to... Oh, good right kick there! And that hurts Sayo! Reminiscence of how Shanajo knocked Sayo yeah. out a oh, couple of years ago. Call. Here comes Christian swarming Sayo, exactly what he needs to do. Big hands coming in now from the German Albanian, doing such a good job in there. Another big kick from Sayo. Looking great in this third round. Sayok with a big left kick though to the midsection. Malasai staying on him, looking for that spinning back kick to the body. Left kick by Sayok, and again. Christian blocks, but with his arms, but that will count. Of course, in the sport of Muay Thai, he doesn't in kickboxing, but he does in Muay Thai. Again, going back to the body. The difference is if you have your hands out, then it's, hard, then it's a block, but if, if it's right at your body, then it counts as a point for Sayok. There's another kick scoring for Sayok. Show the right arm. Christian that's being tenderized by those left kicks of Sayok is in pain right now. But he continues to try and do his best to push forward. Nice right kick to the body there from Christian. Yeah, Sayok not being the brawler that he was in the first round anymore. He's fighting a more of a technical fight at the moment. I think that's just due to fatigue, just as we said earlier. The kick connects for Sayok as he's on the back foot. Again, left high kick there. Malasai, nice kick, left kick to the body by Sayok. Good block there from Christian and Sayok. Decides to go low with that kick. the fatigue in both these fighters who are giving everything in this fight. Yeah, likewise. I mean, they've given it their all in this match so far. They really have entered the gas tank. But is there one last flash knockdown perhaps or one big fury that one of these fighters can put together? Manasai, I have to say, he looked great after the first round. Sayok now looking tired, but still scoring a lot of points yeah, with the left kick. That left kick and might have won in the fight. Yeah. Exactly, I was about to say, the left kick probably would win the Sayok this fight. But of course, one of the judges, that's how we're scoring it unofficially. But nevertheless, a great display from Christian Malasai. Yeah, Sayok is going around the ring now, claiming the victory. And you have to agree, I think the first and the third round, well, first of course, for that Unfortunately, he just decided to throw that left kick over and over again, even off balancing balance side. You know, when nothing works out, go back to the basics. Absolutely. The There's that right high kick. You've got to give it to balance side. He really did show a beautiful display of Muay Thai. If he's here in November, hey, why not? Why not? Back to hit the ring once again in Samut Prakan, November 26th. The next big Thai fight. And in between that, we will be back, of course, with the Thai Fight League shows each and every Sunday. It's just non stop here on this Thai Fight promotion. On a Russian fighter. Next up here on Thai Fight. Let's move on. Let's push on. Let's The winner is. ขาวหรือดําครับขาวหรือดําพี่เสมอด้วยนะพี่เสมอด้วยนะไซโยผู้มาร่วมบอมไซเลย
ชือกเลยโอ้โหสุดๆจริงคะแนนคือวัดกันแล้วนะเข้าเมามากกว่านะต้องยอมรับจริงนะเดี๋ยวก็มีการครบเครื่องไปสาบเตะสาบเตะสาบไปใช่ครับเดี๋ยวเราจะมาแจกเข็มขัดนะฮะเสถียรเรือทองกันในช่วงเบรกหน้าเดี๋ยวตอนนี้พักกันสักครู่ครับกลับมาเจอกันครับน็อกซ์ไม่บี4คนออกไปแต่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่ใช่Thailand taking on Russia, fourth bout of the evening of a scheduled nine bout, and it's the only gloved bout. Yeah, but 65 kilos. Perfect weight for Suksawat. Exactly. All right, now Suksawat, it's time for you to show that you belong once again here on Thai Fight. Good team there from the Russian to kick things off, literally. Oh, beautiful left kick! I mean, you can hear that back in Bangkok. That was a hard strike. Oh, left hand from Suksawat. There's that left kick once again. You can see that Basitov is still smiling. How do you get that smile off? No idea. On the game's face. Smiling and even even taunting Suksawat as well. Oh, left hand kick from Suksawat. That Basitov is very happy to be in there, but no smiles now. Right hand there from Basitov, inside kick from the Russian, tempted elbow by Suksawat. He's definitely the happiest Russian I've ever seen. <laughs> Despite being in a war <laughs> with Suksawat, he's still got that big smile on his face. And again, Basitov, 40 in 30 seconds, he's easy cup champion. Suksawat doing very well. He is moving forward, landing his strikes. Tempted left high kick there. Basitov looking to hold that kick. Lovely left hand. Straight through the guard of the Russian who then targets the body off Suksawat. Nice elbow by the Thai fighter. Low kick blocked by Suksawat. Back to that famed left high kick of his. Nice right body shot by Basitov. Swing and a miss by the Russian. Top, I believe that's exactly what he needs to do. Keep his opponent on his guard. I'm impressed by Bossy Top. Yeah, yeah. as well. He's done well here. Oh, good knee, left elbow there by Suksawat. That's what he needs more of. He needs to show more aggression here. That's aggression we are seeing. Oh, what a right elbow! Bossy Top was spinning around. That's why the referee was saying he was off balance. He wasn't in knockdown. Right. Referee Arun giving Basitov a chance to get onto his feet and continue fighting and trying to go for a spinning back kick but <laughs> lost his balance. Even the referee having a laugh at that as well. Back to the center of the ring here. Oh, Solid left kick, kick from Suksawat and an elbow on top of that one. Yeah, that might have just stood Basitov but again I think Suksawat can see that as he looks for another elbow. End of round number one here on Thai Fight. Stay with us. Round number two. in the black corner and the heater by the tall from Russia in the white. So far it was a big round for Suksawat Sangmorakot. Of course the 32nd Isuzu Cup champion. Of course Bazitov did have his moments but overall I think I'd score that one for Suksawat and that's mainly because of the accuracy of that left kick and the elbows that he threw as well. We have to give credit to Bazitov. I mean we were talking about the way that Suksawat ran through the competition during the Isuzu Cup tournament. Bazitov has probably bettered the majority of the competition that Suksawat yep. performed against. But this is a different Suksawat that we saw in the competition. We saw Suksawat very composed, mm. very relaxed in the first round. And then Suksawat wasn't getting it, 
going to get it done because of how, let's say, how slow his first round mm. was. But this time, it's a much more aggressive Sook Sawat. He really wants that knockout but early. I, I honestly think that in the Thai Fight League tournament, in the, sorry, in the Zuzu Cup tournament at Thai Fight League, he showed more aggression. I don't know, maybe there's something about the big Thai Fight shows that just makes him not be able to form at the full potential. What of the case? Good left kick to the body again there by Sook Sawat. Right elbow through the guard. Bazitov, he looks like a demon. That smile, that hair, those eyes. Looks like there's nowhere else he'd rather be. This looks like he's enjoying himself as he eats another elbow by Sook Sawat. And he's still got a big smile on his face. He's got to love how he's competing. So much joy that despite receiving a big <laughs> elbow <laughs> from Sook Sawat. For a one-two combination, Sook Sawat blocks the low kick. So unorthodox with that movement is Bazitov. Tell you what, Bazitov. Oh, good elbow there from Suksuat and a good right elbow that time as well. I'll tell you what, Bazitov is scary. I he mean, is. that smile, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's like the Joker facing off against the Batman. <laughs> oh! Big elbow again from Suksuat. Bam, right on one. the money, but somehow Bazitov able to stay on his feet. Still continues, but he's bothered him. A lot of elbows now. So, and oh, he's cut. He's cut. I was about to say, I'm surprised yep. he's not cut yet. But right on the hairline. You see, he definitely is cut now. But Bazatov is showing the referee. He definitely would tell the referee that he doesn't want the match to start. Oh, both fighters looking for elbows. And, and he's cut. cut. He's cut as well. Both men are now cut. And it's going to be raining blood at ringside. Absolutely blood flowing from around the right eyebrow of Suksa Wat now. And oh. again, Suk Sawat with another elbow. We've got an elbow wall, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Do not go anywhere. You're in for a treat right now. The only action you get to see. An elbow wall is right here in Muay Thai. And you've got one. What amazing action. And I've got blood on my notes. Another big elbow there from Suk Sawat. It's raining blood, but it's also raining elbows here in Lotbury. Suksawat started it, and Nikita caught him with one as well. Wow! Stay with us, round three, up next. One way to describe that second round, elbow war. Both fighters are cut, but it seems like Suksawat got the worst of that one. There's the elbow that probably caused the cut on Bazatov. Hopefully we'll see the elbow that caused the cut on Suksawat. And I gotta say, Suksawat got the worst cut. But Yeah, without a doubt, and you can see them working on it in the corner right now. But Suksawat, I believe, oh, there it was. win that second round as well. Right there. There oh. we go. And then that's the danger. Anyone who walks in. Oh no. I'm I'm surprised that the doctor has. Oh look it. at the blood pouring from the nose. On Bazitov, but then Baz Bazitov threw one that connected Suks to Suksawat that opened up a very deep cut on the eyebrow. This is going to be very interesting to see because if the referee calls in for the doctor, I wouldn't be surprised if he decides to stop it. And it's possibly the worst time that Suksawat could receive a cut because he is scheduled to compete in the Thai oh, Fight Tournament yeah. as well. Good point, Kevin. Another matter to attend to is that will the cut heal on time? We'll see. Third round. Sucks what now? Happy to stay at distance. Throw those left kicks. A little bit like the way Sayok approached the third round. Yeah, but this is how Sucks what is comfortable fighting. He is a technician. He loves fighting on the back foot. He does a really good job of that. Good block there by Bazatov. You see the blood still flowing on both of these warriors here from the eyebrow of Suksawat and from the nose of Bazitov. I wonder if that will affect the breathing of the Russian as well. Yeah, Bazitov has a huge opportunity now to irritate the cut yeah. of Suksawat. If he can get it yeah. close, clinch up, rub his glove all over that cut. Absolutely. It might help him get the job done. Good kick again from Suksawat. Left jab to the body there. I'm looking for that elbow once again. It's with, Bazitov. With the experience that Suksawat has, he knows exactly what Bazitov is going to do, so he's going to look after that cut like it's his own child. 
you can already see the vast lead already gone. It's gone. It's a big moment here for both these fighters. Attempted left high kick there from Suksawan, but only connected to the shoulder. Bazitov who walks into a knee strike there. Yeah, that seems to put Bazitov in a lot of danger and the to the midsection. Yeah, you can see as well, it's really affected his breathing. Deep breaths through the mouth. Again, oh. another elbow by Suksawan. Attempted left hook onto that eyebrow by Bazitov. Just can't get his breath fully now. Left elbow there by Suksawan. Team. Yeah, find this play by Suksawan at the moment. As we said earlier in the, the beginning of the round, this is where Nong, uh, not Nong, oh, excuse me, where Suksawan is most comfortable when he's fighting on the outside. When he takes a step back, creates some space, waiting to load up on that left kick. Another cut on oh, top. Good right hook there from Bazitov. Left high kick from Suksawan, but fortunately for Bazitov, his hands were held high. It's Bazitov moves in for a right elbow. End of another amazing fight here on Thai Fight. Wow. Wow, this event has not disappointed. No. We've had four phenomenal fights so far. Suksawat gesturing to the crowd. I'm sure he was aiming to, like you said, move out of this fight on skate, but look. <laughs> Looks like he's been, in, been hit by a truck. Does Nikita Bazitov. Puts on top of his head on it. Uh, maybe a potential See? broken nose. Exactly what I was saying. He used the glove just now to take away the Vaseline yeah. on the forehead of Bazatov. Very much allowed in Muay Thai. I do think that I really think if it's not broken, it at least affected the fact that he couldn't breathe out of that nose. He just could gather momentum in round number three. And Sun did a, an, an awesome job basically fighting on the outside. Another fighter I want to see again. Definitely. <laughs> Another ring match, potentially. I've been saying that all night, but I'm serious with this one. Yeah. Great display. Great Both. display. Definitely. All right. Let's get the official decision. Then we'll move on to our next fight. Look at that. Oh, that's high. That's warm. Till we're done. The result for the night. Oh, it's a nanan. Like this. Oh, it's a wood. มาแล้วครับผมอยู่ในมือผมและ the winner is ฝ่ายขาวหรือฝ่ายดำครับขาวหรือดำขาวหรือดำขาวหรือดำและผู้ชนะได้แก่สุขวัตรแสนประกันโปรดใช้เลยโอ้โหยินดีกับผู้ชนะด้วยนะครับเดี๋ยวเราจะมีการฟ้องขัดกันครับต้องขอเรียนเชิญนะครับท่านจักรพันธ์เหล่าวงไทยนะครับนายกเทศมนตรีเมืองบ้านบีนะครับและท่านกำนันชัดชัยวิพานุรัตน์ครับกำนันตำบลดงดินแดงอำเภอหนองบ้วงจังหวัดลบบุรีนะครับโอ้ดีถือว่าครบครื่อนนะให้กับผู้ชนะนะครับชนะคะแนนกันไปทั้งฝ่ายนิกิตาดีครับชกได้ดีมากๆจริงๆเป็นกำลังใจให้กับเขาด้วยครับโอเคมอเข้มแข็งเสถียรเรียนองให้กับพยักษ์เสนสุขสวัสดิ์แสงบอระกอดทายฟายฟรอม12ฟายต์ And on paper, you can imagine that she's going to extend that record. With seven knockouts. Very impressive indeed. <laughs> and the last match he competed against, Truiti Fungti. Always had trouble pronouncing that, but nonetheless, the Vietnamese fighter gave Vero a good fight. But then in the third round, Vero really turned it up. Oh, it really was a good fight, yeah. absolutely. It was definitely fight of the night in Cha Cheng Sao, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Oh, I agree with that. She's riding a two-fight knockout streak. Is Vero? Can she make it three and three? Let's find out. Here we go, round number one. Good team to start things off from both fighters, in fact. One-two coming in from Payasik. Combination there from Vero. Side kick from Piasing. Vero targeting the body there of Piasing. Side team from Piasing. 
The knees to the body from Vero. The yeah, knees to the body, something we're not used to seeing from Vero. Oh, beautiful boxing prowess there from Vero. The bicycle strikes back. But Vero's body strikes look deadly here tonight, Kevin. Yeah, they have really improved. She's mixed up her punches with the knees. Phenomenal there. Surely she's done some clinch training with Johnny Betts now to Tiger Boy Tide. Absolutely. Oh, big up the octopus. Strikes again to the body and down goes Biasig for the first time in this fight. She should have stayed out a little bit longer in my opinion. Yeah, I mean that was phenomenal. Took, those, took her time but she's back onto it. Vero going in for the kill now. Looking again, like I said, for those body strikes. Finds the right hand, left hook to the body. Right high kick attempted by Pysing. Vero shooting for that left hook to the body once again. Oh, another ripping left, and right, and a left. Good elbow though from Pysing. Yeah, beautiful elbow as Vero tries to attack the, the body. Good timing there from Pysing. All body work from Vero, incredible. That's something we're definitely used to seeing from Vero. She loves to attack the body and then attack the head with the punches. Those hands are gonna lower soon, and she now starts to attack the head as well. Switching levels at the perfect time as Vero. Looking like a machine out there. End of round number one. What a round for Vero. Vero, Nika, Vero, Bart Ruggiero Wong in fine form this evening on Thai Fight. Delivery, a knockout to Paya Singh in the very first round. Knocked down. Knocked down, sorry. And Paya Singh looking for those hands, but it was those body strikes that we could see on the highlights that did the damage to the Thai fighter. What a knockdown, and luckily we get to see another round of Vero action. I mean, it was phenomenal. Just moving forward, attacking the body, and changing levels. Brutal punches to the midsection there from Vero, but oh. the elbow counter, that was equally as impressive. Yeah, Pai Singh, very game looking for that strike where he actually put her down. <laughs> then holding on to the hair of Vero. Very much not allowed. All right, no highlight of the knockout. That was weird. <laughs> Ready to go, round number two. Show sure Vero will be looking to finish it now. Vero is always looking to finish yeah, it. Yeah, you know. Without a doubt. Good kick there from Payasik. She does have unbelievable power. She's always, always in incredible condition. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. In terms of the TIE Fight roster that she has, she might be in the best condition of all. Best condition and probably the most popular in the TIE Fight roster <laughs> as well. I mean, there's Sanchai in there, but yes. maybe Vero is at number two. In terms of popularity of the TIE Fight team, good kick there from Payasik. Cross to Piasing. She's not on the back foot. She's taking it to Vero. Oh, another big shot to the body by Vero. She might have gone too low that time and connected to the leg. That, that would give someone a dead leg for sure. Yeah. Deep there by Vero, and again. To that weary body of Piasing. Vero taking the time. Nice kick there from Payasik. Just biding, biding the time, should I say. And when there's a gap, you know what's coming. More shots like that to the body. Tempted right hand, could be a clash of heads that time. Tempted elbow by Vero, but Payasik able to move out of the wing for a lot of these shots, Kevin. Yeah, for sure. Oh, good right hand that time. Oh, She's not able to move away there. Big right hand there from Vero, knocking back Payasik. Payasik trying to fight back as best she can. Eats to the elbow, sorry, knee to the body. change in Vero's game plan is the knee to the body. We haven't seen her throw so much of that before, but now that she's moved over to Thailand, it seems to be working out for her just fine. That's the end of the second Ooh. round. End of round two, great fight. Stay with us, the conclusion up next. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number two. Vero again, doing what Vero does. Find those openings and target to the body, but props to Piasing. She 
She gave back at every opportunity. Yeah, I mean, after she stood the knock knockdown in the first round, we thought she was going to go down once again. But credit to her staying on her feet. And the fans. She's enjoying herself in there. Not many female fighters say that when coming up against Miro. Yeah, looking much better in this round, or excuse me, the previous round than she did in the first. Paya Singh very happy to take the fight to Vero. Let's see, round number three. Outside kick though from Vero, looking for that left hand. Good low That's kick nice. there from Paya Singh, landed very well. Speaking of which, I don't think I've seen much fighters actually attack the legs of Vero. No, they don't really get the opportunity to. No, they don't. Good body attacks once again from Vero. Vero has really turned it up in his third round. Reminiscent of what she did in her previous battle at Chachung South Province. Oh, nice stiff left jab there from Vero once again. Showing respect now to Piasing is Vero. Good right hand there. Nice right kick to the body by Piasing. Very impressive by Piasing. Really taking the fight to Vero. Did not think we're going to see a fight like this. Oh, good solid left kick to the body and a right hand from Vero. I should have a small left. Oh. Hooks to the body, but then Paya Singh delivers a good right of her own. I mean, that was a great counter from Paya Singh. Vero not taking kindly to it, started to attack tenfold. Another shot to the body there by Vero. Good counter again from Paya Singh. Oh, and a good right hand. Left jab, attempted right hand, but missing the mark. I know Vero's winning this fight, but I'm sure she's a little bit frustrated by now, and you've got to give credit to Pius Singh for that. Yeah, when Farrow doesn't knock an opponent out, she almost feels like she failed at something. <laughs> just, just, a, just a bit. Left the attempted there by Vero. She has nothing to be frustrated about. No, she's still she's winning the fight. Exactly. She's doing a good job in there. Stiff left jab by Vero, and again. Beautiful jab by Vero. And end of the third and final round. Good solid fight, good solid oh, rounds in the back there for Piercing. A great show of sportsmanship there from both these fighters. Yeah, you gotta love it. Not in the rule book of Muay Thai, but we see a lot of respect shown after an absolute war. Just the test of skills at the end of the day, it's not personal. do possess a great skill set. Good uppercut there, and right hand combination from Vero. She really didn't give it to Piasing. It shows, like I said, some beautiful combinations, but Piasing was able to withstand a lot of punishment, which we didn't think she would be able to do after round number one. But she has made it to the end of the round. We will get the official judge's decision, and then we'll take a break before moving on to our remaining four maps this evening on Thai Fight. That's right, after the break, Lion Family Muay Thai makes a Thai Fight debut. Cannot wait. The winner is... เอาละครับใครเชียร์ใครก็ส่งเสียงกันได้เลยนะฮะได้ครับเวรวอลจะวงบอลเมียนมาโอ้โหยินดีด้วยมากๆเลยนะครับยังมีความเหนือชั้น
on a big show, getting paid well. That's right. It's massive. Exactly. And not long ago, he was competing in, I don't know, just smaller stadiums. Not really that known. But now he has a chance to impress. He fought two times on TIE Fight League and won by KO in the first round twice. A good hook and a low kick there by Lion. Very relaxed in there is this Lion. Oh, ducking under the attack of Shaheen. That kick there by Shaheen. Swing and a miss by Lion, but he then goes in with a right hand. Yeah, Shaheen Jose Zade looking extremely composed in there. Oh, good right hand elbow attack there by the Lion. Just wrestling Shaheen down to the canvas. Very impressive from Lion family Muay Thai. Oh, stopping jab there. From Shaheen standing in the southpaw stance. There by Lion. Shahid clinching up. Neither of them wanted to be in there. I think it was more of a defensive technique from Shahid. Big right hand there from Lion. Yeah, but oh, oh my god! But he didn't block that one. And Shahid, I'm not sure he knows where he is right now. He's starting to wake up and pick him up, himself up from the canvas. It's gotta be it. It's gotta be it. I can't see him. No! Oh no! It's, it's a, a win! It's a win for Lion Family Muay Thai on his big Thai fight debut, and that was impressive. Living up to expectation, and more so, the Lion of Thai fight has arrived. And let's take a look at this punch once again. He fakes the first and goes in for the second. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, brawlers, strong fighters, powerful men, they get overlooked for their fight IQ. But fair to say, that was incredible. A new superstar has just been born. Let's have a look at his handiwork once again. A big paw, or a big claw, from the lion, knocking down the Iranian Shahin. Did everything he could, he went back to his feet, but again, he just fell down. I'll tell you what, he's gonna quickly become a fan favorite if he keeps this up. I mean, that was spectacular. And you gotta love his showmanship as well. He took his moment and he grabbed hold of it. The winners! Ah, Hossein and Dana Bujana, Lion Family Muay ยินดีกับผู้ชนะครับเป็นกําลังใจกับผู้ที่พ่ายมาในวันนี้นะครับเดี๋ยวเราจะมีการมอบเก็บขัดนะครับกันหลังจากโฆษณาใช่ครับว
Tyler Carla, but he doesn't care. That is the reckless abandonment in there tonight. Swinging. Remember, the Osama's got a lot of height over him. Oh, good elbow. One two yeah. coming in from PTT. He always relies on that one two. He does. The white knot, they're very powerful. Left hand quick on the right there. Oh, PTT knocking back Osama. Inside kick by the Moroccan. Oh, swinging hand kick and just glances off the chin. Oh, PTT right hand down the pipe hole. Oh. Oh. Connected very well. This is a violent one. What a fight this is. PTT almost getting frustrated that he can't knock Osama down early. Osama, well, I'll say both these fights can take a lot of punishment here in round number one. Another right hand there from PTT. Not taking the right knee that time. Jab there from Osama. PTT looking for that right hand, but Osama off balance before he could connect. To get on his feet, a bad was. sign for Osama. Right kick to the body from PTT, continues to move forward. The right hand connects for PTT, putting Osama off balance. Osama now very much on the back foot. I think he might be quite fatigued as well. Oh, oh big shot to the midsection there at PTT. Oh, good left hook, yeah, shots to the body will do that. He'll suck the energy out, right hand there from Sakura Kush. Here comes those right hands again. One to two. Amazing round number one. The 26th Izizu Cup winner, PTT, continuously pushing forward. Like I said, recklessly at some point she felt against this very tough Osama El Kush. The round belonged to PTT, no doubt about that, but you have to admire the toughness of Osama. Yeah, and his counter game is really good. But I heard, overheard his corner talking to him, telling him to set up his attacks with a jab. Didn't see much jabs being thrown by Osama I think about it. Well, I think the tone of the fight was set pretty early on from Team PTT and Osama El Kush it did have a game plan. It was just out the window and it was just about surviving. <laughs> what PTT was throwing at him, but like you said, if he can get that jab going, then potentially, because you know what PTT is going to do, he's going to continue to walk forward. Whatever the case, yep. and another right hand there from PTT as we get going once again here. PTT only knows one day, that's forward. Good exchanges. PTT with some heavy blows. One, two shots again. Right hand from PTT. Right hand there from PTT. Right hand from the nose. He's looking for that right hand, right hand combination. And finally, we see Osama El Kouch. Clinch up against PCT. No knees were thrown though. No points scored. Good one two there from Osama El Kouch. Big one two from PTT. Another elbow on top of that. Osama against the rope, looking for that right hand. Snackery back on the side. Beautiful right kick to the body by PTT. Shots being thrown by PTT that eventually the Salman Al Kush looks like he just came in due to the pressure. And up and got it down, he goes once again. And give it another count. You gotta wonder, will Osama get up? Doesn't look like he really wants to, but his heart is telling him to, to do so. Oh. oh, the referee's letting it go. Oh my goodness, PTT is gonna go for war now. He's looking for that 100k. Don't do that again, no. PTT. Oh, it's not a good attempt, ladies and gentlemen, oh, and that is it. it. Three knockdowns. And it's all over, and it looks like, oh, the nose has been massacred. PTT on fire here tonight on Tide Fight. Two rounds of destruction, and he gets the victory finally. Asama El Kush, he did everything he could to stay on his feet and stay in the game, but it was just too much. PTT. Yeah, it was the vintage. Dynamite's back. It was vintage PTT from the get go. PTT's 
just one of those fighters that would rather go that would rather be stopped and go backwards. You can see Osamu is holding his hands up high, but I think he connected to the ear, which will destroy any fighter's equilibrium. Plus the shots that he was eating before that as well. Yeah, beautiful right hand there and from PTT. He the finishes with an uppercut. Second knockdown. Oh, that's the second knockdown. I believe so, the second knockdown. Another count there given, and then it, yeah, this is the third. Right hand to the body. You see Osamu struggling to breathe. And he was already going down as that third and final knockdown occurred with that right hand. You can see his nose. It's, 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 a, it's splattered. Deadly, dangerous PTT. สู้ดีดีมากสีนะผมมาสู้มากสีมากนะครับแพ้แล้วโอเคมายืนกันจะเป็นทางการนะครับมาครับถึงเวลาประกาศผู้ชนะนะครับแน่นอน The w i n n e s บอลทาวรุจิระวงปรับใช่เลยยินดีดีดีกับผู้ชนะครับไปกระจายกับผู้ที่พ่ายไปโอ้โหแน่นอนครับเราก็จะมีการมอบเข็มขัดนะฮะมอบเข็มขัดนะครับเข้มขัดเศรษฐีเรืนทองนะขอเรียนเชิญคุณองค์อาจเสอินนะครับจากข้างส่วนจำกัดเพชรพลอยก่อสร้าง2อมันสามนะฮะและร้อยตีบุญสืบแสงมณีผู้ใหญ่บ้านมูลหนึ่งตำบลชอนม่วงให้เกียรติมอบเข้มขัดครับอย่างที่ทราบไปแล้วนะครับเป็นเข้มขัดในความภาคภูมิใจและเป็นมงคลด้วยนะครับเพราะได้ผ่านไปทีพุทธาพิเศษมาที่เรียบร้อยใช่ครับฮัดเชิร์กแชมเปี้ยนมอสต์บอลทิมส์ที่อยู่ในไทไฟท์42ไฟท์ส์ในไทไฟท์อาสเตงนุงมี41ฟิกทริสและแค่ต่อไปนี้ที่เราพูดกันในปารีสผมไม่ได้จำนวนของการแข่งขันอีกครั้งหนึ่งคุณได้เห็นเบอร์ซาร์ไม่ใช่เขาอยู่ในมุมของอิรานีไฟเตอร์ทั้งหมดที่เบอร์ซาร์ก็ได้จากอิรานีไฟเตอร์ทั้งหมดที่เบอร์ซาร์ก็ได้จากอิรานีไฟเตอร์ทั้งหมดที่เบอร์ซาร์ก็ได้จากอิรานีไฟเตอร์ทั้งหมดที่เบอร์ซาร์ก็ได้จากอิรานีไฟเตอร์ทั้งหมดที่เบอร์ซาร์ก็ได้จากอิรานีไฟเตอร์ทั้งหมดที่เบอร์ซาร์ก็ได้จากอิรานี Three fighters here tonight, and two of them fought at Lupini last night. So, very busy gym. So, in 2022, at the end of that year, Tengnun knocked out the current Rajan of the Stadium champion here on Thai Fight in the very first round. And then, his three fights in 2023 have all been knockouts. Two in round number one, and one in round number two. Now, inside kick there by Tengnun. Shot there, I believe. He's big, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. The teeth now coming in from the Iranian fighter. Oh, and a low kick from Tengnung. I think that did a number on his opponent. Almost to the hip. That's a left high kick again there by Tengnung, who then connects with an elbow strike. And then a left hand. Oh, spinning back fist attempt there. Elbow by Zoldal. Now on the back foot. Good right kick from him. And a left kick in return by Tengnung. Oh, Bambi on ice. Don't tell me they forgot to give it. 
against Teng Nun, that's a very oh. dangerous thing to do, or against any trained Muay Thai fighter. Oh, did he? Did he? I'm not sure did if he, he lost it. Out? No, that's what I was Here we go. Abu still on one legs, and Teng Nun going in for the kill. Good luck there from Teng Nun, and Abu Fazal loses his footing. Once again. Oh, he's gone. Oh, that little left hand. Oh, right hand there. Oh, the left hand by Teng Nun. Oh, my goodness. What is going on in this world? There's no doubt about it, but what a warrior he is. I don't even know if he knows where he is right now. I don't think anybody knows, Aaron. <laughs> we don't know. Absolutely. Where are we? Summary, that's it. All right, Ed. What an incredibly entertaining round number one here on Thai Fight. I can't believe it, Aaron. I can't believe it. How is Abel Fazar or Abel Fazal still on his feet? He's on wobbly legs and taking a lot of punishment and still managing to fight back against Teng Nung Sijai Sai Rung. It's, uh, you know, what people underestimate about Teng Nung, he's actually got a chin on him himself as well. Oh, he, he took a lot does. of shots in that round. Continue to move forward and deliver some massive shots to this Iranian. And dare I say it, Teng Nung actually looked tired towards oh the end of the round. Look, his eyes rolled into the back of his head. His head then smacked the ropes. His gum shield went flying somewhere. Oh, look, the eyes glazed over instantly. Yeah, Teng Nung went for the double, then the knee on the ground, and <laughs> he really needs to be told off for that. Completely illegal. I'm not sure when the mouth guard was... Never seen this. Hopefully that has sorted the situation out, but Teng Nung okay, is cut on his toes. Here we go. The continuation of round number two. A good rest for Abu Fazal. Abu Fazal Meharan. Excuse me. Meharan Zaran. Still pushing forward. Good team there by Teng Nung. Good timing of that one. Teng Nung testing the, uh, the legs already. Going oh! for a spinning back kick. He wants that 100,000 baht prize. <laughs> There from Teng Nung, another kick to the midsection by Teng Nung. And I do think that nail, nail went through the, the left foot on Teng Nung, on one of the toes on his left foot, but he's still throwing it. Oh. Very unfortunate for Teng Nung. He's waiting for the Iranian to come to him this time. He's sort of putting pressure on the Iranian. It's a counter strike, left kicks to the body just like that. And again, oh. Kicks to the body by Teng Nung, unanswered. Back and actually putting Teng Nung on guard. Good job oh. there, Abu Still looking for that 100,000 baht. Much better than PTT. Oh, yes. Left hooks there coming in. Could it possibly be that Teng Nung is tired? Stay away from that area of the ring. Oh, yes. You see the markets on the right side of the arm there. Oh, there, Razoran. Oh! Rene can choke a back, thank you. It's a spinning back elbow attempt by Abu Fazal. He was looking pretty good in there. I mean, I thought he was done in the first round. Absolutely, much better round here by the Iranian. Oh, the left arm from Tegna, just as we say that. Left knee. Tegna just visibly slowed down. Oh, yes. Absolutely slowed down compared to round number one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Tegna has definitely slowed down, and he's on the back foot at the moment. He's eating a lot of strikes. Yes. Oh, and again, look at that right hand coming in. That's the end of the second round. Ooh. See you in the third. The third and final round of action. And the story of that round, Tangling looks tired. Yes. 
Can see he definitely set in. That's right, Abel Teng Nung going to work on Teng Nung and hitting with many shots as well. Teng Nung still very powerful though with the left kicks to the body. But the punches and the combinations coming in from Abu Fazal can prove to be deadly. And it looks like he's got past the problems that he had in round number one. It looks like he's in better shape, dare I say, than Teng Nung as we head into round number three. I think Teng Nung's even shocked that Abu Fazal is still continuing. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. Handy work there from Abu Fazal. Razaran. Corner of the. <laughs> Razaran are telling him go for those hand strikes. Left and right, so as many as you can. All right, here we go. It's going to be a very interesting third and final round. Fazal with a lot of support here in Lopuri province. Teng Ding on the back foot once again. Good left kick there from Teng Ding. He doubles oh, it again. up. Abu Fazal almost losing his footing. I feel like Teng Ding needs a second win right now. I believe he, he does. Not fighting like he, he does. Yeah. Kick there from Abu Fazal once again, connecting. I don't know if there's a problem with his hands or something, but it doesn't look like. It looks like he's lost his aggression. Well, we know he lost. Well, we know he has some problems with his toes. That nail, good left hook there, though, from Tecno. Another left kick. Marcel trying to counter. Both of them connecting with shots once again. Three separates. There wasn't much going on in the glitch. Corner again. So Babu Faisal are screaming for their corner, for their man to move forward. Swinging left there by the Iranian connecting. Oh, yeah, interesting to see Tegnan going back to his roots, fighting like a technician instead of a brawler. Left kick there from the Iranian. Nice low kick. Good hands here coming in by Barazaran. Backing up Tegnan. Tegnan, I believe, really needs to start moving forward. I agree. Swinging a miss there by Tegnan, but he just, he just can't. Get that composure. Tegnan just looks tired. He does. Wasn't even looking at his opponent for some time. And happy to just go again, put his back against the ropes. It's a counter strike. Big left hand there from Tegnan, and it connects very well. Not Tegnan. the best performance we've seen by Tegnan. Not at all. A completely different fighter from what we're used to seeing. Abu Fazal, though, looking exceptionally good. Grabbing a hold. And you wouldn't believe that Abu Fazal was knocked down in the first round of no, wobbly legs. Absolutely not. Attempt of the spinning back yeah, kick. Tengnan not even daring to counter right now. And yeah, is the sort of fighter that takes oh, advantage of those right situations. Hand. Flash of heads, but another beautiful right hand there from Merazaran. One thing Merazaran needs to do is be more accurate with his shots. We haven't seen that in this round. See Teng Nung waiting for his opportunity and just countering. And that is the end of our eighth bout of the evening. Good performance there from Abu Fazal. Yeah, good two rounds by Teng Nung. Obviously, the round number one. Second round, I feel like he edged it, but that third round didn't really do anything. Just sat back, waited for. Now it makes you wonder, could we go to a fourth round? Could possibly happen. But also, would the first round be so dominant for Tegnan that he wins it? Good point as well. By two, two, by two points, it could be the case. So it's a tough fight, it really was. A tough fight for Tegnan, but a, a good third round for Abu Fazal. Makes you wonder, how do you deem that second round? Did it go to Tegnan or did it go to Abu Fazal? I agree, I think it's all about the second. Which I do think Tegnan edge, but who knows? All right, let's get the official decision. And then we'll go to the main event of the evening. The Thai Fight League 67 Kilo Final is up next. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. Dal Pratt.
การแล้วนะครับผู้ชนะคู่นี้คือ The Winner แดงหนึ่งสินเจ้สายรุ่งบอมไทยแล้วแน่นอนครับคะแนนเหนือๆนะเกือบจะน็อกไปแล้วนะแต่ว่าเรายังยื้อมาได้จนถึงยกที่3ครับผมนะฮะก็ถือว่าเป็นอีกคู่หนึ่งที่มันทีเดียวนะครับยินดีกับผู้ชนะเป็นกำลังใจกับผู้ที่พลาดไปด้วยใช่ตอนนี้นะครับรางวัลกันดีกว่าจ้ะเข้มขัดเสถียรเรือทองนะครับขอเรียนเชิญนะครับพันธุรเอกสุภกรอ้นสุวรรณครับผู้บังคับการสถานีตํารวจภูทรปั้นหมี่ครับรวมถึงพันตำรวจเอกรังสรรสอนสิงห์ครับพ่วมกับการสถานีตำรวจนครบาลสายไหมนะครับรวมมอบเข็มขัดนะครับสวยงามและเป็นสิริมงคลมากๆยินดีด้วยนะครับรวมถึงเราจะมีกันในวันพิเศษด้วยใช่มอบเรียบร้อยนะฮะกับแตงหนึ่งจิตสิทธิ์แจ๊สายรุ่งวิทยา Yeah, we saw him compete earlier. Yeah, we did. Just realized that. And get stopped by Alessio Malatesta. That's right. Oh, I'm excited for this one. A fight that can change the lives of these two fighters if they get that victory, if they get their hand raised here tonight. It's been a long road for these two fighters. It all ends here. Northern Thailand taking on Northeast Thailand. A rivalry we're not used to seeing. Glasser, five fights within the tournament, with three knockouts to his name. Dao p r e r five fights, four victories, all four by knockout. That only loss to Glasser. Here we go, round number one. Of course, Dao p r e r in the black and Glasser in the white. Good low kick there, Glasser. Left kick to the body by Dalpre, swinging left hand there. Yeah, you know what Dalpre told me after he lost that first fight against g l a s s e r He told me it's because he was still recovering from sickness. So good to see him back on full form and here in the final. I've heard that one before. Oh yes. <laughs> Tempted right high kick there by g l a s s e r Oh, beautiful body strikes. One, two, three. Combination coming in by Dalpre. All three connecting. Yeah, very beautiful from Dalpre. Love the way he puts his combinations together and a good kick to the body by d a l b r e t Outside kick there from g l a s s e r Good combination, right body shot, left high shot there. Both for get connecting once again by d a l b r e t in the black. I love how d a l b r e t is attacking multiple parts of the body and throwing combinations. Man from the tournament, g l a s s e r He was in trouble in a couple of his fights. He has a good chin on him. He can take a shot just as I say that. d a l p r e r delivering a beautifully s h o t i m e left hand that rocks. Just for a Lassen. moment, d a l d a l p r e r seemed like he was a shark that smells blood in the water. And now Glasser coming back with some big shots of his own. Oh. An uppercut from d a l p r e r What an uppercut that was! Stunning. Absolutely beautiful. d a l p r e r on the back foot fights extremely oh. well. Oh, big left hand by d a l p r e r and Glasser goes down. But straight away he goes back. To his feet. And d a l p r e t looking at the referee, asking, "Why didn't you give him a standing eight count?" That, testing the chin that I was uh, talking about. Rocky g l a s s e r I love those shots in the midsection and those huge elbows in now coming in from d a l p r e t oh, Elbow, elbow. Once again. It's all d a l p r e t Left elbow once again. Left hand by d a l p r e t oh. Chasing g l a s s e r around the ring. Here come the elbow strikes once again and again. Oh. Him a standing eight count, and I think that was rightfully so. Oh, he's moving back. We've seen how many times we've said tonight a fighter is on wobbly legs, but a fighter hasn't been able to stop them. d a l p r e t looks like he wants to change that. Swing in left hand. And losing his footing again. Can he get up? Yes, he does. Referee is not going to count this time. Big kick there from d a l p r e t Oh, another hammer. Hammer on the left hand, Glasser, and an elbow. g l a s s e r not fighting back. He's in real trouble. He's trying to put up the knee guard. He needs to survive. He needs to get to the end of the round. Here's a big mountain to climb now. g l a s s e r Such a great job. d a l p r e t has done in the first round. Left kick to the body. Another left hand. That time blocked by g l a s s e r Oh, what a 
one way traffic in round number one in the final. Stay with us. Round number two up next. Well, the story of the round was all the attacking prowess on display by Dalpre. There's no doubt about it, it was one way traffic. I mean, the referee didn't count right, but it looked like a pretty good knockdown to me, even though I know he was going for that kick, but at the same time, that connection was pretty clean. But it is what it is. I'm sure Dalpre, even though it wasn't just a knockdown, will, of course, get. The 10-9 no, on think, the judges' scorecard. I think the referee just ruled it because he was going for a kick and then took a punch and he might have just lost his balance. But there's no doubt about it, that stunned Glasuk. But with what we said, we've seen Glasuk in these situations before and his chin is incredible. It yeah. can take a lot of punishment, it can continue to move forward, which can eventually frustrate opponents. The question is, has Dalbre got enough to do that again? Because he has to do it, he has to put it on. Felipe is already cheering to the crowd and he's already in the middle of the ring looking to take it to Dalbre. There you saw Dalbre, oh, Classic's family, yeah. excuse me. Left hand there from Dalbre, snapping right hand. Classic chasing. Rivers on his face, biting down on the oh. shield. Another left hand there from Dalbre. Big elbow there from Dalbre to counter the attacks coming in from Glasson. Right, kids to the body. I can actually think we've got the father of Dalbre behind us screaming. Fantastic support for both fighters. And you wouldn't expect it here in Lopuri province. Good team there from Dalbre. Glasson still pushing forward. Nice knees from Glasson. Glasson, he's just Unbelievable. He really is. He took the barrage there in the first round. So much punishment in round number one. And Dalbre now on the back foot looking to defend his position. You can see the corner in the top left hand of your screen. The corner of Glasser, a screaming left. Fights to move on, delivering a good right kick to the body. Beautiful left shot there from Glasser. Left knees to the body, left and right in fight. It seems like now Dalbre is in some trouble. Good right hook there and a good knee to the midsection by Glasser. And he's just to block the right blocking, kick to the left yeah, kick. Glasser is blocking every strike that Dalbre is throwing right now. He just cannot get through. And you can see the corner of Dalbre now looking a little bit worried. And yeah, they want their man to defend every single strike. Easier said than done. Left knees here from Glasser within the clinch. And a right knee. And there's no doubt that Glasser won that clinch exchange. Glasser now moving forward once again. Good hook there from Dalbre. He is wearing down Dalbre mentally. Four knees coming in here by Glasser. Doing everything he can to fight and get back into this fight, and he is doing. Left knee from Dal, sorry, from Glasser. Honestly, after the first round, I did not expect to see Dalbre on the back foot. Because this round so far, it belongs to Glasser, without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, amazing display of heart, fortitude. Right kick there from Glasser, knocking Dalbre back. Left knee by Glasser, unbelievable. What a fight. What is he made of? This is ridiculous. It's been a great night so far, but without a shadow of a doubt, this has got to be the fight of the night. Oh, right knee to finish the round by Glasser. Now that round definitely belongs to Glasser. All right, well, an unbelievable second round there by Glasser. He now evens the score. It's one and one. I mean, he did everything in that second round to take it to make Dalbre uncomfortable, and that he did. He yeah, I believe rushed him. just dominated didn't, that round. Didn't let him breathe, nope. didn't let him throw anything. He blocked a lot of strikes, that, shots that he wasn't blocking in round number one. And now it's up for grabs in round number three. You win this round, you win the fight. Thai Fight League champion. Wow. This
tournament deserves this as well. This is phenomenal. Here this is go. why we have Tire Fight League. I mean, to build up to moments I like know. this. Here we go. And Glasso doing exactly what he did in round number two, pushing forward against Dalbre. Dalbre can't let him do this. Good knees there by Dalbre. He's got to fight back in that clinch. Yeah, fantastic knees straight down the middle by Dalbre. He should be giving up ground this time. Good movement there from Dalbre. Sneaky left hand to the body by Glasso. Left elbow by Dalbre. Yeah, oh my knees. goodness. Back straight down the middle go. by Dalbre. Absolutely be beautiful. Well timed. T by Dalbre. Left elbow straight down the middle. Good knee by Glasso. Oh, back and forth we go. Looking like it's swinging just in favour of Dalbre right now. That's right. I'm starting to think so, but the strike's now coming in from Glasso. They're accurate. They're pinpoint. Dalbre happy to fight off the back foot and he's connected with a lot of strikes. Kicks to the body, good punches to the body and head as well. Just don't know where Glasso finds his energy from. Oh, beautiful uppercut there from Dalbre. Left knee. Glasso performing as he did in round number two. However, the difference being Dalbre is countering. Good kick there from Dalbre. He's still on the back foot. Glasso. You can't stop him moving forward now. Extremely aggressive. Glasser, he's like a bulldozer. Dalbre is looking to be more accurate with his strikes. Beautiful knee to the midsection there. Trying right. to go for a oh. sweep. Almost got connected with a knee strike. The corner, the white corner of Glasser realized that. Right, kicks to the body. Dalbre might be hurt from that knee strike, Kevin. Dalbrand, he's slowed down significantly now, having trouble to stay onto his feet. He looks fatigued, Aaron. He does. This may be Glasic's fight. Despite being knocked out in the first round, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, just losing his balance there. Oh, this match is crazy. This is fire. Two Sends elbows it. in a row by Dalbrand. Sets it right elbow by Dalbrand. Swinging left up. Both fighters connect together, almost clashing heads once again. Dalbrand, look at that expression on his face. Exhausted, he's given everything throughout this tournament. The third and final round is over. We are going to go to the judges. An exceptional fight by two exceptional fighters in what has been an exceptional tournament. It all comes down to how the judges have scored it. But being honest, brutally honest, I thought that Dalbre might have done enough in round number three, but you said, and you might be correct in your thinking that Dalbre's fatigue was setting in. Viewed by the judges that Glasser did enough to take it in round number three, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I feel as if the third round can go any direction, I mean, we had Dalbra, he had some great counters. He was very accurate with his shots. And then we just had the onslaught coming in from Glasser. Kept pushing forward, kept attacking with those knees and elbows. This is going to be a hard one to call. Yeah, as we view these highlights. Remember, this is the second time these boys have fought. Glasser defeating Dalbra in the tournament group stage. Gorgeous one two there by Dalbra. That uppercut as well. It's going to be so difficult to score this one. But we are going to go to the judges. Let's get the official confirmation right now. สองฝั่งให้ดังกึกก้องไปทั่วประเทศนะครับไหนฝั่งนครราชสีมาอยู่ไหนและฝั่งนครราชสีมาอยู่ไหนวู้การประกาศผลต่อไปดีสำคัญ
ข่าวลือดำข่าวลือดำครับข่าวลือดำผู้ชนะได้แก่ได้แก่ดาวพระมาเคมีพาชนะเรียบร้อยแล้วทุกคนครับโอ้โหสุดยอดจริงๆโอ้โหโหนี่นี่เป็นการแก้แค้นกันได้สมศักดิ์ศรีจริงๆเดียวต้องมาเชิญนะครับตบมือกับดาวแพร่ด้วยนะครับเป็นกำลังใจให้ด้วยนะฮะโอ้โหน้ำตาแห่งโชคชะตามันต้องไหลรินออกมานะครับไม่งั้นเดี๋ยวมอบเลยด้วยกันนะฮะเข็มขัดเศรษฐีเรือทองนะครับขอเชิญคุณสิทธิพรบุญใหม่นะครับกำนันตำบลสีมุมอำเภอเมืองจังหวัดนครราชสีมานะครับและคุณทศพรสิวุรินมิตรนะฮะผู้จัดการบริษัทสีทองพระภูมิให้เกียรติมอบเข็มขัดด้วยนะครับเราดาวแพทย์ดูผมด้วยน,น่าจะหลังน้ําตาแล้วนะครับโอ้โหยินดีคือผู้ชนะมากๆเลยฮะกว่าจะผ่านพ้นมาในหลีกแต่ละหลีนะฮะเจอกันซ้ําแล้วซ้ําอีกคู่นี้เขาเรียกว่าเป็นคู่กัดกันจริงๆแน่นอนฮะผมเชื่อเลยว่า2คนนี้สายเลือดใหม่ของเราแน่ๆแน่นอนว่าผู้ใหญ่หลักหลายท่านได้เห็นแล้วนะฮะมาเจอกับหลีกใหญ่ของเราแน่นอนนะครับและยินดีด้วยนะครับมอบนะครับเข็มขัดแชมป์ไทยไฟลีกของการเผชิญคุณมิสเตอร์ทาคาชิฮาตะครับกับการจัดการบริษัทตรีเพชรอีสุสุเซลจำกัดนะครับขาดเข็มขัดแชมป์ไทยไฟลีกให้อีกหนึ่งเส้นไปเลยส่งเสียงปรบมือดังๆให้กับแชมป์ใหม่ของเราด้วยหลุด67กิโลกรัมและเขาคนนี้แหละฮะมอบต่อเนื่องเลยนะครับเช่นเดียวกันกับมิสเตอร์ทาคาชิฮาตะครับเงินรางวัลมาแล้วเงินรางวัลมาแล้วแล้วมอบให้การตรงนี้สองแสนบาทสุดยอดสุดยอดจริงๆนะฮะจำชื่อไว้สองคนนี้นะครับดาวแพร่และกล้าสึกเจอกันอีกแน่นอนแน่นอนนะฮะก็ขอบคุณไทยไฟลีนะครับพิคัดคนนะฮะจากทั่วประเทศมานะครับทำให้เราได้นักมวยนะฮะสายเลือดใหม่ดีๆให้กับไทยไฟต้องคอยติดตามนะครับผมเราไม่สามารถแสดงกล้องไปในที่นั้นจนเราได้เห็นเขาในหน้าต่างๆแต่อาการเขาเป็นเหมือนเหมือนซายอ็อก16เซนติเมตรที่ดีของเขาของอัลเจียรีนเขาไม่มีผลการแข่งที่ดีเลยด้วย28เกมจาก32เกมนี่น่าสนใจซายอ็อกส์ผลการแข่งที่ดีของเขาในไทยเกมคือ58เกมด้วย51ชนะ Seven losses, 23 of those 51 victories coming by way of knockout. But you can't always knock out Father Time, as they say, and he is now 40 years of age. 40 years of age is still going strong. I mean, this is the first time we've seen Akram here on Thai fight, so you got to wonder mm. what his level like. Yeah, absolutely. He's already going in uh, for the knockout, but I gotta say, Aaron, he doesn't look that confident. It's gotta be intimidating. 40 years of age, you're not to uh, have Sayok standing in front of you. Yeah, and looking straight into Akram's eyes now. Oh, man, right there from Sayok. Yeah, that was a great counter from Sayok, but of course, as we know, the older Sayok gets, the more smarter he has to mm. fight. It's not the same Sayok we've seen before. And we saw in his last fight against the German, Christian Malopec, that he is susceptible to getting caught. Yes, you know? he is. Definitely not as fast as he used to be, but the experience no. usually pays off. Good That's low right. kick there for Sayok. Oh, right and a left there coming in by the legend. Oh, swinging left and right there. Another good kick to the midsection there for Sayok. Sayok still chasing his opponent down. Akram on the back foot. Nice right kick to the body and acknowledge there. But Sayok just stalks his prey, moves forward. Yeah, usually from a taller fighter, especially of Akram's range, we usually see knees yes. coming into play. But it's quite obvious from the get-go that Akram does want to stay on the outside. You can tell there's some nervous energy running through the body right now of Akram. Doesn't look as relaxed as he should be, which is understandable considering the circumstances right now. Nice right high kick there by Akram. 
That was much better. That might settle the nerves, you know. Yeah, I mean, he might have some nervous energy, but one thing's for sure, he does have the techniques. He does. He does have the abilities, and he does have experience under his belt. But the same experience as Sayok? I don't think so. <laughs> well. Oh, good combination. Yeah, fantastic combination there for Akram. You need to do a little bit more oh, than that. He got clipped with that left hand, though. Yeah, now Akram, eyes wide open, stuck in the corner, oh! receiving elbows. And once again, Sayok turning back the clock. The technique that made that man famous, that left elbow. Knocking down the Fennec Fox. Yeah, that was beautifully placed by Sayok. He did his timing just right. Good left high kick there from Sayok. Didn't even think he could get up that high. And a round one here on Thai Fight. There you can see highlights of the very first round. A lot of damage being inflicted by the legend that is Sayok. Did yeah. see some good exchanges though. You can see on this slow motion, I wasn't waiting for that knockdown when it occurred. Backing up Akram into the corner and there, left hand, knocking him back, dropping that guard and there was the left elbow. The trademark of Sayok in the very first round as Akram goes down, but he's certainly not out. No, he's definitely... My name is Chai Kut Amlid, this is Aaron Siu Sumpan, and you are tuned into Thai Fight Bangajau. Yeah, we've got many, many fighters here tonight, fighters from Thailand, Italy, Myanmar, Algeria, Iran, and many, many more. And of course, we've also got some semi-finals that will lead up to our next event in Ayutthaya for those finals. Yeah, Left the, kick there by Sayok. And the reason why Aaron said that Akram's definitely not out of the fight because here on Thai Fight Rules, the knockdowns only count for one point. Absolutely, yeah, it's not a 10-8 round necessarily. If it is, like Kevin said, a knockdown. Left kick there by Sayok. And you can tell Akram definitely felt that left kick to the body and now he's cornered once again. He's in a very bad place but manages to get out with a <laughs> well, spinning Well that's one way fist. to get out of a situation like that. Absolutely. Making Good. it work in his favour. Nice high guy there from Sayok! Oh, beautiful left kick to the body by Sayok. He's looking in good form here tonight on Thai Fight by Krakow. Yeah, Sayok looking excellent. And just to tell everyone how big this event is, Sayok is in the first match. Oh, good right elbow there from Akram as he goes down. Yeah, I don't think he's getting up. Have you wrong about it before? No, he is. He's I'm wrong once again. You've got to love the heart that Akram is showing in this fight, but maybe it's just a little bit too much for him at this point. I wasn't even sure how that knockdown occurred, if I'm being honest. It happens so quick, a flash knockdown, but... I can only assume it was another counter elbow that came in by side. Evades that right hand. Akram, every time he swings that right hand, he's, mi he's missing the mark. If he is going to swing with that hook, he's going to make sure that he is close enough to get to Sayok. And it's clinching, i got to say, is this not up to par? You can't be turning your, the side of your body to your opponent. The Good shot to the body there from Sayok. And that's the thing about Sayok, he's not, he does have an issue with moving close enough to get clipped himself as long as he can dish out the punishment. And that's something that Akram is going to have to learn. He is the taller fighter, but he's still going to have to get in range if he wants to throw those left and right hooks. Yeah, he's just waiting for Sayok to come in. I'm not sure what that is. It may be the nerves are still there. Could be left. Oh! Holding on to the ropes, but he is down and he's caught it. It's over in the second round. Sayok turning back the clock. Here on Thai Fight, Bank for Chow. Many people were thinking because of the height advantage, this could spell disaster for the 40 year old Sayok. But once again, here on Thai Fight, he is able to overcome and deliver a victory for his team. Congratulations to the legend that is Sayok Pompamuan. That was extremely impressive. I mean, Sayok once again. Some of the highlights there. Jay Sayok pushing Akram back. See, he got clipped with the right elbow, but Sayok just doesn't care. There was a left elbow that caught him, he went down. I don't think he did a lot of damage. 
I almost think that Akram was just wilting into the fact that he was... The pressure was all over him and he couldn't handle it. He'd yeah. never been in a situation like this before, facing a legend, competing car, Chuck. I was, I was about to say, Sayok must have hit the off switch. <laughs> I mean, that was amazing. A barrage of punches, just a little bit too much for Akram. Well, I did say a little bit, I think, a, <laughs> I think yeah. way too much for Akram. But nevertheless, that was impressive. So like take away a man's... To our second winner is from Thailand. <laughs> Yeah, for all those who watched last week's Thai Fight League, you saw Nika destroy his opponent, which sets up the final rather well. We did say, didn't we? I wonder if Suksawat was watching on. Or was he just concentrating on making sure he stays under the weight limit here? As there you can see, Jatuit Sang Marakot, the owner of Sang Marakot Gym, with the final prayer for Suksawat before we get this one underway. Interesting there to see Salah take off his own one cotton. <laughs> First time I've seen that. And already, Salah going Ooh. in for the knockout. They don't get paid by the hour. Inside kick there by Salah. And neither do we Oh, Aaron. stunning right up there by Suksawa. Too true. Yes, usually we see Suksawa with a very calm approach, but Salah is oh, making nice. it work now. Beautiful counter elbow strike there by Suksawat. Now you have to think that there is a TV backstage while Salah watching Akram and the fact that Akram was constantly on the back foot as he learned to push forward. He wants to seems to come out here and he wants to be the aggressor. Yeah, what we know about Suksawat is that he's different from many of the Thai fight uh, athletes. Mm. Suksawat likes to fight on the back foot as opposed to going front and trying to get the knockout early. But what we also know from Suksawat, especially if you do watch his high fight league shows, is that he likes to wait until the second round to really That's get right. things started. Download that information and then pounce in round number two. Swing and a miss there, going up high by Sa Oh! Tip for tight. Suksawat missing his. But looks like you said, Kevin, you can see Suksawat happy to hang around the ropes there. Yeah, but Waiting what? for... Salah to move forward and potentially move, make a mistake. But one thing we know about Suksawat is that he knows that even though a fighter moves forward, they become brawlers, they're aggressive. Mm. Suksawat knows that they can't maintain that pressure for the entire match. So he knows eventually they will slow down and that's when he will start to pounce. Beautiful left kick there and a good right hand there from Suksawat. Suksawat putting his combinations together very well. Something we're not used to seeing from Suksawat, actually. Yeah, you can see the discipline as well by Suksawat. He almost rushed forward and realized there was no need. And now he's connecting with nice left kicks to the body. Very controlled, as ever, in round number one. Yeah, eventually... Oh! Almost with a leaping elbow there. Eventually, Salah will have to start blocking those left kicks to the body. I mean, <laughs> if he doesn't do it now, it will start to add up and it will just start to stink. If it doesn't hurt now, it'll definitely hurt tomorrow morning. Yeah, you can already see the right side of the body of Salah is already red raw from those left kicks of Suksawat, almost matching his hair colour. <laughs> you can see already Salah now starting to show more respect to the counter-striking of Suksawat. He's not so eager to lean in and jump forward here. Oh, almost with that left hook. Not enough power on it to trouble. Sucks a lot as we end round number one here on Thai Fight. Here we go, coming into the second round of action. Sucks in the black corner and it's Salah Burkan in the white. And I gotta say, from the get go, it's a big round for Sucks He managed to damage the body a few times. 
He did take some punishment in the first um, opening minutes of the round, or opening seconds, I should yeah, say. Yeah, opening seconds. But then after that, Salah seems to have taken his foot off the pedal. I mean, just not the same Salah. He's starting to respect Suksawat's offense and defense. Did catch him a couple of times, though. Might have been a different story if it was Kachuk, though. That's a good point, yeah. But of course... This being a semi-final, we'll have to compete again on our next big Thai fight show, which will be Christmas Eve in Ayutthaya. For those that watched uh, Thai fight in Lopuri will remember that uh, Suksuat had a huge cut on his forehead. So I'm quite surprised that it's managed ah. to heal in time for this show. <laughs> Another good kick there for Suksuat. And Land again! Just landing oh. at will. Both fighters seem to be going through the gears here in round number two. Both very quick, left kick to the body there, good hands. And then you see Salah. Salah's cut. He is cut just at the left eye. Yeah, the left eye, bro. Looks starting to spurt down the face now of the Algerian. Just about to say left eyelid. <laughs> yeah, but Salah is cut. Pretty sure that might have been from an elbow that we just did not see. And it seems like ah. there's a problem. I was a project. yeah. There it is. Doesn't look like it's flowing into the eye. Yeah, it is. So it should too much issues. It is in a dangerous position, though. So the doctor is not less. Let's have a, a look point. at that. The another elbow connecting for Suksova. Well done. There's that left hand by Salah. But there's that left kick, and now it does seem to bother him. You can see what Suksova is doing. He moves in. He throws a couple of shots. He moves out. Yeah, great tactic from Suksawat. As we like to say, I mean, he takes a round to read his opponent to mm. find out what their weaknesses and strengths are. And it seems to be that left kick. You can see already that, of course, the damage to the eye, but look how red the arm is from all those punishment, punishing left kicks. Yeah, I don't even think um, Salah's blocking on one again. kick. And that's going to hurt the arm. And of course, in Thai fight, and of course, in traditional Muay Thai as well, arms get broken from kicks. Yeah, definitely. That's why they teach you to start blocking with your chins. He did it just there. I believe that might have been the first one. I'm not sure. But if there's any time that Salah really needs to go in for the knockout, it's now. Seems to be running out of ideas at the moment. Yeah, staying on the back foot a little bit too much. Giving Suksawad a lot of time to recover. Another good kick there from Suksawad. He triples it up. I was about to say double, but <laughs> I think we see more than two. Oh, beautiful elbow. Bouncing off the ropes for Suksawat and timing that elbow to perfection through the guard of Salah. Yeah, that's very much in Suksawat's game plan, the timing, the countering. And you might say to yourself, well, why is Suksawat not going low with those kicks? Why not? Why is he not going high? If it's not broken, you don't have to fix it. All right, end of round two here on Thai Fight League. Final round, Suksawat once again dominating. And a large shot of the doubt that Suksawat took that round. I mean, it was due to his just superb timing and, of course, those powerful left kicks. Oh, there it is. The elbow that sliced open Salah. <sighs> Talk about timing, my word. Yeah, that was brilliant. I mean, Salah thought he was going to have it his own way, but then Suksawat just timed it to perfection. And again, you can see Suksawat looking to go back in with that elbow straight to the cut of Salah. But it, yeah, you can see as Kevin points to the screen that what was a red arm is turning purple. Suksawat, in our unofficial opinion, is one round away from being in the... And the Vaseline squad is here. This has been a really good fight. Yeah, fantastic fight. Really love those fights where there's a clash of styles. Yeah, absolutely. The aggression from Salah and the technical prowess of Suksawat has made this very enjoyable left kick to that damaged arm. And again by Suksawat. 
What's Straight away, you can see that Salah is moving backwards, and it's all, oh, oh yeah, what? big issue. Now, when you see a fighter try and get some blood flow back to the arm, you know there's an issue. What's interesting about Tsukzawa's fighting style is that he starts off slow, but he gets just more intense mm. after every single round. And <laughs> those kicks are the hardest they've ever been in this fight. He's such a good fighter at the building momentum within a fight. And he's still looking fresh in round number three. Oh, good right high kick there by Salah. We haven't seen many kicks by the Algerian, but by that showing we just witnessed, he is more than capable. Yeah, it almost seemed like he took Suksoa by surprise. I mean, Suksoa was just having it all his own way, but then Salah, I mean, with a surprising counter strike, put Suksoa on the back foot just oh. for a while. Again to the arm. In between the rounds, the corner of Salah were actually telling him to go. He punches to the body of Suksoa. Yeah, not sure if he can get close enough, but honestly. Well, that's, you run the risk of getting clipped with another elbow, or indeed that menacing left kick that Suksawat just pulls out and times again and again and again. Another kick connects oh. there for Suksawat. Switching and trying to trick Salah. But I believe Salah saw that coming from a mile away. But what has really let Salah down is his inability to just block those left kicks. Smart tactic here from Suksawat. And let's not forget, I did mention it before, but he does have to fight again in a month's time. So right now, is there any need to risk moving forward and potentially causing a cut and putting yourself out of the final? Or do you do what you do right now? Do you keep that high guard and you run down the clock? I say the latter, left high kick there but from Suksawat. Yeah, definitely smart tactics being employed by Suksawat. Oh, swinging right hand there! Almost didn't work out for him yeah. there though. Well, Salah, you never rule out the desperation of a fighter when they're looking for that big Hail Mary, Hail Mary strike. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it only takes one shot to finish a fight, but that concludes the final round. Got to say, it was an excellent fight for Suksawat. Towards the end, though, he almost got caught, or he did get caught, but managed to withstand it. You don't often see games of chess in a Muay Thai way here on Thai Fight, but that was definitely one of them. Well, you saw the, the aggression of Salah from the opening bell, but Suksawat. And then ultimately, it was the wickedness of the left kick that won him this contest and puts him through into the final next month. Let's have a look at the highlights right here. Oh, not only to the upper arm, but to the forearm as well of Salah. It, that will be very sore in the morning as soon as the adrenaline drops. Yeah, and for those that are wondering, those shots to the arms, they do count. Unless he has the arms out blocking. But he didn't there. I think it's fair to say he was tucked deep into his body. Mm. Those kicks do count. But overall, you have to give it to that man. คนต่างลุ้นนะครับซึ่งแน่นอนว่าทั้งเร็วและก็แรงมากสําหรับคู่นี้นะฮะครับโอ้แต่ผู้ชนะมีอีกหนึ่งเดียวเท่านั้นที
big Thai fight show in Ayutthaya on Christmas Eve. Kevin and I will be there, and we hope everybody watching around the world on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel will join us as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That's right, I mean, it's going to be Thai Fight Luang Put Tuat. 24th of December, don't miss it. All right, here we go, round number one. We're back to card shirt action, row pants. And the winner of this match will take on Paya Singa So, so mid. So, potential oh. rematch for Vero, who's going into brawl mode at the moment against Zara. Good start there from both fighters, in fact, because Vero was pushing forward and clipping Zara, but Zara, she delivered a nice counter strike to give Vero something to think about at least. Yeah, but what we know about Zara is that she is used to fighting brawlers. I mean, she loves to brawl herself, but I believe that, uh, that Vero is oh. just on another level. Well, let's see if you're right, Kevin. Into the clinch. Good start. Vero obviously been fine tuning her boxing skills at Tiger Muay Thai. And why wouldn't you do when you've got ropes wrapped around your hands? It makes complete sense. Yeah, I mean, there was one event where she had to fight with gloves on, and she told us from the get-go she did not like that whatsoever. She loves the cut shot. A nice snapping left jab there from Jara. Nice low kick, and again, Vero blocking that with the second one. Vero looking for the left. Right hand there by Vero. Zara, dare I say, enjoying herself in there with a right smile on her face. I'll tell you what, if Vero had it her own way, this fight would be bare knuckle. Yeah. <laughs> Zara once again initiating the clinch. In Vero's previous matchup, though, we saw her clinch up a few times and threw some really devastating knees. Maybe we'll see more of the same in this match. Good combinations there from Vero. Oh, tempted right high kick into a teeth there by Vero. Goes for that right hand again and an elbow. Yeah. Zara doing well off the back foot. Counter striking here. Moves away from the corner. Yeah, I mean. Vero is still trying to figure her opponent out, and that is the end of the first round. Close. Stay with us, round two, coming up. All right, let's have a look at the highlights from round number one. Vero setting the stall out early, moving in with her typical and effective combinations, both up high and to the body, switching levels with ease. But Zara not allowing her to have it her own way. Yeah, I gotta say, Zara's doing very well on the back foot. Another thing to say as well, she didn't take a lot of damage in that round at all. No, I don't think so. She's looking fresh. You can see her now, she's already up on her feet from the corner. Officially, I have to say that Vero was the better of the two fighters in round number one. All right, here we go, round number two. You have to agree with you there, Aaron. I mean, Vero was walking forward and she was just trying to punish the body of Zara. Let's see if this round is any different. Vero already going in with some hard combinations, going to the body and trying to go high as well. A lot of encouragement in the corner next to us for Zara. Yeah, that's what I noticed about Satin Muay Thai. They always bring a big contingent anytime their fighters are competing. Nice combination there by Zara. Low kick with the right foot, left kick to the body. Right hand there from Vero. Oh, team to the face by Vero. Yeah, Zara's not going to like that one bit, but good kick to the midsection by Zara. Yeah, fighting very well on the back foot, I must say. Yeah, she's been forced to do that. Oh, another team there by Vero, that time knocking Zara down. I mean, that's something we haven't seen so often in Vero's arsenal. Teeping her opponents to the face. And going oh. for the teep once again. Nice low kick there by Zero, but not smiling as much as we saw her in round number one. No, another thing is that Vero has definitely turned up the intensity. I don't think she's very happy with her performance in the first round. More teams here by the card chirp queen. And Zara extremely defensive now. Just not attacking with any intensity. Right hand there from Zara. Going low, body shot by Vero. 
Yeah, if there's anything we can say about Barrow's game plan is that she's making the mistake of following Zara instead of trying to cut the, the cut. corners. Yeah, that's true. Good spot, that. And once again, I mean, Barrow is just circling, and that is the end of the second round. Well, we've got a robust crowd here cheering on both these fighters, in fact. Let's have a look at the highlights there from round number two. Pretty much more of the same of what we saw in round number one. The only difference I might have seen is that Zara was showing even more defensive capabilities. However, we did see some beautiful teeps to the face by Vero. And she even caught Zara with some midsection kicks. But apart from that, nothing of massive note. No. And um, it's, it's at, at this time, I believe that Zara really needs to go for the knockout. We haven't seen any signs of that so far. I mean, she did have some good counterboxing, but Overall, it's definitely two rounds for Vera in my, on my own official scorecards. There's no doubt about it. That was a good right hand there from Zara. <laughs> round number three, the third and final round. Treyway, urgency here by Vero. Nice low kick. Intense. By Vero. Left hook there by the left wing queen. Looking to keep Zara in that corner, not letting her escape. Yeah, it must be some advice for the corner. They don't, she doesn't want to continuously chase. Good block there for Vero. Vero has her opponents on the ropes. Zara managing to move out of the way, but perhaps going to get stuck in the corner there. Good kick there by Vero, held by Zara. Good knee to the mix section there. But I do think after that flurry that Vero has blooded the nose of Zara, which now could be very difficult for her to breathe out of that nose. As you can see, she's constantly playing with it, pouring at it. Yeah, I mean, we keep going back to the same fact that Zara, she is doing good on the back foot, but she needs to do a lot more. She needs to start going forward, try to put some combinations together, because the counter game at this point is just not working. Good one, two there by Vero. And again with that right hand. Back to Zara into the corner, uppercut's attempted. Zara delivers a left kick to the body. Another right hand here by Vero, turning up the pressure at the end of round number three. Yeah, Vero's going back again to the one, two combinations that yeah, is working for her. Good camera shot there, you can see. Zara, Zara, sorry, starting to wilter just a little bit. You can see that in the eyes. And you can see that she refused oh, to right, let go, Vero. All this bruising there on the nose of Zara. And again, Vero does not let her get out of that corner. Now Vero is now cutting the corners, and that is the end of the third and final round. Zara seems very happy with her performance. Well, she survived, but and she can celebrate. But come on, let's face it, it was Vero for all three of those rounds. Zara didn't take as much punishment as, and she's enjoying, she's enjoying the crowd and being here on a big stage like Thai Fight. But surviving doesn't mean that you're going to go through to the finally, unfortunately. But hey, could be wrong. <laughs> let's get the official decision. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number three. You see that pouring left jab from Vero, finding angles to create shots. That was a little bit of a slugfest in round number three. And that's what Vero wanted, if I'm being honest. Yeah, that's exactly how Vero likes to fight. She loves to compete against fighters and love to exchange with her. There you can see a big right hand coming in from Vero, immediately stopping Zara in her tracks. All right, let's see. He moves on to the Queen's Cup final. At
สำหรับนักมวยหญิงนะฮะที่จะเข้าสู่รอบชิงชนะและต่อไปนะครับและได้เงินรางวัลอัดชิน 15,000 บาทนะครับและผู้ชนะสำหรับคู่นี้ได้แก่ใครครับใครมีลุ้นกับคู่แล้วได้แก่สาวแกร่งลุ่มสารวินเวรรวรรุจิรวรยินดีกับผู้ชนะนะครับและเป็นกำลังใจกับผู้ที่พายไปนะเจอกันใหม่ได้นะครับแต่ว่าบอกไว้ตรงนี้เลยว่าเวโรนะครับจะเข้าไปชิงนะในเดือนธันวาคมนี้แน่นอนนะครับผู้ที่รอชิงนะครับเป็นผู้ที่เป็นแชมป์ของไทยไฟลีกนะครับฝ่าฟันมาเหมือนกันเลยนั่นคือพยาสิงสอสมบิดอ่าซึ่งเข้าไปรอชิงชนะแล้วใช่ฮะคู่นี้เคยเจอกันไปแล้วด้วยเคยมาแล้วอ๋อรีแมทแมทแล้วแค้ครั้งหนึ่งจะเป็นยังไงครับเดี๋ยวรอชมกันครับอ่ะกลับมาเจอกันครับWell, Chana Chai fight fought very relaxed in Thai Fight League. Let's see if he can do the same there as he eats a leaping left hook straight away there from Romani. Then a right body shot deep to the face by the Iranian. Huge oh! flying knee there from Chan Chana Chai. How about that? Spinning back elbow tap by Chana Chai. And it just goes to show how much it means for Shana Chai to be on the big Thai fight shows. He's willing to entertain the crowd early oh, on. And again, he caught it. He caught him that time. I was Romani still on his feet. That was incredible. I mean, if this was a video game, he's just spamming the buttons right now. Absolutely incredible start there for Shana Chai. Two flying knees in the very first round. Left hook, downward elbow attempted by Shana Chai. He reached a right hand. Left hook there. And that caught Chanachai. Well done there from Romani. Can't believe the toughness of Romani. He ate that flying knee. That would have put anyone down. Right hook there from Romani. But it seems like now Chanachai he is feeling the effects of the punches coming in now from Romani, showing a little bit more respect. Yeah. And as we said before the fight started, he should. Attempts a left kick there by oh good right hand there from Romani. Yeah, well, if you're wondering if Chana Chai has a chin, he does. Another right hand from Romani. Left high kick attempted by Chana Chai. Right attempted a miss by Romani. Yeah, really like what I'm seeing from Chana Chai at the moment and Romani as well. I mean, he does have power in those hands. Oh, he does. Left and right coming in from the Iranian once again. Chana Chai potentially looking for an elbow there, but completely wide of the mark. Chana Chai looking for that team. Romani trying to move, push him away with that left kick to the body. Attempted by knee once again for a third time in round number one. And that connected once again. Good body shot though by Romani, and that may be it. The body shot taking Chana Chai off his feet, and I think that is it. There's no way he's getting up, but that is it. I told you this guy was special. A stoppage in the first round for Mohammed Romani. That was unbelievable. <laughs> Mohamed Romani is for real. Uh, Taking and eating three flying knees and delivering a beautifully timed body shot. Taking down what was supposed to be an amazing debut for Chana Chai. Chana Muay Thai completely ruining the party of the Thai fighter. Oh, that was unbelievable. I mean, Romani, it seems like he took so much damage early on, but managed. Got the knockout victory. Let's take a look at that again. That was the first flying knee. He ate it. Look he at that, right on the chin. Who does that? Who eats flying knees like that? Nobody but Romani. I mean, he ate three of them. Bang! I mean, Aaron, we only saw one round, but what a fight that was. 
This guy's special. We need to see him back on tight fight again. No doubt about it. As the rain starts pouring here on tight fight. But it was raining fly knees momentarily. I can see that again. Oh. I believe that was the third flying knee that connected. But then here is the knockout shot. Right to the body. Wow. Straight away you can see the grimace. The winner is the Syria Mohamed Ramane from Milan. ได้เข้าไปชิงชนะแล้วนะโอ้โหเห็นเห็นการแข่งกันได้ในกระบวนการนี้ไม่มีอะไรที่เกิดขึ้นไม่ได้บนเวทีนี้แหมเกิดขึ
barrage his opponents with attacks. That was a good right hand that time, but Karim Shai took it very well. And right at the end of the round, ooh, Lion just... <laughs>
อแน่นอนฮะจะมีการมอบนะนาฬิกาด้วยนะครับให้กับไลออนนะครับนาฬิกาที่ช็อกเรนเชิญนะครับไลออนครับรับรางวัลนะครับกับนันพิรัตเจียสอนนะครับมอบกับจีช็อกให้กับไลออนเป็นรางวัลพิเศษมอบให้ครับจากผู้ใหญ่ใจดีของเราครับได้แล้วกลับมาเจอกันนะฮะกับไทยไฟรังอาจารย์นะพักกันสักครู่สีปราดชุมสุกแอนภูเก็ตปรามประยุน and of course the president of the judges and the referees here tonight is Dr. Sawang Wudhiapitak. Six bout of the evening in the white corner from Russia, Vladimir Shuliak. And in the black corner is Alessio Malatesta from Italy. 70 kilos for this one. Will definitely be an exciting matchup. Every single time we see Alessio Malatesta compete, he continues to improve each time. Improve and impress. An oh, left hand kick there from the gladiator. Right low kick from Shuliak. And again, going up high is Malatesta. Yeah, Good no block doubt. that time. No doubt that Malatesta wants to end this fight early. I mean, though he has competed in Italy for a while, but some forget he was competing in Thailand before that as well. Lived a couple of years in Rayong, eastern part of Thailand. And now here he is on a Thai fight. Oh, good kick to the body. Juliet just lost his footing momentarily. But obviously with Malatesta standing in that southpaw stance, and him more than capable with that left kick. Yeah, what we expect from Orthodox versus Southpaw matchups are kicks to the midsection, and that's exactly what we're seeing from Malatesta at the moment. The referee not happy with what he's seeing so far. He wants to see more action, and quite frankly, Aaron, so do we. I don't think you can blame Malatesta, though. I think it's more about Shuliak. Yeah, Malatesta, he is pushing the action. He is. He's the one pressing and throwing quite a lot of kicks to the body. Threw a nice outside kick earlier as well with the right. Oh, there we go again with that left kick. Yeah, that left kick has been brutal all match. Good left hand there. Elbows. As Shuliak again stands on the back foot, cornered by Malatesta. And Shuliak really struggling in this matchup. He, I, I just don't see him gaining anything through just yet. Good kick though by Shuliak and held by Malatesta. Took his time to get up there as well. A very bad sign for Shuliak. Could be a sign of Tyner, so that he's already hurt. Nice Good. right hand, sorry, left hand by the southpaw to the body. Oh, Shuliak delivers one back. Good right kick there to the midsection by Malatesta. Malatesta going with the combinations again, and fair to say, not a very composed look for Shuliak just now. Shuliak completely on the back foot in that round. Stay with us, round two. So Alessio Malatesta in the black corner and Belenovic Shuliak from Russia in the white. And without a shadow of a doubt, that was Alessio Malatesta's round. It's I just haven't seen anything from Vladimir Shuliak at all, quite frankly. Yeah, 100%. Of course, the referee did intervene early stages of round number one to tell both fighters to start competing. But like you said, Kevin, it was Shuliak. He wasn't the one who was pressing forward. And Malatesta was just the one he was having to press. He just dominated that first round. I think it's fair. <laughs> Different from Vladimir Shuliak. Good kick to start things off for Vladimir Shuliak and just dodging the left kick of Alessio Malatesta. Well, I did say he could get slippy in there with this rain coming down. Good right hand there from Shuliak. Oh, Malatesta punishing the legs that time. Yeah, beautiful low kick there from Malatesta. And now Shuliak is more in his zone now, deciding to brawl and chain, trade shots against Malatesta. Oh, here comes Malatesta though. Beautiful elbows, good knee to the big section, a left high kick. That could be it, nope. No, Refer wasn't a knockdown. I think Vladimir was just overwhelmed. 
He managed to get up extremely quickly and have a big smile on his face. Good one two there for Malatesta. You can imagine a left kick is coming pretty soon, Aaron. <laughs> Again there, Shuliak covering up, not fighting back. Covering up for dear life, I dare to say. Great sweep there from Malatesta, looking really impressive. Oh, sends it left elbow through the guard there of Shuliak. I'm not sure if that got through the guard or not. Left knee within the clinch. You can imagine backstage right now, PTT and Hashim oh. are watching this fight with a lot of anticipation. Absolutely, good left knee there from Malatesta. Tempted right elbow there from Shuliak. Yeah, good job there from Shuliak, listening to his coach's instructions, but he really needs to go for broke at the moment. Oh, that's hurt him. Answer down. Malatesta now moving forward, looking for that left kick once again. Yeah, not long now until Shuliak is going to go down. I mean, you can tell by the body language. Yeah, absolutely. And it... Almost <laughs> It's all Malatesta. Yeah, just waiting for the coup de grace right now. Shuliak really out of his element at the moment. Yeah, he's been outclassed, he's been outworked. He's been out hustled. And here comes Malatesta once again. Left knee to the body. Right elbow, left elbow. Yeah, and the referee decides to call a standing eight count. Yeah, it was about time, I mean. Vladimir Shulak, he just wasn't protecting himself well. He wasn't fighting back. Referee made the right decision and gave the standing eight count. Good, oh, good to the midsection. That was stunning by Malatesta once again. More left kicks unanswered here by Shuliak. Good that job by the referee. There was no need for Shuliak to take any more punishment. And the Italian, Alessio Malatesta, TKO's his opponent. He will be going through to the final next month in a Utia. Yeah, he'll be taking on either PTT Vovodrarom or Hashem Shagori. Really looking forward to that matchup. Super easy we're being honest for Malatesta. <laughs>
We have talked about Nongo in the past. The fact that he's got a lot of potential. Yeah, he definitely does. But he needs to show more from what we've seen in the past here at Thai fight. Yeah, he started at the same time as Vera Ooh, at the Thai good fight. Hand. At Thai fight Lampang, and he has gotten better. He has. That has to be said. But can he get better? Yes, he can. But a very slow start from Shalam Dam, and we saw this whilst he was competing on Thai Fight League as well. Doesn't like to rush things, a good uppercut and a right kick there for Nong Oh. Something you can say about Shalam Dam that you can't say about the other opponents here on Thai Fight League for the Thai Fight team is that he will be used to those ropes around his wrists. As, like we said, he has competed a few times on Thai Fight League, but has he competed against anyone of the stature of Nong Oh Chahapayat? I think not. No, I don't think so either, and um, I've got to say, Shalandam really needs to get things started. We do know him as a clinch and knee fighter, so we do need to see more of that from him. I mean, he does have the Kacha wrapped around his hands, so maybe he has fallen for the trap of all of a sudden becoming a brawler when he's not. We call that Kevin's theory, don't we? Yeah, when we do. <laughs> <laughs> Replace the gloves with ropes and everyone just wants to use their hands, understandably. Right kick to the midsection there, and a lefty by Nongo. Yeah, but despite the fact that we said that Shalam Dam is a clinch and knee fighter, Nong Oh has had more success in the clinch and knee than yeah. Shalam Dam has, has, has had so far. Team to the midsection there by Shalam Dam. Oh, stunning right kick to the body in reply by Nong Oh. Then looks at that right hand. Jumping knee there by Nong Oh into the clinch. Yeah, that, that kick certainly rattled Shalam Dam just for a moment. Fair to say though, Shalantam just hasn't got it started just yet. End of round number one here on Thai Fight. Stay with us, round two. Up next. Here you can see highlights from round number one from our seventh bout of the evening here on Thai Fight. We've got Nongo Chahapayak in the black corner, delivering a beautifully timed left knee there to the body of Chalam Dam, the yeah. black shark from Thailand in the white corner. Yeah, it certainly hasn't been enough for Chalam Dam right now. I mean, he really needs to do something different here in the second round. I mean, he was just taking punishment from Nong Oh throughout that first round, without a doubt. <laughs> Definitely goes to Nong Oh. I agree. All right, let's see what happens in round number two. Feels like Nongo is spotting some new ink on his chest. No, that's that's a sticker. <laughs> I've, I've actually asked him backstage, right? Really? Yeah, and he says, just trying it out in case he does one. And I said, that may be a little bit too small for you. <laughs> well, it's brave to try it out in front of millions of people watching in Thailand around the world. I was thinking the exact same thing. Good stepping knee there for Nongo. Yeah, Chalam Tam, exactly what we wanted to see from him. Here in the second round, he's going in for the clinch and knee tactics. And you can Swing imagine... Swinging left and right, see good right hand there from Chalam Dam. Oh, here come those hammer fists by not going reply. Yeah, both of these guys coming from a very prestigious oh. gym. Nongo coming from Shahapayak. Oh, good left and right. Chalam Dam trying to fight fire with fire. Not doing a bad job of it as well. But that clinch and knee across the back, I mean, that's going to score big for Shalam Dam. And he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Stay in the clinch. Don't trade blows against Nongo because he's not going to win that. But what he will win is the clinch and knee. And I think we're seeing that from him right now. Oh, beautiful right hands. Oh, and again, third there by Nongo. They're yeah, doing such a good job in the clinch. And referee now taking a timeout. We have to sort out the catch up. Loose rope. Hopefully we can get things going soon, but so far, i got to say, I'm really impressed with Shalam Dam in the second round. Yeah, let's have a look at what we've witnessed so far in this second round. In between the rounds, Shalam Dam was actually gesturing to the crowd. He looks like, believe it or not, he's enjoying himself. He's enjoying his experience here on Thai Fight. Yeah, but that's what a Moy Kao is. A Moy Kao takes a lot of punishment in order to get into that dominant clinch position. But right now, might be taking a little bit too much yeah. punishment from Nong Oh. Good left knee there by Nong Oh, that after feinting with the right hook. 
Yeah, one thing Shalom Dub's already figured out is that Nongo does not want to be in the clinch against him. Nongo is just, excuse me, Shalom Dub is just that good in the clinch. It's a kick there by Nongo. The only question you have to ask is, does he get enough time to work in the clinch, or is that going to happen more often than not? But he did deliver two good, sorry, well timed knees there, did Shalom Dub again, looking to get back in the clinch, and that was a good right hand. Not a judge to be a knockdown. But Nongo is getting closer with those hooks. Yeah, but Nongo always ends up in that position against Shalam Dam, and that's exactly where he doesn't want to be. Shalam Dam, he clinches with Petong Chai on a, probably a daily uh, yeah, basis. Yeah, that's very true. And Petong Chai throws up Nongo is a strong clincher, and that's the end of the second round. There you can see the highlights from round number two. We were discussing in between rounds, we were saying, if this was a judged, potentially in a stadium fight, or a stadium saying, the judges might, might very well give it to Chalam down, believe it or not, with the amount of clinching and knees that he was connecting to Nong O. Oh. But due to the fact that this is Thai fight, the judges are looking for more aggression. They might have just given that round to Nong O, oh, who was connecting with a lot of right hands to the temple of Shalam Dam, but Shalam Dam again. In between the rounds, dancing, gesturing to the crowd, having a great time here on Thai Fight, making his debut on the big show. Thing and uh, say it's a round of peace. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, let's see what happens in the third and final round. Yeah, compared to the first round, I mean, in that second round, Shalom Dam was a completely different fighter. Fighting exactly the way we, we want to see him compete here on Thai Fight. Shalom Dam now moving forward. Good hands oh. there. Oh, and again by Shalom Dam. Eating right hands and delivering some beautifully timed left and right. Some of his own is Shalom Dam. And that's the thing about Moy Cow fighters. They're not afraid to take shots in order to try to get that good position in the clinch. But there, he was demanding to exchange blows against Nongo, and that, you got to say, is extremely impressive. Oh, good left hook there. Beautiful left hook that's wobbled. Oh, there's problems here for Chalam Dab. Quite honestly, I thought that he, I, I thought he just slipped just because of the rain. I'm not sure if he did or not. But anyways, it looks like he is on wobbly legs. Yeah, yeah, he's not sturdy. Let's put it that way. Does look like Shalam Dab at the moment is in a lot of trouble. Let's see if he can weather this storm. But Nongo is all over him, as you would expect. Oh, this is a fantastic fight. Yeah. Huge part of me wishes that Shalab Dam fought like this in the very first round. That would have made it for a very exciting matchup. But we did get a great second round. Yeah, true. Right. He's got his guard very high now as Shalab Dam. Which only just makes me think that he did eat that left hand that wobbled him. Good left knee there from Nongo. Shalam Dam is not fighting back. He's in survival mode right now, you feel. Yeah, Shalam Dam, I mean, the engine or the gas tank might be empty now. Yeah. He did a lot in that second round, and I think he might have overburned himself, so to speak. Com combine that with the fact that he ate that left hand. I do think, like you said, he might have emptied the gas tank. He might have fatigued himself. And yeah, there's only so much shots a fighter could take. Yeah, exactly. And I think Shalam Dam has reached his limit. And now we're about to find out if Nongo can score a knockout, if we're being honest with ourselves, because that's what the aim is, is going to be. But Shalam Dam is just hanging on to that final bell. And for that man, staring down Shalam Dam. He's not able to find anything, it seems. Yeah, Shalam Dam at the moment yeah, is on go. survival mode. Yeah. The end of the third and final round. We will go to the judges' scorecards oh, yeah. once again here. A tie fight, Van Krachau. Especially in that second round, but of course towards the end of that fight, it seemed like Shalam Dam, I mean, he did look tired. He's taken a lot of shots, and the accumulated damage was just too much for him. Mm. There was that left. And he was looking to throw a kick at the same time he connected, but I do still think that that left hand did wobble him, despite the ring being a little bit slippy due to the fact that it's raining right now. 
But I feel like it could be academic. I, I still think that Nongo at least won two of the three rounds here on Thai Fight League. Let's get the official decision by our MCs in the ring and then we'll move on to... ตอนนี้จะเป็นยอดมวยจากแดนไต้หรือว่ามือเหนือกันแน่นะครับมาดูกันถึงเวลาแล้วครับแล้วพูดชนะได้แก่เหนือเลยตายฮะเหนือเล
That is it. That is it. It's a victory for PTT. For Roger Atwom. From what the, a comeback. From the depths of defeat. PTT Everybody. rises like a blue phoenix. And is able to knock out Hashem Chagori. Knocking him down three times. Everybody here is on their feet. What an amazing matchup. PTT knocked down early on in that first round and later on managed to make a comeback and win by TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed one of the most amazing rounds of Muay Thai in the history of the sport. PTT, we both thought he was done for and out of nowhere was able to... It's a few strikes that knocked out Jokori but there was a, on many occasions I thought that he might be out himself, but he was just able to keep himself up. Let's have, just show the whole round again. What are we doing? Let's have a look at how he did it. Stiff left from Jokori. And quite frankly, I'm speechless. I mean, what a matchup that was. There was that left elbow by T PTT. Overhand right from Jokori. I feel like the, the length of Jokori was just troubling PTT throughout that round. But for whatever reason, it was it just didn't go down. It's a beautiful technique from PTT. Almost zombie-like to throw, throw knees and elbows in a situation where I felt he wasn't able to continue at one point. My goodness, what a round of boy tie that was. I mean that was excellent. It's one of those matchups you can watch again and again and again. Both sides completely threw defense out the window, and quite frankly, those make for some exciting matchups. The Holy well done there to PTT because he has advanced to the finals against Alessio Malatino. Oh, I look at that. I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh, such a thing. Oh, the winner is. ปตทวรุติระวงฟองไทยแลนด์โอ้โหนะครับทีมทีมทีมด้วยมาแล้วทัดอีกปีหนึ่งแล้วนะฮะสถานการณ์ดอสิ่งนี้เขาได้ไป
See removal of the Moncon, and then we'll get the main event underway. And referee Puket gets the match underway. Six centimeter height advantage for Arvin. Looks, to be honest, he looks a little bit more than that, even being honest. Yeah, I have to agree with that as well. I remember seeing Teng Nung in his previous battle, I mean, he had a big first round, but the second and third round, I think he got a little bit too tired. Yeah, I agree. He also hurt his foot in that fight as well. Yes, he did. I mean, he told us after the event. Referee there telling Arvin Mabudi that he needs to start fighting. Stop moving back, but I think it's fair to say the same can be said for Teng Nung as well. Yeah. Teng Nung conserving a lot of energy at the moment. Looking very calm and composed. Could get another one. <laughs> this continues inside kick. Of course, not illegal. Yep. I mean, if you knee the cup, that is illegal. But if you tee or kick the cup, it is not illegal, believe it or not. Needs the midsection there by Arvin. Left kick coming in by Deng Nung. Inside kick from Arvin, who looks for that left hook. Deng Nung starting to stalk Arvin now. Left hand there from Deng Nung. And again, a counter left. There's that left hand once again, and another left that knocks Arvin back against the ropes. Both of them now is changing shots. Arvin looking to counter Deng Nung. Oh, swinging from Arvin with that left hand, but missing, and then eight, another left hand by Deng Nung. Yeah, easy to see that Deng Nung is definitely looking for the knockout. Deng Nung now closing the space between him and Arvin. Arvin now back on the ropes. Left kick, overhand left, kick right. and that's destroyed the equilibrium. And the mouth guard is gone. The mouth guard has left the ring. Can Arvin get up? What a solid left hand there from Deng Nung to Jess Iroh. I'm not even sure the referee's aware that the mouthpiece went flying, you know? He hasn't addressed it just yet. Yeah, I'm not sure either, but everyone letting the referee yeah, know there that, that. There it is, the mouth guard. Which is buying Arvin Mabudi some precious time. I'm saying that this is very pre... I don't think it's going to last much longer, if I'm being honest, Kevin. Unless no. Oh, my goodness! Smashing left hand from Deng Nung, And even a knee when he was... On his way down. On his way down. Deng Nung doing what Deng Nung does. Absolutely destroying his opponents here on Thai Fight. What an amazing way to end this week's Thai Fight. My goodness, Deng Nung is in the final. And getting it done in the very first round. what we expect from Deng Nung, <laughs> night in and night out. Well, I feel like this was the start of it. In that corner there, connected with the left hand on that chin, knocking the, the head back of Arvin. Swing and a miss by Arvin. Well, the referee wanted him to improve. My goodness, did they? There, that left hand, it just destroyed the equilibrium and then Deng Nung went in. Bang! And you can see the mouth guard. What a shot that is in slow motion. Let's have a look at it again. Oh! That's incredible. That's one of those shots that could go viral. Yeah, that's exactly what and we expect it... from every single Tekken <laughs> yeah. fight, though. Pure brutality. And then he went in for the kill, for that left hand. And as he was going down, the knee went in as well. But it didn't matter. That left hand had already KO'd Arvin. Oh. And Dengung, after a shaky fight, last time we saw him, he's back to being his absolute best. ครับแต่ยังทนนานความหนักของเต็งหนึ่งแม่จริงนะครับสนับสนุนมาครับถึงเวลาประกาศผลนะฮะหุ่นที่เข้าสู่นะฮะรอบชิงชนะเลิศช
Tong. Judges race side of Phuket Prampayun. And then we have Sema Tip Kiri. And then we had Witterit Sang Arun. So you can see there Yunus Banali from Morocco. And you might recognize the person who's going to remove is Monkon. That's former Thai fight team member and one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Muay Thai middleweights of all time, Yusef Bouganem. Yeah, he's uh, taking Yunus under his wing. He said when Yunus first arrived to his gym, he was just a, a beginner. He started making a lot of beginner mistakes and he spends a lot of time with him every single day just to make sure he gets all the techniques right. And quite frankly, I think it's paying off right now. Yeah, and for anyone who's not familiar with Yusef Bouganem, it's very much worth going onto YouTube and typing his name in and looking at his replays and his highlights because he was an incredible fighter and is still competing, he tells us. Oh, that's he has right. a quick, quick chat with him backstage. All right, here we go. First round of the very first bout of the final tie fight of 2023. Quite a slow start, I mean, it just shows, goes to show that Pen Pagmai is respecting Eunice and his power. to the midsection. Jabs there, coming in by Benali. Oh, swing and a miss there by Pet McMiney. He ate a counter strike for his troubles. Yeah, Pet Pagmai definitely felt the power there. He's going to be a lot more careful now. Once he got into a groove, Yunus Benali just knew that eventually he could pounce at just the right time, and he did it right there. Of course, you can see the slight height advantage for Yunus Benali. He's using that height and that reach advantage to his favor at the moment anyway with those nice jabs. See Pet Pak Mai showing respect with that high guard. Oh, swing and a miss there going downstairs. There again with that jab. Beautifully timed, beautifully executed by Yunus Benali. That was a nice low kick. And again with that jab. And again, that time with the left hook. Counter striking. You can already see the right eye of Pet Pak Mai is compromised. Yeah, Yunus Benali went to work early, already impairing the vision of Pet Pak Mai. So it's going to be a very difficult fight for the tie as jab, things go on. Jab, left hook, jab, left hook, working an absolute treat here. There might already be a little bit of blood or at least some, some welts on the right eye of Pet Pak Mai. Yeah. Oh, good low kick there, but straight away, jab, jab. Flurry of punches there by Yunus Benali. Actually, what a counter Massive by Pet right Pak Mai. Hand. Massive right hand from Pet Pak Mai. Boy, did he need that. Yeah, he sort of weathered the storm just for a bit and then eventually he found the right time and found the counter where it should have landed. Well done then, Pen Pak Mai. I love the part of the play right now. You've got those jabs of Yunus. You've got the low kick from Pen Pak Mai. And then you've got potentially that left hook. But you've also got the right hand power there. And the left hand as well from Pen Pak Mai. This is brewing nicely. There, back to the low kick, that burning Yunus Benali, not blocking them. That could be mean he's on borrowed time. If he doesn't block those low kicks, he could be in trouble. But look at the swelling on the face of Pet Pak Mai. Stay with us, round two up next. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number one. You can see Yunus Benali, you can see the game plan, utilize that reach. And he was finding Pet Pak Mai with some beautiful jabs. And he, he also added that left hook into his arsenal. But Pet Pak Mai throwing some beautifully timed low kicks. That was a nice body shot by Yunus. Beautiful left kick to the body there by the Thai fighter Pet Pak Mai. Yeah. A real back and forth exchange. What can we say about the first one. round? I mean, we've got the Yunus Benali's punching and then you've got Ben Park Mai's countering and he's his, his low kick. Really bothering Yunus Benali. But the question is, will Ben Park Mai go back to those low kicks again? Because time and time we've seen, for some yes. reason, one, one fighter has the advantage because they're hurting their opponent with the low kicks, but all of a sudden, the second round and the third round, they completely abandon it. So let's see if Pet Pak Mai does go back to that. And sometimes what you see, a fighter has got a leg compromised, they come out in that second round looking to knock out and finish their opponent as quickly as possible because they do know they're on borrowed time. Let's see what happens now. There you can see Eunice a little bit apprehensive, moving backwards, potentially, I think, protecting that leg. But here he comes, trying to knock out Pet Pak Mai. 
looks like his leg might be okay. He's bouncing on it, but a few more shots, and he could be back to limping. Yeah, back to square one again. Exactly where Eunice does not want to be. Low kick of his own there from Eunice. Attempts an uppercut. Nice right hand, but he walks into an elbow as he moves, he moves forward. Yeah, that's a beautifully timed counter elbow of Head Puck by. It just goes to show that he is a Moy Fee move fighter or a technician with a really high IQ in, in, in the ring. I was just about to say this is a beautiful technical bout already here. The first bout of tight fight this evening. Right low kick there from Benali. But again, you can see just how swollen the face of Pet Pak Mai is right now. Pet Pak Mai lighting up that low kick, surely. Another low kick connects with Pet Pak Mai. I mean, Eunice has got to start protecting that leg. Oh! Good left hook there from the tie. Right low kick from the Benali. Yeah, fantastic tactics there from Pet Pak Mai. I mean, he went low, and then just as Eunice Benali started to focus on his legs, all of a sudden Pet Pak Mai went up high. Something we didn't talk about is who do we think would that first round? I would go with Pen Park, my point, honestly, just to the fact that he was able to hurt his opponent and a lot more clean shots landed for him. I would I would go the other way. I think Eunice Benali did enough to take that round, but I, I do agree that it was a close round and you could see it going either way. Yeah, Eunice trying to counter strike. Pen Park, my just blocks his path. Another left jab, hook. Two left hooks missing there by Eunice Benali. Yeah, Eunice Benali is going back to what worked for him in the first round. However, Pet Pakmai was able to understand the rhythm, know what he's going to do yes. next. So Eunice Benali perhaps might have to try to find a new tactic as the fight c continues. I do like the fact that he's going down low with the low kicks as well, trying to match the tie, which is something Pet Pakmai has not really done. He's not gone after that left leg as much as we thought he would do. Yeah, both fighters looking to count. Oh, this a bit of blood flowing from the right eye of Yunus Benali, it seems now as well. There, Benali going down low. Oh, good luck down there from Benali. End off another spectacular round, number two here on Thai. Bye, stay with us. Another stellar round there for both these fighters. So you have a look at the slow motion replays. Oh, beautiful right hand there from Pet Pak Mai. And Eunice tried that on a couple of occasions, and that is where he got cut. Great camera work. Yeah. There, another good left hook from Pet Pak Mai. Yeah, usually when Kevin uh, or when, when Aaron and I, we can't figure <laughs> out where the cut actually came from. Yeah. We say in the break, we tell each other definitely from an elbow, and there it was as proof. That's it, uppercut. I think this was the left hand. There it is, yeah. It really did go, but it's been going back and forth throughout this entire fight. And now we move into the third and final round. But of course, if it is a draw, we'll go to a fourth round extension. And I don't think either fighter wants that at the moment. I mean, oh. they left it all in there third and potentially final round if it doesn't go to a draw. I mean, if you're in the corner of either of these two fighters, you're going to be telling if you win the round, win the fight. I think it potentially could be. But you probably see it in the in favor of Pet Pak Mai would have fought. Yeah, but then um, in that second round, definitely. I thought Pet Pak Mai was a lot better. I, I, I agree. His, his counters yes. were that much better. But I, on your unofficial scorecard, you have it around each. I, absolutely. Alpo attempt there from Eunice. Nice left jab. Look at the amount of Vaseline on Pet Pak Mai. I'm sure the fans on Thai Fight International will be commenting on that one. Here comes Yunus Benali. Both fighters are on the floor. Love that balance showed from Pet Pak Mai. It just goes to show what an elite fighter he is. Yunus Benali with a smile on his face. I don't think there's anywhere he'd rather be in the world than in the middle of that ring right now. He just strikes me as that type of fighter. Both fighters looking for low kicks. There is markings on the left thigh there of Yunus Benali that we saw from the first round action. Fair to say though. see in round number two really from Pet Pak Mai. For sure, but fair to say though that the low kick from Pet Pak Mai had much more effect than Yunus Benali's low kick. Benali popping those jabs again. A bit more hesitant, both fighters here. Probably showing a lot of respect to each other from the war that we've just witnessed in both rounds one and two. 
Yeah, I mean, as they should, both of them had big big strikes, big shots. And there you see our referee, he's not happy what he's seeing right now. He wants them both to fight, leave it all in the ring. Oh, both fighters looking for right kicks through the body. A bit of body run there from Yunus Manali. Yeah, what better place to do it than Ayutthaya <laughs> Province. Absolutely perfect. Popping that jab, potentially, maybe both fighters think they've done enough right now. Benali standing on the back foot. I never thought I'd say that about him. Oh, good uppercut left hook there from Eunice Benali. Yeah, and it was acknowledged by Pet Park by nine times out of ten when it's acknowledged by an opponent. It hurts. Indeed, it does. Left elbow there from Benali pushing forward. Final stages now of the third and final round. You're gonna feel whoever leaves the ring a loser of this fight is gonna be very disappointed. Oh, for sure. Because it's so close, and I feel like they both had opportunities. And in this third round, they've decided both to take their foot off the gas. I feel as if whoever wins it is gonna be controversial. Yeah, absolutely, all right. Well, we will go to the judges' scorecards. What a fight it was. You see a great show of respect there by both Yunus Benali from Morocco and Pet Pak Mai from Thailand, which is great to see. Yes, the spirit of Muay Thai and of course the spirit of Christmas. Wonderful. <laughs> well, both fighters raising their hands. They feel they've done enough. Oh, are we going to see an extension round? Let's find out. But before that, let's have a look at the highlights of Attempted left elbow there. This was in the third round. I can tell by the amount of Vaseline on the face. Oh, yeah. Back, back, back. <laughs> Wasn't really as many significant strikes than what we saw in rounds one and two. There's that beautiful balance from Pen Pakmai we saw earlier. But eventually, as it went on, Yunus did get him down. Hopefully, we'll see that on the replay as well. Both. Looking for that left kick to the body, and there was that that drag down. <laughs> Using the ankle at one point, I don't think that's legal. You know, another fight. I say this a lot, I feel, that I would like to see a rematch. <laughs> 100%. And we have Thai Fight League for that, so why not? Oh, perfect. A main event of a Thai Fight League, the rematch. In, in 2024, I'm all for it. Well, let's see how they've scored this one. All right. เวลาที่เราต้องมาลุ้นกันแล้วฮะว่าคุณผู้ชมชาวอายุทยาที่อยู่ตรงนี้คิดว่ามุมขาวหรือมุมดําขาวหรือดําขาวหรือดําเอา
I think the first time, well, the first time I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to correct me on that one. The first time that we saw him on TIE Fight League, I think we knew that he had a lot of potential when he was, he knocked out Daniel Kerr in the very first round that we saw him. And of course, danced to celebrate as well. And we knew that he had that star quality. And coming out with some big shots early on. I mean, he wants to get this job done early. But that's just how the way, that's just the way Lion fights. He wants to get things done early and go and celebrate his New Year's at Christmas. <laughs> oh, low kick there, but a nice block by Godaz. Attempts oh. left, shot to the body there by Lion, but he misses that, but he follows up with a nice low kick. That's what I'm about Lion's style. He doesn't just attack once. He puts his combinations together every single time. And again with that low kick, as he misses the right hook. Left hook that time. But as cornered momentarily, did well to fight out of that predicament. I'm trying to understand what Abu Fazel's game plan is. I mean, he needs to start attacking first. He's just waiting for Lion to do something. Oh, swinging right hand there. Two nice low kicks there by Matt. Abu Fazl Garaz. See, Lion chasing him around the ring. Yeah, chasing his prey, I would say. I mean, this is this has been all Lion so far. I mean, I don't know what Garaz can do at the moment. He's just being outmatched in every department so far. Oh, good right hand there. Got a little bit of a scare there, I'm not gonna lie, Aaron. I was worried <laughs> that both of them would land on top of us here at ringside. The two worst fighters of the evening to fall on top of us. <laughs> right low kick by the Hulk, who's looking to Hulk smash with a big overhand right. You can see that. Stalking his prey once again, Lion, and goes for the low oh, kick. Oh, that hurt him. That did, that did. Not sure how much longer he has. Oh, big right shots, and one to the body as well for good measure. But I do think the right low kicks to the left leg of Godaz have played a big part in the attack here of the Hulk. Oh, more right hands coming in. Godaz eats two. Lion goes back downstairs. I'll tell you what, that lead leg is not in a good place. End of round number one. Stay with us. Round two up next. Second round of action for our second bout of the evening. It's Lion Family Muay Thai in the black corner and Abu Fazal Gudaz from Iran in the white. And so far it has been all Lion Family Muay Thai. He's put his combination together very well. He loves the boxing, but typically ends with that low kick. And what a powerful low kick it is. Absolutely. Just like you said, stalking his prey around the ring here in Ayutthaya. I think at the end he might have buckled the knee with a beautiful time low kick, which might be the most significant strike of the entire round. Quite honestly, I'm not sure what Abu Fazal needs to do to come back into this fight because right now. <laughs> but not the first time we've seen someone struggle against Lion. <laughs> Alright, here we go, round two. Better there by Abu Fazl. Oh, good counter right though by Linus again. He jumps in. Yeah, exactly what we expected from Lion from the beginning of the round. So I did hear Abu Fazl's corner telling him that he needs to start punching more. He's doing just that, but just not connected with the shots. That one connected though. Oh, swinging left body shot there by Lion, and immediately the hand struck, protecting that body. Oh, you've got to give credit to Abu Fazl, it's tough. Oh, just as I say that, back to the body we go. I feel like the damage had already been done earlier on. And I feel like Lion knew that. Abu Fazl, good ass, is in a heap of pain right now. And there is your winner by a knockout in round number two. The Hulk, Lion, family Muay Thai, does it again here on Thai Fight. I'll tell you what, I mean, he's learning very, very fast of how to become 
a tough, tough fighter. He just displayed it just now in his previous bout as well, but I think that was the fight that made him. Who can stop the Hulk as he smashes in a left or to the body to the already injured, in my opinion, Abu Fazl Goodaz. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, but he's trying is. to protect that body. Oh. Even swinging on the way down. I'm not sure if we can back it up just a little bit to show that initial left hook to the body that caused Abu Fazl to wince in pain. But either way, it's irrelevant. Another fight, another win! Fire, another knockout for Lion Family Muay Thai. Up next is the Thai Fight League 61 Kilo Tournament Final. Stay with us. And the winner for this fight is Lion Family Muay Thai from Thailand! Good luck, guys. Oh, this is the fight of the Muay Thai. It's not going to be long, guys. I don't know if it's going to be here. It's going to be on the head. It's going to be on the head. But the heart is going to be on the head. ถ้าสุดท้ายเราถอยเมื่อไหร่นะฮะโอ้โหก็คือมีสิทธิ์แพ้ได้แน่นอนนะครับมีคุณลุยใจอยู่ที่สปิริตของเราคือจิตวิญญาณนั่นเองนะครับทุกท่านครับนโยบายหลักของไทยไฟท์คือไทยสปิริตครับไทยสปิริตคือจิตวิญญาณของคนไทยคนไทยเท่านั้นที่ทําได้ดีที่สุดจริงนะนี่คือสิ่งที่ไทยไฟท์ของเราเน้นย้ํามากๆทุกอย่างนะฮะคนไทยก็ทําด้วยใจนะของคนไทยไม่ว่าจะเป็นอะไรก็แล้วแต่นะเหมือนรวมถึงเมื่อกี้เหมือนกันนะครับก็ออกมาจากใจเหมือนกันนะครับพอเสร็จไฮไฟเราจะต่อยสู้ขนาดไหนนะแต่ก็มากราบการด้วยความที่เป็นใจของคนไทยถูกต้องนะฮะนักกีฬาเราทําให้เห็นแล้วนะครับว่าไทยสปิริตเป็นอย่างไรครับฝ่าวกับทุกคนด้วยนะครับเราเป็นคนไทยสับสนทุกอย่างที่เป็นไทยและทําอย่างดีที่สุดครับอับสูดีนะครับอัสเคเวนบิวฟลีเวนฟรูว่าเราได้เห็นจากที่สองทั้งหมดในทัวร์นาเมนต์เราได้5ฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายเราได้คุนซุกเล็กของ4ฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสองฝ่ายฝ่ายของทั้งสอง First round knockout and three fights coming by second round knockout. He has never even been to the third round. Wow. So you would have to think, based on the stats, based on the information given, and what we've seen on Thai Fight League, that Kiopet in the black corner will be the favorite. But let's not write off Kunsuk Lek. Four knockouts in five is pretty spectacular in itself. Kiopet landing a team to the face and then Kunsuk Lek trying to do one back, but was unfortunate, wasn't able to land. Trying to go for a team to the face once again, and he connects. Neil Pet, very wiry fighter. Unorthodox in his approaches and attacks. Yeah, I love how he started off this final already with some bad intentions. Oh, both fights looking for a right arm, but I think Kunsuk Lek got the better of that exchange. Swing and a miss there. Neil Pet runs for him. Oh, never turn your back to your opponent. It was a nice invasion first, but then <laughs> credit to Kilpet for following up with the left kick to the head. See, Kilpet there, making a, a jumping switch kick and then moving in with an elbow. I don't think I've ever seen that. Kilpet is just so tricky. I don't think Kutsuk, like he, he, he's definitely not going to win in the IQ department, but he'll win with the strength department, so he needs to rely on that. Right. Good left kick to the body, just as you say that, by Kutsuk, Lek. And a right hand there, and the one in the white corner. Again looking for a right hand, Kiel Pet with the right of his own, knocking back Kunsuk Lek momentarily. Yeah, great fight for Kiel Pet so far. He's just so tricky. I don't think there's any other fighter like him on earth. Really? A really great find by Thai Fight League. Absolutely. And the entire point of why Thai Fight League was set up to fight two amazing fights just like this. Again turns his back to the connect. 
That won't look favourable though in the eyes of the judges. Good right kick to the body there by Kilpet. Oh, digging in a left cut. Then we saw that from Lyon, didn't we? The effects that could have. Going upstairs with the left up that time. Yeah, I love that hook to the body and then the high kick to the head. We see it time and time again in Karchuk. You don't necessarily have to go to the head all the time. With those rope hands, body strikes will do. Left hook, right hand there. Tempted elbows. There is blood somewhere because you can see it on Kyo Pet's left rope. Exactly what I was thinking, but where's oh. the blood coming from? Oh my goodness. I mean, he's giving him a joker smile there. Yeah. I mean, surely from one of the elbows. Another left hook there from Kyo Pet, right hand. Tempted right elbow in reply from Kunsuk Lek. And oh, very violent. Opening first round with this blood pouring down from a cut on the top of Kyo Pet as well. Stay with us. There you can see some incredible highlights from the opening round. I'm actually very intrigued to find out where the cuts are and on which fight the cuts are as well. Because it looked like these, you were talking. Oh, well, thank you. Perfect timing. What an elbow that was by Kuntuklek. Right on the crown of uh, Kiopet. And that's probably where the cut on Kuntuklek came from. Elbow for elbow, cut oh. for cut. Oh, what a left up to the nose there. Let's not forget as well, it's not just being declared the winner of the Thai Fight League tournament with the cash prize. On the All right. A fantastic opening round. Let's see what happens now in round number two. Yeah, it's a great opening round. I mean, both guys are cut. <laughs> Both have landed some significant strikes. Let's see what happens in the second round. Kiopet bouncing off the rope straight into the action. Left high kick there. Nice right kick to the body, but once again, puts up like off balance. Skip it! Chases him with an elbow strike, but a good team there just to keep him away. Good thing about Muay Thai, if you kick but you collapse, you don't score. Oh, big right hand from Kung Tuk Lek. Big right hand reply from Kyo Pet. What a fight this is. You know, I heard Kung Tuk Lek's corner telling him, don't be afraid, keep pushing forward, but also keep your guard up high. And that's exactly what we're seeing from right now. I'll tell you what, the finals that we've witnessed so far in Thai Fight League, the tournaments have been just incredible, they really have. They've been extraordinary. I mean, if you haven't watched High Fight League, it's time to change that. <laughs> 2024, make that your, in your bucket list. Oh, big right hand from Kiel Pet. Spinning back out, no attempt against the ropes. He's just such an unpredictable fighter, though, Kiel Pet. You never know what he's going to do next. Let's put his combination together, and he's just so tricky at the same time. Absolutely, you can see Kuntz up, like, he's desperate to counter them, and he's doing a good job of it in my eyes. See, they did stop that blood flow at the top of the head of Kyo but now the blood is starting to flow again. Big right knee there from Kyo Pet. Like just brushes him away. But the stabbing left knee from Kyo Pet, I mean, that's definitely going to have an effect on Kutsuk Lek. Beautiful yeah. kick there from Kyo Pet. So quick, these 61 kg fighters. Kutsuk Lek slowing down just a little bit, in my opinion. Well, I might be wrong. Left up to the body, right. Kick to the body, right. Good suck leg. Yeah, quite honestly, during this tournament, we haven't seen Kiel Pet struggle this much before. Yeah, Kiel Pet. Oh, big right hand from Good suck leg. And he's caught and loving that one. Kiel Pet lives a nice counter right of his own. Lovely straight knee to the body there by Kiel Pet. Let's not forget Kiel Pet's knockouts have all come in the first and second round throughout this tournament. Is he about to go into uncharted territory? Another big right hand there from Kyo Pet. Not really troubling Kuntzuk Lek though. Now, as we know about Kuntzuk Lek, he is a strong, powerful fighter. It's going to take a lot to hurt him. Good kick there by Kyo Pet to end the second round. Another big round here in the final of the Thai Fight League Tournament. Stay with us. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number two. 
both fighters going at it, and both fighters had moments in that round. It was not an easy round to score. You can see there, beautifully timed right hand, Kia Petten. Just when you thought one fighter was getting on top, the other fighter would come back with a great counter strike. I'll tell you what. How do what. you score it? Fighters or fans, should I say, watching around the world on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave comments if you want. But you know what? I'm going to give my opinion right now. I believe the first round went to Kiel Pen and the second round went to Kun Suk Lek. I'm so with you. I am with you on that one. We're going to have a very... One kilo it, tie fight league final. These finals just keep on delivery. Oh yes. Here we go. The third and final round of the tie fight league 61 KG tournament. Unless there is a fourth round extension. Which and personally, I would welcome that. <laughs> it's just been that good of a fight so far. All right. Here we go. Neil Pet never seen a third round in the tie fight league tournament. Hunsuk Lek has been to a decision victory, but is also knocked out one of his opponents in the third oh! round. Oh! Right hand there from Kia Pet. But he was off balance. He was expecting the referee to count. Yeah, it was good timing there from Kia Pet, but no, not a count for me because it was during the time when Hunsuk Lek went up for a kick. So just got him off balance. Nothing more than that. Kia Pet fighting now on the back, off the back foot, like he's up on the scorecard because of that knockdown though. Of what was the judge not to be a knockdown? It will still score favorably. I'll tell you what, I don't like what Kiel Pet is doing right now. He should be moving back. I mean, this is a three round fight. You need to fight every single round. And as everyone knows, it's oh, high fight. Oh, nice low kick. Every single round is scored. Oh, good hand there from Kunsuk Lek. Kiel Pet for the first time in this tournament fighting off the back foot. Not being the aggressor. Good right kick to the body there. Kiel Pet, oh, equally good right kick with a flush right hand in reply by Kiel Pet. Both corners gesturing to say they think they've done enough. But their fighter is in control. Good kick to end that exchange for Kiel Pet. Kiel Pet coming back again, perhaps. And a good oh, kick there. And what we go in this final? Excellent final we have so far. Both of them want to finish strong in each exchange. That's nice looking. I kill Pet. This is good looking, but what that time? Good switch there from a good circle. Kill Pet not able to finish. Great elbow there for Kill Pet. And a return by good circle. Oh, it's tip for tap right now. Oh, it really is. That's the corner of good circle just next to us. Such a difficult round to score, I'll tell you that right now. But you could put Kutsuk Lek in favor just for being the aggressor. See, I would think that Kiel Pet's doing good enough. That's just how difficult it is to score. I know, so true. And of course, you and I have been in the game for so many years. Oh, good block there from Kiel Pet. And there it is, end of the third and potentially final round, of course, unless there is a draw, we will go to the judges' scorecard in the final of the Thai Fight League 61 KG tournament. An incredible scrap between two great warriors who... You may never have heard of, but look at them now. Let's have a look at the highlights. Good right kick to the body there from Kiel Pet. But Kutsuk Lek delivering a good right kick of his own in that exchange. And there's that right hand to the forehead. Had a good stock and slap there from Kutsuk Lek. <laughs> Again, grabbing hold of that leg to try and count with the right. Kutsuk Lek grabbing a hold. Really did just go back and forth, back and forth. Shot after shot. Nice right elbow there from Kiel Pet. Oh. But unfortunately in this tournament, there can only be one winner. So will it go to Buriram province in the northeast part, eastern part of Thailand? Or will it go to the south in Trang? 
We'll find out just in a moment, unless, of course... I'm going to put my neck on the line, I'm going to say... วันนี้จะเป็นเอ็นซ่าหรือเข้มนะฮะเดี๋ยวจะคาดเข้มคัดนะฮะแชมป์ไทยไฟลีกแล้วก็ได้รับเงินสองแสนบาทจะเป็น
we might have seen a knockdown or even more. Yeah, I guess that's what he gets for having the same stylus as PGT. But he's being the Batman right now to the Joker. But yeah, we were talking, weren't we, in the introduction before the fight scene oh, commenced yeah. that we thought that Bahid was going to be the one on the attack and we thought that Suksawat was going to fight off the back foot. Yeah, but it wasn't to be. I mean, Suksawat, he is pushing forward and he yeah. is getting caught. So what advice do you give to Suksawat is fight the way that makes you comfortable because oh. this is not making him comfortable at all. Agreed. you got to give credit to Bahid for that. But what we also know about Suksawat is that he usually takes the round off. This could be the round off and he might come back in a second, we'll see. Oh, and again, Bahid, right hand, close that distance so Suksawat is able to counter strike. That's very smart. Yeah, poor Kip Rampayu had almost had to catch both of them before they fell. Good oh. strike there from Suksawat. Hey, swing it left and right coming in there from Bahid. Good decent little bit section there by Suksawat who holds on just a little bit more or a bit longer. Than he should. Yeah, he's coming back into the fight now, so what doing a lot better than he it did before. 100 percent Backing up Bahid. Bahid moving around the ring, trying to find an opening. Inside kick! Another right hand there from Bahid. Yeah, but it land but the left hand landed for Suksawat. Also very true. Another great round here on Thai Fight. Here we go, coming to the second round of our Thai Fight Kings Cup Tournament Final 65 kilos, or 67, excuse me, with the both weighted 65. It's Suksawat Sangmarakot in the black corner and Vahid Nika from Iran in the white. And it started off as a very strong round for Vahid, I must say. He was hitting his mark, he was connecting with his shots and oh. combinations and that one on another time, on another day, that would have put Suksawat out. But in the second half of that first round, it seemed like Suksawat made a comeback and Quite honestly, for a lot of people. Around, but I can see how you might think Suksawat, just the back in that second half, like you said, he performed a lot better. I still think Vahid did enough. How do you score it? Watching around the world on the YouTube internet, the Thai Fight YouTube International channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and of course, leave a comment. We love your comments. If we had better internet, we would read them. <laughs> All right, here we go, round number two. Fahid, the taller of the two, and using that reach, our range to his advantage. Oh, good left kick to the body there by Suksawat. Yeah, fabulous kick by Suksawat, but Fahid going in for an illegal clinch. I mean, you can't clinch the lower back like that. And for an inside fight kick, is Fahid. Again, on the back foot. Oh, looking for a spinning back fist. He almost slipped that time. There's that left kick of Suksawat. But he, once again, not allowing him to try and counter strike. Yeah, not allowing him to maneuver around. Good tactics there from Bahid, but he really needs to get his strikes in. Another good kick there from Suksawat landing. Yeah. This left kick could be a difference maker in round number two. It has been so far. But he's starting to miss a lot more than we saw in round number one right now. Let's be honest, when has the oh. left kick not been a different baker in any Suk yes, fight? that's true. Yes. Again mean, that, with that left kick. That's obviously Suk best weapon, so you got to wonder how do fighters prepare for that. Bahid, I mean, we talked to his team before the match started, and we, they know the dangers of that left kick. In between the rounds, we were working on the lower calf of Suk Sawat. Bahid did connect with some big calf kicks in round number one. Oh, and again, going long to the car of Suksawat. And that time, taking him off his feet. Yeah, beautiful timing of that kick by Bahir, taking Suksawat off balance. Oh, big elbow, massive elbow there by Suksawat. And again, going back to the car, sweeping Suksawat. Yeah, he's found a way to deal with that left kick. We're, we're just asking that question just now. Can he deal with it? Yes, he can. But you've got to get the timing oh. just right. Get it going low. For straight, Suksawat. Get going back to the leg. Got the kick connecting there. Bahid going low as well. One finger. Oh, big left arm by Suksawat. One thing I would say about Bahid, his mouth's wide open. Wonder if he's starting to run out of steam a little bit. He's eating a lot of kicks, I'll tell you that right now. Yes. And the pain is going to start to build up. 
Yeah, but a 14 foot right here, the elbow can to the back of his head. Another incredible round here on tie. Another very interesting round of Muay Thai as we come into the third and final round, potentially final round. Suksa Wat in the black corner and Vahid in the white. So far what we saw from that round is that Suksa Wat was connecting very well with his left kicks. I'm sure we'll see it on the replay, but then all of a sudden Vahid seems to have found a way around it. He started to sweep. that will do enough to win that round though but Suksawat I believe took that round based on the accuracy of those kicks and the amount of damage that it did. One and one of oh, two and all for you right? Yeah potentially one and one though. I'm going one and one. All right here we go. Maybe the third and final round. Here we go. Suksawat once again moving forward. Vahid on the back foot. No kicks there by Vahid. Punches as well there as he takes us so right down. Another good takedown there for Vahid. Oh! It's a slip there. What's it? Oh! Good left hand kick there by Suksawat. You can see in between the rounds they were working on the arm where Suksawat has been connecting with those kicks. Suksawat all over the place at the moment. Yeah, really needs to try to regain that balance. Stay standing. Surely falling over like this is not going to look good for the, for the judges whatsoever, but those kicks are going to look excellent. Remember, the Kings Cup 67 kilogram tournament trophy is up for grabs in this fight. Big round here for both fighters. Knee to the midsection by Suksawat. I didn't even say that was a knee to the head. <laughs> but Vahid took it very well. He's a tough, tough fighter. Still on the back foot. Beautiful kick connecting there for Suksawat as he still continues to push forward. Good accuracy on that kick for Suksawat. Right hand after a right kick attempted there. You see the corner of Suksawat. Well, both fighters are actually telling him to move forward, to stop. Walking back in your Bahid. Oh, digging in the toes that time to the body and that's hurt Bahid. You can tell. That's going to score big for Suksawat. That kick alone. A big knee as well there by Suksawat. Yeah, this is definitely Suksawat's round. Bahid unfortunately showed that he was hurt after receiving that kick to the midsection. And you know what? Suksawat's going to go back for some more. Can't keep moving back like this. That's right, by his corner urging him to move forward. He's not doing that. Little left kick there by Suksawat. Becoming too easy to score with that left kick. Well, sorry, the second round with those low kicks. But this makes it difficult. And again with that left kick to the body. Scoring heavily. He's going to avoid time. Yeah, by his inability to block that left kick is going to win Suksawat the fight. Oh, time with the right. Rivers on the face of Bahid, it might have stolen it for Suksawat. We will go to the judges' scorecards to find out who the 2023 67 kilogram Kings Cup Club tournament champion will be. Game of chess in that one though. But I gotta say that final round definitely went to Suksawat. Yeah. He controlled the ring, he was so accurate with that left kick. on the replay again. Yeah, that will be the story of that third and final round. There, that, that left kick, which was scoring over and over again for Suksawat. And you have to feel that, like Kevin said, he took that round, which would mean, we believe, unofficially, of course, that he's
ถานะครับดังนั้นสําคัญมากๆแน่นอนครับสําหรับคู่นี้กับถ้วยพระราชทานนี้ซึ่งเป็นถ้วยอันทรงเกียรตินะครับผู้ที่ได้ไปนะจะเป็นมุมขาวและมุมดำนะครับผมขอประกาศณตรงนี้ครับ The Winner ขอเช็คอีกทีเพื่อความแน่ใจชัวร์ๆนะอ้าวผู้ชนะได้แก่พยักษ์เสนสุขสวัสดิ์สังมรกุลพระเจ้าขอแสดงความดีด้วยนะครับกับผู้ที่ชนะนะครับแล้วก็ผู้ที่พายไปเป็นกำลังใจให้ขอต้อนรับกลับเข้าสู่ชายไฟหลวงปู่ถ้วยครับทุกคนครับช่วงเวลานี้เป็นช่วงเวลาที่สําคัญมากๆครับเป็นช่วงเวลาที่น่ายินดีครับเป็นการมอบรางวัลให้กับแชมป์ไทยไฟ2023ครับในรุ่น67กิโลกรัมนั่นก็คือสุขสวัสดิ์แสงบรกรขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆครับลำดับแรกครับเป็นการมอบรางวัลนะครับรถพิกอัพอินสตูดีแม็กซ์ไฮแลนเดอร์2ประตู 1.9 DTI รุ่น LDA ครับสนับสนุนโดยบริษัทตรีเพชรอินสตูดิโอเซลล์จำกัดและผู้ที่ให้เกียรติในการมอบรางวัลน,นั้นครับขอกราบเชิญมิสเตอร์ทาคาชิฮาตะครับกับประการผู้จัดการบริษัทตรีเพชรอินสตูดิโอเซลล์จำกัดมอบเลยครับนี่ครับกุญแจรถนะครับโอ้โหสุดยอดขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆครับขอแสดงความยินดีด้วยนะครับและในลำดับต่อไปครับเป็นการมอบเข็มขัดแชมป์นะครับและผู้ที่เกียรติในการมอบและคาดเก็บขัดในวันนี้ครับขอกราบเป็นเชิญคุณสุวัสดิ์ลิฟตะพัลบครับเป็นเชิญครับท่านอดีตรองนายรัฐมนตรีครับประธานที่ปรึกษาคณะกรรมการอำนวยการจัดการแข่งขันชกมวยไทยโลกไทยไฟต์เหมาะสมที่สุดนะครับนี่คือความภาคภูมิใจขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆอีกครั้งครับทุกคนครับกว่าจะมาถึงวันนี้ไม่ธรรมดาเลยครับและลำดับต่อไปนี้คือวินาทีแห่งเกียรติยศขอเชิญครับสุขสวัสดิ์แสงมรกตแชมป์ไทยไฟส์2023ในรุ่น67กิโลกร,รมัมเข้ารับถ้วยพระราชทานเบื้องหน้าพระบรมชายารักษ์พระบาทสมเด็จพระเจ้าอยู่หัวนี่คือแชมป์ชายไฟ2023ครับสุขสวัสดิ์แสงบรกุลยอดเยี่ยมมากๆครับต้องขอขอบพระคุณคณะท่านผู้บริหารทุกๆท,ท่านนะครับขอบพระคุณผู้สับสนใจดีของเราด้วยนะครับฝากพี่พิสุทธิ์มชนในการบันทึกภาพตรงนี้ด้วยครับคอร์ดิมาราซารันและนั่นคือในทายฟิตลีกและนี่คือเขาได้ประสบความสำเร็จในรีมัชหลังจากที่นองโกได้รับการแข่งขันโดยเขาในทายฟิตนั่นคือคาชุกครั้งนี้นี่คือกลุ่มและเหมือนซุกสวัตหนึ่งของพวกเขาจะหายไป With a King's Cup trophy. Yeah, that's right. I mean, both of them actually fought Kachuk in their semi-final bouts, <laughs> even though this is meant to be contested with gloves on. But we did that for the viewers at home, for your viewing pleasure. We all love the Kachuk, but now, no o in gloves. It's been a while. He has indeed, but of course he's used to fighting gloves. Oh, before he was discovered by Thai Fight, he was competing. On the so-called entertainment shows here in Thailand, three-round 
fights, brutalizing and knocking out his opponents before being scouted and picked up to compete on Thai Fight. And yeah, we've seen him a lot in the stadium circuit as well. Yeah, true. That's really where he made his name. That's right. Good knee there from Amran Muradi. Armand Murray really taking the fight to Stong Oh Shahapiyang early on. The fight is looking for Lokis there, neither really connecting. That's a good kick there for Murray. Yeah, we were really impressed with Murray in the previous bout. Yeah, we really were. Oh, good right hand there from Nongo. Both of them exchanging yeah. punches actually in the clinch. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. A little bit of dirty boxing there going on between these two. Oh, get him with those low kicks. Oh, big low kicks there from Nongo and Moradi really reacting to those low kicks. So you can imagine we're going to see Nongo go back to those low kicks and why not? I think it's fair to say that over the past few events we've been a little bit critical of Nongo. We've seen lots of head punches or attempted head punches, not so much by way of low kicks. I'll tell you That's what now. It's nice to see that, adding that to his arsenal. We'll go back to my old theory. If you've got Kachuk on, yeah. all you want to do is punch with him. That's Kevin's theory. Yeah, right kick to the body from Nongo. Yeah, Marani just trying to clinch up and not really getting anything in there at all. I mean, if you do clinch up, go for the elbow, go for the knees. We didn't see much from Marani just now. Again, more low kicks there from Nongo. How about that? Inside kick. Nong Ho fighting for safer than we're used to seeing and taking the back of his opponent. That's going to look really good for the judges. Yeah, it's always a risk when you go for these spinning techniques. Marani trying to oh! do anything at all costs to take Nong Ho to the canvas. Wasn't su successful there though. Good kick again by Nong Ho and doubling his offense up. That's the end of the first round. Here we can see highlights of round number one. See Nongo covering up well there, keeping that guard nice and high. Maradi struggling to get, get through, although he did with that elbow. There is actually a slight nick of the left eye of Nongo. But really the story of the round for me was seeing this. These low kicks by Nongo, which were definitely troubling Armin Maradi. He was looking fresh in that corner. The right smile on the face of the camera there by the very confident 19-year-old. It's going to have to do better in my opinion in round number two because I do think that Nongo took that round. Yeah, I have to agree with you as well. I mean, more clearer shots and more signs shown by Barati that he was in pain. So here we go, round number two. Oh, right hand there! But Nongo off balance. Yeah, Nongo, Nongo off balance. The referee decided not to count there. Big shot coming in now from Murani. Murani trying to take Nongo off his feet. Well, we said Murani needed to do more in round number two. So far, showed a great deal. Left hand there from Nongo about to stun Murani. He's a little bit wobbly right now. Yeah, definitely stun Murani just for a moment, but I think Murani has gained his composure once again. These two balls are starting to lock horns now in round number two. Beautiful right kick to the body there. Swinging left. Oh, good one too by Murani. Murani really bringing the fight to Dongo. This is exactly what we expected though after the first time we saw him compete against Dongo in Lomari. Absolutely. Oh, my hand there. Right now goes to the side of the head of Marani. Yeah, fantastic timing there from Nong Ho. Just waited for the right moment. Saw Marani with his hands down and then struck with that right hook. Another right hand to the exact same place as Marani. Tries to tackle and take down Nong Ho. Yeah, not working right now for Marani. I mean, he's trying to get oh, again. And then he walks into another right hand. And that needs the bit section. I mean, that was a great way to end that co combination. Really took Marani off guard. He didn't receive one. Knee to the body by from Nongo in the first round. That's another right kick to the midsection by Morani. And again, Nongo with these kicks. But you can see the blood flowing from the eyebrow there. Won't trouble Nongo though, not going into the eye. 
there I see Marotti, it looks like he's getting tired. I was about to say, yeah, it looks like he's taking some deep breath. That around. Good right hand there from Marotti, but another step in right knee by Nongo as they collide. Good kick to the midsection there by Marotti, but both of them exchange punches now. Marotti grabbing on to the leg of Nongo, releasing, and then now getting into the clinch with him once again. I was going to say, two very similar styles, these two. Good right hands, back and forth we go, beautiful right knee there from Marotti. Marotti on spaghetti legs just for a yes. moment. For the second time in this round. But he gained his composure really fast. It's a, it's a sign of good boxing. Good right hands there from Marotti. 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 Good right hands no, I'll take a close look at the situation. See what he's going to do next. I think a big right hand's coming, Kevin. Oh, left hand and a right. And down goes Marotti. That's and it. It's all over. That is it. It is a KO victory for the man from Payao, Nong O Shoha Payak. That was incredible. I mean, we saw a much more well rounded Nong O. And take a look at that. <laughs> what a way to celebrate. I think he got tired at the end of that, though. <laughs> we were saying over the last few times that we saw Nongo, he needs to improve. My goodness, has he come back with a vengeance here at the end of 2023? That was. So, let's have a look at how he did it. Took his time. That was just earlier on in the round. Oh, wicked right hand. Even when <laughs> Marotti connects with Nongo. I love that response by Marotti. There, bang! Just goes to show that you just oh. you can't get too confident against Nongo once you've already connected a shot against him. Because Nongo came back with a furious punch of his own and that took Marotti off his feet. And there, at the end, where the referee probably could have called it, he came in and did exactly what he needed to do, delivering beautiful left and right sledgehammers to Marathi. And that's more one-handed push-ups than I've done in one year. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. The winner is... Nong O Sho Ha Payak from Thailand. You did a push and a big and a jag of beauty pie by a pipe and rye. You got that up young, then he lag up. When I have moved with me, I'm going to get some new high results. Oh, that's the dog up. Don't even have to cook up, come back to the dog up. ขอต้อนรับกลับเข้าสู่ไทยไฟหลวงปู่ทั่วนะครับและนี่คือวิธีการมอบรางวัลครับทุกคนครับรางวัลนี้ให้กับแชมป์ไทยไฟ2023ในรุ่น70กิโลกรัมและคือน้องโอชอห้าพยักขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆครับเหมาะสมอย่างยิ่งครับกับการชนะในวันนี้ลำดับแรกครับเป็นการมอบเงินรางวัลมูลค่า 250,000 บาทครับสนับสนุนโดยเครื่องดื่มตราช้างครับและผู้ให้เกียรติในการมอบและคาดเก็บขัดในวันนี้นะฮะขออภัยนะครับผู้ที่เกียรติในการมอบเงินรางวัลตรงนี้นะครับขอกราบไปเชิญคุณธรรมศักดิ์ชันอ่อนครับผู้จัดการขายเอเจนต์ภาคการขายที่6ครับและกราบไปเชิญคุณดนูวัฒน์ประวรสิรินุกุลครับผู้จัดการอีเวนต์ภาคการขายที่6โดยผลิตภัณฑ์เครื่องดื่มตราชางครับเป็นเชิญครับมอบรางวัลไปที่เรียบร้อยนะครับตรงนี้ 250,000 บาทขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆด้วยครับทุกคนขอบคุณมากๆครับท่านครับแล้วต่อไปนี่คือการมอบเข็มขัดแล้วนะครับการมอบเข็มขัดแชมป์นะครับขอเรียนเชิญผู้เกียรติในการมอบและคาดเข็มขัดครับเรียนเชิญคุณวัชรพงศ์ระดมสิทธิพัฒน์ครับท่านนายกอุกรุงสยามพลนั่นเองครับประธานบุรณิธิหลวงปู่ทวดองค์ใหญ่อยุธยาครับคาดเข็มขัดให้กับแชมป์ของเราในวันนี้ครับคาเสร็จเรียบร้อยสง่างามสวยงามเหมาะสมมากพรบมือดังๆอีกครั้งครับทุกคน
นี่คือแชมป์ในรุ่น70กิโลกรัมของเรานะครับและลำดับต่อไปคือวินาทีแห่งเกียรติยศเชิญน้องโอชอห้าพยักแชมป์ไทยไฟ2023ในรุ่น70กิโลกรัมเขารับถ้วยพระราชทานเบื้องหน้าพระบรมชายารักพระบาทสมเด็จพระเจ้าอยู่หัวและนี่คือแชมป์ไทยไฟสองพันยี่สิบสามในรุ่นเจ็ดสิบกิโลกรัมน้องโอชอห้าพยักปรบมือดังๆครับยินดีด้วยครับและขอขอบคุณท่านผู้บริหารใจดีของเราทุกๆท,ท่านเลยนะครับที่สนับสนุนไทยไฟมาโดยตลอดครับฝากพี่พิสุทธิ์มณชนในการเก็บภาพบันทึกภาพนะครับทัลลิสต์ในปี2015 Southeast Asian Games She was a champion in Myanmar, and she was the Kachuk champion of 2022. Will she repeat that tonight? Of course, training out of Tiger Muay Thai. She's been a staple of Thai fight since her arrival. Yeah, Undefeated here on Thai fight. Being pushed very closely, though, last time by Piercing. The referee in charge is referee Patadan Pong Sapan. Judges are inside to one Ying Ubon, Arun Gubutashat, and Sema Tipkiri. Well, I don't know if, that can, if you can pick that up on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel, but there was a lot of cheers for both Thailand and Myanmar echoing around the sacred ground that we're on right now. Yeah, Paya Singh, ever since she fought against Vero, I must say, her boxing has improved. I mean, we saw that. It was evident on the Thai Fight League show. See if it'll come to use here tonight against Vero Varujaratmo. Well, we've already seen two fighters pick up the King's Cup trophies. Is Paising about to make it a hat trick? Oh, is Vero going to repeat last year's performance and win another Queen's Cup tournament trophy? Let's find out. Oh, tempted elbow there, connecting by Vero. That was acknowledged by Piasing. Right kick to the body by Vero. Piasing grabbing a hold of the leg, taking down Vero. Might be a lot tougher than Vero expected. Oh, good one two combination again, acknowledged by Piasing. Oh, and a good team to the face. Oh, my goodness, that Piasing. team to the face. She walked straight into it. The momentum of Piasing's head against that beautiful team of Vero clashing and colliding. Piercy is in a world of pain right now. He's on wobbly legs. He, I don't think he can continue. My goodness, Vero is going in for the he's finish. Swarming. Bad place here for Piercy. The beautiful one-two combinations. Now elbows and knees. And that is ref, it. The referee has called it. It is it. It's another Queen's Cup trophy for Vero Valrucci Ramong. In my opinion, the best Pound for pound, female fighter in the world. I think I'm not, that is a big call. And that is a big why? call, but I'm saying it right now. Last outside, we did see Pet Jija walking around. Of course, we'll never see or probably never see that fight. That's right, Pet Jija, a former Queen's Cup tournament champion. And now but, it's Vero Valrujaramong, who is the Queen's Cup champion two years in a row. Find out how she did it there. That team, the momentum, beautifully timed, rocking the head back of Piercing. And from that moment on, even though she didn't get back to her feet, the fight was done. I mean, we know Vero for many years and for her boxing, but lately we've seen these from her, we've seen elbows from her, oh. and we've seen that team from her just like that. And look how much better she is with all those weapons. And Credit to Tiger Boy Thai. Yeah, she did exactly what she needed to do. 
swarming Piercing, not allowing her to get her equilibrium back. She was still hurt, the referee taking a big look and decided enough was enough, protecting Piercing. And she made the correct decision, the correct call. Congratulations to, and still, the Queen's Cup champion, Vero for Ruchira Wong of Myanmar. สู้กันถึงสุดใจจริงๆนะฮะเอาละครับถึงเวลาแล้วครับประกาศผลครับและผู้ชนะนะครับเดอะวินเนอร์สเวโรวอร์รูจิระวงแล้วก็เงินรางวัลไปด้วยนะครับเดี๋ยวไปมอบกันนะฮะในช่วงหน้านะครับเข้าวินไปเรียบร้อยแล้วนะครับมีสิ่งที่ได้นะครับมีเงินรางวัลอัจฉริยะนะฮะจากนักมวยผู้ชนะนะฮะจํานวนเรียบร้อยนะครับขอขอบคุณดรวรุทธวรรณเอ๋ยพี่คุณมากๆเลยนะครับเอาละครับและลําดับต่อไปนะครับจะเป็นการพิธีมอบรางวัลนะครับให้
We've already seen two fighters, sorry, three fighters pick up either a King's Cup trophy or a Queen's Cup trophy in the case of Vero. And now we've got another one before indeed our main event because coming up later, we are indeed, we have PTT Vought Ruggiero Wong taking on Alessio Malatesta. A mouthwatering main event. Can't wait for that, I really can't. I can't wait for this one either. Likewise, I mean, there's a lot of Tengden fans out there. We've got two sitting right here as well, even though we are impartial, of course. But yeah, Tengden, the last time we fought Abul Morazer and for those fans that were watching, caught his foot. And uh, he had some blood trickling from that foot. He was compromised. Oh, what a left hand there from Tengden. Morazaran moves forward with left and right hands. He's spinning all over the place now, Morazaran. <laughs> Only to receive some punches to the face from Degna. Good elbow there from the Iranian. Outside biking there from Degna. And again, going back to that back leg. That kick to the body. And now the knees to the midsection by Abu Faz. Think about Abu Faz that he's facing Degna already, so he knows exactly what to expect. He, has, he possibly has a game plan for this match here. He can't hold on to the ropes. Yeah. Oh. Orthodox by Abel Fazel, the way he moves around that ring. Yeah, extremely orthodox. I don't, see that. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it, quite honestly. Especially for someone his size. Back to the set, we go. Sets it almost there, almost the left hand, but Abel Fazel just moved forward before Degnan can connect with the left. That time going to the arm. Abel the left and right is going to get here by the Iranian. Lots of shots landing for the Iranian. He's doing a good job in there. Touch left elbow by Deng Nui. Got the right hand there. Abu Faso looks hurt. He looks like he's in pain. He looks is like hurt. He's wilting. Just to say that, he comes back with the left and right. Another left hand there by Deng Nui. He's prime, locked, and ready to fire. Another left hand. Good knee to the midsection by the tie. Abu is a tremendous fighter, but he really needs to work on that balance. That balance is really letting him down. It almost seems like he's about to collapse after finishing a combination. Left kick to the body by Degnu. Yeah, it looks like if Degnu attacked the body some more. Yeah, clash of legs that time. That could be it for Abu Faz. That midsection of Abu Faz just looks compromised at the moment. Again, Abu Faz pushing forward. Deep breaths here by the Iranian. Oh! Check with that balance, Kevin. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the ring is not that slippery. Another left kick there by Degno to end. A fire round here on tie fight. <laughs> What a round of action we've just witnessed. And just like Nakatomi Plaza on Christmas Eve, this fight was fire. Deng Nung from Thailand. Pushing, looking for left hands to Abu Faz Marazaran. It looked like sometimes he was skating on thin ice. Yeah, but right, I, like right. you, I like the, what you said, it looked like Deng Nung was laying down banana peels to that ring. Abel <laughs> <laughs> was all over the show. Yeah, it was a great start to the fight for Abel Faz, but as it kept going, it seemed to turn. <laughs> Coming into the second round of action. More of the same, Abu Faz going forward, trying to go for the spinning back elbow, just missing. Yeah, Abu Faz, Morazaran refusing to die hard right now. Tegnum with a low kick. Solid low kick there from Tegnum. Abu Faz, Morazian pushing forward, left kick to the body there. And again, another left kick by Tegnum to the body of Morazaran. That time, looking to go up high. Another to the body. Yeah, great dump there from Abu Faz. Abu Faz trying to plant the knee into the midsection of Tegnuk as he was going down. Referee didn't let him do so. Good catch there. Good left hook there from Tegnuk. 
digging deep, biting down on the gum shield is Nengdu. And again, looking for that left hand, that left cross to the head of Abulfaz Marazaran. Similar to the way we saw the first part between these two a few months back. You have to say that, but only, the only thing we're missing is the count. That's true. Again, it's Abulfaz moving forward. Tegnung on the back foot, something we're not used to seeing. Good left hand there from Tegnung. Great counter. Abulfaz Marazaran is tough. No question about it. Yeah, he is tough, but you got to wonder where is Tegnung's power. Oh, that's that left hand. Dropping and off balance. Marazaran takes off his Prajeed. Ironically, giving time for Tegnung to breathe. Oh! Tempted left hand here by Marazaran. Again, continuing to apply pressure to Tegnung. Low kick by Tegnung and a left cross. And again with a left hand. Attempted takedown, double leg. <laughs> yeah, trying to go for a double leg takedown there as he was got his way down. Tegnuk clearly not expecting that. Tegnuk starting to breathe a little bit deeply right now. Again, he's looking for that left hand that I don't think has as much power as we've seen previously in this fight. Referee of Pukit telling, telling him that he needs to listen to his instructions. He's not doing that so far. Trying to kick shot. <laughs> <laughs> End of the round here on Tie Fight. Stay with us. The conclusion up next. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number two. Turned a little bit scrappy in that round. Tengnen continuing to look for that left hand, but if he didn't find it, then he was going down to. The legs are indeed the body with that left kick. Razaran doing anything he could to try and put off and make life difficult for Dengnung, but I don't think it's enough to take either the first or the second round. Love that counter there from Dengnung. Managing to get Razaran off his feet. See you again from another angle. Just behind the air, can always off balance your opponent. Right at the end of the round, he looked to <laughs> take the back of Dengnu. I'll tell you what, I loved how he stopped for a second. And just <laughs> <laughs> when are you coming back, Kitty? Many people want to know. Unfortunately, Aaron and I can't answer that question because we don't know either. No, fortunately not. But we want to see him back. It'll be a year, I believe, in March since we last saw him compete here on Thai Fight. Look at that Vaseline on Tegnung. It's he wants to impersonate Santa Claus. Absolutely. Christmas, everyone. All right, here we go. Gary is looking Santa Claus. I'll tell you that right now. Third and final round. Very slow start to the second round, not to the third round, excuse me. Something I just did not expect that referee Pukit just not having it at all. Or, sorry, referee. Not referee Pukit, he wasn't there earlier. Good kick there from Tegnung and Run Run. Oh, forward. left hand there from Tegnung. He just can't find the, the hole of that left hand that he keeps heading for. Good left hook there. Left hook counter by Tegnung, almost getting Abel Fires off his feet. Now there's a right knee to the body as well by Dengu. It's referee Witterin, just so I have to clarify that. Inside kick by Dengu. And again, back to the left leg. Dengu on the back foot once again, but very accurate with his shots. Abu Fazza's corner urging him that he needs to move forward, he needs to start attacking. Otherwise, he's going to let this fight slip. Dengu now looking for a headlock takedown. <laughs> Free having a hard time separating both of them once again. Abu Faz moving forward. Tegnan on the back foot, back on the ropes. Oh, almost with that right hand, Marazaran. It's nice to see Abu Faz be aggressive, but he's just not that accurate with his shots. Really needs to work at that balance. Tegnan, though, despite being on the back foot, he is a lot more accurate with his shots. They keep showing Kitty, don't they, on the camera? It's making me think that 
Potentially, you can see Marazaran fight Kitty somewhere in 2024. Maybe I'm just thinking too far ahead. Kitty's that heavy now. <laughs> Lost track of Amonis with you. Well done to Marazaran for taking the back of Degnan. Degnan looks very tight in there. Yes. Reminiscence of what we saw for the last match between these two. Nice team there from Tegnan. As Marazaran still moves forward. Knee to the midsection there from Tegnan. Gonna score him some big, big points. Yeah, more dirty boxing by Marazaran within that clinch with that left hand. Superman yeah. punch by Marazaran, but it was countered by Tegnan. Good timing there for the man from the console one. Not a classic by any means of the imagination, but it is the end of the third and final round. Something tells me that we won't be seeing a fourth one here. We will get the decision to see who will be declared the winner of the King's Cup 72.5 kg card jerk tournament for 2023. Will it be next? From Thailand in the black corner, will it be Abul Fazl Marazaran from Iran in the white? Let's have a look at the highlights from this fight. Oh, just brushing the beard of Marazaran that time. This goes to show how tough Marazaran is. I mean, he's, a lot of people have fallen victim to that left hand oh, from absolutely. Kitty. Or from Pitengnen <laughs> jumping the gun there. Yeah. There's that attempted Superman punch, and again, another left hook by, by Degnu. Well, it made up for with entertainment. We will now find out who the 72.5 kg Kings Cup 2023 is. <laughs> ในใจแน่นอนว่าหลายๆคนมีคนเชียร์อยู่แล้วและแน่นอนคนที่เป็นเดอะวินเนอร์นะครับถือเวลาประกาศผลครับผลอยู่ในมือผมนะฮะและผ
และรอบต่อไปครับเป็นวินาทีแห่งเกียรติยศขอเชิญเต็งหนึ่งต้อมนครสวรรค์แชมป์ไทยไฟค่าเชื่อ2023รุ่น 72.5 กิโลกร,รมัมเข้ารับถ้วยพระสถานเบื้องหน้าพระบรมชายารักษ์พระบาทสมเด็จพระเจ้าอยู่หัวไม่เคยทำให้แฟนๆผิดหวังครับนี่คือแชมป์ชายไฟ2023รุ่น7 2 5กิโลกร,รมัมเต็งหนึ่งต้อมนครสวรรค์ขอขอบคุณท่านคณะผู้ถามนะครับใหญ่ใจดีของเราด้วยที่สับสุนเล่ามาโดยตลอดนะครับและทำการมอบรางวัลให้กับจังเต็งหนึ่งนะครับฝากพี่พี่สื่อมวลชนในการถ่ายภาพนะครับเก็บภาพตรงนี้เพื่อเผยแพร่ด้วยครับจากทางด้านซ้ายสวนเอ็งอุบอนวิทริตสายกรุณและเซมาทิปคีรีและผู้บริหารของผู้ตรวจและผู้ตรวจของไทยฟิตส์คือดรสวากวุฒิยาพิทักษ์โอเลซิโอในไทยลันด์เรียนอยู่ที่สวนทักยันทองจิมแต่ไม่ใช่ที่เขาถูกเปลี่ยนชื่อไปหรือที่มาลาเทสต์จิมไม่แน่ใจผมจำได้ว่าที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นี่ We we're all in max point tight. Well, when I was. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Looking forward, me and Kevin both been looking forward to this fight. Oh yes. Two studs of this weight category. Actually, me at 68 kilograms. Nice right height there from PTT. It's definitely one of the biggest fights that Thai fights ever put together. Big hand there, connecting for Alessio Malatesta. Yeah, we, last time we saw PTT, he did have a bit of a scare in his previous fight. I believe he was knocked down in, his, in the first round, and once again, he is susceptible to those right hands. PTT, I don't know what he's doing. His hands are awfully low. His defense is unheard of at this moment. Has to be very careful because we know Malatesta has got some good hands and he's got some great speed. And again with that right hand, Malatesta able to defend as well. Looks like he, he's already on wobbly legs. Kept it up a cut, pulled up with the left hand, didn't catch anybody. Did with the knee, did Malatesta. You know, PTT was interviewed before this match, and then they said, "Are you going to have your guard up? Are you going to defend yourself this time? Much better than your pre previous fight." He said he would, but we're not seeing that at the moment. No, we're not. Great start here by Malatesta. Looking very composed. Extremely composed. PTT on the head. Oh, really much composed. better by PTT. But again, gets caught with a one-two combination by the Italian. Both of them exchanging strikes. This is a brawl. We took it, nothing left though in a PTT match. It is, but it's a technical brawl. That's what we want to see here on Thai fight. Well, Alessio is making it a yeah, technical brawl. Actually, that's true. PTT on the other hand, I'm not sure what sort of brawl he's making it. See the markings already from the ropes on the face of Malatesta. And again with that left hand. PTT eats it and fires back with some good knees to the midsection. Yeah, wonderful D there by PTT. Needs to do more of the same. Oh, swing the miss there. And a P big kick to the midsection there from PTT. Much better by the tie. Again, good block there from Malatesta. Not easy to defend yourself with ropes as opposed to gloves. Of course, but that's how PTT connects. Malatesta tries to come with an elbow. Yeah, Malatesta looked wrong for a second, but he looks all right now. Yeah, PTT yeah. going back to those elbows. Yeah, perhaps he's found his groove now, but that's the end of the first round. One great, round. Great round here on Thai Fight. Stay with us. Yeah, I mean, what kind of
say about that first round. It seemed like Malatesta had the advantage connected some, with some brilliant shots. I mean, just like that, PTT's defense just seemed like it was missing just for a moment. It really did in the first half of the fight, but then, yeah, I think you're about to say it in the second half. Yeah. PTT, I feel like he found his groove and he connected with some big shots that might have just stole the round away from Malatesta. And there's a lot of damage on the face of Malatesta as opposed to PTT. I'm going to put my neck on the line. I think PTT might have just nicked that one. Kevin. Yeah. I mean, if it went the same way as we thought. Yeah, completely stunned at Malatesta. All right, here we go. Round two of a scheduled three. Big one, two, so coming oh. in from Malatesta and going for the high kick as well. Nice tips to the body, nice right hook there from the Italian. Deep it again, good left hand. PTT trying to fire back. Making the same mistake once again, having yeah. his hands down. Very dangerous there for PTT. Similar start to the second round that we saw in the first and again with that right hand. Malatesta does a sit on his laurels, continues to attack. I'm not sure what it is, but PTT for some reason has this tendency to drop his hand before he attacks. Malatesta may have paid the price right early oh, on. Oh, good hooker there. Here comes PTT again, trying to fire back. Yeah, lovely uppercut there from PTT, and I believe that connected. Malatesta holding his ground. Good footwork there by Malatesta. Oh, and again, good right hook. Causing PTT to think here. They're going for that high kick. PTT coming with the right hand. Like, the majority of the shots that PTT are throwing are actually being deflected off the ropes of Malatesta. Okay, good left hand, and once again by the Italian. Beautiful footwork. It's a good round this so far for Malatesta. But we saw that, like I said, round number one, good elbow by the Italian. What I absolutely love about Malatesta is that he is not afraid to exchange shots with PTT. A lot of fighters, that's their downfall, they're just scared. Not Malatesta though, he's really taking the fight to PTT and he knows PTT's weaknesses. Ken attempts it, up a good right hand there from Malatesta. And Malatesta even managing to land on top there. <laughs> Great footwork in this second round by Malatesta. He's not just moving back and forth, he's going circling around that ring. Causing a lot of problems for PTT with that footwork. Yeah, you can see that PTT is just thinking about twice about striking. He's worried about yeah. getting countered. Malatesta is in his head at the moment. Oh, what a left kick! Beautiful left high kick! PTT took it well though. One thing for sure, that connected. That connected to phenomenal round for Alessio Malatesta. PTT is taking a lot of punishment in this second round in my opinion. Yeah, Darren saying he's slowing down as well. A very bad combination, taking too much punishment and slowing down. Oh! Accident, I think it was an accident. He wasn't a knockdown, can't count that. Well, what a second round we've just witnessed there. You have to give massive credit to Alessio Malatesta, of course, at the end of round number one. We do both believe that PTT just nicked it, but he came out swinging, connected with some beautiful shots in round number two. And again, I'm gonna, I think that he won that round. Absolutely, I love uh, that. Was that was after the bell? That didn't count. But I love the accuracy that we saw. I love the power, I love the confidence and the footwork. Absolutely. He's got a great variety of attacks and he showed that in the second round. Let's see, third and final round, who will win? Ari and I have it one, one round apiece. Yeah. Yep. Right hand there from PTT. Good counter there from Malatesta. That was a foul. That was a foul. That, you can't hook the back of the leg like that for a takedown. Right hand there from Malatesta. Malatesta on the back foot. Good defense from the Italian. PTT decided to clinch up. Oh, 
Nice jab there from Malatesta again. Using the whole of the ring. That left hand connected as well for Malatesta. Malatesta certainly found his groove. Got a nice team there for Malatesta. Using his footwork to his advantage, going inside out. Good knee to the midsection though by PTT. PTT not really connected with anything at the moment. It's connected with a lot of air, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Beautiful elbow there. Not sure who actually connected though, yeah. just saw two elbows go swinging. Walking forward, can he get something out of this round? So far, I believe it's been all Malatesta. Right hand. hand yeah. BTT grabbing a hold once again. Yeah, you can hear Malatesta's corner calling out yeah, for a foul. And I believe that was one. I think the referee should have a word with BTT, to be honest about that. I believe so too. Oh, good solid knee, right elbow by Malatesta once again. Beautiful knee to the midsection there, connected extremely well to the midsection of PTT. Obviously, PTT felt that. PTT now on the back foot, thinking that he's won the match, perhaps. Oh, nice right hook to the body. PTT on the back ropes here. Right kick to the body there by PTT. Trying to go up high. Another body shot by Malatesta. I'll tell you what, it's been a while since we've seen a defensive PTT. We're seeing it right now, and that's just due to how good Alessio Malatesta is. Melatesta now pushing forward for the first time perhaps in this fight. Oh, Good elbow connecting and that's past PTT. He's cut over the right eyebrow. PTT after getting cut, not oh. answering back. Full fighters looking for right hands. And again, right hand left by Melatesta. Deep to the mid section by the Italian. And it's the end of the third and final round. Wonderful performance there for Alessio Malatesta. I have to think, I have to say, Malatesta won both rounds two and three, in my opinion. In my opinion as well. I thought he definitely did enough. But of course, that's up to the judges to decide. Great fight for Malatesta. Let's take a look at some of the replays. I mean, mostly we saw Malatesta on the oh. back foot at first. Beautiful elbow landed by Malatesta, you see. And the stock kick. of this young man just continues to rise. What a year it's been for him. Not only fighting against Sanchai and drawing with him, but then getting signed by Thai Fighter now. Potentially very close to defeating PTT. We believe, we believe, Kevin, we do. good enough to take away this trophy from PTT. But of course, it will be up to the judges to decide, but I can't see how he didn't win rounds two and three. I think there was a question mark whether he won round one as well, but definitely for me, two and three went to the Italian. Yeah, on our player. I'd say the exact same thing. Let's find out. ว่าใช่ไม่ใช่นะอ่ะตอนนี้แล้วครับผลของคู่นี้นะครับสรุปว่าเขาเป็นเล่นคู่ไหนมุมขาลุ้มดําขอเสียงก่อนดีกว่า
สู่ไทยไฟหลวงปู่ทวนนะครับในช่วงสุดท้ายแล้วนะครับเชื่อว่าหลายๆคนนะครับตอนนี้อย่าเพิ่งไปไหนนะครับถ้าอยากจะถ่ายรูปกับนักมวยพิธีกรนะครับก็เข้ามาด้วยกันได้นะจ๊ะได้ครับนี่คือบรรยากาศของอการแข่งขันนะครับซึ่งอยู่ในภาพบรรยากาศของกิจกรรมเพียวจัดกันที่ลานตรงนี้สุขสนานมากขอบคุณทุกคนมากๆนะครับแฟนๆที่ชมอยู่ทางบ้านนะครับดูการมอบรวนในครั้งนี้ครับกับรับถ้วยพิธีทานครับแต่แน่นอนครับวันนี้นะครับเราถึงเวลาฮะถ้วยพระราชทานครับคนเดียวครับต้องมอบรางวัลแล้วฮะนี่คือที่สุดของที่สุดจริงๆนะคู่สุดท้ายมันมากๆเอาละครับเราต้องขอเชิญนะครับผมมอบเงินรางวัลอาชีพกันก่อนครับคุณเป็กจำนวน 30,000 บาทนะครับโดยดรวรุษวรรณะเอ็มพิกุลนะครับประธานกิติมศักดิ์มุทิรุจิระวงนะครับเป็นการมอบนะครับ 30,000 บาทให้กับปตทวรุจิระวงยินดีด้วยนะครับก็จะได้รับเสมอๆในทุกไฟการแข่งขันเลยนะครับครับผมขอบพระคุณท่านมากๆนะครับท่านดรอัตตพลครับลำดับต่อไปครับเป็นการมอบรถพิกอัพอินสตูดีแม็กซ์ไฮแลนเดอร์สประตู 1.9 DDI รุ่น LDA สนับสนุนโดยบริษัทเรเพชอินสตูดิโอเซลจำกัดครับและผู้ให้เกียรติในการมอบรางวัลในครั้งนี้ครับมิสเตอร์ทาคาชิฮาตะครับกรรมการผู้จัดการบริษัทเรเพชอินสตูดิโอเซลจำกัดมอบเป็นสกิลยานด้วยกุญแจดอกนี้ขอเสียงปรบมือด้วยครับยินดีกับปตทด้วยนะครับไม่รู้ได้ไปกี่ครั้งแล้วนะครับแต่ละปีนะครับต้องยอมรับจริงๆนะว่าฝีมือไม่หย่อนไม่ยันกันไปเลยนะครับเอาละครับต้องขอขอบคุณนะครับมิสเตอร์ทางชีฮัตตามากมากเลยนะครับที่มอบเข็มขัดนะฮะมอบรถให้นะครับลําดับต่อไปนะครับเป็นการมอบเข็มขัดแชมป์นะครับผู้ที่เกียรติคาดเข็มขัดนะครับต้องขอกราบเรียนเชิญดรนพรวาจินครับประธานกรรมการบริหารบริษัทไทยไปจํากัดนะครับมอบให้กับปตทครับนี่พี่มดของเรานั่นเองนะครับพี่มดไทยไฟนะครับตอนนี้ให้เกียรติเป็นผู้มอบให้เองเลยนะครับกับปตทสําหรับเข็มขัดเงินนี้ครับสุดยอดครับขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆด,ด้วยดีน่าจะเป็นเซตที่อะไรนะหกหรือเจ็ดแล้วบ้างใช่ไหมฮะโอ้โหถ้าติดตามใน i อจีโซเชียลที่จะทราบข้อมูลเลยนะครับขอขอบคุณพี่มดเป็นอย่างสูงนะครับลำดับต่อไปครับนี่คือวินาทีแห่งเกียรติยศขอเชิญปตทวอรุจิรวงครับแชมป์ไทยไฟค่าเชือก2023ในรุ่น70กิโลกร,รมัมเข้ารับถ้วยพระราชทานเบื้องหน้าพระบรมชายารักษ์พระบาทสมเด็จพระเจ้าอยู่หัวนี่คือที่สุดของที่สุดครับกับแชมป์ไทยไฟค่าเชียง2023ลูก70กิโลกร,รมัมมอเตอร์โชว์โวรูจิโรวงยินดีด้วยครับลำดับต่อไปจะเป็นการถ่ายภาพรวมนะครับของนักกีฬานะครับคณะท่านผู้บริหารนะครับผู้สับสนใจดีของเราทุกๆท,ท่านนะครับและทีมงานผู้ไปส่วนเกี่ยวข้องในการจัดงานในครั้งนี้สุดยิ่งใหญ่เลยครับ